And we're back. Oh boy, oh, here it is. Wow. If only there's the a theme tune. Um, I mean, we could get one. Oh yeah. Right? We that's something that we could but do. Maybe we that's our theme tune is not having one. Buy a tune. What about that? Mm. Wow, that sounds uh, that sounds really creative and really um, thrifty. Thank you. I appreciate that. Or it um, could just be was... a really quick one, like the Smiling Friends one. Just... <laughs> and then it's just yeah, get like started. a instructed during like, a well, fucking coke dream. What's that called? It's it, is it like a jingle or is a jingle uh, longer? I, I guess you could. What's, I you like could a, call it a jingle, a, I suppose. A bit like something that's like under ten seconds. Uh, I actually have never thought about what the definition of a jingle is. Honestly, that's uh, I'm I'm curious. These now. kinds of thoughts here any fab they just come up and uh... um. Time to answer that question, I guess. Speaking of thrifty... Uh, well, <laughs> so, definition two, which is the relevant one, is a short slogan, verse, or tune designed to be easily remembered, especially as used in advertising. So, I've so, only understood jingle to be musical. Uh, well, it's because jingle also describes, like, jingling keys, the sound that that makes, as a definition. Like, if someone was to, like, I guess that's the difference between a slogan and a jingle. If you sing it, it's a jingle. If it's just, like, mm -hmm. a phrase or words, it's a slogan. You know, funnily enough, by that definition, there are a lot of things that I don't know that would often be called jingles that are jingles, like short themes for, for um, for, like, movies or video games that are rec like, you know, the Terminator, dun-dun-dun-dun, that could be called a, a jingle, <laughs> technically. I guess if you cut it off the song... as part of advertising. Well, like the Battlefield one, they just use that over and over and over, which, funnily enough, they sound very similar. Um, uh, yeah, they, they do, yeah. They sound the same. They use that one yeah. over and over and over again. At that point, that could be a jingle, potentially. J like, the fact that it's often used in advertising and it's recognized. Hmm. This is giving me a lot to think about. Like if, like the, the McDonald's... Ba -da -ba -ba -ba, oh, yeah, yeah. That, I'm loving that, it. Like, that's, that's a jingle. That's a quintessential musical. jingle. Oh yeah, jingly. What? What uh, is? Um... Well, so here's a question. Um, mm -hmm. What about like? Would you consider like the Universal or 20th Century Fox or, you know, like the intros for movies? Would that constitute a jingle? Do you reckon? Like ba 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 ba. Is that a is that a jingle? Bum bum. What about, are you talking about like, um... I'm talking about uh, like the Universal or Warner, because you know how Warner Brothers uses, um, it's as time goes by right from Casablanca. Yeah, that's the Fox one. I'm talking about ones like that, though. Yeah. Is that what it's called, the Warner Brothers one? It's from Casablanca. I can't remember. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm, do you think those are jingles rags, considering that they're pretty um, short? I don't know. I think a jingle is, like, self-contained. Like, it's designed to be short and small. It's not just, what if we stopped the song at, like, the first, you know, six seconds or whatever. Um, well, I guess this is kind of, because, like I said, I, I'm pretty sure the Warner Brothers one is As Time Goes By, which is a full song, but then when you condense it down into a jingle that's associated with Warner Brothers, doesn't that just make it? Which is a applicable jingle? to what you were saying about Terminator. The da dun dun dun, dun that's what I'm is saying. like that's what that's, a lot of people yeah. will sing, even though it's a part of a full song. Yeah, yeah exactly. I don't know how I feel. Um Well well let's put it this way. The Avengers theme is part of a broader composition, but like the Avengers theme is a specific section of that broader composition. I would happily call that a jingle. If if we're going by these definitions. I feel like a is that but are we so what are we saying is the difference between, like, a motif um, and a jingle? Uh, <laughs> well, may maybe there isn't a difference. Maybe the difference between a motif and a jingle is is just how much people recognize it as, like, being associated with some kind of brand or story. Maybe there's the a jingle... Lot, there's a lot of, you know, like, um... Uh, like, cause the dun 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 you're in Lord of the Rings. I mean, that's a that's a pretty recurring motif, but, like... I don't know that that would be called a jingle because I don't know that that's what people think of straight away when they think of Lord of the Rings music. They're probably thinking of, -na 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 -na. you know what I mean? Do you I think that like something being a jingle is necessarily like it needs to be to some degree corporate or commercial? Like there needs to be a commercial element to it to make uh, it a jingle? Is that I what the difference that, is? I don't think it's necessary because that definition said like especially 
especially is used in marketing, but the fact that it says especially rather than necessarily, you know? What think... if, like, a mm. motif is generally something that is used and reapplied in multiple ways? Yes. Um, maybe, that doesn't really happen with jingles. Jingles are usually just one and done for the most part. Uh, I get what you mean. Um, maybe that's the difference. Is it they're like yeah, being like the incorporated over and over? Yeah, because like a lot of a lot of like motifs in music will not be like a carbon copy one for one of the exact same you know the exact same uh, chords with the same instruments necessarily. It will be with like different instruments or uh, different speeds or. It, Whereas, like, the McDonald's jingle is what it is always. It's, like, consistent mm -hmm. with very, 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 very minor variation. Hmm. Yeah, but if they, but like, for October, for Spooky Ween, if they did, like, a kind of spookier version of that, I don't know if I'd feel okay saying, well, now it's a motif, it's not a jingle. I'd be like, it's the jingle, just <laughs> a little different now for Halloween. I wonder if this is just a case of the definition, like, it's a very blurry line. There's no clear line delineating a jingle from just a regular song. Well, or when you when you hear jingle, when you hear that, what does your mind kind of go to? What do you think of? Because for me, I think about almost exclusively like corporate advertising. I think of advertisement too. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think I think that's kind of. I I think it would be like even if I thought that there was a jingle that was derived from like a film or a TV show that had some scenes that it was attached to, that I guess you would say is like more fundamentally artistic. I feel like a jingle that would be associated with, like, a franchise would be something that kind of goes beyond specific beats to, like, reminding me of a brand or a series of some kind, kind of like the Battlefield theme. I don't know that I think of any specific moment in any of the games when I hear it. It's like, oh, that's the Battlefield theme. Yeah, it's like, you're thinking of it from, like, a, yeah, like that brand perspective. The more I think yeah. about it, the more strongly I kind of feel about there needing to be that, um, well, that element. Why especially in advertising as part of the definition. It's not that it's necessarily, but that that is like what typically means. That's what it's typically for. It's for advertising and marketing. Well, These are the kinds of discussions that you don't get most places. That's, no, you don't really. That's the equivalent. People get to enjoy something while other people are still being like, oh, EFAP's live, oh my god, I gotta put everything aside. My... My family are in a car teetering on the edge of a cliff, but I gotta see the EFAP episode first. I will sort them out right after. You know, it's the, you gotta give everyone a chance to come mm. in. I mean, I That's still don't know that four balls on the edge of the cliff. That was that was tough for me to understand. That was pretty straightforward compared to the Secret of Mario's Jump, though. I'm glad we mm. learned the Secret of Mario's Jump. Did we? Did we, Rags? Did we? Yeah. Did we? But did we have well, yeah, it was in the video. The he definitely told jump. us. Well, yeah, what, 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 of course what, he if, told if, us. If that's true, then what did you? What was it? I mean, we all know, because it said so in the video. Well, if that's true, then why did he say he hasn't? Well, that's... Well, that's madness. That couldn't possibly be the case. Rags, I'm so sorry. The, the reality the where he explained the secret never happened. Isn't that wild? I think you've like had like a... Aside, isn't that fucking nuts? <laughs> you had a psychosis because you couldn't deal with the, the idea that he hadn't explained it. So you, you create a world where he had. Where the secret was clear. I'm creating a false reality, a multi a different universe. And we'll get into multiverses during the CFAP, I'm sure. Oh probably. But a, a an alternate universe where what's his name? Mark Brown yeah. answers the questions yeah, of his own. I wonder we if he haven't. And still I'm kinda makes glad. the same videos not, or not. I don't know. I'm not itching to watch another Mark Brown video. Of course. Because what, course. Says, what little he says I'll already know. What little he says we all already know. And then I don't think I've learned anything from the video, and it could have been the secret of Mario's jump. Well, that's like your opinion, man. So, Correct. anyway, uh, there's there's a couple of sources of information, a couple of revelations, and a signaling, I think, of a new era. Um, we've crossed over some kind of line, culturally, when it comes to Disney, uh, specifically. Obviously, they're two big pillars being Marvel and uh, MCU. And so... Marvel and MCU, huh? The two big pillars? Yeah, yep. the two big Marvel pillars. Marvel and the MCU, yeah. What else is there after that? Yeah, name like, one other thing. Yeah. Star Wars. What? That's part of the... That's part, that's, uh, part of the MCU. Yeah, part of the MCU. You're me. I don't appreciate it. And then, of course, uh, 
I'm looking forward to Indiana Jones when he he's, apparently there's going to be a payoff, and I think it's a pretty cool one. Uh, Iron Man's uh, going to run out of Energon, and then Indiana Jones is going to whip Energon. whip like his wheels, and it's going to spin the gears, and then it'll it'll come back out. And I was like, yeah. Oh, Energon's from Transformers, isn't That's it? That's right. So, Crossing well, world. obviously what Transformers is in the MCU, it? so it makes sense. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. true. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> as many may have heard, uh, an article came out, and I'm interested in reading it, not like like with with you guys and and chat, not necessarily because it's all true. I'll skip to that part where it's been um, contested in many ways, shapes, and forms, been, yeah. but just more so to speculate on what it means and the fact that it came out. Wasn't it like a day or the same day or a few days after the South Park episode? Oh, no. uh, I think so. Yeah, I people guess, consider um, that quite the coincidence. I'm not sure what to think of that. Uh, I don't know. Well, I actually I don't think know it's, the article the, uh, that you're referring to. So. It's the cover story for the month, so I presume that it was like that that would be a coincidence, probably. But I guess it would be more so, maybe it's not a coincidence, because again, the fact that the article even exists is indicative of uh, a change in the, in the, in the state of affairs. Um, but, uh, uh, this article was, uh, where was it posted? Because I'm not uh, familiar with this article. Oh, I'll link oh, you in a second, but That's a big one. to yeah. give a trajectory, an itinerary, we're going to go through that, and then we're going to look at um, statements More made like trajectory. on distant forums about uh, a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff that happened, and we're going to talk about that. Then we've got three videos to see. They're short ones, or short-ish, <laughs> at least. Okay. You know how it works on EFAP. Um... Yeah. And some images that are that are that are of amusing, and we're just going to be we got got it could be a long one tonight. Don't know. We'll find out. Um, yes, I'm still wearing my Halloween outfit. I'm pretty sure I put it on before. Uh, Both of you October are. Anyway, unless Fringy, oh, yeah, that's right. just. I guess I don't know about it. Fringy. That Fringy could just be. That I could think, is uh, that what is that what lurks under the mask? I hmm. left it on because we still had a uh, Halloween stuff to record. But I guess I, I mean it's it's actually over, that's right? true. Probably, yeah. That, well, that's we what still I do. Did. And then I. <laughs> Do we? Oh, do oh, we? Yeah, we do. Yes. Oh, well, then... yeah, Technically. Uh, right. I mean, you know what I mean. I think I know what you mean. It's complicated. Chat, it'll all make sense one day, don't you worry. Uh, I went back to regular yeah. mode. That's yeah, no, right. I, I figured that I was going to leave it on. And, yeah, but I'm... Okay, yeah, I'll just you leave gotta, it then. You, you gotta get a Thanksgiving-themed one? That's, or just, like, general uh, fall-themed, I mean, right? I guess... Thanksgiving doesn't seem very applicable because we don't celebrate Thanksgiving. It's not a holiday here. Oh. Well, you can celebrate it if you'd like. Yeah, and you could because uh, like so the like, universal like, nature of being thankful for what you have so is really what, amazing. I just draw myself as a turkey or something. You could. You, you could. could draw yourself as a turkey, or you could just be surrounded by pumpkins. Maybe pumpkin pie. You could have leaves. Leaves are great. All those, the yellow and red and all that sort of I, thing. And I find it funny because now it's starting to get into summer. So really the appropriate one would be me very upset. When are you moving to the Northern Hemisphere? Uh, I don't know. Because <laughs> boy, it's so great up here. Man, um, I'm telling you. I mean, you know, upstairs, like Upstairs, we call it. You wanna, when are you going upstairs? upstairs to uh, the Northern you know, Hemisphere? You know, get out of the it's basement, all, it's Fringy. All, it's all there is no up and down in the universe, all right. It's all well, it's all a matter well, of here's the Okay, thing. Here's free works with the wrong. final order, apparently. Here's where you're wrong, because one of them is called the Northern Hemisphere and one of them is called that's the Southern true. Hemisphere. That's true, but that's that's a matter so of So obviously we're above you. Morally? I mean where is I, where is up? Where is I, up in the universe? Towards, towards the northern up. hemisphere. <laughs> okay. Yeah, all right. Well, whatever the you arc say. Buddy. Of justice is long, but it bends towards the northern hemisphere. Look, it's right, like... it's, it's unique. The Southern Hemisphere is mostly ocean, which makes it a, a real interesting kind of place. There's not many, there's not many big old land masses down here. The, like, well, I the think like 70 something planet. percent of all humans live in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, I think, I think it's actually, sorry, no, I got it wrong. It's that 30 percent, 30 percent of the land is in the Southern Hemisphere. 10 percent of the population is here. 90 percent of the world lives in really? the Northern Really? That Hemisphere. much? Damn. Well, yeah, because remember the equator is drawn at like Indonesia. Um, like a, a good portion of South America is actually above the northern hemisphere. <laughs> like the, the most of most of the southern he hemisphere is ocean. The only land masses are Australia, uh, the majority of South America and Antarctica, where nobody lives except for a few scientists. Penguins, right? Or is that the northern hem or the, the uh, north no, pole? Which one is only, the penguins? Only penguins in the southern hemisphere. Um, okay, there are no right. penguins in the north pole. So penguins, oh, where are the polar bears. 
polar bears are in the northern hemisphere. Okay, so they never like meet. Most most of the, no that no oh, they. Well, that's no fun. Penguins it's probably good for the penguins though that they don't yeah. meet. Yeah, it's pretty chill for them. They, Just, they only got to worry about seals. Let no, people know. You may hear fireworks randomly. Uh, it, it, I oh, know. Is that like a special occasion? Over well, in, in Britain almost. <laughs> Sort of, but like okay. it's, I don't know, just you just hear blah, 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 what what's, in what's the background. The, what, what's the occasion? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I want to get going, okay? We keep going off on tangents, which is something we never, uh, ever, ever do, but we got a lot to get yeah, through today. Yeah, okay. All yeah, right. All yeah, right. let's do it. Let's and talk we, about, we um, and I got to do reading. Example. How disgusting is that? Then again, we could just go in, uh, paragraphs between each other, right? <laughs> Offloading. Uh, good. Yeah, cool. Thanks. But, um, what what would you say that the topic for this EFAP is? The dead reckoning of Disney, I think, is what I've called it. Oh, oh my god! Um, and it's dead it's half, reckoning. Half to do with like tangible statistical results stuff that we'll we'll talk about, um, and also just to do with cultural changes, which you're probably more than aware of. But we can sort I've of I've seen them. Put them together a Allegedly. little bit. I mean, um, one of the things that, that's worth mentioning is we have been watching Loki. Not uh, planning to do an episode uh, for it. We'll be having yeah. EFAP TV episodes. It's terrible. On their way. Um, Absolutely awful. As of episode five, that's the recent one. Uh, it's just it's it's right there with season one. They're shoulder to shoulder, just like yeah, we're awful. Like the giants <laughs> of being the absolute worst stories in the MCU. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, it's. Um, I think Frangie, you had mentioned that viewership was down forty percent. That is from true. Uh, season two, as I understand it, the premiere was down forty percent from season one. So, yeah. I remember Loki yeah. was there. Like, okay, we got that this working at least. Mm -hmm. That was M. <laughs> and it's like, oh no. One. But it's and you know, it's, it's a, weird that... thinking about it, considering it was one of the earliest ones. It was their yeah. like second show or something their like that. Their third show. Their third show. What were what were the ones before Loki? What, what were the and first? And Falcon and Winter Soldier mm -hmm. were the first. Oh two. yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's where all the goodwill started to drain hardcore. Yeah. All that. Well, even we were kind of like the first couple episodes of WandaVision. We were like, hey, all right, this is something. Mm. Then yeah. it went to shit. Oh but yeah. At least right. it took a couple episodes. Oh yeah, and that's that's where I mean everything's uh, everything's falling apart, kind of. So we're going to talk about all those different ways that it's happening, and then look at how it may have happened. And you know, it's kind of stuff we've talked about over the years, but now it's like an all it's an episode focusing on it. So we'll get started with this article. The context is it's uh, what did you say it was described as like the monthly cover I think it's article a cover story. Yeah. Right. Variety. It was a big deal. Story. All right. Um. Yeah. I mean, everyone knows variety. Variety is a big deal. And so, well, I mean, so we'll just, I guess we'll just read it. Like I said, we'll go paragraph by paragraph, I suppose. This past September, a group of Marvel creatives, including studio chief Kevin Feige, assembled in Palm Springs for the studio's annual retreat. Most years, the vibe would have been confident, even cocky, given how the premier superhero brand owned by Disney since 2009 has remade the entertainment business in its image. If that's all fair and true. They would be pretty damn cocky, especially when they were fledgling when they started on the with Iron Man, right? It's like it's mm -hmm. you're in danger of all of it collapsing. But they built it all up, only to now be at a different position, relatively speaking. Um, it's I guess to make it easier to remember, right. if Rags goes next, we we just go in left to right, left to right, repeat. Um, yep. all right, let's see. Uh, let me. All right, I was wrapping something up. Um, but this occasion. I'm starting there, right? Uh, yeah, that's yeah. correct. <laughs> all right, I'm just making sure, just making sure, you know? I want to make sure all my ducks are in a row. Um, but this occasion was angst-ridden. I like that, angst-ridden. Everyone at Marvel was reeling from a series of disappointments on screen, a legal scandal involving one of its biggest stars, and questions about the viability of the studio's ambitious strategy to extend the brand, beyond movies, into streaming. Um... I don't care see legal in scandal involving one of his biggest stars. Are they talking about I Jonathan, Jonathan Majors? Majors? I thought for a second they might have been talking about the scandal M with um, Scarlett Johansson back with Black Widow. Um, Possibly, but uh, I feel like because she wasn't poised to be like the new big villain of the next arc, and they were kind of yeah. done with her. Oh, you know, yeah, I, 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 that's true. I it's just that because they said reeling from a series of disappointments on screen, which is like, yeah, that's probably going all the way past Endgame, right? Anything past then, really. Um, not including stuff like No Way Home, I guess Guardians 3, 
Uh, no, what, well, the, the thing that's the thing you got to remember is No Way Home, like Spider Man, is Sony. Um, it is like a Marvel Studios thing, kind of, but it is majority Sony. Well, uh, it's worth Columbia mentioning every time almost because when I say phase four and five, people will be like, Well, No Way Home's in there, and it's like, No, yeah, I know, yeah, but so, yeah, but No Way Home's not part of the because it's not No Way Home, obviously, across the Spider Verse isn't part of the conversation because that was actually successful. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when we talk about like money, profit regarding that movie, who Columbia, makes the most? Columbia pays most of the bills and gets most of the money. That's kind of like the nature of the agreement. Remember, there was a time when it was kind of like on ice and they weren't sure what to do because I think Marvel wanted to negotiate to spend more money, but obviously make more money. But Sony didn't want to. The thing you got to remember is Sony owns the rights to like Spider-Man films. Um, and that anything that happens between them and Marvel is like cooperation, but ultimately it's still theirs. They still have it. Okay. Um, so yeah. You may continue, Rex. All right. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. where did that tab go? Oh, here it is. Sorry. I sometimes I forget. Uh, da, 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 da. The most pressing issue to be discussed at the retreat was what to do about Jonathan Majors, the actor who had been poised to carry the next phase of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but instead is headed to a high-profile trial in New York later this month on domestic violence charges. The actor insists he is the victim, but the damage to his reputation and the chance he could lose the case has forced Marvel to reconsider its plans to center the next phase of its interlocking slate of sequels, spin-offs, and series around Major's villainous character, Kang the Conqueror. One of the things I was thinking about this is if you split it all up into individual characters, events, locations, and maybe even, let's say, movies, what is, like, the hardest thing to change in terms of an, a single element or item of the MCU? And it might actually have been Jonathan Majors as Kang. Because um, take anyone else. If it was like, let's say Brie Larson killed a bunch of people, they'd be like, well, she's written out. Bye. You know what I mean? Like, as much as it's difficult to square yeah, away the, the movie she's just done. But yeah, it's what all a, the other heroes. The they can pick up the little, slack. It gets a little bit awkward when your film is called The Kang Dynasty, you know? Doesn't like, I mean like they've done, they, he did it, well, rather, it, this event happened right when they had like been like, here he is! <laughs> and then they were like, oh, yeah, shit. Pretty much. I mean, that was like the main thrust for Quantumania was Kang. Yeah, look at Kang, look at Kang, look at Jonathan Majors as Kang specifically. Yeah, Isn't he a great really actor as Kang? And then, and then this happens. Um, and it's like, they're right in the middle, right? If, if it happened a couple of years earlier, they could have changed their mind. If it happened a couple of years later, it'd be over. It's like the worst possible timing. And yeah, um, yeah, to, he, to make what I'm saying a little bit like... more understandable, right? The idea of they wouldn't just, just drop in anyone is not easy, like, uh, and there's levels right. of difficulty, but it just feels like he's one of the hardest ones to detach from the MCU. They just injected him everywhere. Yeah, they played him up really big, and he's supposed I to be this overarching are... kind of thread between multiple films as the villain. He's the, the new Thanos. I suppose the thing is, is that because of the multiverse, if they played it more like Spider-Man had it, where the Spider-Man were played by different people, it's you could just easily be like, yeah, it's a different Kang, and that's why he's played by a different person. So, but like, uh, for whatever reason, all of the Kangs that have been presented on screen have been played by him. I hear a lot of people say, uh, this is fine and easy because you can easily recast Kang. And I'm always sitting there thinking, like, I mean, to an extent, you can recast anybody and do anything you want at all times because the writing's so fucking bad. But, I mean, it's not, I feel like it's in stone that there's not multiple versions of Kang that look completely different. They all look like Jonathan Majors. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, there's the fact that everybody would actually everybody would know the real reason. It's like every yeah. everybody's kind of aware of the reason why that's happening. And so, in a um, sense, it's easy to do for anything because they can just do it. Like in a corporate sense, they can just be like, "Well, we're switching you out." Bye. But uh, I don't know. To me, I'm thinking of all the different elements, and um, you know, compare it like like a if Tom Holland, uh, I don't know, went nuts and killed everybody, it'd just be like, well. New cast, new 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 Spider Man, and especially now it's probably not too difficult. I mean, you know, it's not good to lose Tom Holland as a draw, but at the same time, they can cast someone else for the college years of Spider Man in the MCU, right? Or if they move it wherever. They could, they could. Oh man, I mean, it would be they, tough. I, but maybe I don't know about that. I I don't, I, I don't know. I'm more comfortable about it. I feel like they, they, there's plenty of good actors, and I think people would be able to. People fucking love Spider Man. Oh, yeah. 
like I, adore I Spider Man. I think it's the connection that people have with really liking Tom Holland as that particular Spider Man. That's kind of what I'm getting at. Um, yeah. It would be like replacing Tobey Maguire after Spider Man Two. Um, I think there's a lot of. Great. Yeah, I, I think. No, yeah, that's the thing though. There's there's difficulty with all of them. Um, I just don't know that the, the, any of them represent any kind of um, impossibility. But this one was incredibly awkward. Yeah, um, yeah. You're the reason right I chose Captain Marvel and Spider Man as counter examples is because they're like probably the equivalents if there were um maybe not captain marvel compared to spider-man but it's like what about chris hemsworth as thor it's like is that easily replaceable it's like nobody fucking cares about like thor <laughs> i don't know like what the hell's even going on there it's like i wonder how difficult that would be i don't know i think we'd all be i feel like, like that would be one of the more difficult ones well we'd myself. be it would suck to get rid of him because he's probably the only draw left for for a uh, a thor story i know. feel sorry for him right now there's a lot of people who are very sympathetic towards him I would say so. I mean, he's a likable guy, and he's one of the few legacy actors who's still left. And he's a legitimately old... talented actor, too. He's, he's so. quite talented. Oh, yeah. But then we, you know, past that, Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange is one of the ones, I guess, that would be... Yeah, he's one like, of the they, few They wouldn't want to lose well. him, but, you know, then, then we're into characters that, like, you know, imagine they recast Cassie, Cassie Lang. You'd be like, oh, no. No one gives a shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, oh, jeez, yeah, how could you do yeah. that? Um... So, you know, of, of their, like, 50 million new superheroes they've introduced, we could probably recast all of them, but the one that they've introduced recently-ish, at least Phase 4 and 5, being Jonathan Majors, it was awkward, because he's been, he's, like, a fully integrated right when they now don't even know if they want him fully integrated, which is just, yeah, unfortunate for them. Alrighty, Fringy. Uh, at the gathering in Palm Springs, executives discuss backup plans including pivoting to another comic book adversary like Doctor Doom, but making any shift would carry its own headaches. Majors was already a big presence in the MCU, including as the scene-stealing antagonist in February <laughs> the Media. Are you dead? Um, he stole all those scenes, Fringy. He stole them. That's why they didn't uh, make any money, because Kang stole the scenes. Um, <laughs> uh, and he has been positioned as the franchise's next big thing in this season of Loki, particularly in the finale, which airs on October 9th, and sets mm. up Kang as the star of the fifth Avengers film in Oof. 2026. Well, that's interesting, because it means we've got a week to see if at least that portion of the article is just, like, ironclad. Yeah. Um, I, I will say, again, bearing in mind, it's like, well, you know, this could not be true, but, like, if, if they actually were sitting there like, oh, but we could pivot to Doctor Doom, it's like... This just speaks to how I feel like Marvel's yeah. doing. Um, I Isn't don't think that they, like? Absolutely. I don't think they yeah. know. It's in, it's like I don't think that they. I I really don't know that Marvel actually knows what's wrong with their films. Um, I don't think they do either. No, yeah, I don't think I, that Marvel has the capability of like, okay, let's do, let's get our checklist of things that we need to do to make a good movie. That checklist doesn't exist. That's uh, a checklist uh, for something yeah, else. It, it's it's gone i i think it's it it never just comes down to maybe like the writing sucks it's always <laughs> like a variety of other things like there are too many of these films oh yeah the visual effects are pretty bad or they've got oh, to connect know, like, better the GI, was, it's the references curious. it's the like, diversity with, um, the the it seems like the shtick because the trailer for echo came out yesterday um or the day before that oh, and it seems idea. like the yeah, the the shtick for that seems to be ah, see, it's mature, it's violent, and and it's just to me that feels like yeah, right. But like that doesn't mean anything to me. Um, yeah, the world's full of violent it, media. Like I don't. Oh, it's uh, just, like uh, you're it, not special. I would actually it, um, it's a, as part of our journey today, we might be watching that trailer already. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. we, we I haven't seen that. it. So. I haven't seen it either. I, I guess what I'm getting at is that um, because it, it felt like it was the same thing that happened with Secret Invasion, where they tried to pretend it was serious. Um. And now you can see with the Marvels that the attitude, and I imagine it's partly because of the response to Captain Marvel being dull and boring, is this is a fun movie. It's a fun, wacky movie. It's a fun movie. It's fun, guys. Like, there's always these kinds of strategies that seem to be employed with each of the films that speak to some, like, meta-criticisms. But all of it is, like, none of it addresses the fundamental, which is that the writing is just piss. It's bad. When it's really need... bad. When was Marvel's last fun movie? What Ooh. would you say um, the last fun movie was? Like that was actually fun. Yeah, this is complicated um, though because I think a lot of uh, people would say Guardians Three, and I'd be like, mm. and, Guardians yeah, Three was that. fun at times, but yeah, not, but it, it was. It, pretty, I, <laughs> but there wasn't enough strong writing in there to make me um, walk out with a smile. I um, see a few people in chat saying Ragnarok, Ragnarok, which I think was a fair choice. 
But Infinity War was Which a is really like six funny years movie old at this point. Times. Infinity yes. War was really funny, but it was also one of the darkest, if not the darkest, yes, entry in the whole MCU. So, yeah, I wouldn't call Infinity War fun. So it probably is mm. Ragnarok, Guardians Might 2, be. that kind of like, which again, yeah, six years ago. Um, I, I guess, I know, guess the title back when I see in the article, oh yeah, what if we pivot to Doctor Doom? That'll fix things. <laughs> it's just like, you, 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 you know, fucked. you know what they <laughs> need <laughs> to understand that that wouldn't solve anything is a multiverse, but an actual one where we could show them like, here's the inflection point. You chose Galactus in universe one. You chose Doctor Doom in universe two, Mephisto in universe three, uh, Kang in four, and you show them all of them and they all fail. And it's like, wait a minute. How did that happen? Like, How is that possible? Left, right? That should have worked. And then I mean, they're like, people... were we supposed to bring back Obadiah Stane? You're like, no. <laughs> like, what you need yeah. to do? Obadiah Stane. It's, it's um, fucking right better. It's so simple. And, and of course, you know, the, the problem of the writing can be tied into other criticisms that I imagine that they're aware of, which is that the production, the way that these things are made is insane. They're made very quickly with incomplete scripts with the writers having no idea how their stories connect to other things and seemingly just not being very good at their jobs anyway. Like, yes, I don't know. The, so, like, I imagine that if they made less stuff, that would probably just invariably help, but it wouldn't, like, fix the problem necessarily if there's no they recognition of the flaws in the writing. Based on, like, them having real talent and having produced real, yeah, but, like, uh, yeah, like but real movies. But I guess that's not how it works. Well. Well, we've talked about it before, but there's no world where, like, Steven Spielberg would make a Marvel movie because he'd want to make it his way. And, like, you kind of can't do that. Like, when you make Marvel movies, at, at the end of the day, it's it's got to slot into their universe. The Which seems like a small... It, it legitimately seems like a small thing to ask, um, uh, considering it, how broad it is and how much stuff you can do with that. Just be like, hey, it just it's part of a cinematic universe. It needs to slot in with the rest of the films and the series, but other than that, you can do whatever you want as Which, long as it's uh, not, it doesn't contradict anything else. Especially I if you think... gave him like the first entry of a new introduced hero that they're doing. Yeah, no, that's uh, like that's. I I think it might be what ends up helping DC is that it seems like they might try to be more director oriented, but again, you still need them good scripts, you know. <laughs> like I have good scripts, yeah. Because at this point, the MCU feels like an anchor that every movie is going to have to either drag around with it mm. or just forget about. And Well, they usually opt to forget, don't they? Let's Normally, say. they just forget. Um, they, it's, it's definitely the buffet where they just pick out the sort of things that they want and the rest they just ignore, which ultimately doesn't create, you know, a plausible cinematic universe. So, quote, Marvel is truly fucked with the whole Kang angle, says one <laughs> oh, top geez. dealmaker who's seen the final Loki episode. And they haven't, quote, and they haven't had an opportunity to rewrite until very recently because of the WGA strike, which, uh, but I don't see a path to how they move forward with him. Yeah, that's very, uh, I mean, mm -hmm. they want to know, the, 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 it's funny because we talk about all these potential decisions, but like the big thing is just they need to know the conclusion of the, the case itself, right? The event itself, whatever which, the fuck uh, is going on with them. Before we can make any decisions, and that's hard enough, we have to wait, which is also very difficult when they're possibly in their most tumultuous era ever, and every decision now matters incredibly. And especially when you gotta remember the broader consequences of the writers and actors strike. Is It's not just like Marvel stuff, it's a bunch of productions for all of the studios. They, they like that's that's delays that's money that you're not making this year but making next year which is important like that shit matters uh to investors it's it, yeah it, it's uh it's a tumultuous time for the industry in general mm -hmm. yeah you know uh all the covid stuff that happened obviously the strikes there's there's all there's yeah. all kinds of uh let's call them third party events and elements that are crushing down on this thing that was already destroying itself well, Rags, you're up. All righty. Uh, beyond the bad press for majors, the brain trust at Marvel is also grappling with the November release of The Marvels, a sequel to 2019's blockbuster Captain Marvel that it has been plagued with lengthy reshoots and now appears likely to underwhelm at the box office. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, you could say that. You could say that. That it looks like it's going to underwhelm with the box I was, office. I was about to say you that's could... uh, that's a nice way to put it. I was like, no, no, no. Actually, wait, because underwhelm 
is probably what it will do because it's not we don't expect it to whelm at all. Nobody's expecting any whelming, um, so it will under that nobody, probably. Well, so if the projections are accurate, you know, long yeah. term, this might actually end up being the first because, like, there isn't there does there doesn't seem to be like a full acknowledgement of Ant Man being like a flat out failure. It's definitely a disappointment, but like whether or not it is a failure is kind of like wishy-washy for whatever reason even though which is already uh, bad news that's yeah. already bad uh, when we say failure we don't mean in terms of meeting the expectations which is really important but just flat did it make Being its money red. back yeah yeah um whereas the marvels might actually be like the first true like bomb it bomb. might actually what you could call a money. clean like bomb instead of you know oh well you, you consider this consider this it's like no no, no this no, seems no, to be no, obvious yeah like Matter we spent a lot of money to lose a lot of money it, it, yeah, that it could lose money and that there's really, you can't point to big, like COVID, that's not, that you can't use stop that. Stop blaming like, COVID. Bobby, it's not Bobby, been an excuse for like a year Bobby, plus now. You, you need know, to Bobby stop. Made no, you can't. One, yeah, no. No, no, there's so many movies that have made so much money. Oppenheimer chugged along. Well, surely the comparison would be No Way Home. That's the easiest one to be like in your yeah, own franchise with the superheroes. Exactly. Like it's. And as much as it's like, yeah, but it's Spider Man, it's like, okay. <laughs> but yeah, still. Okay, but, uh, Oppenheimer but, was 947. There was million. no Spider Man in Oppenheimer, was going. there? The reason, the reason why it's relevant, though, the Spider Man one, is because Captain Marvel nearly made as much money as Far From Home, because that was back when Marvel movies were guaranteed to make right, like yeah. a billion dollars. To go from. Yeah. And it's interesting because Aquaman's probably in the same position. I still can't fathom how that made a billion dollars, but. Like, it's probably in the same position where it's going to come out, and it may well make less than half of the money that it made first time around. Also, less Dev's in chat. I wouldn't Hello. be surprised at all. Hi, Dev. Hello. We're talking about the destruction uh, of Disney. Yep. Um, wait, wait, who's next? Do you think, so, how are, how are we sitting on our, because we, we've kind of had a very soft-running prediction for the Marvel's box office. Uh -huh. um, I think fairly early on, I was a bit more pessimistic than most, and I was floating around as a as an estimate, uh, a, a about a three hundred fifty million dollar number, um, which uh, was which is low. I admit, I I yeah. I think yeah, I I think that at the time I was like the lowest in terms of the guesses amongst who we were with, but as months drag on, there was that element of like oh shit, like that's not unreasonable. Um. I think I was at like five hundred million. That yeah, seems I think like so. that seems like it was too high. Uh, it's almost certainly going to make less money than that at this point. Yeah, so it, a the, it has, God, that might actually be. Really I know close. it sounds hyperbolic, but I'm pretty sure it has basically everything working against it. This is going to be so um, interesting because it's fucked. Like, and this is and this is after Dune moved out of the way. Dune was meant to come out. True, it's like, supposed to come out like last ago. week. And oh, it was going to okay. have all the, all the IMAX screens, but the problem is that it's still competitive because it's November. Movies, movies are coming out right now. Like it's only going to have. I think that new, I think that new Hunger Games movie's coming out the week after, but I don't think that film's going to do. <laughs> no, really I don't well think either. people care about um, it. We'll see though. But uh, but all yeah, those, all we, the kids who watched Hunger Games, they're grown up now. They don't care. <laughs> I feel like we're <laughs> well past the era of the young, young adult, adult action movies, and science yeah. fiction. At, yeah, let me yeah. let me actually double check the. So the numbers for uh, this is the projection from the Hollywood Reporter for the Marvels was that it would earn seventy to eighty million oh. in its opening weekend in North America. Wait, because Thunder just well, said I, at least you have the dude skins in Call of Duty. Did they release that as part of a promotion? They uh, couldn't stop it, or maybe they couldn't. Yeah. Oh, some of these, some of these, uh, some of these things, the, the, like the promotions for games are really they just they baffle me. I guess some yeah. Dune makes a lot more sense because um, of the movie and it was pretty big, made a lot of money. Um, there's one going on, because I, I play Apex Legends sometimes, they have a Post Malone, like, skin sale that they're going to be doing, <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck, what does Post Malone have to do with, what, whatever, whatever, this is, I don't know, this is fucking shit, yeah. whatever, get your Supreme skins. Might be worthwhile to, just to, for reference, because I guess this is tangential to the article, so Hollywood yeah. Reporter... The this is so the tracking for the Marvels was basically around about yeah seventy five to eighty million dollars domestic debut, which I believe is half of what Captain Marvel made in its opening weekend. Let me and see. Eighty can... million is still a lot. It's a lot of money, but the problem is when you're spending over two hundred million dollars on production alone. <laughs> 
uh, and you know, <laughs> and and you make most of your money in that opening weekend, especially for the for these types of like superhero movies. They make a the lot of the ones that money are not going to get weekend. a lot of. Like, there's not going to be a lot of people out there saying, yeah, you really got to go see the Marvels. That keeps it like, again, Oppenheimer started oh. kind of slow, but it got to 947 million because it just kept going. Oppenheimer was definitely like, Oppenheimer had a really good opening, but it was definitely long term. Like that, that was what carried it through was that like people Top kept Gun. Going back. I guess, I guess this is the relevant information in terms of. Yeah, the the last the last Marvel movie that didn't open a seventy million or more was Ant Man One in twenty fifteen. Um, the majority opened to a hundred million or more domestically. Eight movies made one hundred and fifty million dollars domestically in their opening weekend, and compared to Guardians Three, which you saw where that ended up, opened uh, to one hundred and six million domestic. So it's below that, obviously. Which uh, do you guys see considering the... the Captain Marvel is above that is interesting. The uh, someone just messaged me and said the Final Fantasy XIV um, had a Fall Guys crossover and have had multiple KFC crossovers. <laughs> he plays the Colonel. <laughs> I don't know. I hope so. Maybe he fries chocobos or something. Oh um, my god! Yeah, either of you aware of what uh, Marvel Entertainment, the YouTube channel, did as promotion for the Marvels? Like, I think two days ago. I saw the tweet. Um, no. So I'm not talking just about cats in general. This was a stream where there was oh. clearly like three-ish people, maybe, that were probably given a lot of money to set up a room and to, to paint or to put up things that made all of the windows and open doors green screens so that they could put a space graphic in background that looked awful. And there was cats running around the room, and they had a camera that just either auto-followed or they had someone just looking at cats just doing cat things. And then every, like, half an hour, they would have an unboxing where a person who comes on screen, they, you can't see their face. It's, like, cut to their neck. And I wouldn't then they want would, my face in that either, to be They, like, so. fiddle with the boxes. They're, like, doing really weird hand gestures on all of the boxes but to delay opening them as, as, like, long as possible. And then eventually reveal, like, Captain Marvel Funko Pop. And then they just put cats on the table and make the cats walk around the Funko Pop. And they played, like, space music. And it was so fucking Space creepy. Music. Yeah, just like, for lack of a better description, it's like uh, ethereal, almost like space-ish music. It, it was kind of just, it was just fucking weird. Um, okay, I think I know what you mean. And uh, I caught like, I want to say 20 minutes of it, and I was just like, this is fucking pathetic. And they went down to 300 viewers at one point. And I was just Ooh. like... And there were people in chat, there was one message I sent to uh, Gary, because it, it was so fucking cringy. It was some, some account that just said... Um, Hooray, can't wait for the release of the Marvels. We're all very excited. Hooray. Okay. I was like, are you, is that a human? Someone, <laughs> someone's <laughs> check cleared. <laughs> it just doesn't sound at all real. And I was like, fuck me, man. Like, what is going on? And I was like, did they, is that part of the marketing budget? You paid for this? Like, how much did you pay for um, this? The really concerning part is that it probably wasn't even cheap. That's what I was it thinking. Was because you have I was like, to imagine it costs the... like five hundred thousand or something fucking absurd. Like, you gotta pay <laughs> people to do it, to, to actually be the ones to do it. Then you have to pay all the people to set it up. Then you have to get the set. Then you have to handle all the cats. And then you have to arrange the Funko this and that and all the deals with Funko Pop to do that. Um So I I yeah, mm. I don't know. It's strange. But it probably costs more than you think, because there's always going to yeah, be a legal this, yeah, and there's yeah, always going to be a you don't, advisory board and a supervision team. It often only comes up here and there, but like it's not just whether you have marketing. It's how good the marketing is. Exactly. It, you can have really bad marketing. We've talked before, in the past, there have been trailers for movies that have sold movies the complete wrong way. I think one of the more recent ones is the Dungeons & Dragons trailer. Made everyone it think the movie was going to be absolutely terrible, but the movie itself yeah, I, is still getting praised to this right. day. Yeah, I've heard the movie's all right, but the trailer was trash. It misrepresented no, it, and it's like, fuck me. And you get you usually get that in the opposite, where the trailer's really good, and then the movie's like really shit. And you're like, oh. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh, I'm next, aren't I? Uh, hmm. Sure. This is an this is all an unprecedented turn of fortune for a company that has enjoyed a nearly uninterrupted string of hits ever since it started independently producing movies uh, with 2008's Iron Man. That wildly profitable run culminated in the $2.8 billion success of 2019 Avengers Endgame, a high-water mark for the studio that has earned nearly $30 billion over 32 films. 
I just like that there's multiple ways that we can analyze it, that it goes from Iron Man to Endgame, and then something else happens. Because like that, mm. even though there's, there, it's not true, like that loads of people would say, that's where the story ends. It's like, no, it ends at Infinity War, right? That's what everybody should probably yeah. choose. Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, End okay, but that's bad, the last time they had like a huge profit. And it's like, I don't know, No Way Home is still kind of, not like it doesn't go to them, oh, but it's still, um, in terms of a movie nope. making loads of money and having a cultural impact, it's like, it's not yeah, just yeah. stops well, at Endgame. And, yeah. and also, you know, Multiverse of Madness was successful. Yeah, yeah it was. Quite successful. Um, it, maybe not as successful as they were, maybe they were hoping it was going to be just over a billion, but it was certainly successful. I mean, Thor Love and Thunder was technically successful, <laughs> technically. Uh, Black Panther Wakanda Forever was technically successful, though, again, that one also made considerably less than the first one. Yeah, and no one talks about it. No, no one talks, talks about, about any it. of these movies. They nope. just, they are, they are, you know, smoke in the wind. They just pass away. What would be really cool is to take your average sort of huge Marvel fan and just be like, name me all the projects of Phase 4 and see, there's going to be the types that could name it all instantly, but there's also going to be people who are like, oh, they were, oh wow, it was... Because Wakanda Forever might be Whoa. one that I forget to say, just because it's so unmemorable. Well, I think some people would say Quantumania, and you'd be like, nope. Let's, oh, uh, that's Phase 5. And you'd be like, oh, all right, right, right. Oh. And That's right. What, wait, what, Wakanda Forever was the last of Phase Four. Yes, okay. that was a lot. Well, it, obviously, because the the line between uh, Black Panther Two okay. and Quantumania was so clear. It was such a like a great yeah. sort yeah, of handoff that's... between phases. Yeah, it's like I don't know. Something happened at the end of that. I don't know. It's, it's, <laughs> I don't know. There's no no sense that we've moved from one phase to another. I've seen a no. bunch of people in chat being like, "Hooray! I'm watching EFAP today. Hooray!" Like, yeah, they should yeah. say that. Good on you. <laughs> you know those right. are genuine. Yeah. Right. Um. Yeah. Okay. So replicating that kind of phenomenon is never easy. However, the source of Marvel's current troubles can be traced back to 2020. Uh, arguably, you could trace it back way further, but that's okay. That's when COVID pandemic ushered in a mandate to help boost Disney's stock price with an endless torrent of interconnected Marvel content for the studio's fledgling streaming platform, Disney+. Plus. According to the plan, there would never be a lapse in superhero fare, Ugh. with either a film in theaters or a new television series streaming at any given moment. You can tell that. There's loads of these weird handoffs, like Loki to the Marvels is the newest one, obviously. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, what are you doing? Like the one, the, was it the same day that the penultimate episode of Mando came out with Rise of Skywalker? They were going to do this with Star Wars yeah, as well. The, yeah, because the penultimate episode of Mando introduced Force Healing. Which helps justify it in Rise of Skywalker <laughs> according to their insane brains. <laughs> That's yeah. totally how that works. Um, it is interesting because the, the, the talk of lots and lots of, because I, I, I remember I read another article, damn, I can't remember what it was from, it was one of these trades, um, that was talking about how following the writer's strike, there is absolutely going to be less scripted television shows that, like, the era of the last, you know, five, six years where there's been an absolute, like, torrent of scripted, high-budget television shows for, like, streaming platforms and cable, that that is definitely going to be winding down. Um, partially because, I guess, the broader thing is that not all of these streaming services are going to survive. A They're lot not, of them lose I mean, money. Disney's They're already looking to buy Hulu, right? Well, they and had Disney partial... Plus itself isn't doing hot at all. Disney had partial ownership of Hulu, but now they're going to get full ownership. I guess it's it's like, is there space for Paramount Plus or Peacock or... I think Peacock's in uh... huge trouble. I think they've lost a shit ton of money. I don't know. I mean, was there a single fucking high level executive that instead of looking at the pandemic years as an all time high that was obviously going to shrink, like se seemingly all of them looked at it as like year one of an exponentially growing force? Well, um, you, that, that's like the people with uh, like DoorDash and all of that. It's the same thing. They got a huge boost from that kind of that entire sector of the market from, you know, the people not going out and ordering in. And now here we are, and it's like, good luck turning a profit well, yeah, out, if it's even uh, possible to turn a profit with that kind of a business now. Because we're seeing as well that the tech sector is starting to uh, contract. Uh, lots of layoffs are happening as well, because there was a tremendous amount of growth in the tech yeah. sector. And People are going like back outside. Also, yeah, and as some people are saying in chat, it's like, I'm aware that that's what you want for a company, but you have to recognize the... Like the well, streaming numbers didn't. There's no. There's no like. Oh, we earned X in this year, the pandemic year. And next year it's gonna be X times two and times three. And it's like no, no. You need to account for the fact that this is going down. 
You should have treated it like a gift. Yeah, because yeah. um, something that I've been thinking about a lot, uh, which I guess, you know, we could talk about more later on, is the, um, I don't, I, when I, when I wonder if Marvel is doomed, what I wonder is if, if they're at like a point where they can't really fix these problems, it's kind of like they feed into each other, so it's like a negative feedback loop. So like, for instance, one of the criticisms is that Marvel productions look cheap and bad. Um, the when only they are way not that you, cheap. They're not cheap. The only way that, and so the only way you can fix that problem is, well, you got to spend more money. Surely you got to spend, you either got to spend more money or cut back on the scope. Um, but like, where are you going to get that money from? Are you going to pay the actors less? Because if you pay the actors less, I would imagine that some of them would be like, well, I'm not very interested in being part of this series. I'm not going to get paid a lot of money. Like, what is the kind of thing that would motivate someone to be part of Marvel rather than essentially do something that they would consider like more valid, I guess, as like a, as a means of artistic expression. You know what I mean? Like, like it, 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 I imagine that a big incentive to do Marvel films is you get paid a lot of money. Um, but that there would be other things. A lot of these actors would rather be doing in terms of creativity. And so it's like, you're going to pay them less. That's probably not like viable. Uh, but you're making less money, so where are you going to get the money from anyway? Do you know what I mean? Like, I wonder if it's even like the kind of thing that you can actually reverse. Well, then factor easily. in strikes as well, and the yeah. that's right. Unions. I mean, you've got the... yeah. Uh, I mean, like Hemsworth is saying, like he'll only do another Thor movie if they fucking treat his character seriously, or else he's just out. He's doing his own thing. It's like I'm going to go make Extraction Three or yep. you know, any other movie that I'm going to do. <laughs> so Extraction Four, which extraction by the way, five. it's like I'm. <laughs> Unironically, I was like, "Hey, Extraction Three, I'm all for it. it keep, yeah, you keep doing oh, it, man." Something that I wonder in terms of exacerbating, because I'm seeing people say, well, more time. It's like, yeah, but part of the problem is I'm pretty sure that they still, Disney wants Deadpool 3 to come out in May. That film is half That's finished. Nuts. Absolutely like, nuts. They haven't finished shooting that film and they still want it in May. And it's like, do you know why the reason for that is? The reason why is because they want to make some fucking money. <laughs> but like, <laughs> like, like, I don't know if they're going to actually want to take time when they've just spent three months not making anything. Like, you know what I mean? I, I wonder if it's if that's going to further exacerbate the problems as well. Um, no, I, I have to I use know. the loo. I'll be right back. So just let you know. No problem, okay, well, then, though. He I was next, so I guess it goes All to you right, again, Fringy. Right. We'll, we'll just loop back around. Deadpool 3 got delayed. Is it delayed? Am I going to look it up on Wikipedia oh, well, right now? I assume part of your point for you was that it's inevitably going to be delayed. Like it was, it was... It's inevitably going to be delayed, but the yeah. fact that they don't want to delay it, and they'll probably only delay it by a few months because they want it out. They want to get it out. Yeah, it's still, it's still scheduled for the 3rd of May. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, anyway, but the ensuing tsunami of spandex proved to be too much of a good thing. See, I'd, well, we could talk about it. And the demands of churning out so much programming tax the Marvel apparatus. Well, that's true. Moreover, the need to tease out an interwoven storyline over so many disparate shows, movies, and platforms created a muddled narrative that baffled viewers. Yeah, so this is like the kind of point that I would point to as, yeah, so if, if this is what they actually believe, then I don't know that they'll properly fix the problem because it's not the fact that they're trying to tease out an interwoven story over many disparate shows. It's actually that none of them are even talking to each other. Yeah, none, so them, everything none of the shows are aware of each other. They contradict each other. Like, it's, it's, not, it's not overly complicated because it's so intricate and so well-formed and you need to be paying attention to every... You pay attention to every detail, it breaks. It just keeps breaking. You, the way I, you build something like this, they, they've made it seem almost impossible. And a lot of people talk about it that way. It's like, oh, there's inevitability that it would fall apart. It's so big. And it's like, you control for the big and scary um, variables, but the rest is mostly straightforward. When you have like, um, you just need to keep creating scenarios where in a bubble, your character can do and say anything and it wouldn't affect anything anywhere else. It's It all lines up in continuity. When it's like, you know, I don't want to say Loki because it's too difficult to fix. It yeah. shouldn't exist. Um, but WandaVision... That was probably going to be fine. You don't. That doesn't need to affect any. You, when you have a big magical event happening in this small town, it's like okay. So you have. Uh, I don't know how much time before the police should be notified, but it's probably going to be you know anywhere between days and a, and two weeks or something. That's like the timeline we'd be allowing for, because there's people in that town that will now not be able to contact loved ones, and then the police will be made aware. So like I said, probably days. And then when the police are there, that means that more and more people around the world will get to know it. And that's when Doctor Strange has to be called in. He's the magic supreme man, and it's a magic event. This is kind of what I'm trying to get at, is like, what by being in the MCU will be needed to be taken care of by having a story of a, a, a witch or whatever the fuck going mad and uh, creating a an illusory state in, in a small town in the middle of America? It's like, well, 
probably those things. That's, that's, that's the thing you have to stick to. And then you're fine. You can make anything happen in that dome. Anything, really. As long as it's not like, mm. you know, <laughs> breaks the universe. And that's kind of what I'm getting at. They treat it as though, if they collect all of the discontinuity that would exist at this point and lay it out on the sheet, they'd be like, look at this, impossible. And it's like, yeah, but all of these things were done one by one by idiot writers who didn't remember they needed to take care of it. That's all. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, because I would say that, again, I still don't think that this speaks to the core of the problem, but I think a more apt argument would be that there was actually a lack of forward momentum that yeah. it's unclear where things are heading. Not that it's getting too complicated to follow, but rather that very little has been achieved over the course of several films because they have their story that contradicts other stories but doesn't really connect to them either. Like, it doesn't build anything for them. It only builds its own stuff while breaking other things. And now, how many... Tw a dozen projects later, is anything really any closer to culminating in big, relevant crossover stories? I don't know about that. I just, I don't like the idea that it's confusing because there's a lot of it. It's confusing because it doesn't make any sense. It's fucked. It's, it's bad. It's just badly written. Um, but I can definitely, but I mean, the idea that having to make this much stuff tax the Marvel apparatus, I mean, obviously, yeah. Like, it's stretched thin. And you know, uh, it holds I, true, always will, that even, even the current state of either Star Wars or uh, Doctor Who or uh, the MCU, you could still repair it back. You always can. Yep, you can. But I don't think they will. No, uh, I don't think they... they you might be able to say, I don't think they can. Like, um... It's possible but for, the Mar for Marvel too. But again, for as long as they think, oh, it's the bad CGI that's a problem. Oh, it's that there's too many. Sp that there's too many. Not how they're made, but that there's too many of them and it's confusing people. As long as this is like the, the attitude that they have, I don't think that they're going to fix the problem. There's a lot of crushing forces that will prevent them from doing so, but if there was like a 0.01% chance of them doing it, it would just be like knuckling down and making a really solid movie and then slapping it into the MCU. And it doesn't even, yeah. might even contradict some stuff, but as long as it's really good, you'll be like, wow, that was good. <laughs> and then you're like, all right, all right, we've, we've got a spark there. There's some people who are like, that one was good. That one. And then if you exactly. make another one, be like, okay, I like, and then if it's a character that was in both of those movies that's new, be like, I like that character. Like, ah, 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 getting there. Got to right. cheap chipping at it. Exactly. Um, I was thinking as well, like, enough with the goof. We got to go, start going serious uh, again. Um, yes, but not, not what they did with Secret Invasion where they pretend no, no, it's no, serious, yeah. but it's still, it's still a clown show. Like, you know, closer to something like Iron Man 1, where it takes itself serious. It's still got, you know, the, the comedy, and it's still got the laughs, and it's, it's still got, like, just the cool factor. But it is trying to tell a story you know, about a character going on an arc. Because, you know, like, if it was really well written, but also a comedic romp, I'd be like, okay, that's fine, but, like, we should probably start um, making it a bit, have some serious entries again, so that people can yeah. maybe think about this on a more significant level than la 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 la, it's just a clown show, even if it is well written I mean, comedy. Because I was thinking, like, um, you know, who would you who would you bring, Fringy? Who would you be bringing in to fix okay. this villain wise? I assume we'd be getting rid of Kang anyway. <laughs> like, he's so oh, sad. It, oh, so like, if the wizard told me you got to get rid of Kang, you need to find someone else as a um. But the, he gets to be. I say he, she. I guess if <laughs> if if so was preferred, I can't think of any. Be, yeah. yeah, but it, who would you want to bring in yourself? Who would I personally want? And. I guess baked into it is that they're actually going to be like a great villain, well written, and everything. Yeah, that's uh, a good I'd, question. I'd want, I'd, I'd want I'd want Doom, or I think I'd want Magneto. Uh, I'd want to I'd want to go in one of those two directions. Beginning I'm the X Men. I would arc. almost um want to earn the X Men, and, and what I mean by that is like I'm going to try and repair everything. I'll cut a few things out, but yes, I'd want to go with Doom as well. And I'd want yeah the first time we meet him, he's going to have to kill one of the main like, uh, Avengers. Yes. The you got to do the same thing that they did with Thanos before they undid everything. His yeah. first scene is him killing Loki, and then he killed and he killed Heimdall, and then he killed. Yeah. Like, well, you already picture like a, a a good old fight with maybe yeah. Avengers style music happening, but slowly like they're all losing, and then the the soundtrack cuts out, and then yes, you, kills you one gotta, of them. You got. I I think that's the yeah. You got to make him threatening. You got to have him. Because it's as has been pointed out, the fact that Kang got defeated by Ant Man pretty pretty yeah. easily, honestly. It's not great in terms of making him intimidating, but like imagine if imagine if he just showed up and he he killed like one of the Avengers, and and it was easy. It wasn't even that difficult for him. Or he um, has a really really effective and scary army that can do that sort of thing. 
that he commands yeah. and controls. I'm always like, if you, it's like the whole like, what if stormtroopers were actually like lore accurate, shall we say? You know, if they were like really scary, and when a stormtrooper shows up, when a star destroyer shows up, you're like, oh fuck, we have to go now. Like this is actually a terrible thing to happen. I'm I'm chill with armies, but I'd always prefer it when they have like um, lieutenants. Um, and they kind of yeah, did that with I, Infinity yeah, yeah. War and then waste them in Endgame, right? Like the... I agree, yeah. The I, I forget their names, but I remember them. Like as, you know... Yeah, mini-bosses, you know? Love I mean, mini-bosses. This was kind of the... This was one of the reasons why uh, Worf in Star Trek uh, kind of gets an unfair shake with a lot of people who think that he's kind of a pushover because so often in episodes, Worf would be the one who gets tossed around by the big evil villain of the episode. But it was to establish that, well, if this, this bad guy, this force can take on Worf and beat him up, then, you know, he's, he means business. Worf was just the, you know, the unfortunate um, recipient yeah, yeah. of that kind of an establishment of stakes. Did all you know right. that Worf is the most, uh, he has the most occurrences in all Star Trek? What does that mean? He's in more Star Trek episodes oh. and shows. I think that he has, there's more Worf than anyone else. In Star I thought you were going to say like occurrences or, is some kind of Star Trek thing, like incursions or something. <laughs> so no, I that something that I would add on the villain side is it's one of Marvel's biggest problems is they keep killing off their villains. Um, I would, I think if I was, if, if I got to do it over again, there'd be a lot of villains I would keep around. Um, but moreover, if we were going with the angle of doom, I'd want the lieutenants, you know, enforcers or whatever to be like, other villains so that it all kind of like that you can yeah. keep them and have them as elements shows... that he's kind of manipulating behind the scenes that all lead up to him. And it shows progress towards working towards the main villain, where yeah. killing one of his lieutenants is like we've we've beat a mini boss. Well, we yeah, have made cause... progress, you yeah. Know, yeah, forwards. You know, like that's a big deal. Like, you could know, you imagine it would, it would just be like I don't know, like Doom highest Taskmaster, but actual Taskmaster to get something for him, and then he encounters one of the heroes, and then that's like how you set up a bit of a threat of hmm, is there something that's being worked towards here? But keep Taskmaster around, you know, so that he absolutely can show up again um, later. You know what I'm thinking about with the lieutenants thing building up to the main boss, uh, Zabi and the Chief? I forget which oh, specifically yeah, yeah. the season Chaos is. Yeah, it's yeah, season yeah. Six. Oh, I love that sense of progression, taking them all out one by one, and then going for the king sort of thing. Yeah, no, it's, it's great. And, I mean, one of the cool things that he did was that when they actually go for the, the big bad, they take him out, like, pretty easily. Yeah. It's nice Subversive. and Subversive! The point being that it's like it's just a good narrative structure to employ of working up towards uh something grander, but but getting all of those other people to be characters themselves that represent different um you know, different different angles that you can go with. But but it's but like I, beating I, I Saruman. Get... Like it's a big deal to win at yeah. Helm's Deep, to defeat yeah. Saruman and his army, and everyone's like, Oh, we get a bit of a we get a little of a, a bit of a break here. We get a little bit of breath. We did a good job. We've made progress. And that's, but there's still the big evil guy to go. But like we're clearly we've made some progress here. That's why I'm chill with some. with armies as well. Because you remember uh, Resident Evil Village? I like the lieutenants aspect in that. It's just we also felt they they were wasted in a lot of ways. But you know if you have one that's like a big brawler, then another one that's not really powerful, kind of really intelligent, and has a bunch of puppeted like creatures that it'll send at you. And it's like oh that's a way to implement armies in some yeah, ways. Yeah, because remember we. Got that in Infinity War. We had, you know, Squidward. You know, we had the... Yeah, he, right. he wasn't really martial, but he had the telekinesis powers that he yeah. used very effectively. Then we had the others who were like... They were fighters. You know, they had weapons. They could leap around and jump up and down, and they'd fuck you up, you know? And they had epic they were very edge names, like Colvis Glaive and Proxima Midnight. Gosh. That's right. They got edgy names. <laughs> <laughs> those are those are pretty... I wouldn't Cull want to fight named Proxima Glaive. Squidward was the best one, though, name-wise. Even though that's not his name, but what it is now. <laughs> what about uh, uh, what was the what what was the uh, what's Darth Maul's brother? Savage Oppress. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> we always come back to him. <laughs> he's Savage he's always waiting there. <laughs> he's Chef's Kiss. What a beautiful name! I Wonderful. think his parents set him up to be a villain. I don't even blame him. Yep. Somehow, out of the uh, four, I think I do like Ebony more the most. Yeah, I think I like that one the most. All right, anyway, uh, I guess it's back to me. You uh, next. Yeah. Whoa, the Marvel machine was pumping out a lot of content. Did it get to the point where there was just too much and they were burning people out on superheroes? It's possible, says Wall Street analyst Eric Handler, who covers Disney. 
Quote, the more you do, the tougher it is to maintain quality. They tried experimenting with breaking in some new characters like Shang-Chi and the Eternals uh, with mixed results. With budgets as big as these, you need home runs. Kind of We've certainly discussed the Marvel, the superhero fatigue. That's That's popped up more than a few times over the years. And I think it really does come down to the fact that if they were good, there would be no fatigue. Nope, I don't think so. Well, you know, like, uh, the more you do, the tougher is made to like, I do agree, but, like, I don't, I feel like they fumbled hard. Like, this was ridiculous. Uh, I mean, to go, f I mean, I don't know that I've seen a streak this bad in terms of quality ever of yeah. just releasing, like, 12 projects that, with one outlier, like, were, like, twos, threes, and some of them ones out of ten. That's unbelievable by our standard, obviously. It's, but, it's yeah. their entire process of picking who makes these things that's just totally fucked. Um, I mean, when, yeah. when, when, when we talk about, um, let's see, what was it? Back in the kind of 50s to 70s, there, all the shows like Gunsmoke, Bonanza, Little House on the Prairie... It was super, at least in the United States, Westerns were everywhere. Always Westerns, Western movies, Western shows. It was the age of the Westerns. And slowly but surely, they started to kind of die out. They turned into like cop procedurals and things of that nature. But I don't think that that shift happened because people started getting, I don't think that all the Westerns were just like shit all of a sudden and people started hating them. I think it's just, oh, this is a thing that's also happening, and then it's just more of a, like, a more organic kind of healthy shift to a different sort of thing. Yeah, compared to an utter collapse in uh, three years. Like, that's, Yeah, yeah, it's I not like, I'm... yeah, you, you didn't just get three years of horrifically bad, uninteresting characters and stories that make people just yearn for anything else. Marvel's reign could have been longer. I think it would have ended no matter what, but, like, they, they killed it themselves so much sooner than it had to die. I, oh Absolutely. yeah, I, I totally think so. Absolutely. If they would have, like I said, if it was just, if it was just banger after banger, if like half of their movies were good, not even great, good. If we're talking six, seven out of tens, and that was half their movies, they could keep trucking along and we'd keep watching them and probably enjoying them. Yep. Yeah, I, like I, me, uh, the six and sevens, they're fun. Yep. Yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> we, why, I mean, what was our, like, underwater, right? Like, the quintessential, uh, like, 6 out of 10 yeah, or whatever. So. We're just like, oh, this is neat. I really enjoyed that. I'm glad I watched it. Not to be the I hate rags guy, but the dog is annoying and has zero insight. True. Oh my God. <laughs> True. Oh. Luckily, I got these two guys to carry me through to victory. Unfortunately, I have seen that. It is now your turn That's to talk, true. rags. Your turn, rags. All right. Let me see. Um... The Marvels, which opened in theaters on November the 10th, will struggle to get the ball past the infield, at least by Marvel's outsized standards. For those of you in the chat, that is a baseball analogy. Have you, have you guys heard about baseball? Baseball is wonderful. Wait, what's an analogy? Oh, an analogy is like a thing that's like a thing, but not quite that thing. Oh, it's great. That means they didn't hit the ball very far. They didn't even get the ball to the outfield which is further away from the batter than the infield. All right. Just want to make sure everyone's up to speed on the baseball. There's some analogy. insight for you. There you go. The movie, which cost $250 million and sees Brie Larson reprising her role as Captain Marvel, is tracking to open to $75 to $80 million, far below the $185 million Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness took in domestically in its debut weekend last year. Yeah, like, I mean, there's, there's, there's no... Anything to deal with that is cope. There's no getting around that. That's also, dramatically less. There's got to be some kind of profound, depressing experience to be an actor or actress that's going through all of these different films in your career, some of indie, some of this, some of that. And then you're like, you, you know, someone says like, we, we made like, we got a million on this like thing that, you know, maybe would cost like a uh, hundred thousand or something. It's like, oh, wow. And then like, you're, you're Brie Larson, you complete this film several times because of reshoots. You don't know what the fuck's going on. You don't even know if you have a career with, with Marvel after this. And then someone says like, you're on track to make 80 million on the first day. That's terrible. <laughs> like, okay. It is a little it is all right. right to where making 75 to 80 million dollars isn't good enough. Um, like. That's still a good amount of money, but yeah, when you're spending $250 million on production alone, not including marketing, that's not good that, enough. 
it's yeah, the, just the this the super mega bloat of a lot of this stuff is um well, let's take a move. What was the uh, we saw Saw X recently, allegedly. Uh, um what mm-hmm. was the budget of Saw X? Uh, was that like, like 10 million bucks pretty yeah. And that's a, and it it never oh. felt cheap. I mean, remember, right? Like it's cuz it's interesting to think about cuz Saw cost a million dollars to make and made over 100 million. I mean, you go further back than that, Rocky like, I, didn't Rocky make, like, 10,000 times his budget? I could double check. 10,000? Uh, I, I think so. Like, Rocky was really... Yeah, because Rocky had a production budget of $960,000, and it made $225 million. <laughs> it did. Jeez. Yeah. Rocky two made $200 million. Rocky three made $270 million. Rocky four made $300 million. Rocky five made $120 million. Rocky Balboa won $56 million. And then Creed, Creed Two, and Creed Three made one seventy four million to fourteen million. Oh, Creed Three made two hundred and seventy five million. Is Creed Three the one where he fights why. Jonathan Majors? It is, I right? I think so. Yeah, yeah. But but I guess <laughs> it's, again, it's, it's interesting to look at the kind of money that these projects make because it's not it's not about how high the box office number is. The return on the investment is the is the most important metric. And it's um, and on the other side, it's not about being expensive. It's about not looking cheap. Oh, not yeah, dude. Um, I watched the yeah. movies that made us for Halloween. And apparently, like, of their very limited budget, they spent, I think they spent something like 40% of it on a camera. And they said, like, this camera, I forget the name of it, is going to make the movie not look cheap. That's, like, the whole point. 100%. Which Halloween yes. doesn't look cheap. Because all, all of us know children of the 90s that we are and in the 2000s it's kind of holds true that cheapy like there's just that camera yeah. that you're like oh this looks like a a 90s i don't even say like a 90s sitcom but like th- this looks like a cheap movie it opens up you get your first scene and you're like oh this is not this is a movie that's gonna look like this the whole time it just it has this gr- cheap I guess, look I guess to it that's kind of the funny thing though isn't it because like cheapness or lack thereof Joker had a budget of fit, you know, we keep it in the realm of, you know, comic book movies. Joker had a budget of fifty million dollars. That film doesn't look it looks better than Ant Man and the Lost Quantumania, which costs four times as much money. The um Well we can keep we can keep it to R rated superhero movies, right? Oppenheimer. Um oh, yeah. that <laughs> movie is a hundred million dollar budget. Yeah, and it looks and, fantastic. And think about how good it looks and the fact mm-hmm. that it's all period appropriate 30s to like 50s stuff all the sets all of the costumes outfits ever it looks totally you totally uh, buy into it 100 and it's a million i'm so dollars. glad Rags, i'm so glad you brought up oppenheimer because Anytime. i think it's a relatively well-known factoid that um a lot of the cast pay, uh, took less money than they would typically take for a film because of the desire to, you know, have a certain budget for Oppenheimer and because they were really passionate about making the film. How many how many Marvel actors would happily take a dramatic pay cut in order to be a part of these films? That's kind of like what I was talking That's... about before in terms of them being doomed. I don't know how many actors would be willing to be like, you know, I believe in this story so much that I'm willing to take less than half of what I would typically ask for because I like this movie. I don't think that would ever happen. I mean, the ones that might, I mean, for instance, let me ask you this. Do you think that, because we've mentioned him before, do you think Chris Hemsworth would take half the money if he was assured and confident that the next Thor movie would be very respectful to Thor as a character and treat him well? Oh, if he got assured of that, probably, but because I think he would. no guarantees. That's yeah, the but if, if he believed it to be the case, you know, I, I, I feel like he would, um... But maybe it's just because we're so we just live in a world where actors get paid these just insane sums of money. Um, and I'm not saying they do or don't deserve it, or that's a good or bad thing. It's just the way that you know it often is. On the um, sort of lower budget, scrappy stuff. Another thing about Halloween, uh, the shot in you know the sort of iconic. I guess we call it iconic when the uh, the kid is moving through the house, gets the mask, and then does the. Does the stuff uh, that that was done with a camera that had a I believe something like for each take they could only they had a maximum of three minutes because it was like um, a camera you, I forget the I don't want to get the name wrong of it but you know like you walk with it and it's one of the, the it was a lower budget one it was the best they could get and so basically they wanted a one take 
where they were following the kid. Like or, a cord? Or, uh, cord less, I think. Point is that like the, the they were limited to the point of having a steady cam. Would be it? Yeah, yeah. Um, Maybe it could only hold so much like actual like film. film yeah, like the, the, it was in limited it to that point. It was just out of film. Um, okay. And they had to come That's up with a way to have a cut, and they did it with the the kids, so to speak, in that scene, picking up a mask and putting it on, and so the swipe down with the the mask was they were able to chop together the two full takes of the one of them. I was just like fucking stuff like that. So cool. When uh, they're so hyper limited, extreme ways by technology, and then they come through and make something that like people remember forever. And to read a super chat ahead of time, it just said, "You just accidentally revealed the next Halloween arc, which is the Halloween films." I've revealed nothing, nothing oh. at all. You know what? You can speculate all you De want. Definitely, that's that's totally our next arc. Is how yeah. you, you got us. You sure did get us. Good, good job. You figured it out. <laughs> Uh, no. All right. <laughs> yep. You 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 did it. Yeah. The funny thing is, like, we um, keep it secret. No, but there's no real reason we do. <laughs> just, we like... have mentioned we've mentioned plenty of Halloween movies. Yeah, we've, we've talked we've about. Seen um... We've seen spooky movies before. Like like we see them. Yeah. You know? Anyway, who's next? What's happening? Uh, um, I am. I think Fringy's mm. up. Yeah. Directed by Nia DaCosta, the Marvels unites Larson's mm. heroine with two superpowered allies, Tayona. Per is it Tayona Paris, Monica Rambo, introduced in 2021 Disney Plus series WandaVision, and Iman Vellani's Kamala Khan, first seen in the 2022 series uh, Miss Marvel. But instead of seamlessly building on the success of Captain Marvel, this movie resulted in four weeks of reshoots to bring uh, coherence to a tangled storyline. It's kind of weird now that I think about it. Of the three heroines, um... One is Captain Marvel, the other is Miss Marvel, and the other is Monica Rambeau, and it's called The Marvels. Is she going to be called so, um, Photon in this? Uh, well, because it's... I, I have no idea. Um, no idea. But that's the name of the character right mm. there. But, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> Again, that's kind of part of the problem, right? Is people don't really know who these characters are. It, this one really doesn't Well, this is to... part of the list of things working against them. It's just like, this is not good, guys. We don't know what the fuck's going on. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I find the premise bizarre. You're, you, when it you is a very strange power, one. You switch places. That's a weird premise for a movie, but... Well, like, you know, in, if, if every... No heroes had died, and we were really healthily going along in the middle of the MCU's Phase 3... We had a movie where um, Doctor Strange, Iron Man, and Daredevil were going to team up. You could easily come up with a name that sort of recognizes that trinity of, you know, street level, low tech combat with super high tech, uh, billionaire man, and then Magic Man. It's like, oh, that's interesting. And they all have their hero names. And it's like, that would generate shit tons of hype. And the combination's mm. so cool. None of that is working for this. People don't even know who these well, people I are. Mean especially if the idea is that they're meant to be essentially it's kind of interesting that you point that out having characters who have very disparate sort of power sets and putting them together is kind of interesting compared to putting together characters with similar power sets and the quintessential fantastic I mean, four they're all totally different oh uh, yeah of course yeah. and x-men they've all got x-men yeah then again x-men has because it's something that i really like I think it's one of the things that X-Men's always had working in favor of it is that it's not, like, strictly beneficial necessarily, a lot of these powers. There's usually... Unless you Storm. Storm basically has, like, the best powers. You can just no control draw, the weather. No it's kind of incredible, yes. But, like, that people? the vast majority of them have some kind of, like, trade-off that's... You know, like, Cyclops can shoot lasers out of his eyes, but he also can never not yes, shoot lasers you out know? of his eyes. Yeah. Um, you know, Wolverine gonna... has, like, adamantium claws, super fast regeneration, but he's Canadian. Yeah, you have to have drawbacks. Say, um, it, it hurts, but, you know, there, there's that. But also that he outlives and outlasts everybody that he cares about. I forget where I um where I read this now, and that's why I want to be, like, careful saying it, because it's, um, it's very mean if not true, but I'm pretty sure it's true, and I wonder if uh, you've ever heard of it, Frankie, but um, Halle Berry getting convinced to... Oh, yeah, I heard about this. Be a part of, was it just this? be a part of X-Men 3, or is it something else? I think... I So... I, again, I, I think it was that she there were stipulations that she wanted in the story to be a part of X Men Three, and they said, "Yeah, we'll do that," and then didn't. But that's I don't know if that's true. I've heard about this though. Yeah, well, so the story that I heard, don't know if true, was that there was going to be a scene where she provided a shit ton of rain to like certain African countries or whatever, 
So, like, which sounds awkward and clunky as a scene in terms of trying to... That might be kind of something you don't want to go near with, Stor with Storm, because it'll make you ask a lot of questions about her, right? Like, should she be heading to every bad weather event and... <laughs> like just undoing it and then moving things to other things over. But as far as I'm aware, that something like that was promised and then it wasn't at all done. Um, yeah, but I, that I, like seems I said, like the I kind of thing that. that could get them in legal trouble if they had signed off on it and she didn't get it. That's what something. loopholes are for. I think the, the idea would be that you could always say, yeah, but I mean, there's changes in the script. That's always a part of the process of filmmaking. So, you know, but like I said, I don't know how true that is, but I did hear about that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. But she did get I, to I, be Catwoman, so you know. Th this really is like a weird team up movie, isn't it? Compared to like other team ups that would be more interesting to see. <laughs> Three oh, people, two people I don't know anything do about, it. and one person that I just like actually it's, um, hate. It's a crazy thing to think about that. This is kind of the first movie of this kind. The, the others will have guest stars. This feels like a team. Up. You know how um, there's loads of teams in across Marvel Comics history, right? Where oh, different yeah. characters That's got together. So yeah. And it was a cool thing in the um, in Ultimate Alliance and probably other games where if you made your squad comprised of a particular team from the comic books, you'd get a bonus. It would be like a plus something toward, and it's whatever that team did. And it's just like, oh, sweet. Mm -hmm. Reference and a tangible benefit. And uh, yeah, the this is just like, this is the first one. It's like, this is the team, the Marvels. It's like, what do you... Oh, and then, of course, bearing in mind that the second one is the Thunderbolts comprised primarily of just people who are like super soldiers or normal people. Does it not feel like the Thunderbolts in the MCU listings are basically comprised of... Uh, what's the word for this? When you are creating a product, and, like byproducts... Yeah, the byproducts of other films, and they're like, oh, fucking. Like, they the should be called the byproducts. Like, that's a team that's, name. That's all they have left because they killed off a lot of the other villains that they could have <laughs> yeah. had as a team. They, they should have again, called them the expendables. The thing is, like, why aren't there just more. Like, if it's really hard and expensive to get team up movies for whatever reason, why not just do what Deadpool, <laughs> even though, you know, we'll see how I People feel about that movie the, when it comes out. The leftovers yeah. would be a great team name. <laughs> <laughs> the leftovers. But, like, um, you know, why isn't there just, like, your buddy team-up movies like Deadpool and Wolverine going on an adventure, but, you know, like, yeah. you do it with other characters? I mean, an obvious pairing is Daredevil and Punisher, which, I mean, they, they did... The problem is I don't even know how much of that's going to be canon, whatever they bring forward, whatever the hell they got to do with that show anyway. But, like, why aren't there more of those sort of pairings? Um, when you want... It, it, I know it's, it's so much to ask, because we had... Yeah, well, like, we had a lot of Iron Man. Gandhi. Anyway, um, the, the nature of having Iron Man and... Doctor Strange having yeah. we got a little bit of it, but like a whole movie with them fucking hating each other and by the end working together to defeat maybe the Mandarin or something. Yeah, yeah one's exactly. technology, one's um, magic. They both have clashing yeah. personalities, but they're both good people at heart, and so we get to see them, you know, that develop. That's like something interesting. That and I the actual Mandarin, not whatever the fuck. No, not not Goober <laughs> Mandarin from Goober Man. Iron Man three. <laughs> okay. Um, um, anyway. Then eyebrows were raised again when DaCosta began working on another film while the Marvels were still in post-production. The filmmaker moved to London earlier this year to begin prepping for her Tessa Thompson drama, Hedda, a, uh, or Heather, maybe. Um, a representative for DaCosta declined to comment. Um, I've seen a few people say this is normal. I don't know if I'd buy that. Um, maybe it is. Maybe it is It's normal. complicated, right? If it because is normal, is that part of the problem? Something we know mm. um, as a... I was, it's, I'm not going to say fun fact, it's complicated. Uh, while working on Schindler's List, Spielberg was editing Jurassic Park, right? Ah, uh, that's true, yes, because it came out a year apart. To, but um, that might work if you're fucking Steven If you're Steven Spielberg. Spielberg. Well, that's the thing. I, um, well, I, I guess the thing would be, do you... Because you could think about, it was Quentin Tarantino in any way, shape, or film in active pre-production of one of his films while he was, like, editing one of his other films? You know, is that something that he's ever done? It's uh, I guess all I want to say is just that, like, we don't know the context exactly of this, but it's not... I don't think it could ever be seen as a, a plus, you know? Thing? Yeah. Well, I mean, because, I mean, I Steven Spielberg would have been working, like, 18, 20 hours a day, probably, yeah. like, with all of that. Um, And he's Steven Spielberg. You know? He is Steven Spielberg. He's, he's kind of the person most associated with film. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. There's there's just a certain vibe there where it's like, hmm, just doesn't seem like that's the way to do it. But you know, 
Um, let's see. I'll just finish because this first one's short. Um, if you're directing a $250 million movie, it's kind of weird for the director to leave with a few months to go, says a source familiar with the production. And that there's a lot of weight on the word leave. It depends on what that means exactly. Because, like, how involved uh, is, she? is she? Or is she just gone? I mean... I gotta imagine that she's still somewhat involved, right? But I also, guess not. I was actually sure, gonna go both directions just... with that. On that, that on one hand. On the other hand, it's Marvel. Maybe she is just out, you know, like because they don't need her. They're like, you're done. Your casting yeah, job we're, is we're complete. Good. We, you've shot the movie, sort of. I uh, will take, we'll take it from here. Yeah, from here, exactly. Uh, which is weird, uh, but. Well, and didn't she um... recently say in an interview that that is? Oh, damn, I, I'm pretty sure that I saw something where she basically said. Even as the director, you're not, like, fully in charge on a Marvel production. Yeah. Ah, damn, let me see if I can... Well, and some people are saying she left before shooting was completed as well. Really? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. If that's you're true, of course, yeah, there's more... But again, this, this uh... to be fair, this is probably not any, any different than how they've made most of their Phase 4 and 5 stuff. Probably, yeah, this might just be the first time we hear about it. I mean, well, it's not uh, even I mean, really, is I'm it? Like sure. the directors have not felt very directory with a lot of their films, uh, from what we get the few uh, pieces of information. Well, yeah, that's uh okay. So, ah, uh, damn. Um, let me see if I can find it. Oh, um, so she's the quote was, "It's a Kevin Feige production. It's his movie." Mm. So I think you live in that reality. But I tried to go in with the knowledge that some of you was gonna take a back seat. It's just an interesting. I mean, statement, not a great it? attitude to have if you're the director. Um, there was, um, you want to be the one to decide whose creative, you know, elements, you know, come in. There was a there was a comment of like, uh, like viral tweets about how we need to start letting the artists, you know, take full control and all that stuff. And it's just like I'm pretty sure, if not full control, close to it, got us uh, Love and Thunder and it got us Ahsoka. Right? These are projects created by creators that basically got everything they wanted. Um, mm -hmm. maybe they didn't care, or maybe they have something that we don't tend to agree with in terms of what they want. It's just like, are we ever gonna... <laughs> is, it, is it almost impossible, I guess, to get to the point of just simply saying uh, we need to hire people who know how to write? It's like, because that seems like a um, we need good stuff to make things good. You know what I mean? Like, it's too... It's too... almost ethereal as a solution. Like, you can't, mm -hmm. can't really do anything with that. It's like, well, yeah, we're obviously... we're hiring people who we do think can write. You're like, oh... Well, <laughs> you have to be able to, yeah, you have to be able to recognize what the quality is before you can, you know, it's like, if you don't know what a chair looks like, how are you supposed to like construct a chair? Like someone like sort of describes to you, like through, through, through voice, like what a chair kind of is supposed to be. And you just sort of hope for the best. Or... Um, uh, anyway, um, the Marvels think... has, yeah. I, uh, okay. Yeah. Go for it. The Marvels has seen its release date move back twice, too. Once to swap places with Quantumania, which was deemed further along, and again when its debut shifted from July to November to give the filmmakers more time to tinker. The weird alternate world where mm. the Marvels is already out, you know, and by many, many months' time. Um, but that extra time didn't necessarily help. In June, Marvel, which traditionally only solicits feedback from Disney employees and their friends and family, took the uncharacteristic step of holding a public test screening in Texas. The audience gave the film middling reviews. It doesn't surprise me. I don't think it was ever going to get more than middling. And it's not due to the fact that I despise Captain Marvel so much that it couldn't possibly be good. It's like, no, it's just the way that they create films. We've seen it. Uh, mm -hmm. in Phase 4 and 5, that formula, you'll be lucky to ever produce a great film out of that. Like, yeah, that awful, awful pattern that we see that just keeps on going. They haven't made anything good, and... I mean, Andor was the one shining example of that, and it's definitely just, it's like its own thing. It doesn't even belong. Well, we also have the information on why Andor is so different. Tony Gilroy was, like, sent off to make it with money. And then yeah, he, uh, like, and he's talented and gave a shit. And then they had a break, and he redrafted the scripts. I still can't get over that. It blows my mind that he's like, "I have free time. I shall redraft. <laughs> I will work on my movie like I care." That's crazy, isn't it? It is. Um, but Marvel has never been in the business of being average. Kevin's real <laughs> true. Quote, They're not that good. 
<laughs> uh, quote Kevin's real superpower his genius has always been in post-production and getting his hands on movies and making sure they finish strongly the source adds these days he's spread thin Feige declined to comment for this story so I think that's the difference in the mainstream circles it's yeah Marvel was pretty consistently okay whereas our perspective is not really like I mean it's just that they used to occasionally make good films <laughs> like, well, when a lot of the times when their films were bad they like they didn't make anyone angry or bored. Uh, well, Iron Man three made a lot of people angry. To be fair, yeah, right? I guess so. so. Uh, but Age of Ultron, I, mean, I, I would say that's controversial, of course. Ultron, yeah. But like when I watch Age of Ultron, I'm like, oh, there's like things in here to like, and there's some neat stuff, and so it's not like you don't like walk away from it going like, wow, what a massive pile of shit. No, oh, yeah, we, know, like, we would definitely concede there. it's a different kind of bad at this point. Yeah, than what it was. Yes. And, and I guess the more relevant part would be that Marvel used to have the capacity to make good films and even great films. Now it's like, that seems like an impossibility. I find it interesting too about the whole formula that we get running with Kevin and everything else. It's like, Phase 4 was also just happened to be the first in-universe recognition and celebration of said formula. Look at yeah. it. Yeah. It's, like, um, mm. it's like when it was fully refined, understood, and sort of kind of made fun of is when we're like, yeah, the formula, and then it's just like crashing down around you as well. And it's like, you know, I don't think there's ever a formula that keeps you going forever. We're not, unless you want Marvel to be like a soap opera, but they don't make Marvel money, okay? <laughs> like that's because they're not supposed to. Uh, Feige isn't the only person showing signs of strain. Marvel's entire VFX battalion, including staffers and vendors, is struggling to keep pace with a never-ending stream of productions. Yeah, that's uh. That's one of the things that would have been, like, highlighted for criticism almost immediately by the public, or at least by us, right? Like, being like, fucking hell, they're making shit tons of things. And then, it wasn't even just that they're making shit tons of things, it was making stuff on, on characters and storylines that no one gives a fuck about, which is unusual. Not like a guarantee of bad, of course, just unusual. This past February, when the credits rolled at the world premiere of Quantumania, shock rippled through the Regency Village Theatre in Westwood as uh, over some shoddy CGI. There were at least ten scenes where the visual effects had been added at the last minute and were out of focus, says one veteran power broker who was there. Quote, it was insane. I've never seen something like that in my entire career. Everyone was talking about it. Even the kids of executives were talking about it. We um, know exactly what they're talking about, too. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. No, let's be honest, I mean, if that movie had great CGI, like it wouldn't have, no one, that people wouldn't have been like, oh, I care now. What a great like, movie. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. We talked about this before, yeah. the great things with bad CG, people usually go, yeah, yeah, I know, yeah, whatever, yeah, mm -hmm. whatever. it's fine. Um, and they released Cassie's Run as a separate thing on YouTube. Well, like, look at that. It's um, great, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, they thought that, that was good enough. <laughs> but I mean, really, it is incredible the idea that you're handing in shots like that close to the film. To the fact that there are now, like, post-launch patches for films of it to, like, fix them up. That's mm -hmm. wild. Yeah, nowadays it used to be like, oh, there's a car in the Shire, we'd better f fix that up really quick. And now it's just like, oh god, our CGI is horrific. <laughs> we have to fucking deliver our shots and then do a post-launch patch to fix it up. Yeah, the day one patch thing is so funny. Yeah, don't go see a movie on day one, wait for the patch. Yeah, wait for the patch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, the crazy thing of, uh, so I still feel like I haven't had a good explanation of what the fuck happened with um, Across the Spider-Verse having different scenes depending on uh, where you saw it or when. I that mean, one's crazy. And I, the fact that uh, on the Blu-ray apparently some scenes aren't on there that were in theaters, they're just gone. That baffles me, but then when you combine it with the story of intense crunch and everything like that and all the behind-the-scenes production troubles there, and the fact that the next one I think is now indefinitely delayed because it's like not anywhere... Not anywhere near done that some lines were finished like a couple of weeks before it came out. Like that seems like that one was raced to the finish line as well. Yeah. Oh, uh, Rigs. All the right. Let me swap. see. The is it schedule or schedule? Oh, I said schedule. I say schedule. I say schedule here. So I say schedule. Both fine. But you're allowed to say both. We're, yeah, a, we're, we're a open minded uh, people here. That's yeah, right. Uh, the schedule swap with the Marvels had left the Ant-Man sequel in a squeeze, pushing up its post-production schedule by four and a half months. Oh. That's why it hit. turned out so great. Yeah. And that, yeah, being told, yeah, you've got four and a half months less, less to work on. Which they're already <laughs> uh, screwed for time, so yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Marvel films are known for coming down to the wire, given Feige's ability 
to foam the runaway and land in a uh, land a plane that way, says one executive familiar with how uh, the company operates. But this level of unfinished was unprecedented and would be noted in scathing reviews when the tent pole with the $200 million budget opened 11 days after the premiere. Critics weren't the only ones dismayed. Fed up with 14-hour days and no overtime, which seems l literally illegal to me, uh, Marvel VFX workers voted unanimously to unionize in September, sparking an industry-wide trend. Yeah, they're not the only ones. Isn't it's, it crazy uh, that getting around. if the higher-ups were, like, terrified of the idea of them unionizing, and it's just like, maybe you shouldn't have treated them like shit. <laughs> like the, the I new, mean, that they know, probably yeah. wouldn't have, at least not for as if fast. You're gonna, if you make them work 14 hours a day, and you fucking pay them gold bars, that would be one thing. Right. But, like... Man, the fourteen-hour days and no well, and overtime pay, which is—I don't know day, how they got away with that. And six days a week for like months at a time. It's, and then it's, it's like the, same as the like product turns out to be shit. Industry. Like at the end, well, it's, so it's it, not it, even like well, I, we worked our asses off to make something amazing. And it's like no, it's it's just I I don't well, know I mean, how you could be in that industry and be like yeah, it's just another job. I mean, isn't it just like a documented, established, accepted fact that like when human beings start working like a certain amount, their productivity decreases to the point that if they actually just work normal hours, they'd be more productive? Yeah, I think so. Like, I think there's only so much you could, yeah, put someone to work yeah. before they they get bored or they want to do something else or they get tired or fed up with it. And yeah, well, yeah, it's yeah. just that it, it becomes harder for them to work because of they're tired. <laughs> like they're just really, really, really tired. Yeah, but like, yeah, I mean, people working 14 hours a day, like six, seven days a week for several months on end is insane. It's absurd. Um, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, it's doubly but, weird but, when yeah. you spend this kind of money on a movie and it, and it doesn't look good. Like that, that should be like what, isn't that what mo the money pays for, for it to look good? Yeah, you would but the think that there's a direct correlation between spending money and how it looks. The problem is that there are only so many VFX workers, there's only so much time in the day, and there are many, 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 many projects. It's, it's like a matter of just being like stretched completely thin. Because, I mean, at this point, like the majority of productions have like some kind of post-production visual effects. Even things that you wouldn't expect, like, I guess, contemporary, non-superhero, non-like action movies will just have visual effects for, like, backgrounds or even the sky. It's practically exponential, isn't it, with movie making? Because it can solve basically any problem visually. Yeah, like, if, you, if you're shooting on a day and it's cloudy, you can just make it look sunny. Like, that's something you can do, but, I mean, that's all work. And it's not, it's not easy work, it's time-consuming work, even simple things like that. It's not, you know, it, like... The problem is that there is too much work and there's not enough people and time in the day. And it seems like basically it gradually got to the point where it got this insane and it's kind of like the dam is bursting. It's now gotten to the point where it's like, all right, this is like absurd and unacceptable. And yeah, now that, you know, because it's not just the Marvel guys, isn't it? Like Disney in-house's uh, VFX is voted to unionize. Um, the, the, like it's starting to, yeah, it's, uh, things are changing. Things be changing in the, uh, in that world yeah seemingly we yes. will yeah we'll see what happens with it who knows i mean oh yeah and the, and the other thing that was talked about as well is constantly changing their minds like it's one thing if you, if you keep telling them nah change it nah you don't like that do it do it again you know there's a difference between very deliberate planned consider i mean you know avatar 2 not a very good movie at all uh it looks incredible and it's like That's why it, yeah. with 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 you know the VFX artists, some of whom would have ended up working on some of these projects that probably that don't look very good at all. It's like it's not a lack of talent on their part, is it? It's a matter of an understanding and consideration, and respect for the tools and the time needed to get the results that uh, that they got for that movie. Um, but yeah, uh, okay, so. The year 2023 was the straw that broke the camel's back, says former Marvel Studios VFX assistant coordinator Anna George, who appeared before the Congressional Labor Caucus on October 19th to testify about the studio's untenable deadlines and working conditions. Uh, quote, the pay and long hours at Marvel uh, were the reason we had to start our unionization process there. The conditions were completely unsustainable. I mean, yeah, probably. I mean, by the sounds of it, almost certainly. Yeah, you'd. I don't know what you'd have to do to get me to want to work in that industry. There's just, I. Oh, there's so no way. What, what amount of money could you pay me 
that's like within the realm of even like normalcy that would get me to work 14 hours a day, seven days a week on yeah. these types of projects, you know? You're essentially saying, what number do I have to write on this check for you to hate yourself? And yeah, I'm like, I, don't, I just don't sacrifice. know if there's a number. <laughs> like... Or just to completely sacrifice your life for these projects. Which is also kind of nuts because it's there's such a, an enormous amount of people who are looking to start up, you know, working in places like that. They're like, let's go, yeah. let's uh, do it. And it's like, oh. Well, it's... It's been spoken about in the gaming industry, right? That uh, that the industry is kind of running on plucky yeah, as a meat grinder. coming into the industry, excited about video games, and a lot of them get destroyed by it. Yeah, um, there's so many examples of like people joining big companies that make games, finding out, oh, this is miserable and I hate myself, and then they find they make little little groups, you know, that kind of thing. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. Working. It's interesting how many. Uh, people who were like creative directors who presumably get what you would imagine is the dream job of being the person in charge of the creative aspects of a massive video game who then decide, nah, you know what? I want to, I want to make it with a, with a team of like 20 or yeah, 30 people. Yeah, me and That's six happened. of my blokes, we're going to go make an indie game. That's happened a surprising number of times. It happens all the um, time. You hear about it all yeah. the time. And you know, it's, it's talked about, right? Is um, aside from the fact that destroying people in this way to, fucking make these projects is absurd anyway even even from like a purely ruthless business standpoint you're 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 losing the future leaders of the industry you're yeah. losing a lot of potential in these people so even if you put to one side that these are human beings and you just think you put that to one about side. what's gonna if you, if you think about what's gonna make you money in the future this is a completely unsustainable and stupid way of doing things and not to sound callous, but like it's not even like worth it in terms of it's not even producing good stuff. No, I mean this. Th yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, like throwing their souls like, into a machine that yeah. produces movies that are kind of crap. It's like, well, then. Yeah, we didn't even yeah, it, we didn't even like make something amazing and legendary that will stand the test of time that we can yeah, be proud exactly. of. It's not. It's not one of those uplifting stories where you can at least look back and go, "I create. We created something great, though." Like what you know, because working yeah. on Star Wars. Like, That's a thought, the though. The Star Wars. You know, I was telling you about uh, the Friday the Thirteenth filming story where a guy almost went blind for like six months. I wonder if Friday the Thirteenth hadn't turned out to be so profitable and instead was considered like a really shit movie that was just crap and everyone hated it in the production. Like that is like a tone description of that experience. On one hand, it's like. The sacrifices I made to, you know, really get this film going and how plucky our attempts and, and, and scrappy the whole thing was, you know, and we got there versus being like, it was miserable, horrible, I was taken advantage of, I would never work with those people again. They were, you know what I mean? Like, I wonder if the line yeah, between those no... two is down to almost how successful the film is sometimes. Yeah, or something that you can be, like, proud of, even. There's never that, well, at least at the end. It's like, well, at least we can say that we made something incredible and amazing and like i mean vigo is i'm sure vigo is totally fine he broke his toe for yeah. you know the two towers you know I'm, I'm i'm sure like that that's something is you know that's one thing instead of i lost my arm for batwoman right well yeah and so some people are asking me what i'm talking about the um there was a character who gets stabbed in the eye in the first friday the 15th movie and the, the prosthetic they had for him poured liquid that had a uh, kodak fluid in it to make the right viscosity that went into his eye and he went blind in that eye for a while it, it, he said it took six months for his full vision to come back in that eye so it was like shit man well um i think i think one of the um more famous examples is jack haley who some of you might know as um the actor for tin man in uh wizard of oz and I think he died from complications of, um, no, it was, it was someone else. I think it was the original. They had like a, there was something about the Tin Man's makeup, the silvery makeup on him that was like toxic and like got through his skin and stuff and you know, like, uh, something like that. So, um, it, I mean, and I mean, actually, now that I think about it, The Wizard of Oz is an incredible example because the working conditions while making that film were fucking atrocious. Well, that's... Judy Garland was like on crack, and the the sets were insanely hot. Yeah, that's famous. There was yeah, famously miserable production to make, but at least it made The Wizard of Oz the most famous movie of all time. So.
Um, where are we? Am I on? Is it me on uh, Disney's Top Brass? Yes. Disney's sure. Top Brass, including newly returned CEO Bob Iger. I think it's funny that it would even be worth mentioning as if that wasn't all a part of some plan, like him to pop out and pop back in. It was so brief, mm -hmm. and like I imagine there were several legal things that happened as a result of it that were useful, but. Yeah, I just find it yeah, funny. Yeah, behind the scenes, all the yeah. newly returned CEO Bob Iger was said to be uh, apoplectic, ap apoplectic, right? Um, I've heard I that word before. Right. I feel like Simpsons used that before, yeah. <laughs> or maybe probably Blackadder um, about Marvel's VFX troubles. One month after the Quantumania premiere debacle, the guillotine fell on Victoria Alonso, who guillotine. oversaw. I know, oversaw. <laughs> Miss, it's funny you say that. Who oversaw yeah, the studio's physical production, post-production, VFX, and animation. While the reason cited for her abrupt firing was her unauthorized role as an executive producer on the Oscar-nominated film Argentina, 1985, insiders say Disney was incensed that quality control in its Marvel productions was plummeting. I find that so funny. Yes, obviously. <laughs> like it's, it's We can tell. Don't worry. Insiders have given us this knowledge. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, insiders, for letting us know that their films are shit. Particularly on the ever-expanding TV front. That's also funny. I don't know that I think the TV shows were, like, significantly worse than the movies. No, I don't think so. I found it annoying Arguably when worse. there was that stuff that was coming out of, like, oh, yeah, D you know, Marvel realizes they've screwed up on the TV front. It's like, ah, see, you're doomed. You don't know. You, you, you don't you understand. Can't, you're a, if a doctor can't diagnose the condition, how do you expect to treat it? Exactly. And when you're there, like, yes, it's the TV side where we screwed up, not yeah. the movies. <laughs> yeah, the movies are great. It's like, guys, you're fucked. What's funny to me, too, is that you can get away with shittiest VFX, I think, on TV shows compared to movies. Uh, I think yep. so, too. People will be like, well, uh, it's a TV show. Come on. I mean, ain't no one going to a theater to see, like, the TV shows, and that all automatically helps, like, um... Definitely an aspect, I, There's yeah. just this attitude that's sort of different, you know? I mean, you still expect a certain amount of quality, um, but, yeah, I, I think you're right. I think TV shows can sort of get away with it a bit more. Unless it's She-Hulk, and, well, that's... It's not even that, it's just that it was... <laughs> you were gonna say, unless it was Ahsoka. <laughs> the problem with She-Hulk is that if she's the main character and she's just weird to look at... Yeah, like, that was... I... I said it before, and I idea. hold to it. They should have found a big lady and painted her green. That was that was almost certainly never even entertained. Though, I don't a, even think option. they would ever have done that. No, this, this no. Is, uh, but I suppose the funny thing is, can you imagine the budget comparison of the cost of those two things? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean that gave off a good hundred million dollars. Imagine, probably, right? wouldn't it have been fun if the transformation was a shot of? Um, uh, Tatiana Maslany going, and then a, a quick like zoom, and she's just her with green going, and then the clothes start to rip, and then it just cuts to the or poof of smoke, and it's that other oh, actress who's God. really big. Basically, what they did in yeah. the '70s show. <laughs> but like, I feel like there would be a sense from a lot of audience members being like, ah, oh, I, I kind of like it's, it. It's, a throw, it, it's throwback yeah. and it's funny and, and yeah, it's not much. And I think people will be okay with that to some extent. I mean, obviously, something to it. Yeah, it would probably be scrutinized and made fun of if it were a part of a show that's just plain awful. But if it was part of a show that was well written and fourth wall breaky and fun, like yeah, well, but not, but like, not that, mean, not like the fourth wall breaky but terrible. <laughs> show <that> yes. <laughs> The VFX log jam had been evident for some time, with some final effects for such Disney Plus series as WandaVision and She-Hulk Attorney at Law inserted after their streaming debuts. That Alonzo was busy promoting her art house project while Rome burned certainly didn't sit well with Disney leadership. Alonzo Attorney says her client is unable to comment. Oh my god, nobody can comment on this story. Because mm. they wouldn't want to, I guess. Is nah, it, it's just not worth it, is it? <laughs> Probably not a good idea. <laughs> yeah, She-Hulk will be dispatched to their it. house and she will step on them. <sighs> All right, well, moving on. Um, let's see. Da -da 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 -da. Scroll down. But some internal sources suggest Alonzo was a scapegoat and point to the She-Hulk VFX issues as a symptom of a deeper rot. Namely, a lack of oversight on script development. Oh my god. Oh, Good oh, lord. Man. Could it be? Can, could it be? <laughs> could it be? Is it possible? In the original arc of She-Hulk, a flashback of star Tatiana Maslany's transformation into her Hulk character didn't take place until episode 8, the Which penultimate episode. That makes a lot more sense when you think about it, because yeah, that adheres yeah, more does. to the general structure of these Marvel TV shows. 
I remember talking Instead about it them, yeah, at the time, and yeah, it, if you look back on the episode, the clunkiness of the, almost the pacing of it, it's, it's like interesting to see the cuts and pastes where they likely were. Yeah. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. But after Marvel's brain trust watched footage, it realized the scene brain needed trust. to happen. <laughs> but after Marvel's brain trust watched footage, <laughs> it, uh, it realized the scene needed to happen in the pilot episode so that audiences could see more of the character's backstory early. Could you? Well, well no, you, you could have the backstory the, without the, the transformation. Yeah. Yeah. Do you imagine being among, let's just say, it's twenty people in a special? viewing of and you have to watch let's say episodes one through four or so fuck it the whole thing you just do it's your job whatever and it's like what do you think and you're sitting there going like jesus fucking christ like you've got a list of just all the most horrible writing choices all this other and then most of the people in the room just agree i don't understand how she hulk but she hulk though don't you think you should put her origin first i would just be sitting there like, like that is it. not the problem <laughs> that's not yeah, even close like, to the problem like you guys it's... If you know, endear me to the character, and then later we learn the backstory, some might say that there's a lot more merit to that concept. Because I don't really care necessarily about the backstory to some random stranger more than I do the backstory about someone I kind of have been, you know, enamored with, or that I care about, or I'm interested in. Well, it's interesting that this theory didn't apply. We didn't see how Moon Knight got his powers until, like, the penultimate episode, and nobody cared. That didn't really matter, remember? We didn't see how he doesn't it, got the Moon Knight. That's kind of what I'm getting at. Like, it just feels like sometimes their brain trust just give them random shit advice. Yeah. Like, no, just, it's like I said, I think they're doomed. The fact that they were watching that and they were like, you know, the problem with the script, the problem with the writing here is um, we didn't see how she got her powers and we need to move that forward. The fact that that's like the mode of their thinking means, oh yeah, you guys have no idea. You know why it's, a, it's taken well too? It's probably like it actually changes that it's actionable. Like, oh, that is a problem I can solve. You guys have highlighted it as a problem. I can solve it. Great. It's like, yeah, this is like, it's, it, it's like hiring a painter to look at a house that's about to fall down, and they're like, well, you see the, which color? the shutters, the, the, the color of the shutters kind of clashes with the, 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 uh, the, the, the and, paneling and on the side, that, you know, the just falls off on as the it's side. falling down. <laughs> and then they're like, now, oh, God, I just, oh, the living room. Oh, my good. You can't have a rug that color with a beige that's wall. It, that's it. That's the that's rug. unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And the house has just collapsed. Um, uh, that meant that the VX team was tasked with fixing the mess in post-production. I'm sure they were. Yeah, that's why it looks so great. <laughs> yeah. You know what's funny um, too is the catching up of it being like, oh, well, let's keep, let's keep uh, fixing it. We'll keep day two patch, day three patch. Eventually it's like, just leave it. You gotta fix the next thing. <laughs> we can't. Exactly. Grand the new time. fucker is coming out. We gotta get all good on that. Like, oh, okay. Uh, okay. Um, uh, t -t -t the so-called bad VFX we see uh, was because of half-baked scripts. I mean, that was probably part of it, but there was also just the fact that trying to achieve Hulk on a television show budget as well as television show timescale was probably just a bad idea from the start. Well, didn't she yeah. have a massive um, budget, though? Uh... It yeah, but but again, it's it's comparable to the budget of a film stretched across more than two hours of story. It, you know what I mean? Like, e even though it I mean, is still that's... a big budget for a television show, it's still a greater quantity of screen time that you need to create content for. As much as I agree with you, I still think there's the, what you said in addition is the main problem. It's just the time frame. Um, yes, that absolutely. Like, more time, you could probably get a better result than that. Because there are films um, that are half the length of She-Hulk that likely wouldn't have anywhere near its budget uh, that look way... You know what I mean? Like, it's just... Uh, well, I mean, I mean, you know, I, I don't think it's a very good film, but the creator was on a budget of, like, $80 million, and that film looks way better than anything Marvel's put yeah. out in the last few years. And that's, it's just knowing how to use the tools, for sure. Yeah. Um... Uh, Someone gave a one, super chat. Right. I just wanted to read. Um, uh, they mentioned. I don't think we have uh, seen how Tom Holland Spider Man got his powers. That's true. Which is we true. Didn't. We never. Which, we never saw. As far as I remember, was so. gonna happen, or at least closer to it, with a prequel animated TV show or something, right? But that got scrapped. Uh, I don't that? know if that's happening. Yeah, that's right. Um, they had a little like graphic that. for it, and 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 yeah, I'm pretty. That's you know, probably not happening. <laughs> probably, that's not. probably not happening. Um. The so-called bad VFX we see was because of half-baked scripts, says one person involved with She-Hulk. 
Quote, that is not Victoria, that's Kevin, and even above Kevin, those issues should be addressed in pre-production. The timeline is not allowing the Marvel executives to sit with the material. Yeah, I mean, sure. It's, yeah. Um, it's kind of crazy, isn't it? Because they're just permanently behind schedule. And what's funny, I guess, is if you knocked out a couple of projects and took that time and added it to the rest, you might be able to at least level out. And uh, I, yeah, because we talk about the VFX being awful as a big indicator of things going wrong, and it's just like, well, ultimately, as we've said, wouldn't matter at all if the scripts were top notch. Nobody would really care that much. We we would be talking about it. We'd be like, oh, how come their CG is so fucking bad in these great films? And it's like, I don't know. I guess they're rushed, mm -hmm. but it just yeah, wouldn't have as much yeah. of an impact. Mm -hmm. But when there's nothing, when it's just really bad, yeah. Then yeah, what do you have left other than wow, and it looks awful too? Well, and especially yeah, the, and the key jangling and spectacleness of of the films. A lot of it is dependent on the quality of the CG at that point. You can't blow yep. people away when it's like a fucking Modoc face is heading into the screen. It's like, uh, what, is, what is that? Like, Are you surprised to see me? Yes. Yes. I'm surprised to see whatever that this is and I'm looking at, yes. All the while, um, Marvel was bleeding money with a single episode <gasps> of She-Hulk costing some 25 million, dwarfing the budget of the final season episode of HBO's Game of Thrones, which is absolutely fucking yeah. nuts. It's and recall that the entire budget for the first season of House of the Dragon, 10 episodes, that was 200 million. So that was 20 million an episode for well, uh, that And they Marshall. spent and that, that money. Shows, <laughs> yeah, those dragons look fucking great. The looks incredible. Point out those are incredible show. episodes, except for one of them. Mm -hmm. so, the Last of Us season one, I think, had 100 million for the budget for the whole season. That was nine episodes. Damn good. The sets yes, were so... Above. Wonderful to look at, because you're like, oh my god, the it's real. Look great. It's they real. looked amazing. <laughs> a lot of it was like good makeup and shit. And a yeah, lot yeah. of sets. Yeah, like the it, it all just looks so real, so good. Twenty-five million dollars an epic you could make one five nights at Freddy and make yes. way more Oh, you must be they must be so fucking annoyed oh, yeah, when they see stuff like that. Five They're like, Well, that could have been us. Freddy's Damn it. Five nights budget. at Freddy was twenty five million. Twenty million. Think, yeah. Oh, well, wow, it's gonna make shit tons, right? Yeah, it already has. Money. Well, it's it's again, I'll keep pointing it out like fucking Bloom. He's the guy who figured out he figured out how to make money off of like everything. Well in Five Nights at Freddy's just waiting, wasn't it? It's like I'm I'm perfect for you, you're perfect for me, let's go. <laughs> like we'll we'll yeah. make a millions. It, and 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 bear in mind that this film was simultaneously released on streaming as well and it's it made hundred and sixty million dollars. It's only been out for what a, a week? I'm telling you, man, we get those dollars. those video game movies, I mean Yeah. Well, I mean, Get ready. I mean, Mario, I hope they're good. Well, I mean, remember, Mario movie cost a hundred million dollars, and it made what one point three billion. <laughs> you know, meanwhile, fucking the Marvels cost like what one hundred fifty percent that, <laughs> like two and a half that. Yeah. Yeah. Also, they'll, um, they'll lose it all on the sequel. I would assume this will stay pretty profitable for at least three films. Oh, Five Nights at Freddy. They'll make. They're not going to lose it's all gonna, that. Money on the sequel, yeah, no it'll way. be like it'll there'll be, be ten of them, and they'll all make yeah. money. And they'll come out every year. It'll be the new Saw. Yep. Of, uh, It'll be the new Saw. <laughs> While new Saw is desperately trying to crawl its way back into being the Saw films. It's like, look, we're here too. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, but without a similar zeitgeist bang, the August 2022 series premiere uh, uh, at the El Capitan Theater foreshadowed what was to come six months later at the Quantumania bow. Uh... The She-Hulk special effects were out of focus in multiple scenes. That's imagine that. Yeah, we're going to the premiere for our new show, and then you're sitting there watching incomplete. Yeah. Like, oh, this, okay. What are you supposed to make of that? I guess you'd be told like there'd be some announcement being like some things are not uh, completely yeah, fit. And it's just like, but that's okay. But that's, but that's what. You, but that's your job. It's the premiere. Like uh, it should be done, right? Yeah. Like this is it. Coming out. This is what we're here. We're here to see the movie. Mm -hmm. Where's the movie? Um, let's see. There are signs that the flood of market, that the flood of product. Why don't I say market? I don't know. Uh, there are signs that the flood of product is leading people to tune out. I'm not prepared to call it a permanent fall, but based on the numbers that go with Marvel podcasts, Marvel-based articles, friends who do Marvel-based video coverage, all of these numbers are significantly down says Joanna Robinson, co-author of the New York Times bestseller, MCU, The Reign of Marvel Studios. And you know what numbers are up? 
The ones for coverage that's not positive. Mm. Oh my god. Why? Why is that happening? Oh, no. Well, typically you point to a fundamental sense of what you are endeared by, connected to, you know, engaged with. And it's like, yeah, there was a time where it would have been hyper proper profitable to just be like, every Marvel thing is amazing. Woo! Do you remember the I was telling you about it? I can't remember if we watched it on EFAP at all, but there was um there was React streamers who were saying after their first reaction to um or one of them from Ahsoka or Loki or whatever was like, Hey, can you guys uh, you know, not, not as many people watching our stuff as we're like what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like Well <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you have done that yourself. Yeah, it makes something better. <laughs> like instead of just going woo every time anything happens. Uh, yeah, Joanna Robinson's a writer and podcaster at The Ringer. The quality is suffering. In 2019, at the peak, if you put Marvel Studios in front of something, people were like, oh, that brand means quality. That association is no longer the case because there have been so many projects that felt half baked and undercooked. That's well, half baked is undercooked, right? Yeah, yeah it's redundant. And yeah, and, and they're both food related. You know, they're both exactly. You know, hits, yeah. So why? Yeah, you're right, Rags. What the hell? They're they, it's redundant <laughs> Wait, and they're could, food related. Because I think you're correct, but you could look at. They could be two different things that they don't necessarily... There's, like there's like a Venn diagram between those two, right? Because what if I had perfectly baked half of a thing and the other half wasn't versus undercooked the whole thing? It's, it doesn't... Well, that it's it's the same thing both ways. If something is undercooked, then the middle will be raw. And same thing if you half-bake something, the middle will be raw the, with the dough and everything. So it, it's pretty much the same thing, almost exactly. Just one is with typically with you know, a different thing. I guess you could undercook like a soup... Yeah, but that's that's not really what people think about undercooking a soup. No, when you think about undercook, you think it's fucking meat. raw. Yeah, you think about raw meat. Yeah, but or raw since dough. it's metaphorical, right? Like it's it's like if a if a line of dialogue was half baked, maybe you'd be arguing that half of it was pretty strong, the other half wasn't. While undercooked, the whole thing is sort of lackluster. Um, may maybe because like if you half bake something the outside will probably be fine and if you undercook something well the outside will probably be fine and but that'll be the outside and the outside inside difference and the process would be kind of the same for both where you know they heat from the outside and um maybe it's just, it does strike uh, it does strike me as odd though um then we have our pictures of jonathan majors here and then we have uh, our Marvels squad. They I gotta great. say, I, Captain Marvel's suit looks like shit. Is that what you're gonna I say? I think that suit looks awful. Um, it's so I think the dull other one, and the flat. other one, way better. The other one that she's wearing in, in part of the film, evidently, like that one looks. That one looks way better. The it's original does look better. better. This, this looks. This it looks like Zack Snyder made it. And then, of course, there is the big problem of why is the logo on Captain Marvel's suit that of like the Empire that took her in and then manipulated her? And they're like, never going to address that. Anymore. Leave her alone. Mm. But yeah, I, I don't know why. In fact, all of these costumes look pretty pretty bad. Um, yeah, they they all look yeah. Pretty not rough. a fan of uh, not a fan of any of them. They just don't look. They just don't look good. They just look like something look you'd cheap. buy at a Halloween store for thirty bucks. Monica's look super generic to me. Um, yeah, and the black and white generic. is not. I don't. I don't know if I'm feeling that black and white. It's. It's. I don't know. It. It just doesn't look good. None of them look good. They look um, pretty bad. Yeah, they look pretty bad. And you gotta nail the costumes, guys. Come on. I mean, Kang's I just, looks all right, you know. But geez. I just don't understand why Captain Marvel's are so desaturated. I don't. That's the big problem. I, I yeah. yeah, it's so yeah. dull. Why, is, why isn't it more like colorful? Said, like why Zach isn't it like Snyder. a bright and bold blue and red? Well, I mean, it's what not, she'd be wearing to a like fucking a... funeral. Like you could imagine that if she had to have a super yeah. outfit to a funeral. Mm -hmm. And then there's yeah, there's She Hulk. <laughs> And then there's Jonathan Majors, where the creators of it said it's the best suit in the MCU. Like, uh, okay. calm it, down. it looks fine. It looks fine. Um, well, the, I, the problem is, like, I'm sorry, but Spider Man's like design is pretty top tier. Like, just fundamentally, really like Spider Man in general, that's like. You don't even really need to name the top suit. hitters. I feel like he doesn't beat out even Doctor Strange. I really like his. Outfit. I don't think he beats out. Uh, yeah, Doctor Strange is cool. I, I'd say he doesn't beat out Cap's suit in the first Captain America movie. Probably not. No, someone. I think that one's better. And obviously, uh, I, don't, I don't hate it. It's just, just yeah. 
Yeah. Someone showed me this, and I'm like, I think that there's this minimal kind of quality to a lot of them. Like, I don't think that's great or anything, but it looks fine. You know? Uh, yeah, but the problem is, like, it's, for whatever reason, like, Marvel doesn't like to do them like that. They always, they always have a certain, like, it's, it's, it's what you see in this, in this picture, right? That's, like, generic, workable Marvel suit, I guess. Um... But yeah, they try to I make them know. overly complex and detailed they, some of well, the times, and the material and the way that it fits on the body just doesn't... Lines. There's always just lines going in different yeah, directions, going all over the place. I mean, the front of Monica's suit there, it's like you have the... There's so many lines and so much stuff going on. It's like, just stop. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Well, don't it's do like that. they're trying to make it look like faux armor, but it doesn't look like armor. It, no. it doesn't but, look yeah, like armor. Yeah, but you can way, make way it pretend. armor. You're Disney. Just well, you, you if could... you want to make it armor, just do it. Where she's got little bits, or it's like an actual suit, or it has something related to her power. There's something coming out of her back, like a machine, or something on her belt that she uses, or some kind of a visor. You know, something. Oh yeah, we don't do head stuff. No, we don't, we don't do that. Uh, yeah, that's, well, the thing is, is that I, at this point, I just prefer it if you just don't even have the elude. I saw someone in chat say, oh yeah, but Dr. Doom will be taking his helmet off all the time. And the answer yeah. is, in, in my ideal world, he never takes that thing off. It's no, on forever. No, he's got a metal face. It's, 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 it's there forever, but it'll be nanotech when he shows up. He'll have a nanotech helmet as well, just like it. So, you know what? I prefer that they're not even pretending that these guys are going to wear helmets. That it's it was funny. No I saw helmet. when we were talking about the nature of bringing in Doctor Doom, some people were like, no, don't bring it, they'll ruin him. And I was like, that was under the specific no, in, pretense in of them world, not ruining him. <laughs> of it being amazing. Yeah, that's right. Uh, wait, it's, it's Rags is up next. Oh, wait, did, you just read the last one, didn't you? Um... Let's see. You, you, I think well, I had you, just meant. I had just. I did something happened. You mentioned I the half baked and undercooked. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think that I. Yes. I think it was me that just did it. Okay. Uh. Uh. Well, as uh, public criticism mounts, Feige is pulling the plug on scripts and projects that aren't working. Case in point, the Blade reboot. <laughs> um, Here we go. With Mahershala Ali. Sure, whatever's so going on not, with that. Signed on for the eponymous role of uh, a vampire. Things look promising for a 2023 release, but the project has gone through at least five writers, two directors, and one shut down six weeks before production. <laughs> one, one person familiar with the script, um, Permutation, says the story at one point morphed into a narrative led by women and filled with life lessons. Blade was relegated to the fourth lead. A bizarre idea. <laughs> what? <considering> it, what? <laughs> Blade, a narrative led by women and filled a, with life lessons. A, a two-time Oscar winner, Ali, on board. <laughs> Now, this is a th one of the things that's been contested publicly, right? This is the right? most contentious one. Yes, this is the most contentious claim. Um, I think it was somebody who worked on the script saying that this was outright false. Mm -hmm. um, well, so we already know no that idea. Mahershala Ali specifically hated the script to the point where he nearly left the project, right? Whatever it was. I think that's... Well, I mean, the, the thing that cannot be denied is that the project is clearly not in a good way that they've lost two yeah. directors. Let's put it this way. like, It's not important whether or not oh, the script right. itself had him a fourth lead with a bunch of women talking about life lessons. The more important thing is that Blade isn't being taken seriously whatsoever, that they've had like several different versions that are all horrible, that they have no idea what they're doing when... How do I put this? Having Mahershala Ali and Blade, it's like, I know. you've got it. That's it. Like, and you, well, How do you screw that up? <laughs> like, Just make him kill vampires. That's, that's well, what you're going to do. Gay. How you screw it up is the same way they screw a lot of them up, where it's like, there's really no problem with the casting, the vast majority. It's part of the reason why, like, Cassie and Ant-Man stands out. It's like, wow, that's, like, distinctly bad casting. Marvel right. ain't like DC, where they, they've, like, repeatedly made mistakes in terms of casting people. Like, Marvel tends to get the right people for the job, but then, it, you know, you pair them with some, like, shitty writer, <laughs> then, like, well, you know? I, I but mean, yeah, the, this, this the, specifics, in, in the specifics being contested, it's like, well, I'm sure, obviously, Blade being a fourth lead is insane, the the women telling your life lessons thing sounds embarrassing, but, you know, it, it's, it's just, th these are symptoms of the fact that they just don't, they're not taking this seriously, they're not doing this properly whatsoever, and I'm sure... Well, None of the suggested scripts have been very good so far. I bet you that they were sitting there for a long time, like, well, is it even going to be R-rated? And it's like, well, of course, right? Ugh, right? I can yes. even ask. Cause... Yes. And then they're just like, uh, yeah. I mean, they've had to repeatedly assure people, right, of Deadpool 3, and I still wonder if they might be, while they're cutting that film together, going like, hmm, you know, 
you know, Ryan, can you redub some of these lines to not swear? Please and thank you. Like, I can easily mm. see them having that conversation. But yeah. Right. Amid reports that Ali was ready to exit over script issues, Feige went back to the drawing board and hired Michael Green, the Oscar-nominated writer of Logan, to start anew. Speculation around town is that the studio is looking to make the film, now slated for 2025 on a budget of less than $100 million, a deviation from Marvel's big spending strategy. Wow. I wouldn't expect Blade to need that high of a budget. It's probably going to be contemporary... Oh, well a lot right. of stuff will be practical. <laughs> Why the fuck would any of the projects they've been making need the kind of budgets that, you know, like, She-Hulk, Atelier yeah, Law needs yeah. a gajillion dollars? <laughs> like, why? So this this is surprising, because it's like, well, they usually overspend. But the thing is, 100 million can have more of an effect than 200 million if it's given to the right people and they're given the right time, right? Well, yeah, it right. happened, well, yeah. Plenty. And remember, yeah. Deadpool 1 and 2, I think Deadpool 1 had a budget of, like, 50 million, and Deadpool 2 was something like 100 million. So, you know, it can be, and, th and those aren't like, th those have a lot of big, like, explosive action set pieces, so, mm -hmm. you know, it can be done. And uh, as for hiring Michael Green as the writer of Logan, it's like, yeah, the, the, whoever, wh whatever creative team creates something like Logan, I can understand why that creative team could give you something strong with a blade, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you just wonder, like, are you... Are you, are you casting them, uh, as as uh, Gary's always put it, or are you hiring them? Like, are they yeah. there because of who they are and what they've done, or are they there because you're actually going to let them create something? Mm -hmm. uh, all right, who is who is next? Actually, let's see. Uh, Mola's next. That'd be oh, weird because I just read that. Just oh read wait, it. I just read the. Didn't I just read the blade part? Yeah. Oh, there's, sorry. There's two no, blade parts. No, no, no. You're next, Rags. <laughs> my bad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, but, but, but with I'm Iger sorry. publicly acknowledging the downside of a Marvel TV glut that uh, diluted focus and attention, the keepers of the comic book empire are considering some dramatic moves. Sources say there have been talks to bring back the original gang for an, av Ooh, an Avengers <laughs> movie. <laughs> <sighs> because of course... <laughs> it's so include... over. It is so fucking over. It's we got to go back to Avenger. All of our new characters suck balls and no one likes them. We have to revive <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. Dude, you know that they're like, uh oh, 2012. That was that oh, was a good time. Like, that was when we were going up instead of crashing down. Jeez. This would include reviving Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man and Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow, both of whom <laughs> were killed off in Endgame. That shouldn't be a stumbling block. In comic books, beloved characters oh, are often killed up. off, only to be resurrected <laughs> thanks to the power of thing like the multiverse. Yeah. Uh, it's no, yeah, it's not like that. But the studio hasn't... Shouldn't be a shock. I mean, come on, guys. Uh, but the studio hasn't yet committed to the idea. If it were able to bring these actors back, by the way, that's a big fucking if. And they would that's cost a, a shit ton to get either of them yes. or both. Oh, Robert Downey Jr. Jeez, what do you have to pay him to come back? He just seems he's done. He's moving on. Well, I mean, yeah, he, he was an Oppenheimer. So you got Downey mm -hmm. Jr. who has publicly stated that he thought his time in the MCU may have like killed his ability to act and that he has no intention of coming back or putting the jersey back on, as he said on Joe Rogan. And then you got Scarlett Johansson that went through a fucking legal battle with like That's Disney. That's right. These are the they two people that you want to bring back. Can you imagine how much they'll cost and what their contracts would say? Mm -hmm. Sources say Downey Jr.'s upfront salary for Al Iron Man 3 was around $25 million. That's, so not that. his, <laughs> now, that's not including that. That's not including because he he cut a really good deal in terms of getting a percentage of the box office gross that ran throughout yeah. the whole thing. Yeah, man. He, he, Sometimes you got to play that. Uh, what well, what was that thing we were talking about once? That uh, it was oh it was Batman. Um, oh who was it? Uh, oh it was Michael Keaton, wasn't it? Who went for a percentage okay. of the take? Instead of just oh, a flat... no 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 it was Jack Nicholson went for a Jack percentage Nicholson of the, uh, that's yeah. it yeah and yeah. the merchandise and the merchandise yeah. he made so much money yeah. it's unbelievable he made so much money that was a smart move oh yeah um yeah so there you go that's that uh that's that uh, paragraph done I uh, I'll be right back though okay um, um but yeah I could believe that they actually had that conversation I could totally believe it oh yeah easily the original gag um. 
Will that solve Marvel's major problem with when the Quantumania actor was arrested in March? Disney executives insisted that they could afford to wait uh, to play a wait and see game, given that Avengers: The Kang Dynasty wasn't expected to begin shooting until early 2024. But that Majors was dropped in quick succession by his publicists and managers. He remains a client at uh, WME, the agency he landed uh, where he landed after CAA parted ways with him pre-arrest for his brutal conduct towards staff, says one source. CAA declined to comment. In April, uh, other alleged domestic violence victims of majors began cooperating with the Manhattan District Attorney's Office. Then, ahead of a key hearing in October, media outlets including Variety obtained a court filing that referenced a police incident in London involving majors that led his ex-girlfriend to seek medical attention. Oh, shit. Making matters, making matters even uh, stickier. stickier. The ex-girlfriend also worked on Quantumania as a movement coach, and the London incident took place while majors were shooting season two of Loki. On October 25th, a New York judge denied Major's motion to dismiss the case, which ensures that the actor will stand trial in late November. His legal team is attempting to keep some uh, material of the case sealed. Yeah, so, you know, to, to be, uh, we always got to put to one side the incredibly serious nature of everything that's happening with those people involved in that thing. There's a real thing, and it's, it's, you know, potentially horrible for what different things have happened to people. But we're strictly talking about Marvel's vampiric corporate POV. This is fucking disastrous for them uh the fact that it's going to take this long before they can even make decisions on whether or not they want to keep him they can't even be sure about it because to drop him too early is to make it look like you're um you don't have much faith and you're, you're sort of uh you're looking to just get things done and move things on and get things in place but to drop him to wait until after the trial it's like who knows even how much more damage that's going to do to trying to create storylines to make the movies to push them out because that's like the whole thing of trying to remain relevant culturally so, and I imagine that again, the vampiric like suit sense that they've looked at stuff, you know, DC's similar, like Warner Brothers similar situations with other actors in legal trouble. They might be thinking just get them, just cut them out earlier. It's better than later. Or, or just, just, I mean, I guess the thing is, is that they're in a place of they haven't made up their mind yet. But I mean, every day that they don't make up their mind, they still have made up their mind, which is that he's still a part of it. Um, and yet he's not, it, yeah, it, he's still a part of it, but they're not shooting new scenes with him, so... Isn't it crazy? It says Avengers Kang Dynasty wasn't expected to begin shooting until early 2024. It's like, fucking... Kang Dynasty's gonna get pushed so far. Oh, yeah, it was that's, pushed uh, so far. I it's that's like, coming out until uh, 2027 at this point. And that's the thing, man. If you look to, like, you know, between if you made Endgame, it's like, when should the next Avengers be? It's like, uh... Probably don't want to go longer than... Four years, maybe five. That's already kind of pushing it because the you know it's the big old like let's collect back up, everyone join us. And that's by the way, that's why I consider like the next Avengers to be a big old death knell for uh for the MCU, along with the Marvels is one because of how badly it's going to do. That would be one yeah. because it shows how much money oh, they yeah, can't yeah. make anymore. Like there's all these little like sort of flags to the world of how bad this is going, and uh, hence yep. because unlike this article, unlike um you've got. Uh, Wakanda Forever. Yeah, that was the end of a phase, but it didn't feel like it. No. Avengers movies will feel like the end. They yeah, will they be, feel like the cap off. You no. Know, yeah, those will very like the public perception of those will be that. So, I mean, who knows what they're gonna do? I mean, will they get just postponed until they can get their shit together with characters that people care about? I mean, who knows? If I was them, I'd be like, guys, we gotta it's, restructure from the ground up before we even think about another Avengers movie. It can get so robotic that I imagine they're like, what can we reliably create? And it's like, Ant-Man? It's, like, it's, not, it's not pulling enough money. Is it, uh, another another Doctor Strange? Like, maybe, yeah. Maybe we do another mm. Doctor Strange. Like, can we do that? Yeah, maybe we got maybe the... that'll fix our problems. Because they already talked about there's like rumors of how it's going to be very Doctor Strange-centric, the Avengers films, the your evil Strange and the multiverse and incursions and Kang is going to be, like, poised against him. And it's, it's, that's no accident. It's because Strange was probably the most profitable, and they've got a really big actor attached to it, and they've got Sam Raimi. Is is like that we can? Because it, isn't it rumored that Sam Raimi's been offered to do the Avengers films? Uh, yes, it has been rumored, which is <clears> interesting. Isn't don't it? do it, Sam. Stay away. <laughs> no, he shouldn't do it. That would be a bad idea. He should uh, make not your do own that. shit, man. Get away from him. Make your own shit. Um. Oh, it'd be me all then, right. right. Uh, 
A studio sources notes that regardless of the actor's legal issues, Marvel already had considered moving away from a Majors led phase because of the box office performance of Quantumania bullshit. I don't believe that for a second. No way. Don't buy that. Uh, yeah. That I sounds like Cope, it. where they're like, oh, oh we, we, have... we were thinking of uh, recasting him anyway. Well, well I mean, to me, that, to me, that sounds like the same Cope of, no, Aquaman 2 was always going to be a buddy comedy. Like, it wasn't going to have that much of uh, Amber Heard as Mara in it. No, that was, I always pitched it that way. It's like, aha, uh -huh, yeah, all right, yeah. yeah You'd sure. have to have, like, <laughs> Quantum Media say? would have to do bad. You'd have to get a lot of specific, like, uh, like, polling and stuff from people who said they didn't like him and didn't care about the character. And then maybe Loki would have to do really bad too, and you'd have to get the same messages. But I think I, I think don't... that just when they get their minds to something, they're just full steam ahead on it. The results of Quantum Mania not pulling the money means that we can't do solo Ant Man films anymore. Oh, well, that doesn't mean we also, drop all of the the Ant Man characters. Also, no, no, no. As, as as someone's already pointed out in chat, the timeline doesn't make sense because uh, Jonathan Major's legal stuff started in March, and Quantum Mania came out in February. So, I don't know about that, you know what I mean? Well, unless they decided literally days before, you know, all of his legal stuff started happening. You know what, that film didn't make enough money, let's not do the Kang well, thing. That, it doesn't that. make sense from that perspective, but I also just don't buy the idea that when Quantumania does badly, we can't possibly use Kang again then. It's like, that's not, you wouldn't have concluded that. You wouldn't, wouldn't that it's not like we'll never... Reflection on Ant-Man? Yeah, like, we, 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 I think so, but also, we're gonna see Scott Lang again. Of course we are. Yeah, exactly. It's not like we go, oh, you're well, gonna... Quantumania didn't perform, so we're not gonna ever have Ant-Man now. Yeah, it's like, you'd no. have to get, you'd have to get a lot of groups, like test groups and things like that, screening audiences, very specifically and overwhelmingly saying that, yeah, Kang sucks. Pretty much. I think they were fully hyper invested in majors, and then the legal stuff happened, and then they were like, "Oh, oh absolutely, distance, yes. distance, distance." Now, I mean, it's pretty. I mean, we could see that. I mean, the whole reason we're having this conversation and reading these articles, and everyone's you know knows about it now, is because Disney is just like, it's they're they're full steam ahead on this stuff. Like they're they they don't do course correction, they do course misdirection. Oh. oh. Box office performance of Quantumania, which will struggle to make a profit. It gave people pause, given that Quantumania didn't exactly land, the source says. On October 27th, Disney removed another major's film, Searchlight's Magazine Dreams, from the release calendar. Yeah, there's so much... Like I said, it's so interesting to see where this dribbles out to. Like, the, um... I really wanted to see the, the Assembled, but it was delayed significantly, because they oh, were likely yeah. recutting it. and then when it, it. comes out... Uh, it's so obvious that they had a section where they were probably talking about how great Jonathan Majors is as an actor, and instead it was just stock music, and as just, the cast, yeah. excluding him, was kind of sitting around and laughing. It was surreal. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was he so who must surreal. not be named. <laughs> yeah. He's being stricken for the records, like Stalin style. He's... I wouldn't it's be surprised, that, and that's the thing, they have to just swallow the bullet of, alright, we just gotta fucking recast him and go on they with it. Make a decision. Rody the style. I, the, make the idea that they won't, like, be able to sort this out, you know, for, for however long, like, I just, I feel like someone's gotta get it done, move it forward eventually. Well, some, some, Absolutely. Um, unless, unless there is actually a reason why that, but presumably they could just drop him whenever they want, like, presumably it's not like he's tied in. Oh, absolutely. I yeah. assume um, that in the yeah in the contracts and whatnot, they say like if you do something bad legally, we can remove. Well, because that's what happened everything. with um, wasn't it that Johnny Depp got dropped after the defamation trial in the UK where he lost? Right. It was like that day was the day that he got dropped because presumably it's like okay, well now there's like a legal pretext. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I think you know. Yeah. All right. Um. Let's see. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. So I I had scrolled. What's this? You're on recasting hey, majors. Recasting. recasting majors is also an option, as Feige did when he replaced Terrence Howard in Iron Man Two with Don Cheadle. Just want to say quick, uh, yeah. you can reference that, but that's nowhere near the same situation. Nope. Not even remotely yeah. comparable. Except, um, when I said recast uh, yeah. Cassie earlier, people were like, "They already did that." It's like, yeah, yeah but no. <laughs> no, <laughs> no but you no, you don't understand. Recasting don't. someone who popped up briefly versus recasting someone who was full on, and then versus someone who is in many things and is said to be the villain for a whole phase. It's like, th these are all very different. Yeah. Yep. Uh, let's see. In fact, Marvel isn't afraid to change dire direction, <laughs> even after True. making splashy announcements. 
Armor Wars was first unveiled in a I don't know I don't like that name Armor Wars. That's, yeah, it's not great. Yeah. Was first unveiled as a series and is now being developed as a feature while the studio's push to adapt the comic book Inhumans into a feature film generated Wait, headlines really? but is now dormant. Oh yeah, that's right. They uh that was the plan and then it became that show that nobody liked. Yeah. Yep. The now defunct Marvel Television Mount the now defunct Marvel Television mounted an it. Inhumans TV series in 2017 that ran for one season on ABC. Yeah, I guess uh, some relevant information is that Marvel Television was a different. There was Marvel Studios and then there was Marvel Television. They were not the same. They were not the same. They didn't have the same leadership. They were. They existed um, in different sort of realms. Whereas now all of the shows are Marvel Studios productions. Uh -huh. So, like, Daredevil, all the Netflix shows was Marvel Television. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Marvel Television. But Someone, yeah. someone has linked a tweet uh, from today. Uh, oh, my God. Actually, yeah, uh, 10 minutes ago. Pre-sales for The Marvels are reportedly now pacing behind that of Black Adam and The Flash. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Oh, my God. This is the sources from Deadline. But that only makes okay, sense that's, that's, to me it anyway. Make, it makes perfect sense, but at the same time, my it's God. Like, do you want to go... I mean, unironically, if we were told, do you want to go see the Marvels? Do you want to go see the Flash? I'd be like, probably the Flash, I guess, yeah? Like, if I... You know, out of, like, which one do you think... Nothing to do with your work. Nothing to do with cultural conversations. Just entertainment. <laughs> Hmm, probably, probably the well, flash. I mean, you know, I mean knowing Adam, Batman's in it, right? Yeah, that's not. And plus, Black Adam, not a good movie at all, but I don't know, I found it entertaining. It's been a wild <laughs> ride for Black Adam because it was, yeah. you know, everything coming up to it, it coming out and being like lackluster in terms of box office, but now in retrospect, it's like, well, it, I guess it well, was. Well, it better than it, everything else. That yeah. Came out this year. <laughs> it's like, like, I mean, it, it wasn't an abject failure, it was just a relative failure. And, you know, fucking Dr. Faye was cool. <laughs> Mm, yep. Um, but but hey, maybe maybe the Marvels is going to change the hierarchy of the DC forever. Could you imagine it makes five billion dollars? We're all like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It'd be so um, funny. Still, there was one bright spot in 2023, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, which became Marvel's biggest draw of the year, with 845 million worldwide. The fact that it was directed by James Gunn, the guy now running rival DC Studios, was lost on no one. I That's mean, yeah. What everyone should mention, if they don't mention it, it's, it's incredibly important to mention. It's why it felt different to the rest, and it's why it's kind of useless information in terms it's of like an the outlier. Yeah. It does it's an outlier. Familiar, yeah. It succeeded despite the franchise it belonged to. Yeah, but sorry, yeah, by use of information, what like I meant is thing. in favor of Marvel's uprising or rebirth or anything. It's like, no, it has nothing to do with no, that. No, no, no. Nope, absolutely. No, this is always going to be a James Gunn thing. Um, yeah. Uh, what's else you know, Beeb? Quote, with Marvel, it used to be as close to a guarantee as you could get, says Paul Der Degarabedian, Degarabedian, a box office analyst at Comscore. So, uh, quote, so going in, uh, all in on budgets made sense. Guardians 3 was a bit overlooked in how successful it was, but that had James Gunn and Chris Pratt, and I think star power is becoming more important. Uh, then there was Quantumania with 476 million. Anything under half a billion dollars is viewed as a disappointment, and these over yeah. overreaching expectations are a result of so much success over the years. That is so true and so important for people to remember. And it, it's it's not because I mean you can see with some other Disney stuff this year, it's like oh yeah, five hundred million slate you have, but when you spend two hundred fifty million dollars, they have it's not got good to enough. rein in the costs of these movies. There is some right, yeah. there is some yeah. rot at the core of their financials. There's just. These movies should not be costing this kind of money. Um, and if they are, then you need to seriously reevaluate what you're spending it on and, uh, and, and just what you're doing. Uh, yeah. There's too many examples of movies that are 100 million and less in terms of their budgets, and th they're great. And they make a lot. So, it's something. I don't know. Yep. Sure, a bunch of stuff they talk about at Marvel, but who knows what'll actually get done. Well then. Um, let's see. The key to reinvigorating Marvel may lie with the superhero arsenal that Disney acquired during <laughs> its 2019 purchase of oh, yeah. 21st Century Fox. Or sure, whatever you say. Yeah. yeah. That it. deal brought several blue chip heroes, such as the X-Men and the Fantastic Four, back under the studio's control. Already... 
fans are geeking out about next year's Deadpool 3, which unites Ryan Reynolds' Merc with a mouth... Oh, Merc with a mouth with Hugh Jackman's Wolverine and a reboot of Fantastic Four slated for 2025. Yeah, I'll believe it's out when it's in the theaters. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> well, bonus, we'll get it, yeah. but who knows what it'll fucking look like who when knows it comes out. Who knows what it'll look like and when and it'll it's so be funny back. too right the um because of the story for x-men origins wolverine uh -huh. and these two are teaming back up for a movie that has the exact same fucking plagued problems like a yeah it's 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 kind of i don't know it's a bit poetic i, uh, I get I very curious bit poetic. it rhymes like george lucas said yeah it does rhyme thanks george as a bonus, the Fox editions give Feige an opportunity to reimagine the X-Men franchise. The more I hear about him talk about Feige like this, I think he's Thrawn. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually kind of Never. perfect, because I imagine that he has spent many, many studio meetings being like, let me explain how we're winning, actually. Yes, yeah, <laughs> this like, is actually really good. I feel good. like we're winning. He's like, no, mm -hmm. no, no. No, no. We got him on the ropes now. We're going to lure him into that theater. Yeah. Um, the very property he cut his teeth on as a young executive at Lauren Schuler Donner's production company. Now that the WGA strike, what is it? Writers Guild of America? Yeah. yeah. Is that what it is? Writers Guild of America. WGA. Canada on strike, no matter where you are. Uh, now that the WGA strike is in the rear view mirror, Marvel has started talking to writers about bringing the X-Men into the MCU fold. That's gonna fix it. Yeah, yep, that'll um, fix all the problems. All it'll be is you'll just find you'll just ruin them too. Um, how many? That's all I hear when I read that. How many new heroes have we had in Phase Four and Five? Does anyone know? Like an estimated guess. Uh oh, damn! Oh, it's been a lot. Obviously, <laughs> my point's gonna be bringing in a bunch of new heroes that you're gonna fuck up is not like you've already done that. The issue, <laughs> yeah, it's. You're just burning fuel. You're not making anything. You're not doing anything. It's just, um, it, our issue isn't that we don't have enough. It's that the ones we have suck. Yeah, and I guess it's almost worse because at least some of the ones that suck right now are all new, like your crazy nonsense inventions that no one cares about anyway. Yeah, you've ruined your own stuff, not our stuff. But when it's like, Wolverine, you're like, no. <laughs> no, no, no. I like him. You're like, hey, it's, it's like your Wolverine favorite. Here. It's Hugh Jackman. Yeah. You're like, no. Oh, stop ruining him. Let him go. You bastard. All right, next All right, up. Uh, well, I got, I'll just finish it off then. Yeah, go for it. Um, while Feige recalibrates, uh, the rest of the industry is anxiously... This is kind of funny. While Feige recalibrates, the rest of the industry is anxiously hoping that Marvel's best days are not behind it. I don't know about that. I feel like just whatever at this point. Um, I don't well, care. I, 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 so I don't care it's weird. Man. You could have a lot of responses to that. One of the ones that I really felt was just like, well, but it is. You, we all know it. It's over. We all know. Like The fact that you're even writing this article is indicative of how over it is. Do you know you how fucking unlikely it would be to claw your way back to anywhere near as successful, both culturally and uh, financially, that, that you were? It's just not going to happen. Um, you had it, and you blew it. It's, the likelihood is fucking staggeringly low that they could ever do it again. Yep. And they, you know, uh, and this is no like, oh shit, we made one bad movie. It's like, no, 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 you guys killed it hardcore. It took ages. Yeah, like it was crazy. But in a couple of years, you made like a dozen awful projects in rapid succession. It's remarkable. Um, writing the Marvel obit, uh, quote, writing the Marvel obituary ob obituary would be ill advised, says Jason Squire, professor <laughs> emeritus. At the USC School of Cinematic Art and host of the Movie Business Podcast, um, Kevin Feige is the Babe Ruth of movie executives, and Marvel has the most profitable track record in movie history, no question. Man, it's kind of weird, like, the Feige worship in here. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like, what the hell, what the, what is, what is that? I don't know, as well, it's just also just like, what do you, what do you hold on to there? <laughs> it's not gonna happen, yeah, like, it's what, over. Exactly. It's, it's done, it's Biden, it's Jova. Obviously, we, oh we're God. just waiting for a bit of uh, the, the Marvel's information to confirm what we know to be true, yeah. but exactly. we, we are actual days away from being able to confirm that. It's so over. Mm-hmm. 
And it's funny because you'd be like, well, hey, what about a Marvel's the Avengers movie coming out? And you'd be like, what do you think is going to happen with that? No, they, they, I think that they actually have to save the Avengers movie for when they're legitimately actually confident that it's going to do well. Because a bad Avengers movie, um, in terms of box office, yeah. it's not just going to be like, that's going to actually be like that. That'll be the Titanic sinking. Yeah, if, and if, everyone's if, gonna see it. That's a good point because if uh, if an Avengers movie makes less than a billion dollars, then it is absolutely and utterly completely finished and done. Yep, they have to make sure that, and even if it means delaying it for years, or if this phase, or if this like roundabout, whatever you want to call it, doesn't even have them, it'll probably be worth it to just you got to save it. Yeah, because then you can leave it in the realm of we'll never know. That's speculation. You don't know that it would fail or underperform. You know. Wow, someone, so so many, John Walker, Lady Loki, uh, Shuri, She-Hulk, Echo, Kate Bishop, Monica Rambeau, Miss Marvel, Moon Knight, Elsa Bloodstone, Werewolf by Midnight, Man-Thing, America Chavez, Black Widow's sister, um, Red Guardian, <laughs> Taskmaster, Daredevil, Lady Thor, uh, Cassie Lang, Captain America, Falcon, um, Marvel's, Marvel's Katie, Shang Chi, <laughs> the Five Eternals, uh, Blade, uh, <laughs> like basically, someone just started typing them out, and they're like, "Yeah, all these people, and who gives a shit about like any of them?" There's maybe like four on that list that might get people's attention, but even then, even then, even oh uh, yeah, then. what a what a crazy the I guess to to cap it off the fact that this article exists is indicative of how much trouble Marvel's in. Yes, uh, they felt bold enough, and and the information they have in there, not all of it is like hyper confirmable, but a lot of it is a lot of it's stuff we already do. A lot of it's just true, which is it's not doing well. It lost money, and uh, you know our sort of coverage has been on lots of different media, but we've definitely traced closely the uh, the MCU, especially. It's kind of funny, right? In the timelines, like we were definitely hardcore tracing it um, as of Endgame, and we've yep. basically seen in slow motion the entire fall and talked about the trajectory forever. And it's only now that, like, it, it seems to be everybody's sort of realizing what's going on. All the people who like really love the MCU, all the people who are working on the MCU, which which is um, we know that publicly, but they would have known as well a lot earlier than uh, we would imagine because they they get all the numbers directly. Yeah, there's always that element of at the company, like regardless of what they say publicly, they mm -hmm. know the numbers, they know the truth. Well, it's kind of like how every single DC film that's been coming out, there's been an amount of, I guess, outward cope that needs to be displayed. Yeah, you have to put on a strong face. Yeah. The reality is Aquaman, it's the end and it's going to be unceremonious and it's probably not going to do very well and we're done and we're moving on, but we need but to pretend We're excited for, for the next while. chapter and Aquaman's thing and he's such a yeah. great actor and this and magical it's a great world. Movie. And it's going to lead that. into, it's going to lead nicely into our reboot. Yeah, it'll it'll they'll say all the stuff that I you know that you expect them to say. They're not going to be like, yeah, this one's going to be a shitter, guys. Sorry, uh, better luck. Yeah, next like time. they're not they're not going to say. Don't don't even bother. It's it's not it's not real, and it's pretty bad if I'm being honest. <laughs> yeah, and um, it's uh, if you imagine where we were at, let's say post uh, at the end of Infinity War, you have like a room filled with it's the it's the end credits from Age of Ultron, all those statuesque imagery of like all of the assets they have within the MCU. And they took a fucking hammer to them with each project. We've been smashing, smashing, smashing. And it's just like, there's nothing in the room left now. It's all gone. So no wonder right. you're at this it, position. Like, we can... Like, I think a lot of people could be like, oh, is it truly down to like, oh, the, the, they didn't do better world building in Falcon the Winter Soldier. And it's like, kind of? Like, every individual piece of bad writing throughout all of those projects has added up is kind of the point. It's a snowball, kind of. You can imagine it like a snowball rolling down yeah. a hill. It's just like yeah. that that little line about Iron Man not taking care of the Avengers, like in retrospect, is like that's tiny, and it's like does it's just just another bit on top of everything. I mean, yeah, I mean, a, a, an avalanche is a lot of snowflakes. Yep. So next, um, there was a forum post. I don't know exactly what site it was. I think it might have been 4chan, but it's basically someone who's got relative insider knowledge on each of the productions of all the movies in the MCU, and uh, I was looking through all of the random tidbits of information. Some of it I didn't know about and don't know if it's true. Some of it I know to definitely be true thanks to insider stuff. And then some of it is just uh, interesting factoids about the production. So, uh, instead of me posting all the images, I can just uh, 
go the direction of having... If you can pull up the stream, I guess, for Ian Rising. If you, well, you don't have to. You can just listen to me saying them anyway. But um, we're um, gonna, it starts with I, good old... Uh, wait, so... Th wait. So if you is... want to, you don't have to. The way this is going to work is I'm going to say the name of the film and then read out the factoids that are from this uh, this forum post. was kind of interesting. Okay, right, but I, I guess, I guess the thing listen. that it got is... So you said this is from 4chan, right? Potentially, yes. I'm not exactly sure what the forum is, but I mean, this is a, 4chan is not a place where um, you don't get crazy leaks from. People dump oh, yeah, them. I'm sure, but, but I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of stuff that's just memes or just bullshit. Right? Well, we'll see. I mean, uh, yeah. I'll be curious what your thoughts will be once we get through all of these. I wonder what you'll think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, so, uh, Iron Man. Right. We got an uh, alternate post credits scene that was going to feature Nick Fury directly referencing radioactive spiders and assorted mutants as other cases that S.H.I.E.L.D. was invested in or investigating, which I, I thought was interesting in terms of just um, the rights issues and. They can still kind of because do you remember there was um there was a scene where Tony Stark was going to reference the arms he gave a doctor in uh, New York or whatever, or or uh, it, 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 that that was originally going to be that there was an implication Doc that Tony Ock? yeah there was going to be an implication that Tony Stark built the arms that Doc Ock has in Spider Man too. Um, that would have been interesting, I suppose. I could like buy that as a premise. So, um, just the, the you know it's going to be a mix of things from this, but uh. Tom Cruise was the original choice for Tony Stark, with Timothy Oliphant, Sam Rockwell, and Clive Owen being considered before Robert Downey Jr. was cast. I didn't actually know that. I've, I knew I've the heard two, that Tom Cruise I've heard one. I've the Tom Cruise one. But I was thinking about, like, it's so crazy because in retrospect, Robert Downey Jr. is just the, uh, it just seems like the easy best choice, but apparently he was a fifth choice. Interesting. Uh, the movie was filmed mostly without a script, with actors improvising most of their dialogue, which is stuff everyone knows. Um, production was so chaotic that the cast and producers expected the movie to be a disaster until test screenings were overwhelmingly positive. Again, um, it's kind of the thing we were talking about earlier, this sort of... Uh, you could have like a damaged and difficult production, but it leads to something everyone loves, and then it's in retrospect to look like a scrappy and sort of big attempt to get a thing going and moving with uh, lots of creative energy. But um, when it's the thing produces something bad, it's like seen as soulless, which I'm not saying is not true, because I'm pretty sure it is, right? Like the production behind She-Hulk, I'm sure people were like happy when filming it. Probably. I mean, maybe they were all miserable, what with the VFX and the... the VFX well, people yeah, are always going to be miserable from what VFX, we can gather. VFX is other people's problem, not the people who are showing up on set is the point that he's banking. Yeah, maybe. Oh, yeah. Um... Yeah, the actors I could probably see had a good maybe. time because yeah, yeah but the actors would be yeah. Yeah. Um. So all right, over to Hulk. Norton demanded to rewrite the script, but most of his contributions were rejected, and he frequently clashed with director uh, Luis Leteria and the producers, which is pretty commonly known. Uh, he was a fan of The Wire and added a subplot about a man played by Michael K. Williams who reaches out to the Hulk during the Battle of Harlem. The subplot was almost entirely cut, and Williams' role reduced to a cameo. And this made me think about like. Edward Norton's power when he was on, when he was creating uh, Incredible Hulk. I wonder if he did have a pretty big amount of power, but he still overstepped. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah, maybe. Because this, uh, this is all sort of DNA of the issues in the MCU. There's loads of controversial and difficult things. Like it's all in, or a lot of it is mentioned in the um, the Reign of the MCU book, book. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. they they never had like a. It's almost sold as though the phase one and two times were like super smooth, peaceful, and wonderful, and that they nailed uh, it because they planned no. it all. And it's like no, no, absolutely not. Norton also added an extended comedic sequence where Banner interacts with a computer geek at his old laboratory. Uh, Seth Rogen, Jonah Hill, and Jason Segel were considered before Martin Starr was cast, and the scene was heavily trimmed. I don't even remember this. I don't remember this either. And I've seen that movie, I believe, twice, maybe three times. Early drafts feature Rick Jones as Banner's companion, but Norton disliked the character and wrote him out. Again, I didn't realize he had that kind of power. Um, maybe that was back in the... yeah, I guess. Hmm. Well, because he was removed eventually, controversially as well, as far as I'm aware. So it might have been that he, he managed to negotiate power in, but then, uh, I guess too much, which, because you won't get that kind of power these days, and it's part of what they, I guess, how they're falling apart. Uh, the movie originally featured Banner attempting suicide in the Arctic, but transforming into the Hulk and ended with S.H.I.E.L.D. finding a frozen Captain America after the Hulk had accidentally unearthed him. Doesn't that sound shit? That do does sound shit. The question is, do I believe that? Is do I even thing? believe this? Yeah. 
Well, that's the mm -hmm. thing. We already there's a couple of combos in here of things that actually are definitely true. But uh, this this would be if it were true, it would be very shit. And it, maybe that's why it was cut theoretically, or at least changed. Maybe um, it could have been an idea that they were tossing around. I mean, it's kind of it, that seems like in the same vein as the Iron Man Doc Doc Ock thing. But I see like that one. Oh wait, people in chat saying it did happen. It's real. It's even online. You can find it. I didn't even know this was the oh, thing. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, it's apparently a deleted scene that was released. That sucks. Oh wow. <laughs> I wouldn't want that. Oh, no. I guess it's good. It's deleted. Oh. There you go. Uh, early cuts feature Hulk decapitating abomination, which changed due to negative reception at test screenings. Say that one more time. Early cuts featured Hulk decapitating abomination, which was changed due to negative reception at test screenings. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I could see that being, especially with its depiction, it might be a bit. That's like, like to me, that's like super dependent on what selection of people you have, because I could, I could totally see an audience like. Imagine a lot of people saying like, "Wait, you get to see Hulk rip off like Abomination's head." Yeah, I could see people saying that's fucking badass, you know. They might not want to, they might, because this is still pretty early on, so maybe they don't want to set up expectations for that kind of violence and imagery. Also, yes, yeah. that would be Tim Roth dead at that point. <laughs> we wouldn't get to see him in well, She-Hulk. Oh, no. We wouldn't see him in She-Hulk, exactly. So, you know, really. Uh, Ray Stevenson was considered for Emil Blonsky before Tim Roth was cast. Well, Ray Stevenson abomination could have been kind of cool. But the thing is, I, I don't know, that, that, that character's not exactly been treated well in the MCU at all anyway. No. Nope. Yeah, you could, you could join the club. Tobey Maguire would originally cameo as Peter Parker bumping into Banner at Empire State University, but Sony rejected the idea. Oh, well. Okay. <laughs> it's just sort of funny things that probably happen all the time. Uh, Hulk would originally be the main villain of the Avengers, hence the ending where Banner flashes a sinister smile as he begins to transform again. Oh. Okay. That, that ending, that is something that, that, that has always been in the back of my mind with that film, because it does end with him, like, the heartbeat's going up, he's about to turn into Hulk, and he smiles, and it's like, what am I supposed to get from that? That he's in control? Or, or not? So, uh, yeah, apparently that was going to lead into him being the uh, Avengers bad guy, or at least, um, I think it was controlled by Loki, or something like that, uh, which is kind of, some of that bleeds into the actual Avengers script. Iron Man 2, the movie would originally launch Phase 2, but it was rushed into production to capitalize on the success of the first film. Jon Favreau planned to adapt Demon in a Bottle, but the studio felt it was too dark and replaced Stark's alcoholism with the palladium poisoning. That's, um, that's hard to know whether or not that would have been a good decision. Iron Man 2 yeah. is known as one of the worst films of the, uh, of, let's say, Phase 1 and 2, I guess, but... You know, at this point, it's not it's not exactly that bad compared to how bad it no, gets. No, nobody, not not anymore compared <laughs> compared to where we're at now. Um, early cuts featured Stark striking Pepper in a drunken rage, which was cut as it made him oh, too unsympathetic. Geez. Yeah, that would have. That's yeah, difficult. That that's a bit. Yeah, that's. Uh, You'd have to. I don't know. If, I don't want to see that. The only way you could get that to work is making him very drunk and her saying something like really, really rough. But even then, yeah, that's not going to work for audiences too well. Well, I mean, like, think about the at the beginning of Doctor Strange one, him and his relationship with uh, what was his name? Rachel. Like that was, yeah, sure. Rachel. Um, but like Rachel. they, like you know, he <laughs> was pretty, he was pretty mean to her. He was a real jerk, but he was going through you know a really rough time. So like, I think that was a you know a decent job at. Yeah, he didn't punch her, which is if he did, <laughs> he would have been like, yeah. holy shit. He, I'll punch you with my fucked up hands. <laughs> <laughs> like slaps at it, sort of. <laughs> like, a, like a shitty little, eh, kind of slap. I can only hit you so hard. And then even what more if he surgeries. said that, I can only hit you so hard. <laughs> um, First thing I do when I get my hands fixed is punch your lights out. Early cuts featured sexual tension between Stark and Black Widow, which was cut because it undermined Stark's relationship with Pepper, which is interesting, because I guess they mean more than is there, because there is a few references to that. But it's basically stopped as soon as she's Black Widow, or at least revealed, sort of thing. Uh, Terrence Howard dropped out due to salary disputes, which was replaced by Don Cheadle. Producer Ike Perlmutter claimed audiences wouldn't notice because all blacks look alike. What? Which is, a, you know, this is one of those ones that's what like, gonna need citations I, for that one. I don't believe yeah, that I, one. I don't <laughs> believe that one. That there's is... no way. There's the, I, I don't believe that unless there's like a recording or something. Because I just don't believe that. Yeah, I don't know if there's any corroboration for this from anyone else, but, like, that just... That's crazy. <laughs> like, doesn't make any sense at all, because... 
<laughs> There's so many like famous black uh, creators or oh, artists at that at this point. They're like, what do you mean? Yeah, Jonathan Majors, Lawrence Fishburne, whatever. You know, it's all the same. Yeah. But uh, people in chat are saying there are there are other sources that say this was true, not just. Uh, you know, like, there's other places this is from. Uh, Mickey Rourke created an elaborate backstory for Vanko, but most of these scenes were cut. Rourke was displeased and swore never to work with Marvel again. That's one of the ones that's more commonly known. Uh, he and several other actors have sworn off Marvel permanently after working with them. The cast mm -hmm. improvised most of the dialogue again. Favreau was unhappy with the movie due to the rush production and declined to direct Iron Man 3. And yet you came back for Star Wars. Yeah, Star Wars and the Lion King. Thanks, bro. Well, it doesn't isn't the picture painted so clearly that it's like I can't work with you guys. Don't let people create. And then eventually was like, well, I know what it means to work with you, and I guess I uh, I'll do it. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> ooh, it, yeah. Uh, Thor. The movie was almost scrapped, and Thor introduced in the Avengers as producers feared audiences wouldn't understand the character. I mean, what's to understand? It's not that complicated. I'm going to be honest with you, out of Iron Man, Cap, Hulk, and Thor, who is the easiest to understand? It's like, it's going to be between Hulk and Thor, I would have thought. Probably. They're pretty straightforward, even, I mean, yeah, he's, he's an Asgardian god or whatever, but I don't know if that's much of a stumbling block for people. I don't think so. The not movie really. was originally a dark epic set in the Viking Age, but this was scrapped due to budget. Sounds like it could be cool. Could mm. be cool. Yeah. Early drafts feature Thor's human alter ego, Dr. Donald Blake, Thor's brother, Boulder, Loki's lover, Amora, and Sif and Heimdall being siblings. I actually, in retrospect, think they really should have had Boulder. Um, super Things big. It's like a uh, possibility and opportunity that's foregone, you know? For those in chat who don't know, they actually reference him in uh, the Loki show, season two. Mm -hmm. Pretty cringe. Loki right. says nobody even remembers him. It's like, okay. Yeah, whatever. Whatever you say, Loki. Brian Blessed and Mel Gibson were considered for Odin before Anthony Hopkins was cast. Okay. Mel Gibson Odin. Mel Gibson. Is Mel Odin. Gibson Odin. Um Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Brian Blessed I can just see. I yeah, can that's see easy. Brian Blessed, yeah. Mel Gibson? Maybe. I I okay. All right. I'm not gonna say no. But, I mean, Anthony Hopkins, if I'm picking between these three, I know who I'm picking. Um, Alexander Townsend was originally cast as Fandral, but was fired after showing up drunk on the first day of filming. Chris Pratt and Zachary Levi were considered to replace him before Josh Dallas was cast. Oh, showing those up drunk on a are... set. Yeah, those I'm, I'm skeptical of like those kinds of claims, because you never know, but maybe. Yeah, all of these are contextless claims, but the, a lot of them come from sources that apparently people in chat are vaguely aware of anyway. Captain America. Channing Tatum, Alexander Skarsgård, uh, Garrett Hedlund, Scott Eastwood, Scott Porter, Mike Vogel, Michael Casty, Chase Cro Crawford, Chad Michael Murray, Patrick John Fluger, Robert Buckley, Derek Thieler, Ryan McPartland, Teddy Sears, Ryan... F is that Philippi? That is his name, isn't it? Philippi, um, I think so. Or is it Philippe? I think it's Philippi. Wilson, Bethel, Jensen Ackles, John Krasinski, Wyatt Russell, Chris Pratt, and Sebastian Stan were all considered for Steve Rogers before Chris Evans was cast. That must have been fucking insane to figure out who was supposed to get that role. You have that I feel like a lot of people could be like Captain America. Um, though I'm glad Chris Pratt is the one we got. Oh yeah, I really like Pratt. him as Captain yeah, I'm yeah. glad Chris Pratt, yeah, Absolutely. I'm really glad yeah. he's Captain America. Evans declined the role twice due to nine picture contract offered by the studio before agreeing once it was reduced to six. I think that one is basically like definitely true. I think I remember seeing something about that recently. <clears throat> uh, the Avengers. The original script featured S.H.I.E.L.D. assembling the Avengers to fight Hulk, who'd been brainwashed by Loki before they joined forces to defend Earth from Loki and Frost Giants. Very that different. seems like it could be real because it's like a retooling of stuff that we Yeah, I could got. buy that. Yeah. Uh, early cuts feature Thor reviving Iron Man with lightning after Iron Man falls from the wormhole. Robert Downey Jr. and Mark Ruffalo ad-libbed the Hulk roaring to awaken Iron Man. I think if Thor revived uh, Tony Stark with a lightning bolt, we would be like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, it's, it's not healthy. Yeah. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix was approached for Bruce Banner before Mark Ruffalo was cast. Man. 
Joaquin what a Phoenix different Hulk. timeline that would have been if that's true. He's another actor that I imagine if they actually signed him on, he wouldn't let them. Uh, no, he would have fought harder for the role. Iron Man 3. Maya Hansen would originally be the villain, but Ike Perlmutter yeah, no. didn't believe a female villain would sell toys and changed it to Aldrich Killian. <laughs> I, I suppose that. maybe. Well, maybe. the irony with that is just that Aldrich Killian sucks, and I don't think anybody bought his toys. <laughs> maybe one or two people. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, how many people were eager for those toys? Um, early drafts feature Killian using extremist enhanced pheromones to seduce Pepper, record this sexual uh, encounter, and broadcast it nationwide to taunt Stark. What the hell? Oof. Uh, I don't like Iron Man 3, but I don't- I think it's better that it doesn't have this in it. <laughs> Jeez. Iron Man 3 was the last movie in Robert Downey Jr.'s original four-picture contract and was written as a definitive end for Stark should he not renegotiate to return in further installments. I suppose that makes the ending a little more... Like, it makes it make more sense. Makes more sense, because I was so confused when I saw that in the theater. I'm like, wait, is it over? Is that it for Iron Man? I still, even as a... I guess if you have to create an ending that's open-ended, but also an ending, it's like, that's why it looks that way. But, like, I didn't like that, even knowing that. It's so fucking strange. No, I, I don't like it either. Or the Dark World. Patty Jenkins was originally directing the movie on Natalie Portman's recommendation. She later dropped out due to creative differences and Alan Taylor was hired, leading Portman to almost drop out in protest. Production was troubled with multiple script rewrites and frequent conflicts between Taylor and the producers. Which is, yeah, yeah that's pretty that's well known. Well known. Patty Jenkins would have made it and I'm sure it would have been great. Yeah. Ella would originally... Man, isn't, it, isn't it crazy how quickly she went from like being able to do whatever she wanted to... She's, like, got nothing going on anymore. Yeah. She almost One got of... the uh, Rogue Squadron stuff. Yep. Uh, Hella would originally be the villain, but Ike Pilmutter didn't believe a female villain would, uh, villain would sell toys and changed it to Malekith. Wait, okay, so is this stuff from that book? Because um, I'm definitely seeing, like, summaries of, of that book, the new one that came out that included this sort of stuff. Some of this stuff I'm aware of before the book even came out, so... Okay, right. It, but some of it could very much be from the book. I just um, remember I read a summary of some important, like, factoids from the book, and I definitely remember seeing a couple of these sorts of things. The, the thing I find funny, again, is that Malekith, it, it's, he sucks. Nobody likes Malekith, nobody remembers Malekith. <laughs> nobody nobody bought Malekith. Malekith. He was the villain from Thor 2? Thor 2, yeah. yes. The fact that you even know that... <laughs> Means that you know better than the majority of people. Yeah, I'm almost <laughs> proud of you. And even then, that. I was kind of so-so on it. I've seen yeah. that film once when it came out, uh, but I guess I just remember it for some reason. In early drafts, Loki sacrificed himself for Thor, but due to character's newfound popularity after the Avengers, the ending was reshot to have Loki fake his death and usurp the throne of Asgard. Of course, yeah. Loki was yeah. almost out of the MCU. From Just, Thor 2. Wow, that's we wouldn't have had... About. Yeah, that's crazy. That is wild. Look at him go now. Motherfucker Look is the now. most important Whoever character in the whole universe. Yeah. Uh, early drafts feature Malekith seeking revenge for a murder of his family at the hands of Thor's grandfather, Bor. But the concept was scrapped. Chris Freckleston was displeased and swore to never work with Marvel again. Thor's grandfather's name is Bor? Apparently. Okay. I'm not as familiar with Norse stuff. Uh, early cuts feature Thor's rivalry with his warmongering cousin Tyr, the commander of the Asgardian Royal Guard, played by Clive Standen. Most of his scenes were cut. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's so much they could have obviously explored on the Norse side of ship, but the, the MC was only ever playing with it slightly. It was never... Yeah. It was never terrible, but it's like, eh, eh, eh. Um, Benedict Cumberbatch and Mads Mikkelsen were considered for Malekith before Eggleston was cast. Ugh, imagine wow. Cumberbatch being Malekith. <laughs> and then that's it for him. That's it, yeah. What and if I they still like brought him back as Doctor Strange? Well, I mean, they, they brought... Uh, no one remembers Jim... him. <laughs> no one remembers well, Malekith. I think, I think they just... did that right. Uh, Gemma Chan played someone in, uh, in, yes. in, in Captain Marvel, but then they decided, wait, that's stupid. Let's get her for something else. And then she got a turtles, which, you know, I don't know, I don't know if that's up or down in terms of... Uh, so, Moving up the totem pole. Winter Soldier. Uh, early drafts feature Phil Coulson as the Hydra Mole before he was killed in Avengers. Wow. Yeah. 
Imagine Phil Coulson turning out to be evil after all this. It's like, fucking hell. <laughs> and it's so That's funny crazy. because they would have written that while Avengers was going on. They'd been like, oh, never mind. <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> like, yep. Uh, early yeah. drafts feature... I wonder the, how often that actually happens in the writer's room now. Why don't we get a... Uh, uh, what is that? Malekith. Why, why don't we bring him in? He's like, he's dead, sir. <laughs> Did you watch the movie? He's like, no. The what? I don't watch these movies. Nobody does. Early drafts feature Arnim Zola escaping from the bunker in a robotic body before it explodes. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picturing him like going... For sure, for sure, for sure, like a Terminator body just... <laughs> <laughs> he has that like epic jump as the bunker explodes. <laughs> yeah, and then he's like, technically not a super soldier. <laughs> God, they were desperate to keep bringing back Zola. He was in the uh, Agent Carter show as well. Oh. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, Nicole Pillman wrote the first draft of the script, which featured Richard Ryder becoming Nova and joining forces with Star Lord to form the Guardians of the Galaxy and defend Xandar from Ronan the Accuser. Gunn rewrote Pillman's script and attempted to get solo credit despite keeping many of Pillman's ideas, such as Star-Lord's love for 80s music, leading to a lengthy WGA arbitration that saw them both credited for story and solely Gunn for the script. Interesting. That's interesting. I did not know about that, if that's true. Well, I guess if there was litigation that was reported on. Hmm. Presumably it's true if it's called that, yeah. Pilmata believed that the movie would flop, and its failure would allow them to better control Kevin Feige. He was also against having a soundtrack of 70s, 80s classics. Um, it is really funny, because, I, dude, I remember, I think I watched, like, a video that was like, yeah, so Phase 2 is gonna have Guardians of the Galaxy, and I was like, what the, God, what is that? <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy? I almost, yeah, I what? almost want to be fair to Pilmata with this and be like, listen, this was a, this, this was an actual, like, what the hell? Um, not the well, I, not the soundtrack uh, part. Well, I feel like you're safe on no, that no, one. Just the, the fact that it even exists. Because I remember as uh, Amanda Seyfried said that she was gonna, she got offered Gamora, but she turned it down because she didn't want to be part of what she thought could be Marvel's first failure, like the MCU's first failure, mm -hmm. which is interesting. What a different but timeline. What's I think the most interesting thing is if it's true that if Guardians had failed. It's Pilmata versus Feige, which I've heard before. That is like seems a... to be, I've heard about that, yeah. That they were fighting for control of Marvel Studios, and, um, basically. Civil War is where Pilmata is ousted, essentially, right? Yeah, as I understand it, anyway. Uh, early cuts feature Gamora reluctantly killing Nebula during the Battle of Xandar. Wow, that's a, uh... Another so no interesting, Nebula. No Nebula, which Damn. she's super important with the... Bunch of future stuff. Oh, well, she, she's, uh, she was one of the better characters for a while there. Yeah. Age of Ultron. Production was troubled with multiple script rewrites and frequent conflicts between Joss Whedon and the producers, which again is pretty well known. Uh, yeah, just well known. Just, yeah, obviously. The original script features the government creating Ultron and disbanding the Avengers who have assembled once again when Ultron goes rogue and decides to destroy humanity. Government create Ultron and then disband the Avengers and they have to assemble to defeat Ultron. It's interesting because that changes fucking everything. Like... Uh, yeah, that changes everything that comes afterward. I wonder, I wonder if fans would have hated, unless they had Hank Pym creating it with the government? Uh, maybe people would have liked that more. Maybe, yeah, that's, uh, that's a very different story. Early drafts feature Ultron modeled after Tony Stark's neural patterns, Abomination as Ultron's enforcer, Ultron invading Wakanda to steal Vibranium, Ultron drones combining to form a Mecha Ultron for the final battle. <laughs> do you remember, do you remember, uh, <laughs> do it, it. Uh, do you remember that gag in Family Guy where Joe created like a Mecha out of disabled people? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then he shot them with wheelchair like Ganon and Peter. <laughs> <laughs> And Captain Marvel and Spider-Man among uh, were among the recruits for the new Avengers. As early as Age of Ultron, eh? Wow. Which makes some sense, because Spider-Man is up next anyway, right, with Civil War. Uh, the subplot uh, about yeah. Thor investigating the Infinity Stones was added on executive demand, but later mostly cut as test audience disliked it. No surprise there. Nobody wants to watch the main plot, and then suddenly Thor is looking out for stones. It's like, okay. Yeah. The Avengers' visions and Hawkeye's farmhouse were nearly cut to streamline the plot, streamline the plot and tighten the pacing, which, again, yeah. Man. But, I mean, you cut that, you do lose, like, a, a lot well, of stuff. I wouldn't be willing to cut the Avengers' visions. The Hawkeye farmhouse stuff, there's probably a better way to have 
it does last a bit, uh, especially Hawkeye's oh, yes. scenes. Yes, that's um, uh, well because I mean he needed to. I mean, what the angle was? Yeah, Hawkeye is the heart of the team, and it's like, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was cringe. That scene because uh, it's so overcompensating for the first one. Which it was his role in the first one was fine. It didn't need to be bigger. It was fine. You had you had a movie to make. You had a lot of characters. I get it. In early cuts, Banner would ultimately reject Black Widow and she would trigger his transformation into Hulk by lying about having never truly loved him. What? <laughs> that feels like something that you'd have to work long and hard to get me to buy. I'm glad they changed it, because that sucks, I think. Whose idea was that? Don't know. In early cuts, Loki appeared in Thor's vision to warn him about Ragnarok, but this was cut as test audiences mistakenly assumed it meant Loki was controlling Ultron. What? Okay. I don't even know how you'd make that mistake. Yeah. But okay. Oh, wait. Let's. <laughs> uh, all right. So now we're up to Civil War. Getting through this timeline quick. Uh, early yeah, drafts yeah. feature a larger role for Spider Man and a smaller role for Black Panther. When the deal between Marvel Studios and Sony Pictures initially fell through, Black Panther's role was expanded. Marvel and Sony later reached an agreement, and Spider Man was reinserted in a smaller role. I find that super interesting because Black Panther is super important to Civil War. Like, yes, the story and there's really quite a good, good character too. Um, yeah, and I, I just I like the the amount that was used for both of them. Ike Perlmutter initially refused to pay Robert Downey Jr. for more than a cameo before Feige managed to overturn his decision. During the period where Iron Man was unavailable, the Russos created an alternate third act centered on Baron Zemo searching for a biological weapon, the Mad Bomb, which compels people to into murderous rampages. The uh, Civil War was going to be very different at certain stages. Yeah, I mean, we've heard the comic book version. Yep. So. Uh, Pilmutter initially refused to have Captain America and Iron Man fight and demanded that they join forces against Zemo and the Hydra super soldiers in the end, leading to a conflict with Feige that ended with Marvel Studios splitting off from Marvel Entertainment and Pilmutter being reassigned to the television department while Feige gained complete control over the movies. There it is. It's the big split, which is interesting because uh, the fight between Cap and Iron Man in Civil War is fucking great, and it's, it's, mm, it's coming in... Kiss. Because of, um, it's a reaction to Batman vs. Superman, right? A little bit. A little bit. They need something that can compete with it, and it's like, yeah, the Civil War storyline is getting pulled and pushed all over the place by different people, and I guess uh, something snapped and they had to make a decision. Uh, Perlmutter also demanded that Giant Man be removed from the script for being too silly. The Russos created an alternate version of the airport scene where Scarlet Witch telekinetically blows up the underground pipeline to create a division for Captain America and Winter Soldier to escape before Feige overturned Perlmutter's decision. I don't know why you think mm. Giant Man's too silly. Yeah, I'm not sure why I think that at all. Yeah, never came across to me as silly. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure fans it's like love reasonable that part. use of his powers of and or his uh, moments, abilities. You know, one of the favorite moments of that film for a lot of people. Uh, early cuts featured an alternative opening where Zemo obtains the notebook with Bucky's trigger phrases by killing attendants of an underground auction for Hydra assets with poison gas, which sounds fine. It's probably good work. Uh, Doctor Strange. Early cuts feature a darker tone that was poorly received by test audiences, leading to reshoots to add more humor. Oh, cool. Thanks. How many Test times have we heard that? It's such a common thing of it was cool and then test audiences didn't like it. <laughs> yeah. So they made it labor. Have we ever heard that a movie was too funny and they had all like too I, goofy? I don't know. I'm not sure if I've ever Maybe seen it. Maybe tonally where... is the closest you can get to that. Like people felt like it was poorly, like the tone was off. Well, yeah, that's why I said goofy, right? Like as, as a test audience ever said, like, nah, you need to make this more serious. I don't know. Because I always hear about like them saying you need to make it more it's funny. Only ever, yeah, exactly. It's only ever, it's too dark, it's too serious, and it needs to be more funny. Early cuts feature a subplot about Strange's sister, Donna, who falls into a frozen lake while they're playing together and drowns despite his attempts to save her, motivating Strange to study medicine. Lulu Wilson ah, played Donna, but all of her scenes were cut. Would have I benefited. It. it would have benefited MOM to have that day in the film. Yeah. Because yeah. it felt yeah. like he pulled it out of his ass. He's just like, there's a story about... My daughter that motivated me to want to save people. Like, oh. His sister, you mean. Oh, sorry, yeah, his sister. 
Um, Benedict Cumberbatch initially declined the role of Stephen Strange due to scheduling conflicts. Maz Mikkelsen, Joaquin Phoenix, Jared Leto, Jake Gyllenhaal, <laughs> Tom Hardy, Colin Farrell, Ethan Hawke, Jack Hus- Huston, uh, Oscar Isaac, Keanu Reeves, Matthew McConaughey, Ewan McGregor, Justin Thoreau, and Ryan Gosling were all considered. Wow, all right. Dude. What a selection. I'm uh, curious about yeah, a Maz Mikkelsen, a Doctor selection. Strange, man. That would have been... Man, uh, the the multiverses yeah. of all the different actors we've <laughs> yeah. gotten for these uh, characters, it, that would have been wild. Tony Todd was considered to voice Dormammu before Cum- uh, Cumberbatch himself was cast. I didn't actually know Tony Cumberbatch Todd. did voice um, Dormammu. Oh yeah, he did. He did. Uh... Cool. Tony Todd would have been a good choice too, though. Oh yeah, he's he's got a cool voice, but uh, he does. He's Venom. Guardians the of the Galaxy Two. Uh, Jason of Spartax would originally be Star-Lord's father, but Joss Whedon argued that being in, uh, the heir to an intergalactic empire would make Star-Lord less relatable. I'm not sure where I'd sit oh, on that. I, um, I, yeah, I, I got nothing for that, really. Because the whole... I don't think it changes anything about how we relate to Star-Lord, because it would obviously... He wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't have affected well, it him. Well, doesn't change his history or his character. He is who he is. Yeah. Uh, director James Gunn added Ego as Star-Lord's father before learning that the character's rights belonged to 20th Century Fox. The studio eventually traded Ego to Marvel Studios in exchange for changing Negasonic Teenage Warhead's powers in Deadpool. What an interesting deal. That's an interesting deal. We will give you Ego if you give us a change to... Specifically different powers for one of the characters in Deadpool. Yeah. (laughs) It's... (laughs) Um, Mike Mil- Pilmutter was against Ego being the villain as he believed audiences wouldn't accept Kurt Russell in such a role. Why are there so many of these, really? like, Mike Pilmutter had some bizarre perspectives? <laughs> Maybe we're only hearing about the bizarre ones and he made lots of normal ones, too. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Because that is, like, isn't that part of why it works? That he, you, he he's charming? People would be Kurt Russell as, like, the villain. I mean, yeah, well, exactly. it was what I'm saying is like you can believe that Ego got to where he was because he's good at manipulating people and that Kurt Russell's charming. That's like why it works. Exactly. Early cuts feature a sixth post credit scene. I don't know, sixth. Sixth? <laughs> In which Gamora and Mantis hear the screams of one of the Ravagers who are pierced by Yondu's arrow and has pre- uh, presumably been forgotten and is screaming in agony since then. What? I. Uh, <laughs> Okay, but why? Like, early cuts feature Star-Lord pointing out that Ego looks like one of his favorite actors, Kurt Russell, indicating that Ego deliberately adopted Russell's appearance to earn Star-Lord's trust. No. I don't think so. I, I don't want that. Uh, what, what do you guys argue is why you shouldn't do that? Um, um, oof. There's something about it that just seems, like, strange. Yeah, it's... Like, it's like my gut instinct is like, no way. And then there's an element where I'm like, ah, the, like the specific reason. It's just, I feel like it's starting to acknowledge that now, what, what about all the other people who play these roles now? But now they're real people too in this world. Yeah. I, oh, but I mean, I would say it's yeah. just, it's just one little notch on the level of reminding me about the real world or connecting us to it. It's like, don't stop. We've got plenty yeah. and we don't need that. Uh, Matthew McConaughey was approached to play Ego, but ultimately declined, and Kurt Russell was cast at Chris Pratt's suggestion. Liam Neeson and Gary Oldman were also considered. Yeah, I feel Gary like Kurt, Russell, <laughs> Kurt Russell's the best out of the lot for that uh, role, I would I say. So that role. He did a great job. Spider-Man Homecoming. Peter would originally accept Stark's offer and reveal his secret identity to the world, which would be in line with the comics, right? Civil War comics? Uh, in the comics uh, for Civil War, yeah, right? he reveals his identity, but yeah, but obviously, I prefer, yeah, uh, I way prefer the decision and the arc that he goes on. Early drafts feature yeah, Toombs. very happy with that. Adrian Toombs is going to be Peter's teacher, uh, not Liz's father, which I think could work. You'd have to retool it a hell of a lot, but, though, yeah. Uh, early drafts feature Happy Hogan telling Peter that Stark told him to tell Peter something about how with great power comes dot dot dot, but wouldn't be able to remember the rest of the phrase. Oh, uh, God. Yeah, yeah, don't fucking do that. Don't make a joke out of that, please. No. God, no. Thank God they didn't go with that. Yeah. Michael Keaton initially declined the role of Adrian Toomes due to scheduling conflicts, but Marvel Studios was able to accommodate a schedule. Michael Shannon and John Leguizamo were also considered. 
I mean, really? I don't know. I, I really like Michael Keaton as Vulture. Michael Keaton did a great job. I, I've just found just it, him in that car. Watching more just, of him, mm, I yeah. really like Michael Keaton as an actor. Anyway, like he's, he's just—he's a good actor. He's a really good he actor. Nails it every time. So he's like Burton, Michael man. Shannon and John Leguizamo, maybe. But I'm sorry, guys. I don't know if you can. I don't know if you can do. I Michael only think Keaton. of John Leguizamo as Sid the Sloth. <laughs> That's fair. Thor Ragnarok. The original script had a darker tone, but Waititi decided to write a new draft when he signed on. Not a surprise. Uh, early cuts feature Thor and Loki finding Odin living as a deranged hobo in the streets of New York after his retirement home was demolished and he'd die in a seedy alleyway, whereupon Hela would arrive to confront Thor and Loki. Test oh. audiences responded negatively to Odin's death, and the scene was scrapped in favor of Odin sharing a tender moment with his sons and meeting a dignified end in the fjords of Norway. I think that one's true. That's uh, wild I, that they were going to have Odin fucking die as a hobo in an alleyway. That's, wow, I can't believe they didn't have that. Yeah, because someone's mentioned I think it was in one of the trailers where Hela first appears. She's in, like, an alleyway, but obviously in the movie it's in Norway. Good God, man! Damn, Tiger! Tiger, what are you doing? <laughs> like, did they? Do you think it was that they they'd stop this, but then they gave him full control with Love and Thunder, so all the bad ideas? I guess. And just... then and then you get Infinity Codes. That's what you get. This is true to mythology. Sorry, he died in an alleyway in New York. In an alleyway. <laughs> yeah, the Vikings are all about it. If you mean that Hela shows up, or do they mean in the comics? Yeah. Oh, well, I don't care. That sounds awful. Um, it's it, That would be incredibly difficult to do well. You, you, it's really hard to move everyone away from thinking that Odin just fucking, like, had a heart attack in an alleyway. I like the idea, yeah, <laughs> and, the, and the, the Norse myths and the poetic Edda. It's just like, and Thor died drunk in an alleyway. Uh, Odin <laughs> died drunk in an alleyway. <laughs> it would be funny if this was Norse mythology, though. <laughs> They were very predictive, you know? If they were predicting shit like that, I'd be like, damn, maybe there's something to it. So this is the interesting part. Anthony Hopkins originally declined to return due to poor experiences filming Thor The Dark World, but was won over by Waititi's unconventional approach for the project. Oh, I guess he probably liked the idea of playing Goofy. <laughs> Odin, maybe, maybe, yeah. Because... Uh, I will say, obviously, that's one of our like that's one of my favorite jokes in all of the MCU yeah. is Anthony Hopkins playing oh, Loki playing oh, Odin. Shit. Yeah, it's so fucking funny. I could I could buy that he was tempted by that, and they were like, "That's that's essentially like half the role already." Like the that's other half, half is saying goodbye. You, yeah, you don't have to show up much. Um, Black Panther. Kugler wanted to use Craven in the movie, but couldn't because the character's rights belonged to Sony. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Now, some of these are short because the, the factoids were rather, like, meh in terms of just stuff we know. Infinity right War. Now. Valkyrie would lead half the Asgardians to safety during Thanos' attack. Um, I mean, it is an odd thing, right, of, like, because it was kind of something that was looming. It's like, wait, where are the other... Where is she? Where is... <laughs> where's, where's it's kind of, of awful to think about, the Asgardians, because you... Their world has just been ravaged over and over again. Their population just, you know, scattered and destroyed over and over again. And then their fate is to just be made fun of in Love and Thunder. Yeah. Yeah. I hate it. Yeah. Iron Man would wear Doctor Strange's Cloak of Levitation, and Doctor Strange would wear Iron Man's armor to fight Ebony Moore aboard the Q-ship. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm not sure. It depends on the context for how that would have worked, because obviously the nanotech can form around anybody. There's an there's a, there's a way this could function, but I don't know. It seems it seems yeah, a little too slapdash. See... Yeah, you'd have to the idea. But take for of example, the Iron Man's yeah. Um, Dog Strange is in a position where he's about to die. Those those like spikes are all going into him. He's about to die, and, and Iron Man thinks the only way I can save him is to throw the nanotech to him to protect him, like as a suit of armor. And then Iron Man's fucked, and Ebony Moore's about to kill him, and then the cloak goes over to Iron Man and saves him. Like, I can... There's something. I was like, you can maybe make it work temporarily, but it's gonna be pretty forced. Maybe mm. they do something where he puts the Iron Man suit on someone else so that they think it's him? That's another kind of way you could do something, yeah. Yeah, and it's like the... Because they can do the voice-changing thing. He could be... He could do that no problem, and then the suit opens up, and oh shit, it's Doctor Strange, well, and you the know, real maybe, Tony Stark maybe, is doing something else. You know how they blow the hole, and then, like, maybe it's that, uh, I don't know, like, he gets blasted out into space, so he's gotta send the suit out to save him? 
Uh, yeah, something like that. There, there are ways. It's just that we would all be like, oh, okay, he wanted them to switch there. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Banner and Hulk would merge into Professor Hulk, Professor Hulk and burst out of the Hulkbuster during the Battle yeah, of Wakanda. That's just absolutely true that's just and it, known there's the deleted scenes people have seen with the unfinished cg that it's just like why the fuck wasn't this in the movie why did you i mean it's already not good enough honestly but no like you know it's way better, better than, than nothing though it's better than him just showing up and then dabbing oh <laughs> wow fair. fringy is fringy are you not a fan of the dab i'm not a fan of it when he does it oh Thanos would wear a uh, tear Drax and Mantis's souls from their bodies, and Doctor Strange would have to retrieve them while Spider-Man protects their bodies. Uh, oh, because he had the souls. That's this, kind of cool. There's something there. I, like, <laughs> Doctor Strange has to go to, like, some kind of spiritual realm. Obviously, Maybe to the astral plane, you know, yeah. thing. And uh, yeah. you could, there's a lot of visuals you can do there. And, like, you know, creatures trying to get a hold of Drax and Mantis, he has to save them. And, and then, you know, at the same time in a similar environment, kind of like how Lords of the Fallen does it, you have Spider-Man protecting the bodies from just Thanos' attacks in general. That could be something that's pretty cool. Yeah. Captain Marvel would join the Battle of Titan after following Thanos' trail of destruction across the galaxy and survive alongside Iron Man, Nebula, and Nova. Hmm. But they delayed okay. her appearances, which this was this was mentioned as a thing that there was cuts that she had more of a role, but they reduced it. Um, well, I mean, I'd be reducing it as much as possible. Her we'd be removing her. Way harder. Well, yeah, yeah, but if they told me I had to put her in, it'd just be probably what they did in Endgame: get her out of the <laughs> way, and then yeah, yeah, she shows up. Or maybe it'd just be the thing where she just shows up late. Remember when Professor Frink showed up late for the short stories of Springfield? <laughs> yeah. Just have that be the thing? Yeah, so I'm like, wait, 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 as the credits start rolling, Professor, oh, I guess Captain Marvel, make you laugh, make you think, and uh, <laughs> uh, that monkey is gonna pay. <laughs> wait, what was it? Was it, was it the monkey or a... Uh... I can't remember, but I know you, you, the <laughs> credits play over talking, yeah, it's funny yeah. as shit. <laughs> um, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Early drafts feature an alternate third act where monsters from the quantum realm escape into the world and begin wrecking ha wreaking havoc. One would damage the Golden Gate Bridge, forcing Ant-Man in his giant form to use his arms as a ramp for cars to drive over and reach safety. That's you know what? Stupid. Why the fuck not? <laughs> yeah, whatever. just throw it in. <laughs> just do whatever. I mean, at least he can be a hero and use his powers and stuff. Captain Marvel. Keanu Reeves was originally cast as Yon Rog, but dropped out due to scheduling conflicts and was replaced by Jude Law. Hmm. I don't know if that, what would that even, would that give the film more, like, would people be like, ooh, Keanu Reeves, like, does he have enough star power to, like, flip it at all, in terms of... I don't know. I don't know. Nah. Keanu Reeves, probably not. But yeah, that's a that's a bullet dodge from Keanu Reeves there. Yeah. Cause they, Instead, he, he got to be John Wick. Well, that's obviously been better for his career than being Yon Rog. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, Avengers Endgame. The Avengers would spare old Thanos. I've heard this from a couple of other places as well. I'm not sure how it works. They just leave him on his little planet, I guess. Mm. It's just, I don't know. It's just, uh, you feel like that feels unfinished a little, but sure, maybe. Thor would become a bloodthirsty intergalactic warrior hunting down what's left of Thanos' yes! army. Yes! Why didn't they do Punish this? Punish Thor. No, Punish fat Thor. Fortnite player. Fat Fortnite. Fortnite. <laughs> Um, Thor Fat Knight. Yeah, That's what so they could call him Fat Thor Knight. This is just sad. The idea, because like I can believe this was totally the initial idea, because it just matches yeah. the end of uh, Infinity War. It makes total sense. And I guess maybe someone said, "Bad." That's a bit dark, isn't it? God damn it! It's it's <laughs> it's one of the things I hate so much about that fucking movie. It was perfect. It was perfect. Man, I cannot believe that got approved. Yeah. What Fat Thor playing Fortnite? <laughs> Uh, War Machine and Nebula would retrieve the Power Stone from an underwater temple filled with sea monsters in Morag, 2014. Okay, it doesn't really mean anything it's to me at all. <laughs> underwater <laughs> monsters, it just sounds kind of funny, like... Yeah. Okay. Uh, Black Widow and Hawkeye would fight Thanos' army in 2014 Vormir, and Hawkeye sacrifices himself to grant Black Widow the Soul Stone. I remember there was talks about whether or not it was going to be... It was tough to figure out which one of those two would die. That's a tough choice, because both of them work. Um, it's yeah. like the only thing in that film that I would consider just categorically, unequivocally, like, excellent. Sometimes I wonder with stuff like that, if it really does come down to like, well, do we just flip a coin, guys? 
Kind of. I mean, yeah, that's I not even that bad yeah. if you really do feel 50-50 on it, you know, for payoffs. Um, Hank Pym and Janet Van Dyne would join the final battle in their original suits and an army of giant ants. I wonder if they were like, there's okay. just too much stuff going on. Yeah, maybe. I would have liked to have seen him in his Ant-Man suit at least one more time, though. But I don't even know if we'll get yeah, to see him at all <laughs> anymore. I don't know if that's going to be an Ant-Man 4 at this rate. No. Oh, I thought you meant like they don't make suits anymore. Oh, that's more, yeah. Mm -hmm. Falcon Winter Soldier would fight Corvus Glaive in the final battle, Doctor Strange and Scarlet Witch would fight Ebony Moore, and uh, Hulk would fight Thanos in the final battle. Oh my god, rematch, round two. They fucking didn't do it though, did they? No, they didn't, so it's not worth anything. <laughs> no, and it was just... Potential. It's just the kind of stuff where sometimes you wonder, like, how do you miss out on a payoff like that? And it's like, they didn't, they, they knew it, and then they cut it, or they just moved on from it, because, I don't know, time, CG, mm. whatever. The original six Avengers would sacrifice themselves to defeat Thanos together. Oh, what, like a mm. sort of all Guardians of, of the Galaxy payoff? Like all but they all the die? I don't know, that sounds crazy. I don't think I'd do that. Uh, well, I think that if, if, if it's six people, then they shouldn't die. It just feels like if it was all six of them, then they would have been fine. You know? It, yeah, I'm trying to, like, how would that, I guess Iron kind Man of, has the glove on, then they all with, hold him, sort of thing, or something. But I guess that's what I'm saying, it feels like it should be like Guardians, right, where that's, uh, unless, well, someone in chat said, a stone for each. Maybe, um, yeah. I don't know if this is true, though. Like, is this- Well, that can't even work if you've had Hulk, or I guess you could argue Hulk was at, like, half health or something, yeah. and so it killed him. But again, I, I don't know about this. I figure that it was always the plan well, for Tony to die. Well, my uh, point of view on this would just be that I don't know if that's too much of a waste. In a perfect world where the MCU didn't fucking fall apart, killing all yeah. six of those characters, I'd be like, I don't know. Just cutting off potential yeah, future stories. Yeah, the business for standpoint is like, oof. No. Well, creative yeah, standpoint, there's so that. many stories to tell. I don't even necessarily think it's time for Tony Stark to die, you know? But, like, it can, that one works. It's just that, you know, we're in a world where we can't get all of his stories. Uh, far from home. Early drafts feature the real Nick Fury and Maria Hill, but they were later changed into Talos and Soren, masquerading as Fury and Hill to justify how Mysterio was able to deceive them. Which is kind hey. of funny, because that was, yeah. I think when we saw it, I legit was like, oh, that makes more sense. Like, because Fury isn't stupid, but then... It, 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 with Secret Invasion, it was it was Talos that was the smart one, and Fury that's stupid. Right. Talos did everything. All of his accomplishments were Talos's. So, it just goes to show the mindset has changed. WandaVision. The series would originally follow the Falcon and Winter Soldier, but was moved up as filming was further along when COVID started, which, yeah, we know yeah. that. Mm. Uh, the series would originally have ten episodes. The final two episodes could not be finished due to the release change and were re-edited into one for release. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's scans. Well, the, that the further the show goes on, the more weird it gets in terms of just, like, clearly rushing whatever the hell's going on. The writers considered bringing back Aaron Taylor Johnson as Quicksilver before deciding to use Evan Peters as a gag. Well, well yeah, and that was a stupid idea. That was one of the bigger hits to the overall reputation of the MCU, because people were like, you used him as a gag? And it's like, uh-oh. People uh -oh. thought it would be meaningful. It wasn't. Mm-hmm. Doctor Strange would originally be trying to contact Wanda through the WandaVision commercials. <laughs> oh, such a shame, because that would have been cool. Yeah. Oh, well. Can't be having him in there. The finale originally featured Doctor Strange meeting Wanda to set up Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, but this was cut when the movie was delayed to 2022. I mean, that's, yeah, that's just like a logistics problem for the fucking narrative mm -hmm. at that point. It's all screwed up. Black Widow. Early drafts features appearances by Captain America, Iron Man, Hawkeye, and Nick Fury. Oh, wow. <laughs> Probably would have helped the film. <laughs> you know, people would be like, ooh. Taskmaster was originally Tony Masters, a mercenary employed by the Red Room to train the Black Widows. He was changed into Antonia Drakov to give Taskmaster an emotional connection to Natasha Romanov. You know that that's a very dumb emotional like, connection. What a that's dumb a fucking stupid, decision. Like... Why wouldn't it be? Why? Why? As if, why, as if why, why? you need to have a direct relationship between her and Taskmaster. No, no, I could, but I could believe that, where they'd be like, "Yeah, that's good writing," is what that is. He can't be. He can't just be a person who comes into conflict with her. He can't just be a. Yeah. Well, we've talked about it. He should have been, if not, you know, in Phase Four as a it's whole a in the whole villain. thing. Yeah. It's yeah. just. It's just cool. He's a mercenary. He works for money. That's as strict as that. Yeah. 
Dracov would originally be executed by the Black Widows, but this was considered too violent and changed to Yelena blowing up his plane. All right. Okay. I, I don't know about that. I uh, I mean, like, it feels like how, it's how you, it's how you do it. Yeah, you could probably. Well, I mean, if, I, if they I all mean, surrounded him I, I and then you just hear screaming, you know, that's not violent. Closed. Or at least, yeah. yeah. If, they, were, if they got yeah. cleaned and he was in the room, then they all came to their senses, and then, yeah, it's like they, it's all in the depiction. It's such a crazy. Yeah. Be right back. Thematic connection though of the whole like it's too dark. Like maybe you guys could which is fucking kind of afford funny, to be a little darker. I mean, The Lion King, which is an animated film that was knowingly made with many of the people watching it being children, ends with Scar getting fucking killed by a bunch of hyenas as he's engulfed in flames. Yeah. You know? And like that wasn't considered too violent. And that's you know, yeah, I don't know. Uh, what happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> this you is know? a great question. What happened? <laughs> Uh, Falcon the Winter Soldier. The series would originally have eight episodes and precede WandaVision, which changed due to COVID pandemic. A storyline. Eight episodes? Yeah. A storyline scrapped due to pandemic reportedly re uh, featured the Flag Smashers attempting to use a bioweapon to wipe out half of Earth's population. Oh, God. Because they were. Because they liked the Thanos world, so that was their plan, was it? Could you fucking imagine? Man. I mean, unfortunately, I could imagine that that was... Wasn't it said that because of, like, COVID pandemic that things did change and that there was certain, you know... Yeah. Because the... Like, the subject matter changed because of that? I guess what I'm getting at is just, like, what what is what is happening in your head where you think you can make the Flag Smashers want to wipe out half of Earth's population and, and you get people and to be... And you still want the audience <laughs> to be somewhat sympathetic to them. Like, what... Remember, what <laughs> uh, he was like, you can't call Carly a, ter a terrorist. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Should have just called him Hamas and people would have liked him. Uh, fucking nuts. <laughs> Early drafts featured John Walker as an ambitious and belligerent soldier who believes himself to be better than Steve Rogers and antagonizes uh, Sam Wilson and Bucky Barnes. I find this funny because the implication is that he's not those things in the show, even though everyone treats him as though he is those things. Like he, he is obsessed with himself, ego-driven, and antagonizes everybody when... That's the thing, our guy, Mr. Walker over there, he's probably going to get ruined further on, but uh, it's just nice, you know, it's, 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 it's nice that he made it out of that show, that's all. There were plans to give Sam the power to talk... <laughs> there were plans to give Sam the power to talk to birds and the ability to throw the shield with his wings. Plans to have given the power to talk birds. to birds. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bad guy. Summon the birds. <laughs> is this, this is what we're like? No, 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 no. No way. Talk no to way. birds. <laughs> no way. I don't buy that one for a second. Where the fuck no did way. that even come from? Like, what? <laughs> what? Uh, there were plans to feature New York City heroes such as Spider-Man during the final battle against the Smag fla <laughs> Smag Flashes. Does this Smag Flashes? <laughs> um. Yeah, we, we talked about that. Where the fuck was Spider-Man? Uh, but oh He was well. talking to birds! No, he's talking to spiders. Spider-Birds! The new title was originally Captain America and the White Wolf, but producers felt it could confuse audiences. That one's true. Um, I remember yeah, people no talking one about no it. fucking thinks of him as the White Wolf. Yeah, but I don't care. I would have committed if it were me. Um, but it's, it's too narratively relevant, this whole point. He's not the Winter Soldier anymore. He doesn't want to be the Winter Soldier. The Winter Soldier's a horrible Why would mercenary. Why confuse audiences? Well, like Rags just said, nobody knows, everyone knows him as Winter Soldier, not as the White Wolf, but the whole point of that show yeah, is to knows. move him from X yeah, to Y, exactly. so. Why would... <sighs> <sighs> okay. Yeah, you know. Loki. The series would originally have only one season and follow Loki as he manipulates Earth's history to his benefit. Early drafts feature Loki escaping shortly after the TVA captures him, because of course he would, exploring the timeline, assembling the Infinity Gauntlet, and conquering the universe, but he cannot enjoy it due to knowing there's no free will and ultimately surrenders to the TVA once again. Mm. The only edit I would need to make to that to buy it is that he surrenders himself, quote-unquote, because he wants to take over the, uh, the TVA. Yeah. That's that something. seems like it's way more in line with his actual character. Well, yeah, this, this I is... Yeah. I would have watched that 100% more, yeah. Early drafts feature all Loki variants trapped in the void, joining forces to defeat Alioth, the big fart cloud, because they all refuse to let one of them be better than the others. Hmm. Okay. Uh, 
Giancarlo Esposito was considered for classic Esposito. Loki before Richard E. Grant was cast. Oh, okay. I don't know if, um... I mean, I thought Richard E. Grant was pretty, uh, he was a pretty great part of that terrible, terrible show. I'm trying to pick, like, uh, I don't know, I guess I'm a little bit biased against him at this point, because he gets wasted in fucking everything they ever hire him for. Um, yeah. But maybe he would have been good, but I don't know, Richard E. Grant was kind of perfect, so... But um, it doesn't surprise me at all that they. I'm sure he's considered for every fucking villain or partial villain role they ever have. Shang Chi. He's eternally Gus. Yeah. Uh, Ant Man would originally appear as both he and Shang Chi live in San Francisco. I love these like statements that are just obviously they should happen, but then they just don't. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, yeah. okay. Uh, early drafts feature Shang Chi and Katie becoming a couple. Okay. I don't. Yeah. Early cuts feature Razor Fist sacrificing himself to save Katie during the Battle of Talo, giving her the necessary strength to injure the Dweller in Darkness with her enchanted arrow. How did you know the Dweller is the name of one of the uh uh mage people in Rings of Power? One of the white uh people? One of them was uh... Wow. Yeah, that's really... So, yeah. just so everyone knows, obviously not the YouTuber Razor Fist, <laughs> but the... Uh, no, it is. The character with the blade on his arm that's super cool. He sacrifices himself for Katie. Don't know why that would happen. And then that gives her the necessary strength to injure the big dragon thing. That movie wasn't fantastic. I'll just leave that there. Eternals. Early drafts featured a love triangle between Icarus, Cersei, and Druig that led to Druig's departure. The actors improvised the romance between Druig and Makari. Unfortunately, Fringy literally just left. He's the only one that could actually acknowledge this, because me and Rags haven't seen it Eternals. <laughs> We've already heard his summary of it, so, um, all right. Earlier cuts featured a bleaker alternative ending where Arashem recaptures the Eternals, erases their minds as punishment for their rebellion, and sends them to a distant planet to prepare for another emergence. But it was poorly received by test audiences. <coughs> um, that one doesn't surprise me. If you had the entire journey all the characters went on in a film erased from their memory at the end and then they sent to a different planet, that does feel a little bit anticlimactic, I guess. Yeah, I'd be like, what? Uh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah, it's right. like, what the f. <laughs> it's like the anti No Way Home. Uh, alternative versions of the mid credit scene featured Cersei, Kingo, and Fastos being recruited for the Avengers or confronted by Kang. How interesting. Hawkeye. The project would originally be a movie before becoming a television series. This has happened in both directions many, many times. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure those kinds of things they discuss all the time. All the Marvel people are like, a oh, movie, TV show, how are we going to blow our money this time? Early cuts feature an alternative mid credit scene where Kingpin, blinded but alive but after being shot by Maya, receives Ronin's sword as a warning from Barton not to threaten his family. Good god. I don't even know if this would make it better or worse. It's the, it's the whole, like, Kingpin from the Daredevil show, because it's played by, um... Fuck, why am I blanking on the actor's name? That's unfortunate. Uh, funnily enough, we saw him recently, Rags, in Rings. He was the bad guy in Rings. He was, he was the, the D'Onofrio, that's it. Vincent oh, D'Onofrio. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, we watched Rings, everybody. It sucked. Um, yes. Um, but so he's brought in as Kingpin and killed, as far as people know, in the original version. But this version, he is blinded, but alive, after being shot in the face, I guess. <laughs> this, is, this is obviously what people want for Kingpin. Spider-Man No Way Home. The original script featured Kirsten Dunst, Mary Jane Watson, Emma Stone's Gwen Stacy, both versions of Aunt May, played by Rosemary Harris and Sally Field, and the original J. Jonah Jameson, played by J.K. Simmons. Yep, I think this was all stuff people were aware of. They would have been playing with all kinds of keys with that film. Yep. You couldn't get them all in. The original script featured six villains before Sony decided to save the Sinister Six for later. Dane DeHaan's Green Goblin, Paul Giamatti's Rhino, Michael Keaton's Vulture, Jake Gyllenhaal's Mysterio, and Craven were considered for the sixth villain. Craven, the hunter. I mean, well, he's getting his own movie now. Everyone's very hyped for that. Who's going to be in the movie with him? Is he paired with a hero, or is he supposed to be like our, uh, our anti actually, protagonist? Or? I feel like Free would be able to answer that question, because now I'm wondering, it's like, who's in the Craven, Craven film, everybody? Is it any? It's not like Spider-Man or Venom, right? Is nobody? Unfortunately, due to... No, I can't say it. Never mind. 
Bringy, who's in the who's in the Craven film? Anybody we we know, or is it just Craven? Um, Russell Crowe. Oh, no, well, like Russell characters. Crow what, uh, Russell there's Craven? Craven and uh, Calypso, I think, and wow. I think Chameleon. Well, all right. <laughs> the original yeah, script uh, for No Way Home was set after Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness and featured America Chavez casting the spell and Spider-Man needing Doctor Strange's book of spells to send the villains home. This is basically all but confirmed. Uh, this is yes, a strict improvement. There was concept art. Yeah, this is better. Instead of, please, I want people to America, not know about this, so change the whole world's mind. This, this kind of does a couple of things. America accidentally casting a dumbass spell that can do serious damage is good for her character, almost, because she's boringly, like, lame. So you can have that mm -hmm. weighing on her. And then you, you take it away from Doctor Strange having been responsible for the fucking spell, and then you have Spider-Man is tangentially related and he needs Strange's help to get the villains home, while Strange's goal will be to just get rid of them. Like, you know, that that creates the conflict between those. Like, this sounds like it makes a lot more sense that this was yep. the foundation of the film compared to what we got. Yep. Maguire asked for minimal reveals about his Peter Parker's life after Spider-Man 3, while Garfield suggested his Spider-Man went down a darker path after the death of Gwen Stacy in Amazing Spider-Man 2. Well, mm, you fool. Darker is worse, as we've known across That's this. That's right. Uh, as has been indicated by test screenings in that <laughs> Pearl Mutter guy. <laughs> yeah. More jokes. Uh, in early drafts, Strange would recruit the Spider-Men to help Tom Holland's Peter Parker. They would visit classic moments from Maguire and Garfield's films during their fight. Yeah, I don't need that. No, I don't, I don't need, need the... it. I remember uh, the movies, thanks. In early drafts, Holland's Peter would ask Adrian Toomes for help procuring the necessary technology to cure the villains. Um, huh. the, the, that was always a tough problem to solve, because they got the, um, the, what was it called? The Fabricator or whatever, that machine that just can solve any problem by creating anything. It was like, the magical cure-all machine, which is not great. Not great. Uh, in early drafts, the Green Goblin would mind control the other villains, and the final battle would revolve around freeing them from his influence. Hmm. How would Green Goblin control their minds? Well, it's sci-fi magic, whatever. Kind of <laughs> he makes a serum, yeah, he stabs him with a thingy, and it's Maybe. mind control juice. And yeah. Doesn't seem like his wheelhouse. Uh, early drafts featured post credit scenes of the spider man returning to their own universes. Probably don't, don't need, need that. that no. <laughs> Moon Knight. Early cuts feature Spectre confronting his mother, Wendy Spectre, in a field of reeds and alternating between himself and Grant as he overcomes his trauma and manages to forgive her. Uh... This is tough for us because you have to try and remember <laughs> who like, like, all these names are. Whether or not that would... Because it was his mother's abuse that traumatized him, right? Yes, yeah, he, he adopted an alternate personality, alternate. yeah. And so a would... defense mechanism against his mother's abuse. Would and I think be... there's something about, like, the mother dying or him uh, being, them being estranged in some way and not having catharsis on that relationship that maybe seems appropriate for the kind of tragedy of his familial situation. Yeah, and it would depend on whether or not... Are we supposed to assume that would actually be her? Or is that something that he's projecting or something? No he's... idea. Yeah, oh, I'm not sure. Know. Uh, early drafts feature Harrow and Amit invading London with a pyramid emerging in Trafalgar Square with lightning and sandstorms ravaging the city. <laughs> oh, well, you know. Oh, okay, yeah. God. All I can right, totally cool. believe I... that's true. So, well, look yeah. at what they put in the actual show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Look, a pyramid in, 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 right in Trafalgar Square. Isn't that incredible? Wow. They had a kaiju fight at the at yeah. Giza. In the pyramids. Yeah. Uh, MOM time. Scott Derrickson would direct, but oh, dropped God. out due to scheduling conflicts. Mike Flanagan and Jennifer Kent were considered to replace him before Sam Raimi was hired. Oh, wow. See, the that fact that been... Mike Flanagan would have replaced, it's like, yeah, but you would have been... It would have been Marvel, even... though. Yeah, I don't know what that looks <laughs> yeah. like. Cause I, I, I want to if... know what it looks like. Yeah, because it depends on what port... Yeah, I, I, I would have loved to have seen the difference, because we could even see by like looking at Mike Flanagan and Sam Raimi's differences which things were set in stone, like the things they both have. Also, this is interesting because Scott Derrickson left because he couldn't make the movie he wanted, right? Yeah, Isn't yeah. that basically what it was? I Not feel like Flanagan's conflict. the kind well, of person to be like, let me make what I want to fucking make or I'm leaving. He does come across that way, yeah. Uh, Derrickson's version would feature Doctor Strange and Scarlet Witch joining forces to protect America Chavez from Nightmare and end with Wanda going evil. Raimi later decided to focus on Wanda as the villain. I have heard that Well, we've before. got that. We've yeah. also got uh, Waldron claiming that he wanted Wanda as the villain. 
thanks, guys. Yeah. <laughs> like, good job. He was already in trouble after one division, but having so, a double uh, down at Ghetto being a villain after apparently overcoming a villain arc. You have Derrickson basically saying, like, we need a whole movie to get it to that point, and they were like, nah. <laughs> it's fine. No, we don't. Fine. Early drafts feature Ironmonger and Boulder the Brave as members of the Illuminati. They were later replaced by Mr. Fantastic and Black Bolt. The Wasp, Killmonger, Namor, and Ghost Rider were also considered. I've definitely heard about the Boulder, the Brave one. Mm -hmm. Definitely heard about that. Early drafts feature more variants of Strange, including Street Magician Melvin Strange. Melvin Strange. It'll be funny and goofy. Whoa. Why is it the Melvin? Melvin just seems like a <laughs> Melvin's not a name. great name. It's a it's a group of name, isn't it? He's the brother yeah, of the okay. Joker. Okay, Do you guys know about that? Melvin, brother of the no. Joker. How many I people... remember a gag in that Scooby Doo movie where there was a guy called Melvin Doo. I remember that. Melvin, brother of the Joker, is possibly one of the cringiest jokes in the history of humanity. Brother. And it. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, so you're not going to be surprised where I start this story, but uh, you know, nostalgia critic. I've heard of him, uh, yeah. I, I know, Once or twice. Yeah. <laughs> he, he dressed up as Joker, but it was like really shit, and then he made a video that he thought was very funny, where he sort of sang a tune in a theoretical universe, I think, where a guy called Melvin, who was the Joker's retarded brother, made a little TV show, and it's just him going, Melvin, Melvin, brother of the Joker. And it's like, what the fuck? Oh, <laughs> and the whole you can you can find it on YouTube with ease. The whole internet was just like, "Stop it, <laughs> stop!" No, <it. laughs> it's, it's no that's Stout really funny. The Stouty Critic Melvin. <laughs> Whenever the name Melvin comes up, I think of Brother of the Joker immediately. It was like, "Yup, <laughs> it's a joke so bad." Stouty Critic doesn't talk about it. <laughs> He's a. He's he's a he's a creative at heart. Okay, he's an artist, and it doesn't always work out. Or I guess I should say it doesn't ever work out. But that's fine. Uh, it was it was a fun character. How many? What do you think his ratio is like of funny jokes to videos? <laughs> I don't know. Do you I think don't know. Uh, first of off, do you think it's a positive number? Are we looking at I've one to ten or? <laughs> I mean, God, I remember that, uh, the funniest thing in the, uh, when we were watching that Lord of the Rings one was Dankula getting fucking mad every time we did this. That was funny as shit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so, early cuts of MOM were poorly received, leading to extensive reshoots that reworked Stranger's character arc, which was originally about his obsession with control and his relationship with Chavez, which was originally much more adversarial. Um, I mean, I don't know what to make of any of this. I don't know which would have been better or worse, but the movie we got was so awful. That it was I'd so awful that I would take a chance on whatever this is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, whatever, what, yeah, you, whatever what, you want to do, what? do it. Why not it. take a chance on these early cuts. Yeah, do it. Fuck it. Why not? Um, early cuts feature Supreme Stranger's sacrifice being genuine. Um, is, excuse me. <laughs> it is genuine, isn't it? It is genuine. <laughs> And Sinister Stranger's corruption being due to power. Reshoots added the concept of incursions, <laughs> the Illuminati executing Supreme Strange, and Sinister Stranger's obsession with Christine. Wow. So what a good what a they good made idea. Him an that incel. Was. And he wasn't always an incel. <laughs> well, he but, wasn't always an incel. And is the is the implication that Supreme Strange would have died doing something, but in the Heroically. new version he was killed by his friends. Yes. For no stupid reason, because they all don't understand how in incursions work. And the fact that it said reshoots added the concept of incursions, it's like, well, that was a waste of time and money. <laughs> You've destroyed have everything. Done that. Yep. Shouldn't have reshot that. Early cuts begin with Earth 616, Baron Mordo confronting Wanda, who decapitates him and later presents the head to Strange. That one is, uh, we know that that's one's true. definitely true. Yeah. And that, not to say that I don't what like. What a terrible idea. Yeah, the whole, the whole like, don't make it too dark. It's like, this isn't even about dark. It's just fucking wild. It's, not, it's just, why would you get rid of Mordo? Why would you set him up as a villain and then kill him off like that? Yeah. Early cuts end with and Strange. Also, I mean, yeah, I mean, in terms of having Wanda present a decapitated head to Doctor Strange and then try to, like, spin it in some way <laughs> later on in the film that she could become a hero, like, okay. She's very sympathetic. Mm, yeah, I don't know. Uh, early cuts end with Strange trapped in the ruined Earth and Sinister Strange assuming his place on Earth 616. Like, um, I mean, whatever I mean, that point. could be 
that could be what's happening. Yeah, that could be interesting. But I mean, that oh, I could think be was, what's happening. So. I think you say that could be what we saw anyway. For all we fucking know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, early cuts feature a post credit scene where Deadpool teleports into the Illuminati's headquarters and happens upon Wanda's massacre. Oh, jeez, that probably would have been really tone deaf. Yeah. People would have, I think people would have hated that, because it's like, why are, you, why are you making fun of all of them being dead again? Uh, Jeff Bridges and Daniel Craig were in talks to play Ironmonger and Boulder, but dropped out due to COVID. Definitely heard about the Daniel Craig Boulder thing. Yeah. Um, Ian Grufford and Nicolas Cage were approached to return as Mr. Fantastic and Ghost Rider. Okay. Yeah, this is just the cringy. Like, it would have been bad. It would have been nice to see him, but it just would have been bad anyway, because they all get fucking killed. Miss Marvel. Early drafts feature Captain Marvel visiting Miss Marvel after she defeats some clan... and clandestines? Clandestines, yeah. And offering to train her. Okay. Okay. There's not much on that one. Civil War? Wait, this mm. is not the right... Oh, right. <laughs> Last section, sorry. One sec. Alright, yeah. Thor, Love, and Thunder. Oh, oh boy. Early cuts feature numerous characters, settings, and storylines that were ultimately deleted. It's so funny, you could put that as a fact for all of them and I'd believe you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, they bat around all kinds of crazy fucking ideas, that's what and I've Then learned. someone would say, yeah, but that's how movies are made, and it's like, um, yeah, but like, every time you have, like, all of these crazy, fucking insane, wacky ideas that end up getting I don't cut. know, yeah, like, I don't feel like Ridley Scott toyed around with the idea of Maximus being, like, an, an, uh, like a gay transvestite or something. You know, but it feels like there's crazy ideas that they just are like, yeah, you know, maybe we just do something batshit insane and they actually ponder it. Maybe you need that guy so that you have something to shoot down so you can feel like, hey, okay, I'm oh, not doing yeah. that idea. Maybe that's his job to make all the bad suggestions. Early drafts feature Thor meeting Jesus and Satan in Omnipotent City and Russell Crowe would have originally oh, I... played Satan. I mean, I heard, I heard about Sure, do it. Like Go that. for it. <laughs> But I mean, the idea of actually having Jesus. Man, yeah, I just can't. Like, if I were on the team, I'd be like, let's not. <laughs> we're, we're not that's fucking that's South that's Park. That's what we call a really, 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 but we really, could be. really bad we could. idea. Um, uh, early drafts feature Thor and Gore conversing with Eternity, and Morgan Freeman was going to be the voice. What? <laughs> <laughs> that just sounds funny. Fuck it, keep it in. Early drafts feature a romance between Valkyrie and Lady Sif, even though um, Valkyrie was originally going to be supposed to be hooking up with uh, Thor in Ragnarok, and you can see the remnants of that in the film. Why? Yeah. I don't understand why they brought Sif back only to have her be there, get her arm cut off, and then just show up at the end. What the hell? Well, don't forget, they brought her back to kick Loki in the nuts. Is that? Oh, true. That's true. It's kind of funny. It's like, oh, yeah, the awaited return of Sif, and then it's just nothing. Uh, early drafts feature the Guardians of the Galaxy arriving to help Thor in the final battle. Early cuts feature Thor uniting Mjolnir, Stormbreaker, and Zeus's lightning bolt into a super weapon to destroy the Necrosword, attempting to super glue Korg back together after Zeus <laughs> shatters him, and dancing to Abba's Waterloo. Okay. This is, I believe all of this. <laughs> this is well, not hard like to MCU, I couldn't escape if I wanted to. Uh, early cuts feature Gore using the purity of the captive as guardian children to open the portal to eternity. Their purity. Sure. <laughs> okay. Peeling the religious tattoos off his body with the necro sword and dancing to Kate Bush's running up that hill. Running up that, that, that hill. That's gotta be a meme. Christ. Like, that, <laughs> that's gotta be a meme. If, if, if people in chat will be would be remiss not to mention Stranger Things, of course. Um, they use that song, and it's hyper popular. It might be like the most popular thing that happened in the show now, outside of the uh, the metal part as well. Oh my god! Oh, I mean, that's good. It's always good to get some Kate Bush appreciation. Yeah, but maybe not in Thor: Love and Thunder. I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes. Mm. Uh, early cuts feature Zeus realizing his mistakes, visiting Thor on Earth, encouraging him to stand against Gore and willingly give him the Thunderbolt. I know that's true. I've seen uh, there's a deleted scenes that have him talking to him. It's fucking bizarre considering the after credit scene. Well, I've, yeah. Hmm. Uh, I guess they went in a different direction. Early cuts feature a post credit scene where Thor's goats, Tooth Grinder, and Tooth Nasher reveal themselves to be evil and have attempted to kill him numerous times. They were times. evil. 
Okay. They were villains. That just sounds like a Taika joke that's really bad. Like, yeah. Turns out they were trying to kill him, lol. You're like, okay. She-Hulk. The series would originally begin with Jennifer Walters already active as She-Hulk and only reveal her origin in episode 8, but this confused general audiences so her origin was reworked into episode 1. You know, that's I don't true. see how it's even confusing at all, but... Like, like, like I was, we were talking about it, I don't... It's not something I remotely consider a problem compared to all the stuff that's fucked in that show. The Trial of Abomination would originally be the series' overarching storyline, but the writers felt it was not engaging enough <laughs> and condensed it into episode three. You know about that okay. one. <laughs> you, can't have this, you can't have the courtroom in this show about lawyers. Yeah, don't worry. We got plenty of great episodes to fill in. It was, uh, it was a wonderful show. Uh, Edward Norton would I mean, in theory, a, a, like, a procedural-ish, um, like, like, lawyer courtroom show that's just a comedy would be, it's fine on paper, as long as it's actually funny. Yeah. Um, Edward Norton would originally appear during Jennifer's encounter with Kevin and complain about being recast, but this was scrapped before Nolan was even approached. Uh, Norton, sorry. And I don't believe for a second you would have fucking agreed to that. Why would he agree to this? Like, agree <laughs> just... to come into this and make fun of yourself. It's like, nah. Mm. <laughs> like, I'm alright. Uh, early drafts feature the leader as the leader of the intelligentsia, waiting to use She-Hulk's blood to cure his dis deteriorating body. Is he showing up in... Uh... That would have made him interesting sympathetic. I think, isn't he meant to be showing up in the new Captain America? Yeah. What? I guess... They changed their mind. Oh, for for what? for Rags, the leader is a character from the comics, and he's kind of foreshadowed, or oh, at least shown. Oh, I thought you were talking about like the bro character who was who injected himself with. You no, know, you would have replaced him. Um, he's sort of set up in Incredible Hulk, right? It's the guy who has. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So we'll be seeing him again. Uh, Black Panther oh, too. Shuri was always the principal choice to become Black Panther, but Nakia, Okoye, and Umbaku were also considered. Uh, Man, if they'd yeah. made a Koye the new Black Panther, people would be like, what the fuck? <laughs> His bodyguard is the new Black Panther? Okay. Early drafts did not feature the death of Queen Ramonda and Riri Williams becoming Ironheart. It's because the Queen's death was weird and confusing. It was weird. And, uh, she drowned inside of, like, a tower. After saving someone from drowning. That's weird. It's weird. That movie was weird. And it was long and boring, and it sucked balls. And uh, as for Riri Williams becoming Ironheart, it's like, yeah, to me, they were just rushing it. They were like, get her into the suit, get yeah. her going, we can then make... Because isn't her show finished? Like, it's ready to go. It's finished, but it's not oh. coming out anytime soon, I don't mm. think. Makes you think. Early drafts mm. feature Namor addressing the ecological impact of the celestial Tiamat em emerging from the ocean. No, we don't oh, reference wow. that. We're gonna, we're we don't reference that. <laughs> no, no, yeah. I'm that's, sorry. Yeah, is, why would do that? Who's he going to be complaining to? It's not like it's Earth's yeah, fault. Yeah, the, e the EPA. I mean, it's just <laughs> it's the Celestials' fault, and that has nothing to do with Earth. He's specifically mad at like the fucking president. He's like, you got to do something about that. And like, um. Early draft I like how it says addressing the ecological impact. What? You mean him gonna blow up Earth? That was what was gonna happen if, if he didn't get stopped. Yeah. Do you remember in Aquaman where his his response was putting trash onto like the beaches of countries yeah, and stuff? Yeah, that's right. Ocean Master <laughs> made giant tidal waves of that trash. went all across and almost certainly killed many, many, many people. Oh, yeah. Remember when Aquaman killed all of the crab people who I were on do. his side? Yeah, he killed John Rice Davies' <laughs> crab. He killed all the crabs that were on his side. They were no his one bro. gave a fuck. No one gave yeah, a and shit. I wonder, how, I wonder how much collateral damage he's going to be causing in this new one. Also, Reese, not Rise. You'll get there one day. Early drafts feature Dr. John Rise Davies. John Rise Davies. Reese. John Rise. John Reese Davies. John Reese Davies. Early drafts feature Dr. Doom manipulating the conflict between Wakanda and Talakan to his benefit. I remember hearing tons of rumors about Doctor Doom, but was that ever like yeah, actually the, substantial? I remember being told by somebody that the plan was an after credit scene to reveal Doctor Doom in Black Panther Two. So I'm guessing that's there's... what I'd heard. But could you Man, fucking just, imagine? It just shows they're itching. They're just itching to introduce Doctor Doom. Yeah, because I he's like one of the last big sort of characters that they got left, other than I guess X Men characters. Ugh. <laughs> Early drafts feature romantic connection between Shuri and Namor. Why? 
would you want to do that? He kills so he many is people a horrific, in Wakanda. Terrible, <laughs> disgusting person. He killed him, mum. Oh wait, yeah. is that her mum or is that her auntie? I can't remember. No, that's that's his. No, that that's uh that's her mum. Yeah, remember she's T'Challa's brother. Well, not that's to it, de not to diminish caring about the death <laughs> yeah. of an, an aunt anyway. <laughs> but you know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, Quantumania. An alternative pitch features Ant-Man and the Young Avengers fighting MODOK and AIM. Um, the Young Avengers? Probably would have been shit anyway. The Young Avengers is like all of the, like, teenagers, kids of Avengers. And you know so that like they're like coming. That. They're the end of the Marvels. Oh, yeah, they, they, uh, they probably want to set... Uh, isn't that basically all but confirmed, right? Kate Bishop meeting, like, Miss Marvel to set up As that far team. as I'm aware, it's in stone. It's not even, like... Which I imagine that they're not even going to... I get the impression that they're so protective of, like, Avengers as a name that they're not even going to call it Young Avengers. Like, that that would be, like, brand dilution. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, they'd call it something else. Young Crusaders or something. I don't know, but not not Young Avengers. There were talks about killing either Hank Pym or Janet Van Dyne. I I could buy that instantly. They should have uh, killed yeah, Hank Pym. Obviously. It makes the most sense. Yep, should have been Hank. <clears throat> Early drafts feature flashbacks of Hank and Janet doing sexy science in the 1980s, modeled after Michael Douglas's erotic thrillers of the time. What? <laughs> That's a great point, you know Friggy. Fuck it. Why not? Let's do it. <laughs> Sexy science. Why not? It's literally just like this movie is so shit. Just to do it. Fuck it. Go for it. Early like, drafts. Whatever. Feature Gentora resenting Janet for abandoning the rebels and Janet trying to earn back their trust. This is something I, I forgot to don't even care. mention in the video. <laughs> They, yeah. They're all like happily ever after at the end. It's like, oh, all these people hate Janet. I completely forgot about that. They should all have a bone to pick with her. They all, she abandoned them all, but it's like, eh, whatever. Yep. But I don't care. I don't care about that. I don't care about Gentora. She's my favorite. What do you mean? Uh, Who's that? She was the like the oh, barbarian lady leader of the rebels. Yes, the edgy, edgy, the edgy. Oh, gotcha. Uh, early cuts feature Cassie bonding with Gentora and the rebels and becoming determined to help them. And, uh, wow, we need care. a scene where she becomes more uh, determined to do the right thing. Yes. They really know how to write these characters. This one we know is true. Um, early cuts feature yeah. Krylar surviving the barb roll and re rejoining the rebels against Kang. Because uh, yeah. plenty of footage of him was not used. Early cuts feature Kang recognizing Hank as Ant-Man once uh, that he once fought in another universe. Okay. I just, it's, it's just like, I don't know why they would have or would not cut that out. There's really much difference. The original ending features Scott and Hope trapped in the quantum realm and Cassie, Janet, and Hank searching for them. Which you can tell from watching it that that was uh, what was going to be the ending. Because the, the reshoots are not very yeah. uh, smooth. No, they are not. Jennifer Coolidge was considered for Linda, the woman Hank went on a date with while Janet was in the quantum realm. Okay. <laughs> Stupid factoid, like, why would they even show Linda? What? I like how they clarify who Linda was, but for the rest of these names, like, Malekin, you know who that is. You know how that is. Everyone know knows Malekin. We don't oh, even yeah. have to say. Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Prior to his firing, Gunn would oversee all projects in the cosmic corner of the yeah. Marvel Cinematic Universe, with Volume 3 setting up numerous new characters and storylines. Yeah. Gunn disliked Thor joining the team in Avengers Endgame and did not plan to include him even when the movie was to release before Thor Love and Thunder. Hmm. Well, I mean, we know that he didn't because he, he didn't like that. Uh, what's his name got his uh, helmet back for some reason either. Yeah, he's uh, he was bitter about a lot of the things that happened when they were out of his yeah. control. I guess so, that's unfortunate. Even though, as we said I, at the uh, time, there's plenty you can work with. You don't have to work against it. I gotta say, by the way, on the subject of the cosmic side, I find it incredibly lame. Uh, like the cosmic side of Marvel is so lame to me. Like at least in terms of the movies. Everywhere is just like Earth, there's humans everywhere, there's not really many crazy wacky looking aliens. And I don't really expect anything to improve. I don't yeah. know. It looks like you, you, could eat, you don't same. even get like enough Star Trek aliens, which are like people. No, with, no, like, it's interesting just people faces. Who are blue or green. Um it's just people, but they're they're blue or green. Not like, you know, Yeah, humanoid. they don't even have like makeup on, you know? Yeah. To be like, well, oh, you're got, clearly not human. Yeah, but not like what you said in Star Trek, where it's a little bit more, uh, a little bit more different. I don't know. I just find it super lame. I wish. Uh, I, I don't know. It's like the one thing that I always want is more aliens. Please, just more aliens. It's one of the things I want from Star Wars all the time. It's just more aliens and robots. Less people, more aliens and robots. 
Um, Gun. Oh yeah. All right. Um, the extended ending features the Guardians of the Galaxy rescuing the High Evolutionary, imprisoning him in nowhere. Although this was cut for pacing, Gun has confirmed it's canon. Well, that doesn't. Okay. <laughs> If it's, it's not in anything, then it doesn't. I don't even. I got you nothing. You can say what the fuck you want. I just don't care if it's in a movie. <laughs> in these days, if it's in a movie, I don't care anyway. How did it not? Like, how can you say it's canon? There's no recognition of his body no, being exactly. moved. There's no. I don't even think if you were to pause when we have the big sections of seeing all of the crowds, like, would you see him in there? I don't think so. I don't think he would. So no, he's he got blown up. So weird. Um, Secret Invasion. Production was troubled with frequent <laughs> conflicts between writers and producers and several script rights, uh, rewrites that caused the majority of the series to be entirely reshot. No shock at all. True. Obviously true. Amelia Clark's character was originally Veronke or Veronk, and she would use she would usurp Gravik and depart for space with her loyalists, vowing revenge if Fury pursued her or them. Which, uh, I believe, because that's in Secret Invasion in the comics, that's like the coin of the scrolls, which... Secret Invasion is not very much like the comic at all. So yeah, I totally could believe that this was I mean, true. I'll take that over her becoming the most powerful Avenger ever for some oh, reason. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And finally, Carmen Ejogo was originally cast as Priscilla Fury, but dropped out due to scheduling conflicts caused by the mass reshoots and was replaced by Charlene Woodard. Um... I just find that fascinating that all of it is, you know, all of the factoids about basically all of these projects is that they all just get dramatically reshot, which we know, but that's not normal. <laughs> like, why? Well, and it's incredibly expensive. That's that's money. If you if you shot it right the first time, that's money that you save. Reshoots is one thing. Reshooting a lot of it is one thing. It was like reshooting the fucking whole project to the point we practically have a Re new TV show. Well, I'm doing it all the time. Like, basically every project has significant reshoots. The only one that didn't happen when he was Guardians 3, right? Guardians 3 was the only one in, like, the last several years that didn't have any reshoots. Absolutely nuts. Um, alright, I need to go and pee, but I'll be back, because we have a few more things. Oh, yeah, uh, you bet. Like, yeah, I guess I'm... Okay, so I'm, I guess that's all, like, the context for the lead-up to where everything is at, which is fascinating, isn't it? I, I got to imagine at this point, especially now that um, especially now that we're at the point where you've got like these major sort of outlets that typically didn't really say anything particularly negative about Marvel at all, now starting to do that. If that means that we're going to start getting more of these types of stories emerging, you know what I mean? Like when, once yeah, it gets to the yeah, like it's uh, out now. Everyone's talking about it. It's an open thing. It's not just YouTubers. You know, it's it's actually like these well, no, magazines and everything that are typically pretty positive that they that they're willing. It's like there's blood in the water. You know, there's like blood kind in the of, water. Yeah, the this the is time. the story that we can all jump on. This is what people are reading about. Mm hmm. Which uh, <laughs> I don't know. I I really I really 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 don't know that they can even reverse these problems because I don't. Know I mean, that they know it's like. Wrong. Uh, I don't know what you do. I mean, I, I know what you do. You have to say, well, you're not going to say like a lot of this stuff, but you just like, how much is it to say, you know what? We just got to cancel a shit ton of projects that are upcoming uh, and everything. Uh, and then we have to just like eat that up and say, all right, we need this serious refocus on what made us great in the first place. And we got to get back to making good stories. And we're going to have to put writing as King. Um, we have all that. We just the thing is, like it's though, not working. Like you, you, if you don't do it today, you will have to do it next year or next year, and by then stop. you'll be even further in the red. Yeah, but I, I think, I think Marvel benefits from the the fact that when they announce something that comes out, it actually does come out. Compared to like DC, where they've announced several projects that didn't pan out, it's almost like there's a lack of confidence from everybody in general. Um, like when it comes to DC projects of, oh yeah, we're working on this, where it's like, okay, yeah, we'll see about that. Whereas when Marvel, uh, Marvel announces something, there's like a guarantee that it's going to come out. But I mean, I wouldn't be surprised at this point if stuff starts getting canceled. Stuff is certainly getting canceled that wasn't announced, which I guess technically yeah. isn't canceling, but... I mean, like, whenever I hear about upcoming whatever, I'm just like, yeah, sure. When it's in theaters, I'll believe you. But mm -hmm. I just don't... I just don't think anything's out until it's actually out now. It'll be put on indefinite hiatus, or it'll be pushed back X years, swap directors, 
be new cast, new story, whatever. And at that point, it's not even the same project except the name. Um, Which but I think they're just going to have to... Someone at Marvel is going to... Or at Disney is going to have to say, we need to bite the fucking bullet, and we need to get back to... we. There needs to be a shakeup in how and what their selection process is for hiring the people who make these projects. We can't be going with this key jangly, who you know who and you know this person who knows that person, or you, you're like, no, we got to get well, rid of this. Be getting people whose first screenplay is like a two hundred million dollar Marvel movie, like their first actual feature length screen, like it was, like. Fucking the the first screenplay that was written by Jeff Loveness was Quantumania. That's crazy to me. Mm -hmm. That the first screenplay you write for film is a two hundred million dollar production. I think one of the first things that you might want to do is say that we need like the budgets for these movies has been ballooning out of control to the point mm -hmm. where like there's no way we should be saying, Oh, this only made four hundred eighty million. What a <laughs> failure. Yeah. We're, we're going to have to start saying we need to change up our process of, you know, financial allocation. We need to be making a lot of 50 and 100 million dollar. Like it, we need when we make a movie and it's 150 million dollars, that needs to be like the big thing that we make. Yeah, We've why does to, everything have to cost the same amount, which is an in insane amount of money? We've got to yeah, we we need to we need to take a look at why these things cost so much. We need to try a lot of different things, and we need to make them cheaper, and surely enough of them will stick or hit or something. Alrighty, so, so what are we look at? <laughs> the next step of our journey, because there's still plenty to go. <laughs> we might be in for a long one, like I said. Uh, okay. Do you remember, uh, do you, are you familiar vaguely with an account, I think it's Matt Ramos um, on Twitter, he's like... Uh, He'll often tweet he's like a chill guy, right? He'll tweet in such a way that people don't believe he's like a real human being. They they f feel like he's like a just the perfect customer for um, okay. Marvel and well everything everything mainstream. I think even beyond Marvel. In any case, uh, I was piqued in my interest because I was told he made a video recently called "The MCU is in shambles." Whoa! Hmm. And yet, okay. I bet if we go through all of his reviews. It'll be it'll be just like um, wow, like Rex. Like Boilers. Yeah. It's it's actually fair, funnier than that. With, it'll be funnier than we that. We did this with Cosmonaut, though. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He so did the same thing. He was. Yeah. What we're gonna do first is check out his video and see what his reasoning is. See what see see from the perspective of someone on the other side of the spectrum who's uh, adored this franchise and its timeline in every way, shape, and form. But today. Mm -hmm slash yesterday, slash whenever this was uploaded, decided enough is enough. It's in shambles now. So uh, we're going to check out what he has to say. All right, Y'all sure. read the title of the video. I never, thought th I never thought this day would come, but it's safe to say that at this current point in time... Wait, did he just say MCU come randomly? What? Is in shambles. It might just be glitchy. Or... It, it might have glitched it. Because for me, he said, all right, y'all have seen the title of this video. Come. <laughs> I was like, wait, yes, what? Was what are we flu talking about? Some internet floopage. Wow, audio balancing. Damn, yeah. Uh, geez, audio uh, balancing, please. So also, wow, that, that looked great. Article titled "Crisis at Marvel" <laughs> that, that basically article. details yeah. a lot. Yeah, of see, there you go. We read it, so now we have the context. Ain't that great? We did oh, our wow. research. We did. Yeah. The disasters Ray. that are going on behind the scenes at Marvel Studios right now. And before we get out of the way and dive into this article, I want to say this. What's because y'all know me, bro. I started this channel talking about Marvel. I love Marvel. I love the MCU. Even now at this current, with the current state of the MCU, I'm still going to ride for this franchise because I've grown oh, up so with it. Oh, so you're worthless. It's given me memories <laughs> that I'll cherish with me till oh, the day well, I you die. Have an it's uncle, completely yeah. changed and transformed my life for the uh, better. Jeez, really? It's um, just so dramatic. I don't believe I mean, you. Well, I, I guess I mean, the thing I mean, is, the if, this can, is, if this is yeah. the crux of his career, like if his career kind of exists... Well, I was going to go more with the genuine thing of like, uh, my current everything, like me as a person, part of my identity was built by what I understood and learned from these stories or something. It's like, sure. okay, yeah. um, I don't know, like it, it certainly, I'm trying to think of like the nice way I could put this, it's just like, just what do you, I would love to know what kind of like life lessons you're hey. getting from phase four and five, like they, you know? I just noticed it in the background there. He's got a, he's got the poster for the Uncharted movie. Really? That's what that is? Well, 
Well, I at first I was like, okay, so that's is that Uncharted Three because Uncharted Three has a big old set. It looks like it's the convoy hanging off of the uh off the back of the plane there. That looks like oh, Uncharted. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Yeah. You could see the plane and the yeah, you, yeah. Yeah, with all the cargo, which uh that's blurry. Tom Holland. Man, am I the only person <laughs> who saw Uncharted? Yes. I think I might be the only person who saw Uncharted. Yeah. So. Everything I say in this video is straight up out of love because I love Marvel. I love the MCU. I always have and I you know, always Oh, man. They, I, I always find this caveat so lame. It's like, can we just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah can you just gonna, tell me? Yeah, yeah, imagine. Also, you'll yeah, always yeah. love it no matter what. Yeah, it's like, having this chat with someone. Why did you fall in love? It's like, oh, I got to tell you, like, Marvel's in shambles. But before I do, I just want to let you know, I fucking adore it no matter what. You're like, okay. Okay. <laughs> cool, love bro. Love be... Uh, love should be conditional. There should be a reason why you love something, and that thing, that quality, that attribute, needs to be able to be lost, and your love should go with it. He was if already you love dying. something no matter what, then it can't, it can't do anything to lose it. So it could be as terrible as terrible can be, and you'll still love it, which makes your love, like, worthless. By the way, this is 57 seconds in. I know it wouldn't have felt like that because nothing's happened yet, but it's still oh, like, wow. Yeah, wow. And I think out of love, it's important for us to, to sometimes just take a stand and say, yo, we love this universe so much. There has to be change in order for it to return back to what it once was. And Why? You'll you know, love it. You love you it. You currently love it. So why I change? Think, I, think, I think we are going to have to move past that, Rags. Otherwise, mm -hmm. this will be... Something that has to be loaded on every statement this may. In order for it to, in order for it to uphold the standard that us as fans are used to getting with every single one of their projects. By the way, with um, with like someone like this, these are the kind of people. Or I'd be curious, like, what's their tier list of like greatest to worst MCU movies? Oh, you'll get a like I need... brief idea of how he he even talks about the best of what we've had recently, and you'll get to know. Okay. How he uh, draw the line, let's say. Now, it's important right. to note that not everything Marvel has put out these past couple of years has been bad. I mean, we've got not Guardians true. 3, No Way Home, Shang-Chi, Wakanda Forever, WandaVision. I'd, that just oh, gradually man, got worse and worse and worse. I would, love, and worse. I would <laughs> love to ask him. I would just love to ask him. Just tell me the plot of Shang-Chi. Not detailed, but like, you know, just Basic one minute premise. from the beginning yeah. to end. Tell Who's me, your favorite please. character in Wakanda Forever? Yeah. And, then, and tell me what happened. The you know, one division, like, like, come on. By, by the time you hit the second half of that show, no one knows what's going on anymore. No. Loki. Marvel has still had their hits over these past... Also, yeah, Loki was mentioned there. Oh, and also, just, again, just to reiterate, it's it's been remarkable. It's, be, it's been actually remarkable how consistently awful these projects have been for mm -hmm. the last two it's years. kind of not easy to have that happen. No, it... it, blew, it I, it was actually surreal for us to constantly have that bar keep getting lowered. Like, that was surreal. Mm -hmm. Of finding new ways to break your canon and to break characters. It Remember was incredible. When we watched the last Loki episode and we had that brief little, like, oh, some of us, is this worse than uh, uh, Secret, Secret, Secret Evasion or not? And we're like, yeah. I don't know, I guess, I guess or not, or sort of, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, like, we constantly have well, When the whole universe guess. turns into spaghetti, yeah. No, it was a little <laughs> bit, and then, and then Loki could rewrite yeah. the universe at will. You oh, can just yeah, rewrite of course. Loki, everybody, stay tuned. Yeah. Yeah. Stay tuned That's for that. Me. Episode's coming yeah. your way soon. But overall, as a collective universe, the quality has been inconsistent, and that's something we're not really used to seeing when it comes to the MCU. When it came to the show, uh, it's no, it's, it's always been inconsistent. <laughs> it it's always been inconsistent, but consistent. it's also by his own logic been inconsistent since what Phase Four is like. That's not exactly like, yesterday. It's been going coaster, for a while sorry, now. That's that's the last two and a half years. Yeah, the roller coasters. Sorry, are more than that. Twenty well, high highs. Twenty twenty one. Twenty. So technically three years. We could count it from Endgame. You know, uh, in terms could, of the actual. He wouldn't. He, well, he, he probably he, thinks Endgame is the absolute high point. He does think Endgame's pretty good. I'm, I'm sure he does. Yeah. To the Infinity Saga. There was so much connection, and there was so much of a unified vision that every single project led right into the next. So it, we actually know that, factually that it wasn't. We had co no, the, the conflict there, between no. Joss Whedon and the Russos, even for the the stories being written, like the the lack of there conversation. There was definitely not a unified vision. The fact that yeah. it actually came together in any way that is remotely cohesive is kind of a miracle. Yeah, um, and, and I still believe it's just the fact that there was less to contradict. That's mainly why. Yes. Yep. Pretty much.
And it was all just a never ending hype train. Whereas with phase four and five, never ending hype train. <laughs> like, what? You were really hyped when by, the role, at man. the end of Thor The Dark World, you were like, man, I'm so fucking excited for what's coming next. When you, when you were watching Ant Man for the first oh, yeah. time, that was the same hype as watching, like, yeah. oh, yeah, Ant Man and the Wasp. Mm. Ant Man and the Wasp oh, specifically. It's banger. Like, oh, man. Yeah, that was a bagger. You know, it's so consistently quality. It's felt extremely disconnected. We've. We've been introduced to so many different heroes that yeah, see, are again, good the, when we meet. The thing that's... Uh, that's not true either. Um, this is the stuff that annoys me. is because someone at Marvel's listening to this and thinking that these are coherent and accurate criticisms of the... Yeah, of too the many heroes. That's fight. the problem. It's like, nope. Yeah. No, just... They're, they're all shit. Yep. <laughs> meet them, but we don't even know if we're ever going to see them again. Or when... Not knowing if you're going to see a character again isn't even really a problem in isolation. No. I, mean, I hope I never believe. see them again. This reminds I mean, me of Grace Randolph, where yeah. it's like, the problem with Andor mm -hmm. is there's not enough lightsabers. It's like, ah. yeah. <laughs> Too many bricks, not enough lightsabers. <laughs> How are we to know if Darth Vader's even going to show up? I don't know. Again. So, there has definitely been some stumbles along the way with when it comes to the MCU <laughs> with Phase 4 and Phase 5. Stumbles? But as Charles Xavier once mm -hmm. said, just because someone stumbles and loses their way doesn't oh mean my god. god. No. <laughs> Especially thinking of the context of that quote. Yeah. Like it just gets stuck in your craw. Oh my god. Remember when they fucking they ruined and humiliated Patrick Stewart? <laughs> I remember. And remember that he was saying it in reference to a man that they killed. A hero. He was, yeah, and then An he was saying it to a man, man who'd done nothing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, you stumbled there, Strange. And Strange's like, no, I, I haven't. I've done nothing. I, I arrived you, and you captured me. I guess the person was really proud of that. Is like, ah, see, I'm gonna tie it all back together with a quote from a Marvel story, no less. Nailed it. Forever. Yep. And it's important that us as fans voice our criticisms, voice the way we feel about the current MCU, in order for Marvel. Have you to been doing that consistently for the last few years? Because if not, then you've contributed to this. Surely you would have to. Well, accept. it's interesting, right? You wouldn't want to. You wouldn't want to admit it, but like, so you've implied a positive thing is to point out, you know, a critical nature where we're warranted and to be constructive. It's like, so there's a there's a bad reverse, right? To not yeah do that when needed. Do you think mm -hmm. maybe you've done that? And I'm sure you'd be like, no, I've been honest every single time about what I think is good quality and bad quality. And you'd be like, okay, all right, all right. Yeah, no, it all just all right, catches exactly. up at once. It all, it all just happened. It well, all just it's happened. It's interesting that it, it reaches the point where it's like, oh, you know, Mob was in trouble now that the Variety article is out, and now that the mm. book is out, and now that the films aren't doing so well. Because remember, nothing has changed between today and yesterday. No. Just an article came out. That's it. That's the only you know, difference. You know, Rags, Nothing is it's so funny you say that. Keep that in mind. Put that in your pocket. Pull that quote okay, out. Okay, I will. I'll put that in my little <laughs> When we get to the end of this video specifically. Oh, no. My little, okay. my little bell pouch. Well, I'm, I'm foreshadowing a big old payoff. Chat, you're going to love it. Okay. Pioneers right. in the right direction. Because if we, if we sat here and just praised everything and everything is perfect all the time, then guess what? Marvel's just gonna continue to keep doing. What he's known as <laughs> he's known as that guy, by the way. Like by people typically on the internet, he's known as the guy That's... who would praise everything that Marvel ever does. What they've right. been doing, continue to put. Fra let me ask you, Fringy in particular, but let me ask you this question: If you were in charge of his like background arrangement, right? Would you have put his two Supermen both on the tops of opposite cabinets? Probably. I don't. Because I think that I that's what. The way. I think he's that's separated what I it because because see he's got oh, like and they're and... in the middle. Yeah, but it's not because he's got Optimus Prime. It looks yeah, like up he there does. on the and top Iron Man. Left. Yeah, on the left, yeah. and he's got his his play button too. That does I, feel I a little. Kind of a... Yeah. Does what feel... is that in front of the play button? Uh. Is that like a torch or something? A just sitting there. I don't. Yeah, a plumbus. I, <laughs> I don't. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what yeah, that I don't is. Yeah, I, I don't know about the 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 background. I'm not that. I don't. Think yeah, he need. This is where you need like the glowing lights or something because yeah, you have a very flat, not. like white, not very well lit room. Um, mm -hmm. This is where you need those like little LED strips to kind of give it some some color. That isn't purple because that's what everyone does. Um, but you know well, something. It, you know yeah. maybe he could do blue because that's sort of the way his channel. You know his blue. Got some blues thing, going, yeah. Um, yeah. The thing is, is if he's wearing a blue shirt, I probably wouldn't want a blue background. I'd probably just do the good old blue and orange. Maybe, yeah. Orange is bad. colors. Complimentary colors. They're your friend. Yeah. Put out Could six do a blue red like Superman. 
to Disney Plus oh, yeah. shows yeah. that feel extremely rushed, that are just. I'm gonna say. Did he thoughts. say the shows? Because yeah. that's the. Because again, that's again another accepted thing that you can say compared to shitting on the movies as well. That are just. Um, let me see. You gotta go back a little then bit. Then guess what? Marvel's just gonna continue to keep doing what they've been doing. Continue to put out six episode Disney Plus shows that feel extremely. Yeah, rushed, say, yeah, I don't know. I'm just, too cynical. I'm too cynical. Well, it's just funny you say that, that like, he's. Ah, yes, because that's the accepted narrative is that the shows are flawed, not the films. Well, let's see. I guess. I'm gonna save my thoughts for a later date. So diving into the things this variety article. No, I I'm thought, gonna save my I thought thoughts until I about... sort of I I check the temperature of the room. And I mm. see what's, you know, happening. That, that's, that's what he means. He doesn't, he's, he wants to be nice stuff. to Marvel, okay? He, he, this is big for him. He wants to be nice to the multi-billion dollar corporation. This is tough. It's saying the MCU is in shambles yeah. from him is a big deal, okay? Okay. Well, brings up, it starts off by talking about how this September, Kevin Feige and all of the Marvel executives had their annual Marvel retreat where they- He, d he doesn't have a great smile, Kevin Feige. Hey, it's look, not a- right? it's, He doesn't you know, have a- it's okay if he wears the hat, he's got a look there, you know? He's got a look with his hat. He and certainly it, does. It's more mundane and, and less, um... He looks loud. uncomfortable. It's, deeply it's uncomfortable. Less loud than the cowboy hat. I'd be deeply uncomfortable for him at this point. I wouldn't know what the fuck's at going on. At this point, yeah. Compared to a few years ago. They Not even my go magic powers can save Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> That's your Kevin Feige voice? <laughs> yeah. Not even my powers. <laughs> <laughs> I assume he's like a, a dark eldritch demon who's inhabited hmm. this body. Go someplace else and they just sit there and they analyze the MCU, what's working, what's not working, and then they course correct. So this is something that's happened for years and years and years and it's how the MCU has, in great detail, it's, it's how it's gotten to where it is. Why is he describing this like it's an uncommon thing for creatives to go on retreats where they figure out broader plans for... Like, I still... writers retreats... It. He talks about it like it's an, a Marvel thing. This is just, like, a common thing. I just also feel bad that he's, like, completely convinced, like, it's just a true fact that phases 1, 2, and 3 were planned out and unified. Uh, even though even though that's obviously Remember, not true. Uh, Joss Whedon putting in the Thanos clip at the end of 2012's Avengers was, like, a, a not to a meme, but he was basically just like, yeah, I'll throw that in, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kind of a meme. I mean, like, he, he does understand that he he does realize that there's been like changes in because it was Paramount for the first few movies, and then it was Disney, and then there was obviously that Universal with like like that there was friction. There was like it wasn't a clear, clear cut, sure thing. I mean, surely he knows Iron Man two was like the product of a lot of studio tampering and and all and and whatnot. I don't know. know I, I don't know. I don't know if he knows it. I mean, he like, literally again, might not know. You have but Scott Derrickson like, like leaving Doctor Strange two. Edgar Wright didn't even like fulfill everything with Ant Man. Oh, yeah, Joss Edgar Whedon Wright, yeah, exactly. left with the chance to do possibly going to be the biggest movies ever because he wasn't happy with the way that things work there. It's like, come on. It's because Ken Feige and the team are always meeting. They're always looking on what to improve. So. But this year it was a little different because this year they had a ton of fires, disasters they had to bring up and address. So it wasn't the same Marvel that had the retreat in 2019 once Endgame came out and everything was at its peak and everything already happened. Now this year, this year's retreat was a little bit different. Starting off with one of the big problems that Marvel addressed or is currently addressing is the Jonathan Majors Kang the Conqueror situation. Marvel was very quick to say, this entire multiverse saga is being built on the shoulders of Jonathan Majors. And we've all heard of the pu very public legal battles that Jonathan Majors is currently going through. So it, only time will tell on that, on how that works out. But it said that Marvel was already questioning and discussing on moving forward from Kang after the release of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania because that film just did not perform at the box. Still don't buy that, by the way. No way. No, but again, it's like I said, that, like it's pointed out in chat, the timeline just doesn't even follow. All of the Jonathan Major stuff yeah. happens in March. The film came out in, in February. So in a month, it just so happened that maybe like a week before all of uh, the stuff was happening with him that they were not going to move forward. Like, you know what I mean? Also, like, yeah, I don't, I don't buy to it. highlight a comment, he's extemporizing like he has first-hand knowledge of the topic. He really shouldn't. Yeah, he's talking about yeah. the article's contents as though it is kind of like stuff that he's got uh, access to as information, but it's like, 
Right, when well, he's just like us, right? He's just reading the article yeah, and then that's... forming an opinion based on it. Box office. Now, I'm going to sit here and tell you, again, all of, the, all of the legal drama aside, if we're just looking at what Jonathan Majors brought to the table for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania as Kang the Conqueror, he was without a doubt the best part of that movie. The but figure... No, I don't even know what are the best... Probably, no, pro, it's, pro Paul I, Rudd? I don't know, Paul Rudd, man. Yeah, yeah pro like, Paul Rudd. I feel like it's got to be Paul Rudd. Then what? <laughs> like, uh, uh, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> that. He's the only one that I like. Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Modoc, yeah. Maybe Modoc. <laughs> yeah, Modoc. That's true. That's yes, Modoc. Should not fall on the shoulders of Jonathan Majors. But after that film under the performed at the box office, I guess basically Marvel took that feedback and they said, yo, should we really yo. be putting the shoulders of this entire saga on Kang? Should we be that, putting the shoulders, shoulders on Kang? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, I think <laughs> so. I mean, I'm already be less imposing without his shoulders. A pair of shoulders on he his just his shoulders. arms sticking out of his sides or whatever. He has those shoulders. It's also annoying, like that he, he. I wonder what could have been written in that article that he wouldn't have believed. Like if the article had just said. Yeah. The Marvel have decided that based on his ability to grow facial hair, we will not be casting Jonathan Majors as Kang in future. Like, if they just said that, I wonder if he would be like, oh my god, I can't I've believe it. I've been this for a long time, and now it's finally confirmed. It's just... Well, yeah, because he is basically taking everything that's being said in the article at face value. Yeah. <laughs> Give him his shoulders back. If this <laughs> movie underperformed at the box office... You know, he who's to say that shoulders to people are going to show for the next one where Kang is still going to be the main villain. So Marvel has been discussing that for quite some time now. Another thing that's been... Oh, I have, have they? Have they? Have they? Yeah. Brought up is moving forward from Kang into Doctor Doom and having Doctor Doom... Which excites you, doesn't it? I'm that's sure it does. That's fucking amazing. Sure probably, it does. Right? From your perspective. It is kind of sad to know there's still plenty to plunder from the comics for a oh, lot of yeah. fans. Oh, yeah. I mean... There's no, we haven't had Bottomless the first yet, Galactus, yeah. sure. any of the X-Men. And the villains, same thing happens heroes. every fucking time. I feel like Thrawn is one of the best recent ones in terms of like, you wanted him, there he is, he sucks, <laughs> now we move right. on. You By the time you, you get to the end of the list, you can go back to the beginning of the list again. That's right. Yeah. That's right. We're going to do Thrawn again, but this time he'll be good. But this time for real of the multiverse saga they've had those discussions nothing is really final but the fact that they are having these discussions means this is what that, that shadow is so on point he taught he's not using the article's information and then like address it he's more so absorbed it and now treating it as though it's stuff he knows this is <laughs> like yeah, from, yeah. Just doesn't, like he's like, he, no, I know. He, he's saying like he it's, wrote it's, the article. It's kind of pissing me off a little bit. It's, it's making me a little bit angry. <laughs> well, compare his coverage of the article with us talking about it, where well, we would what? get into like legitimate discussions about what they might need to do and alternatives and all that sort of thing. Well, I mean, bear in mind, I like none of us here like Marvel, <laughs> like the MCU anymore. And even we were like, well, you know, maybe that's not true. This was contested. Oh, reading yeah. every, yeah. everything we went through in the past four however many hours was all treated with huge grains of salt. Like there was even yeah, stuff that we read correct. that we were like, probably not true. And then chat was like, no, that's true. That's confirmed. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, okay. And here it's just like, yeah, he's accepted it all as factual. Yeah. That they don't really know where they're going right now. I mean, we're currently in the middle of Loki season two, and that is for sure going to continue to set up Kang and set up the things that are in store for him. So for I sure? don't think- Such as what? <laughs> such as what, buddy? Like, well, that's the problem, Rick. It could be absolutely anything, I mean, including if... cutting him off entirely. It could be the end of season two of he Loki deletes back. Kang from all of yeah. existence in the timeline. That could but be a we thing. we might not see him again. What if he get, turns to spaghetti and that's just it? And just that's their so way of being like, oh, I, well, I feel like what I just said was when, much more definitive. It, I'm saying it could end with deleting him from everything. Yeah. Kang's just I mean, gone. Why is, why is that any that's more Loki's or less possible? Now. Exactly. He could rewrite reality to his whim. Yeah, that could have been it. But he's like, no, it's clearly setting... He's seen up to episode five, just like us, and he's saying it's clear that they're setting Kang up for more. It's just like, are they? Is that what's is happening? I, I just love when he, when he says, oh, they're setting things up. It's like, such as... You don't know what's happening to that show, what neither do we. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That going, switching over so quickly to Doctor Doom would be the right direction to go. I think if worse comes to worse, <laughs> Marvel should, you know, depending on the way the legal battles work out, Marvel should completely recast Jonathan Majors and move forward with Kang. We spent so much time...
So, so he said it would be bad to move to Doctor Doom. We should recast uh, Kang, which is I don't even like. It's bad either way. It'll be horrible either way. Cause there's nothing to... to do with the actors at this point, or even the characters. Yeah, the writers. I mean, what if it comes out that Jonathan Majors is guilty of whatever, and he's not going to be in it anymore? Then I'm like, damn. What do you do? Yeah, well, uh, I guess if we were put in charge, recast Kang is. But you you can't really do anything other than that, right? I don't know. I guess. I we, mean, I would just. I would be tempted him actually. How great the new actor is. If we have time, maybe write it so that Loki does erase him, and we just get rid of Kang, and we just <laughs> bye, and we we do uh, bring in someone that's else. That's how yeah, Loki ends. We have Loki ending with that's what or that that's what Loki kind of does. Is like, well, the Kang is the big bad that's gonna. Dis- well, dis- dis- I have to go. My home planet needs me. He turns to spaghetti on the way back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm guys building up Kang with the Loki series with all of the multiverse. What has been built up? What has? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. What has been built up? He seems to be just some some loser. You know, kind of. What the biggest building out. scene for him is is the after credit scene in Quantumania. That's possibly the only thing that builds him up. Mm-hmm. Like, yep. look at how many there are, and look at all the different ones. And oh, there's a hierarchy, and, the, and they have plans. Easily, you could easily retcon that with someone waking up from a nightmare going. Duh! <laughs> oh, oh wow, that was a crazy dream. All of those yeah, weird things. That Loki talks to people about how I saw him. I connected with him through the entire timeline. The plans he had, he was horrendous. I got rid of it. I killed it all. Uh, it was it was you know terrifying. But then we just write it so that by doing that, you leave a gap open, and that's Doctor Doom somehow. Whatever, <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh... Stuff. We if it's felt like the entire Phase Four and Phase Five. Has all been just putting. So all something that I'm curious camp. about. No, 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 Fernie. No, out. come on. Do you hear what he just said? Let's uh, let's Phase rewind five a little bit. Here. Has all been just putting all of their chips into Kang. All of Phase Four and Five have put all their chips into Kang. No, they haven't. The vast majority of the stories have nothing to do with them. So There's no reference to Kang in eighty percent of the projects. Yeah, eighty-five it, again. Maybe eighty-five because really it was Loki. It was uh, Quantumania. Mm-hmm. And it was Loki season two. Yep. And that's it. <laughs> that right? is it. Yeah. There's so nothing the else. What are you talking about? Nothing to do with him. What, what in Falcon so of the Winter matter. Soldier, in One Division, in fucking She Hulk? What Moon have all of that led and Moon Knight yeah. and Miss Marvel and Hawkeye led to Kang? And Multiverse of Madness, the multiverse movie. That well, didn't even Yeah, that didn't even. You're Kang. right. No reference to Kang in that. Yeah. What are you talking about? The phase four and five to... led to him. I just. What I don't what know how much. Yeah. How much are people really tied and invested into Kang? I don't think much at all. I don't. Uh, I, that's yeah. what I feel. I don't feel like Kang invested, is actually that big of a deal from the audience perspective. They're invested in what he might mean. It's not what he is. Yeah, exactly. Because I, I, I find it so. There was a there was like a trailer for the Marvels, a recent one, where I think I think the text on screen said, "Be there for what comes next," and as the text faded away, the X in next stayed there for a little bit longer and to me that just felt like so indicative of kind of the nature of how marvel works it's always about what's next it's never about what's happening right now it's always the potential the teasing for the future the simplest calculation why is that good well because it references this and why is that good because i like that it's like yeah but that's not maybe i'll see something i imagine it in my head and the anticipation of it is more exciting than the actual thing and instead of reflecting on what that means in terms of my approach to movies I'm just going to accept it and continue to run with it, even when it yields these results. What I'm curious about now is, I wonder, I wonder what his angle is going to be for the Marvels. I wonder if he now is going to jump ship on that one and, and abandon the Marvels and I leave it for the. I think he'll see what the sentiment is going to sort of be. Yeah, like. he'll wait and see he, what the like, reviews look like. Yeah, he'll he'll talk about how he's excited and everything, but he'll leave himself room to be able to walk out and say. Boy, that was so disappointing. Everything I said was true. Like and subscribe. Mm. So, <laughs> like moving subscribe. forward from yeah. Kang into with into Doctor Doom. Don't get me excited. I'm super excited to see Doctor Doom. But I'm sure you are. Sure what you are. Yeah. With Kang would feel like such a disservice to everything we've gotten up to this point. You did <laughs> name him. <laughs> <laughs> name it. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, it is funny, because it's like, because, you know what, I'll be nice and say there is a, there is something to what he's saying in terms of, like, there's nothing else, what else has been built up? It's like, well, yeah, there, there isn't anything. There's nothing we're, we're heading toward, except Kang is going to be a bad guy who does stuff. That's basically all we've done. 
So you got that. Um, but like, who cares? I guess he's treating it as though it was like such a waste. It's like, like, <laughs> uh. oh, that's interesting. Inter historian put a disclaimer at the start of his new video asking React streamers to wait 48 hours before re uploading their stream to YouTube. Thoughts? Damn, interesting. I feel like this is indicative of the steps that we said are going to happen eventually, pushing further and further forward. And this isn't because necessarily of the the, you know, recognized statistical damage reactors have done, it's more so, I think, the reaction reactors had to being called out. Yeah, um, exactly. They could have the covered this before. well and chill, but instead, like... But instead, they decided to show up in front of the tax <laughs> out. Yeah, you got some interesting reactions, <laughs> not gonna lie. With Loki, with... Uh, no Way Home, with Multiverse of Madness, with WandaVision, Whoa, with all the stuff that's been seen to just <laughs> uh, You see how he struggled there as well? Yeah, because... He was like, with Loki, with... Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, do it. And what... say, say, say my name. <laughs> and what in Loki is set up? Tell me. What is it that you've set... What are you waiting for? What do you know about Kang as a character? And the first question should be, well, which one? What one? When? Which one? Because he who remains, cringe name, is not Kang. <laughs> Yes. Built up the lore behind the multiverse, continuing to tease the what's lore. The oh, yeah, the lore. And let's not act like Marvel hasn't recasted people before. And Kang is arguably the easiest person to ever recast because he just has a million different. I don't like. I but all the variants have no, suspiciously looked exactly all, like they him. They all are him. Yeah, it's it's, yeah, it's let's kind not, of the funny thing. Spider Man can get away with it. Let's not fuck we've around. Seen many, many. Yeah. Sometimes it's not even really the controversy. You know, if you have like a really crappy <laughs> actor or an actor that no one likes getting recast, nobody really cares. Even if in the narrative it's wonky, it's more so. I feel the meta stuff actually bleeds more into this. It's so high profile. Recasting it's, Jonathan Majors, yeah. everyone recognizes what's happening. No one, everybody yeah, recognizes you can, what's happening and why. Yeah, you can give all of the in universe blah 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 that you want. No one's going to be thinking about that. They'll be like, no, he punched his girlfriend. That's why. If that's, yeah, if that ends up being it, that's, we what's all know. It? There's no like, oh, well, it makes sense. It's like, <laughs> makes okay. sense. It's dumb as fuck. Variants out there. So you could literally just have, let's say Marvel wants to recast with uh, John Boyega, with uh, John David Washington, he whatever the case may be. You just no. really have that variant of Kang that's played by that actor come in and mop all of the other Kangs. And right there, you have... <laughs> That'll I'm really picturing this scene the with fucking of him. You know, for some reason, John Boyega comes back, and then there's a scene of him killing all of the 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 Jonathan Majors Kangs. Like, why? <laughs> sure, it's an after credit scene. We're just stabbing them all. A villain that is way more menacing than any of the other Kangs we've gotten in the past. And that is. An I thought that's what the Quantumania one was supposed to be. Yeah, I thought they'd built up. I thought they were building stuff up, buddy. What do you mean that he's not menacing or threatening? Yeah, I thought that it's like, oh, Kang may have been a I professional you didn't clown throw before. Out all the material, but I now. I thought they were out because they were building up. Mm hmm. An easy way to just recast Kang and set up a new Kang variant to be the ultimate crescendo piece that's going to bring the entire multiverse together. Now, another thing this Variety article mentioned- Do you see that though? The implication that if we can just do that, we're, we're good. And we're good, yeah. <laughs> As if like, what? No, it's such a horrible mess right now. And he said it's in shambles. That's but if right, we, we the, can the just... title is called The MCU is in shambles, dot, dot, dot. Which absolutely oh, and someone just said, yeah, didn't isn't the start of Kag's story that he killed all the other Kags? Yeah. Like so I guess, yeah, we're gonna do it again, but with a different look in Kags. Like, 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 meta that seeps into that imagery. Was what they were talking about when it comes to the Blade movie that's supposed to star Mahershala Ali. Uh -oh. This was a film that, that was announced in 2019. And I want to be make it very clear that guys, this wasn't a movie that Marvel originally had planned. Mahershala Ali, after winning an Oscar, called up Kevin Feige and said, I want to do Blade. That is the most like home run, no, knock it out of the park, easiest thing to do. Just a, a solid standalone Blade film with Mahershala Ali and that's it. And this- I don't even know if that's true, by the way, but if it is, yes. If it is, yeah. I mean, you've got the actor who wants to do it. Everyone knows about exactly. Blade. It would be a yeah. cool sort of thing, especially if it was uh, like tonally- just different than everything else and it's this cool yeah. standalone kind of idea with vampires in it and swords and guns and stuff is like okay you know disney could dip their toe into that and see how it does and i mean it doesn't have to be a high budget thing could be fun could be cool you might earn yourself a lot of brownie points with people so it has been in development hell for years and uh 
now you know we and marvel marveled it and they made something crap and then it destroyed the whole production crazy it's not like that's been happening mm. with everything else except with creatives that are actually kind of okay with just accepting that as fact like um that's the impression i got from the behind the scenes of quantumania is that you know paul rudd michelle pfeiffer fucking uh michael douglas obviously and bill murray they don't care they're just like give me the script i'll say the thing whatever whatever yeah, this is I, yeah i like that you know i Give me that paycheck, you movie shit. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. Meanwhile, someone like Mahershala Ali was would have been like, I no no no, I want to make I want to make an actual film. I want to make a make, story. Like a good like, movie. Yeah, yeah. We've gotten some details on what's been going on with all of the different scripts. Apparently, at one point, one of the scripts had the story revolving around a group of women teaching us life lessons, and Blade was the fourth most important character in the movie. So I, I guess he, like he's he, just... has a, he has a decision to make then about what his angle is going to be on this. I, yeah, I'm wondering, yeah. It, which I, I'm more curious about these sorts of decisions than what he's actually saying. <laughs> it's like, what, it, what angle are you going to take with this knowledge? This well, the easiest angle is yeah. uh, making Blade the fourth lead in his Blade own movie. The main his, character yeah. in a Blade movie, yeah. Let's. You know, I think that's probably what he's going to do. I mean, Let's he's see. probably not going to say this is in a long line of trying to replace all these characters with, you know, da da da. He might. I, I mean, so remember, curious. South Park was out at this point, so that's true. But I'm go. curious. Let's see. All right. First of all, I don't under for reference if anyone knows what I'm talking about with that. It's just that with South Park having said it, it just makes it easier to for everyone to say it. Uh, mm -hmm. it's as simple as that. Understand how in any film. Your title character could be the fourth most uh, important yes, see, character, there you go. let alone having that character be played by Oscar-winning actor Mahershala Ali. Like, what? You can have uh, Oscar-winning characters that are fourth main. By side, yeah. It's, I, I mean, guess the whole thing the is time. it's... But, like, did you complain about this with all the other Marvel stuff, where you have the character... And what about, like, getting Stellan Skarsgård by... playing random scientist who barely gets any <laughs> screen time? Isn't that fucking upsetting? No. Yeah. It's like, yeah, because you're allowed to have side characters. I think the last time we saw him, he was naked at Stonehenge. Yes, <laughs> like, I, I think so. That. His greatest role, obviously. <laughs> Defining role of his career. What happens to us just getting a movie about a dude... Killing vampire. It makes me think about like Luthen's speech, and whenever he kind of pauses <laughs> and looks away, it cuts to <laughs> him running around naked in Stonehenge, and then he just goes back to his speech. And you gotta, like, you gotta <laughs> play some sad piano music as well every yeah. time, and it's in black and white. Do 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 do. I've had to use the enemy's <laughs> tactics. Uh, I'm doomed to use the tactics of my enemy. I have to sacrifice <laughs> every. If one of you makes that as a meme, please send it to me. Oh, I'm sure they will I if you ask for see... it. I need Sauce. to see that. Sing people up. That's literally all we're asking for. Again, it's the easiest thing on the surface. It's the easiest thing to do. But now, again, on the, we're looking to the bright side now. Kevin Feige basically saw that and he said, okay, yo, so screw Oh, oh, did Kevin... Okay, yeah, cool. All right, smart, man. Like, you found a way to get past it without talking about... And it, you just talk about how it's... Yeah, it's, it's just interesting. I think it's an easy fucking dug as well. Four women or whatever. They have three women main characters talking about life lessons. It's so fucking In a funny. Where you want to see your guy fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Through all of that... You're all fired. I'm hiring the writer of Logan. Uh, he's man, gonna write us a new script. I don't script. get why is this what is this like Feige like obsession that so he's many so people weird. have like as because he's god. I love that we do like like crediting Feige for cleaning up all the shit on the floor when he was the Not one who his shat. Fault when he hired all these people. He's the producer, they're all called a Kevin Feige production. Yeah, like, like, why like are you saying, Kevin like, oh, Kevin's part. fixing it all up? It's like, what do you mean? Yeah, Kevin's cleaning house after he hired all these people. <laughs> <laughs> And Mahershala was already ready to leave the project because there's been so much going on with it behind the scenes that now the the, the writer of Logan, who is obviously a very competent writer, Logan is one of the greatest comic- Name one other film that he's written. <laughs> Come on, Freddy, <laughs> that's mean. I, I just find it now funny that it was like, oh yeah, no, he's really good. It's like, do you even know anything else that he's written? Did you even know he existed until the <laughs> article mentioned him? Now he's writing the new script and Mahershala is still on board, so hopefully this Blade movie actually turns a turn, takes a turn for the better, and we can finally get this film. And apparently, or you know, one of the tidbits that they had in there was that the film is now being made to is it's now being made with a budget that's projected to be under a hundred million dollars. So it'd be one of the cheaper Marvel films. I think, I think we talked about it, right. Wait. It feels to me like a Blade film can be done 
for um for pretty cheap. Fifty. Maybe maybe not. I, I don't know if I'd call it cheap, but definitely not. Fucking two hundred like million is not needed. You know. Well, yeah. Why yeah, the, it's it, cost most of it? It's going to be mostly like it's a contemporary setting. You can you buy a smoke machine, go into some nightclubs and some industrial yeah. <laughs> areas. Um, yeah. Every once in a while, you have a transformation of a vampire. Have all the vampire your, makeup be, you know, practical. Yeah, your CG is mainly in the killing of the vampires and, uh... Which, yeah. Yeah, yeah which, which shouldn't be too real. difficult. Do... Here, what was Van Helsing budget? Oh, I think, oh, I think Van that was Helsing high. was expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Was, well, that's Van Helsing was $160 million. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was high. God well, damn. I guess the, the more relevant Dracula one is... Dracula Untold was only $70 million. <laughs> the more relevant one would be the first Blade was $45 yes, million. Yes, that's the better comparison, yeah. yeah. Yo, Underworld was $22 million. Oh. oh yeah, those movies are pretty cheap um, in right. terms of budget. Remember, Resident Evil movies, they're pretty cheap as well. And they made lots of money. <laughs> films. I did. When it comes to a Blade film, that's definitely a film they can make for under $100 million because the action could be so practical. You know, the, the action in the OG Re Wesley Snipes movies were, was fire as hell. I agree. Impractical okay, wait, action but... in movies sucks. Well, yeah, but he obviously is referring to like physical stuff. It's like, so um, I, let me get this straight in terms of my criticism here um i think he's completely wrong the the action in a blade film let's compare it to a daredevil or even mm. like you know you know what i'm gonna get at right like blade requires a lot of cg work because when he kills a vampire they have to turn to like a fiery dust yes yep. you can't yeah, do that really physically it's pretty difficult like yeah it depends on how many vampires he kills and how often but if you if you kept your CGI sort of relegated to that kind of thing, it probably wouldn't be too bad. Well, I, 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 sure, but like to say that Blade especially is the one that we can do practically is like yeah, well, I wouldn't say especially. I would say like Doom is, isn't like it doesn't need to be particularly CGI intensive. Yeah, like at the top of the scale, you'll have a, maybe Superman or like Doctor Strange, where it's like well, most of this is going to have to be CG because it's you know like how else? I guess Superman is ways around it, of course. But um, well, well maybe Aquaman, right? That'd be like yeah. What you'd um, it's like, and then lower end of the scale, I don't know, Daredevil. Daredevil, I'd say yeah. It's pretty much yeah. you need someone who's acrobatic, relatively strong, and then they can sort of sort everything out. Um, but you know, yeah, Blade is not someone I sort of. <laughs> I just I wouldn't have associated it with like oh that's low on the CG mm -hmm. requests. I'm so low. Uh, imagine, yeah, what? but not like. Yeah, lower than the highest, of course. And I don't know where I'd rate him, but it's just that, I don't know. It's still a lot of work needs to be done. I would want it to still look awesome, you know? What they could do mm -hmm. yeah, now, today, in the present day, with someone like Mahershala Ali, sign me up. I just mar hope Marvel. Well, I'm glad Marvel made the necessary steps because I swear to God, if we got a Blade movie where Blade you don't is the know fourth, if they've made the fourth most important steps. character, and it's. Yeah, you don't the movie, know. The movie is just led by just the group finger of people teaching life lessons, and Blade is just in the background mm. over there. People were. Uh, kind of. I, was, I, was, I wasn't going to say we... anything, but I guess I, I'm guessing. Maybe well, yeah, I mean that. Cool there. Yeah, that could be like, like fine, a joint noticed, thing, like or it could be just yeah. yeah. Yeah, they kind of go outwards. Yeah, that's a massive fire that's been happening over at Marvel Studios for a while now is how they've been handling the Disney Plus shows. You know, yes, this has because been, that is the, the narrative. Shows. That's the narrative. It's yes, the shows that are really me. the problem. Tell me about the shows. Do that's it's weird because like I thought people could easily acknowledge. At least some of the films being trash. At least some of the movies have been bad. Yeah, yeah. throw us I a mean, bone remember, here. Well, it's just, you know, because I imagine that he buys into the accepted ones, right? Eternals is bad. Um, Quantumania is bad. Uh, what would be... What's another... Oh, Thor Love and Thunder is probably in the mix as well. As yeah, that one's safe. Yeah, movies. those are the safe ones, yeah. Those are the safe ones. You won't say Wakanda like, Forever. Um... Or Multiverse of Madness. Yeah, um, I think... Yeah, Multiverse of Madness I, mean, I still yeah, think a said, lot of people again, would think is good. He said Shang-Chi, which is an interesting one, because, again, please tell me anything that happened in that movie. Yeah. completely new territory for Marvel when it comes to Phase 4 and Phase 5, because they didn't need to worry about no Disney Plus shows when it came to the Infinity Saga. But it. now, when it comes to <laughs> Disney Plus, Marvel has been making the necessary adjustments to actually make these shows and uphold the quality that we're used to. Oh, have instead. they been making, been the, making necessary the necessary changes? Okay, oh, well, okay, then. Well, that's I thought he was going to say... Uh, we've been we've been making them to reflect like the storylines to in include them to have them support the movie, but no, he just said like the quality is. It's like, bro, the fucking TV shows have gotten way worse. If we're gonna yeah, compare the to most Phase recent one Two is and Three, Secret Invasion, the most re and Loki. Daredevil, um, the show and Punisher, the show and even take Agent well, Carter, the, uh, Agents of the, Shield. The, 
Um, this Different is the, vision, though. No, it doesn't. Uh, the point being that if you're going to talk about it in a broad sense of Marvel TV shows that were happening at that point, and that the ones now are being raised to the film's quality, it's like, what do you mean? They're way worse. They are. Uh, yeah, yeah, I get you. Well, it seems like he's 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 made a mistake that he doesn't recognize. He's like extrapolated something that wasn't even present in the article, which is that changes are being made to the way that films, the the TV shows are going to be produced in mm -hmm. the future that will make them better. Because again, the vast majority of the stuff that's going to be coming out for the next year has already been shot. Like Ironheart's been shot, Echo's been shot, and is now coming out. Uh, what's the other one that they? What's the fucking? Isn't it another one? As oh, well? Harkness. Oh yeah, that one's mainly shot too. So it's like, what changes? And, and and how do you even know that they're making the necessary changes when none of that has manifested in something that you can actually watch and verify? Why would you talk about it like it's a foregone conclusion that everything's better? Yeah, they've just. There's no reason it. to believe anything. Change Nothing's it. happening. They, did what they needed to the, do. The writer's strike just ended, and the actor's strike is still going. Nothing's happening right now. How? Like, what? Well, and the irony as well say these things? is that if you look at the changes they plan to make for the TV shows, all they're doing is doing it as it's been done by everyone else. For some reason, they well, didn't do that in the fucking. Yeah, yeah, like the idea that's yeah. like, oh, we're gonna do this is like, okay, that doesn't really actually solve anything because that, that just catches you up to me. fucking reality. Yeah, exactly. And, and plus, the fact that apparently with Daredevil, they're going to be reusing some of the stuff that they already shot rather than starting completely all over again, makes me wonder. It's like, hmm. Yeah. I don't know if that's the total overhaul that everybody kind of wants. That seems like it could yield some really bad results. When it comes to Daredevil Born Again, we recently heard that they completely scrapped everything that they did no, with Daredevil Born true. Again. No, not true. They didn't. No, they didn't, apparently. They're going to be reusing a lot of stuff that they've already done. Which doesn't surprise me because it's fucking wild to... Shot that really much and get rid of everything. Yeah, and also so with their track record, maybe they got rid of a lot of good stuff and just replaced it with shit. <laughs> yeah, they wow. the, the big the, that's anything. the fundamental big problem. They don't know what good is. They have exactly. no idea. Because, well, because remember, one said of they the, flipped uh, a coin again. One of the things that was brought up was, oh, Daredevil doesn't suit up until episode four. That doesn't mean anything to me, good or bad. That there's nothing for me to. But, like, the fact that that was perceived as a necessarily bad thing is like, ah, so you still don't get it. That could be good that we don't see him suit up for several episodes. It yeah. could be good that it's more of, like, a conventional courtroom drama, even if it's not, you know, like the, like the Netflix show. Starting over completely fresh with showrunners, no. and they actually got the same showrunners that ran the OG Netflix Punisher show with John Yeah, which, eh, which, do, you, do know, you see how... Is, eh. <laughs> we 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 almost what you want to hear when he says the the OG you're like oh the OG, Punisher yeah, you're like exactly. wait well Punisher like, hey, well, that's not Daredevil <laughs> <laughs> like, why, why didn't you say Daredevil they got so someone to do a show who's done shows before it's not well like, the oh, the main uh, thing is okay. that's what everyone was asking for is bring back the fucking creators of the one we like that's like mm -hmm. the easy that's, thing. The that team doesn't exist in some coherent, like, singular yeah. way anymore. They're probably all working on different things. It's Jova. Super exciting. And they also have the same directors that directed the majority of the Loki episodes coming to... No. The Which means nothing, really, to me. Um, <laughs> if anything, that's a bad sign. Yeah, if the people who made Loki believe that what they made with Loki was top tier, it's like, uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Right, they're yeah. warning it. So I'm super optimistic about that and i'm glad again marvel is but you you never would if, if the if the opposite was nothing changed and they were moving forward with daredevil born again as it was you'd mm -hmm. still think it was good probably probably yeah, yeah maybe you wouldn't that's like i need you to tell me what was a bad project and why and what was a good project and why when were you ever concerned about a project before variety told you that you should be concerned about it or the hollywood reporter or deadline yeah, this video incidentally comes out now, and it's about this article. Hmm, all right. Mm -hmm. All right. Because uh, when, when they make these moves, they know this isn't going to look good to the public. They know, they know when it's announced that they're scrapping everything they've done for Daredevil Born Again and starting over fresh. That's not a good look. But they're it's still willing to go look. through that in order to give us the best product. Oh, <laughs> it's so yeah. fucking funny yeah. to me. Like, All right, well, there we go. Yeah. The, the silver lining with every single thing that ever happens. Like, it's good that they've done this because it's something that they know could be bad to be Whenever, seen doing it. So that's yeah. good. Whenever it looks really bad, research, and that's why it's so good. You know, when they reshot Secret Invasion, it's because they knew that they didn't have a good script and they're putting in all of the effort that they yeah. need to do all the necessary changes <laughs> to make it the best show ever. Which is good, even if it's horrible. Mm -hmm product they could possibly make and props to marvel for that 
One thing that was mentioned no. in this article is that the Shield <laughs> yeah, yeah. series cost over $225 million. That's been known for a to while. Put that into it's not new information. That's more expensive than the budget for the first Avengers movie. Yeah. Well, is that true okay. with adjusting oh. for inflation? Uh, no, probably not. Um, it's been 10 years and inflation, you know, it's kind of yeah. gone up over the last Which is really years. important. A lot of people the more, say the it and see it as like a dismissible thing, but when you adjust for inflation, it tells you the actual answer. That's the point of that. Well, it's the, the important thing with inflation as well is box office gross, my dudes. Like, yeah. if you make the same amount of money 10 years later, it ain't the same amount of money. Yep. Don't know how that's possible, but I digress. Now, guys, I highly recommend you guys go and check out this article and read it for yourself. Oh, is he accepted? Below. I imagine he's on the boat of She-Hulk as bad as well, right? That's I, that's one of the more accepted ones. Surely, yeah. If he's against the TV shows somewhat, then that's got to be one of the ones that goes down. Because there's yeah, just a lot probably. to dive in there. But the biggest thing but by no, far... He's not going to say anything about, like, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Oh, my God. No. He's about to talk about the Marvels, I think. Oh, no. In this Here entire article is that Marvel has been discussing plans to revive Robert Downey oh, no, Jr. Oh, no, no. Right. Okay. Oh. Scarlett Johansson, as Tony Stark and Black Widow, and I don't think the article said that's what they're considering. No, the article. The said article that it said was, that it was that floated as a possibility. Mm. Yeah, like that's like I think the article said like that is an option that could be pursued. I don't think the article ever ever said yeah this is something they're thinking about doing, or that they're, they're actually making meaningful plans to do it right yeah. now. Yeah, bringing back the original Avengers for a new Avengers movie. Now, there are multiple ways you can look at this. When I hear the word... The only... There's the one word, way to look at it. That's hilarious and embarrassing. Yeah. And the, yeah, that's they, it. It will not happen. There's no real, it's like... It's not gonna happen. There's no way. Who it's the, who the no fuck way. says, no like, way. oh, that's amazing. What a great idea. Like... <laughs> okay. <laughs> reviving Tony Stark and reviving Black Widow... To me, that sounds like they're actually reviving the characters that made those amazing sacrifices. Oh my god! Wow, all right. He didn't oh read the article. He didn't read the article, or he skimmed it, or... I don't remember the word reviving he, being in the article at all. Does, does he think this is a good idea? Well, we'll see, but... ...sacrifices that made Avengers Endgame so special. And the thought of that is insane. Because it would oh. completely take away what made Endgame so oh. special. There you go. Tony Good. Stark's death. Yes. Tony Stark's funeral. Okay. Natasha's sacrifice for the hey, Soul Stone. look at you guys. That is hey. what made Endgame so special. And if they revive these characters, it completely takes away all of that. Oh my god. Yeah, now, look at you go. That is completely different than Tony Stark and Black Widow appearing as variants of themselves in Secret Wars. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Well, okay, well, no, okay. Hey, he gets, uh, he gets like half a point, point two five. You get, half, you get, you yeah, you get yeah. like half credit for like starting to have the correct idea and yeah. then pooping but, on it, but, but at least guess, you had something guess, to poop on. <laughs> yeah, no, I... Sure, you know what? Hey, All right, buddy. We were yeah, right oh, there, please. man. <laughs> <laughs> you were debated. That's right, we were debated, yeah. <laughs> we were debated. We all expected that. We all expected yeah, that's that, the first that, half, that that's what lie. Secret Wars is going to I don't care if we expect them to do something shit. It's still I shit when they do it. To do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a ton of variants of different Marvel characters we all know and love that we all grew up with. Coming together and interacting with other- I gotta say, I hate the term variant, because it implies that there's, like, some actual, like- Validity to it? Original? <laughs> like, a, an original? Well, like, yeah, a real yeah, one? like, a, there's a real one and then a bunch of fake ones. I don't like the term variant. It's oh, that right, yeah. I thought you were saying, like, the fact that it almost makes it sound like it's an accepted thing that we all know is coming and is good and is a part of stories. Variants. Oh, it's like, no. Yeah, no, 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 of course not. No. Other variants. Seeing Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man interact with you, Jackman's Wolf. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, right. See, yeah, so this yeah. gives you the insight that so this right. is the kind of lad go. this is. He he loves this go. stuff. He would. And Marvel is sitting there watching this video, going, "Uh huh, Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. Yep, mm -hmm. Jackman yep. We'll put that on the list. Yeah. <laughs> Writing in their notepad. We'll see how much yeah. money we can give them. Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man. Yeah, now it's not yeah. going to be the same Iron Man that we know from Endgame. It'll be a variant. Don't worry. It'll be great. It'll be a variant. It's the same actor, and he sounds the same. That would still be. Pretty damn epic, and that's what we all- Why? 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 That would be an Why? epic victory royale, true. Why? Because be he likes Iron Man, and it means that he doesn't have to worry about the sacrifice being undermined in textual formats. It's just cool to have him back. He gets to win for him, he gets the key jangle without it ruining anything that came before. Okay.
That's what we all expect out of Secret Wars. But that... Remember what you expect. I don't know, man. Well, I, 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 to be fair to him, I do expect that, but not for the same reasons he does. <laughs> Not because it's a good thing, because they're, they're it's just that's a shit thing. Specifically, because cynical. it's a shit thing. Yeah, is not what this article sounds like. It's referring to this article is saying it's reviving Tony Stark and Black Widow. And to me, when I hear that, no, it not isn't. once for a second is that did I it? ever hear anyone. I don't know. Like I said, did they use the term reviving in the article? Let me double check. Let me take a look. I don't remember. I feel like uh, if they had, we would have talked about it, right? All right. Uh, this would include reviving to... Robert. Uh, let's see. With Iger publicly acknowledging the downside of a Marvel TV glut that diluted focus and attention, the keepers of the comic book empire are considering some dramatic moves. Sources say there have been talks to bring back the original gang for an Avengers movie. This would include reviving Robert Downey Jr.'s okay. Iron Man and Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow, I, um, both of whom were killed off in Endgame. Does, but does this article consider Loki to have been revived, for instance? Well, they understand so this is what I was going to say. The disconnect I have with the, this guy, I guess, is that I never would have thought they meant bringing, like, reviving, like, actually bringing back the characters that died in those films. I, had, I assumed it was a multiverse thing. Yeah, considering the era that we're in. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have thought they'd bring back that those specific comics from it, but, but you know what? Maybe they would. Well, maybe. Yeah, maybe. maybe. They would. Yeah, maybe they would. Maybe I shouldn't rule it out. Maybe he's right. Anyone saying that Marvel's reviving Hugh Jackman's Wolverine? No, because this Wolverine we're seeing in Deadpool 3 is just a No, I think the director said that Logan's canon, my man, so maybe it is actually well, maybe they are. I was about to say, how back. does he Okay, so how can this he is actually no. It's confusing because Logan's continuity uh expresses that it's within the timeline of like at least it's got it's got references to the Wolverine in there, right? It's got the uh, sword. The problem, the problem is it's complicated because it's yeah. like it's it's like things ran that played out the same, but some things were different. And I think Deadpool, I think Deadpool is in the timeline of Logan and not like the timeline that led up to Days of Future Past. It's very confusing. Because um, Logan, I don't think anyone thinks of the X Men universe as like Logan is the sequel to some of the other, like even though you could. I don't think it feels that... You know, like, if you draw a map of, like, the franchises, when it goes, like, say, for example, Halloween 1, Halloween 2, Halloween 3, and then you have the reboot, it, like, will draw lines in different directions. It wouldn't, like, continue in the same vein. Or uh, spin-offs, or ones that are set years before in a different way, or, or maybe it is kind of, like, years after, but uh, regards a different character. It's just, like, these... Logan is, like, seen as a... It's on a bit of an island, that film. But in the same vein, I guess the Wolverine is too, and X Men Origins Wolverine. Then I don't think they're seen as like epi episodes, episodes like four, five, and six in the uh, X Men Fox universe, even though they're, right. they're sharing right. continuity. If you know what I mean, not like X Men one, two, three, where it's like, oh yeah, that's a it's all a following story. Um, Logan is the prequel to X Men one. No, it isn't. Well, it's set what? way further Logan forward. Is set way after, yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's even like the latest in the timeline. Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't the idea that they they cured mutants or whatever, and that they all got killed slash cured? Isn't that the future that oh, they're well, in? What happened was that um, it was that uh, Z uh, Charles Xavier had like an episode when you know how he had the thing where. Oh well, like, yeah, but it's not just everybody. it's not just the X Men Reaver. themselves. It's also mutants in general, no, there's right? Basically, no mutants left. Yeah. yeah. I can't remember if that's taking uh -huh. from which of the many continuities potential because you have days of future past and first class and apocalypse well, the, uh, as I, so as i understand it it's the days of future past is like the inflection like that's where it, it starts to divide right so you have the original timeline that plays out but then like apocalypse dark phoenix i think the deadpool movies they're like from days of future past afterward in a different timeline and which one's but logan then, attached then they to play Logan is the re like the second timeline, so that'd be okay. you know Days of Future Past travels back in time, stops the uh, stops the Sentinels. Oh, by the way, but but Vox yeah. are now correct. They weren't back when we first covered them in episode I think eleven or ten of EFAP, where they said the continuity in the Fox universe is far better than the MCU's. We we laughed at them for that, but they are now correct. Yes, they are. Yeah, <laughs> good for them. Yep different variant or he's coming from a different point in time but at no point was anyone saying oh marvel's reviving hugh jackman's wolverine because 
they've said it multiple times that the low that the Wolverine and Logan is completely separate from the Wolverine we're gonna see in Deadpool three. Whatever so, that means. But they, no, but they no, they've sent mixed messages. You can say this all you want, but they've definitely sent mixed messages on, um, on can the we, nature of. There's an elephant in the room here. Um, a lot of people take issue with bringing him back in any way, shape, or in form. General, exactly because he had a story that ended. So even if you say like, oh yeah, but it's a variant, it's like, that doesn't really address the fundamental point, which is he had a story, it's over, and now you're dragging him back because you need to make some more money. Yeah, but, um, there's there's a sense that the more we see him after his, you know, ending to his story, that the less that ending is his ending, it's more so just an episode. Exactly. And, well, three. I mean, he has to understand that, right? Sure, you'd think. So, when it comes to all of this multiverse... And if someone said, like, oh, so no more Wolverine, it's like, no more Hugh Jackman Wolverine. No That's more kind Hugh of... Jackman Wolverine. Different guy, different yeah. character, different actor. Change the actor and people will be like, it's so easy to know that it's a different one if you change the actor. That's like yeah, the and number one we thing all you can do. agree that it's a really difficult character to, you know, do well after how well Hugh Jackman did it, but that we'd all be willing to give someone a shot who's well cast, right? Yeah, there's been plenty of good yep. James Bonds. Stuff. Mm -hmm. You can do and it. And bringing back the OG Avengers. I think we all kind of expected that the original OG Avengers would come back in something like Secret They're not. Wars. No, I did. They're not. I don't want... Not. Well, I don't no. think they to will. be clear, I don't want them to, but I might have expected them to because of Marvel being so shit. Sure. But now I'm not so sure because I need to pay them more money than well, they can probably afford to get them back. As we talked about, yeah, the, the, we know meta reasons for why. Like, I don't believe Scarlett Johansson would ever come back. Maybe I'm wrong. No. Why would she, after what happened? She, as much as you could say, like, well, it's just going to be a matter of money, right? And it's like, maybe, but she's also super into the art of filmmaking, from what I gather. Exactly. She yeah, also exactly. has, she has money. She has fuck you money. She does. She yeah, has she might as money. well, there's a lot of people where, like, they get so rich, they're like, it just doesn't matter anymore. Like, what am I going to spend this, like, I've got enough. I want to do me stuff now. I hear the term reviving Tony Stark and reviving Black Widow. To me, one, there's no longevity in that because these these characters and these actors have already dedicated over a decade of their lives. No, I, I guess, though, the the counter would be if Marvel could get a guaranteed W from it, they'd just do it, even if they knew there wouldn't be yeah. said, multiples of them. You said there's no longevity because we know that they've already put so much of their lives into it, like the implication being they wouldn't give much more or whatever. It was just like, well, we, we never know how Hold long... Your hands and She's not that old, man. Well, like, that's she's, not, the, she's not old and she's fit. It goes both and ways, though. Fit. Like, we could have, we could have, you know, Harrison Ford is joining the MCU as uh, Ross suit. It's like, how long that's are we going right. to have him for? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, he has, like, could be one movie. Like 84 at this point. Yeah, who, who the fuck knows? Like, the idea that's like, well, you know, that, that means we can't get invested because Robert Downey Jr. probably wouldn't come back for more than one. It's like, what argument is that? I can, I've been invested yeah. in characters that only showed up for parts of a single movie. You know what? Movie. I've been invested yeah. in characters who, yeah, you know, a lot of movies don't have sequels. Did you know that? <laughs> um, like, a lot of them don't have sequels. To these roles, and realistically speaking, Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans, uh, Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, Chris, Chris Evans is probably not coming back. It seems like he's very much he's done ready as well. To move on. I don't know. It's just he said a lot of things that seem indicative of like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a bit tired of it. Like it kind of, it went for a long time, and I'd rather do other things. Mm -hmm. Could be, could be. Um, I don't know. For some reason, for me, if I heard an article or announcement for him saying I am returning as a guest spot in like a fucking Avengers multiverse thing, I'd be like, huh. Okay. I, yeah. Meanwhile, I if guess. it's uh, either Scarlett Johansson or Robert Downey Jr., I'm going to be like, really? Really? Yes, that would be more surprising. OG gang, they're not going to come back and just reprise these roles consistently the way they used to in the Infinity Saga that revolved completely around them. Not the They've already said goodbye to, to their characters. It. They've already had that moment that cause, that, that where we sat down during the end during the credits of Endgame and we saw all of their signatures and that was their goodbye wave to the to the audience. They've already had that moment, so there's no way in hell that they would come back consistently, but... That's Why not that true. <laughs> do you know, that's not do true. Do any fucking people put their signatures on that that are still here? Well, so fucking that's Banner is still here. And, if, and even if they didn't come back consistently, if they only showed up one more time, why is that like a disaster in your mind? Why is that unfathomable and untenable, you know? It's so funny to me because it's just like, it's just Marvel. They'll do anything. If it's going to work, yeah. they'll do it. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I've, yeah, I I've put it as, um, there's like different sort of flags to let, let everyone know like what stages we're at. And one of the big ones was bringing back Iron Man. Um, that was like a big like, oh, yeah. we're in serious trouble. But the ultimate like 
I don't think it gets any worse than having something like Iron Man fighting Darth Vader. That's where it's like, oh, <laughs> weird. It's dead. Oh, it's all man. dead. Yeah. Disney's actually you dead. Imagine? Yeah, I'm sure Star Wars imagine. theory would think that's very. Cool. <laughs> I'm sure. Oh, and then well, you gotta have Mickey Mouse there as well, though, right? Oh. As, yeah, for this Palpatine. So you know when he, you know, like in Episode Three, he goes oh, no! he unlimited power to get up. To, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Even if they revive Tony Stark and Black Widow for a new Avengers movie, to me that takes Man, away he is obsessed a lot of what with this made Endgame special, <laughs> which is the fact that Boy. it was the Endgame. It was us saying bye to the journey that we've been on for the past 10 years. True. Well, but the funny thing, of course, is like, well, should he say just bye to those two? Because everything else continues, drags mm -hmm. on the corpse slowly yeah. through the fucking desert. To me, it's just a movie that screams desperation because Marvel knows where that yep, at this true. point in time with the MCU. That's true. I'm sorry, a White Vision series isn't going to bring the MCU back to its glory days. Is that actually happening? Why not? What if we it was? What? But what if it was incredible? What if it was like the most? Profound I don't know. I, I think told? maybe I'm with him that even if it, even if it was an 11 <laughs> out of 10, right? It wouldn't matter. It just wouldn't matter. Uh, I, how how many 11 how many 11 out of 10s does it take? Or does, a lot. Or is, it's the exact same thing yeah. in reverse now. In order to get their shit back, they have to make great things again and again and again and again. Consistently. Like yeah, getting one well, or yeah, two is not enough. Is that, um, you need because great things that were like established, well recognized uh, series. That's like that makes it easier because more people are likely to pay. But like, if we, we've Echo seen it turns uh, out somehow to be incredible. Well, very rather, few people are going to watch that show. We're going to see it, I hope, with uh, Game of Thrones overall reputation. Right, it was it was on the fucking floor, and then House of Dragon comes out, and you have a, the sentiment is like. At least from my POV, a big old black cloud is just sitting over the idea that it could be good because it's part of Game of Thrones. Even though you check the creators, not necessarily. There's some crossover here and there. All new characters, you know, could be good. You watch season one for the purpose of review, and that black cloud is gone for me. It's 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 like and now season two's coming yeah, out. I can I'm be a part of promoting it, two. you know, just by being mm. a normal person who says the show looks good and is good if it's good. What I guess I'm saying is that, that if they screen? create a season two and three that's as good as season one. Then by the time we hit the end of season three, we're gonna be like, oh god, what else have you got? Give us another one. You know? And, and it's like, oh shit, they've actually managed to undo a lot of the damage that Game of Thrones did to the overall sense of the IP. Even though, like I said, it is different, but... Um, with Marvel, yeah. If they did if, if they did White Vision, the TV show, and it was incredible, I feel like it would be like Andor. It would be like, only nobody if, gives a only shit. Only if they call it White Vision. They have to call it White Vision. <laughs> well, I think it's called Vision Quest, right? Yes. Oh no, is it? Yeah, I think so. Yep, and oh, uh, you know, like I said, it's, you need that to be good. You need you need several movies and TV shows to be really fucking, and maybe not even good. They have to be great to pull everyone back in. Mm. Need superstars in the game. The X Men are on the bench right now, and it's uh, it's not. Uh -huh. That's really not the like. I it, it he's not entirely wrong. As in, like you know, like the part of the problem with that White Vision show would be that if it were great, it's like, well, it's about a robot uh, that people don't even understand from a show. It's like a spin-off of a spin-off almost, you know what I mean? It's like, mm -hmm. but if it were a TV yeah. show simply called Wolverine, and yeah. it was, it was, it was amazing. It's like, yeah, that would, that would faster regenerate the MCU. That's true. Just because um, it would get more eyeballs. The thing is, though, he seems to, to be focused on the fact that it needs to be about stars when it's like, well, the more important thing is the writing, but also making it about characters people actually give a shit about. That is yeah. yep. an important aspect too. It's time to cue him in. The Fantastic Four, we know we're on the way. All of the characters in Deadpool 3, we know they're on the way. Everything that's going down in Secret Wars, that's going to be fire. Is it? Why? How do you know that? <laughs> How do you know that? Is We've it? already decided good it's going to be good. Wolverine. You, you said that the MCU is in shambles, and yet that's going to be fire. Yeah. Like a, okay. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. But Marvel needs to put the superstars back in the game because when it comes to phase four, you know, someone actually did the math. We've met 57 new superheroes. Oh shit, that's what it was 57 then. Okay. And oh my god. In phase four and phase five, that is actually fucking nuts. <laughs> How many superheroes How many were introduced in phase one, two, and three? Uh, what, like seven? <laughs> Well, it's probably uh, like I'm. I'm including like even Avengers, even Falcon. You know, Wolverine. like well, Falcon was phase two. That's why I said phase one, two, and three. Oh, phase one, two, and three. Oh, um, I guess it probably would have been comparable, right? How many of them were there at? Uh, I well, so the big game? question is: Were they more introduced in phase four 
than they were in phases one, two, and three put together. I wonder. But we should yeah, have like a criteria of like they should have a power of some kind. They can't just be like you know, random person. Hmm. I, I, I'm not sure. Obviously, we can't really do that right now, but still, it'd be interesting. Alone. And at this point in time, we don't know the next time we're going to see Shang-Chi. We don't know the next time we're going to see the Eternals. That's not the problem. That's really not it's actually not, the problem at all. Yeah, it's it's you have to make them good. You have to make these movies good. You have to make these characters. It doesn't matter how many. If, it, if it's if they 57 came... shitty characters, then I just... Why, why would I care? Because why, why do I think that a pile of shit is better because it's bigger? If they came with like a, a thing at the end where a, a very sterile person room is just it's just like you will see the Eternals in three more projects. Bye. Be, yeah, that doesn't okay. make it better. Um, <laughs> like, okay. I was like, what am I supposed to do with this? Yep. No, if you want to get butts in seats, and and you want to get people invested in the MCU again, you gotta write it well. Simple. You have you to write it well. The writing has to be good. good. Characters have to be likable and endearing. You have to bring in the superstars that people actually care about outside of the movie. You know what the fastest uh, way to put people off the MCU would be to bring in the superstars and write them badly. I was about to say, if you make X-Men and it sucks, it's then over. you're done. It's so it's fucking over. over. You're finished. The X-Men have always been Marvel's most popular group of characters. Yeah, but not when they're shit. Is it? Yeah, well, uh, the th they haven't always been. Um, I mean, Dark Phoenix failed. <laughs> like... Oh, does he mean in the comics they were? Yeah, but, but in the comics, well, I mean, you Spider Man. You know, X Men was really popular in the nineties, like, and the early two thousands. Um, but now it's you know it's not quite not quite the case. There's and they've know, always Marvel been really Prince... you know like he... they've always been a bit part of the comics for sure. Well, I Definitely. think he said for most popular group. So Spider Man wouldn't necessarily oh, be the competition, uh, but oh, Fantastic well, sure, Four would be I, the competition, I guess. But uh, X Men's more popular than Fantastic Four. I'd not say. when yeah. Marvel started, right? Fantastic Four were before X Men. Oh, uh, not much before, like a year or but two. But in, but enough that they would have had a, a time in the spotlight to be like the most popular group, and then they become the most popular group. And you know, eras, right? Because I mean, Avengers it, must it have been pretty popular at some more. point. Oh, just it depends on what time you talk about. Like, yeah, because the nineties was like the height of the popularity of like X Men. Right. Yeah. Just them in 2019, and they've just been sitting on the bench now while we're getting freaking a White Vision series, a Wonder Man series, an Echo series, Agatha, Ironheart, all that stuff. You know, part of the reason why that's wow, probably so happening, though, beyond, like, rights and everything else that comes with it, is the fact that there's a bit more trepidation with creating X-Men than there is with fucking Harkness. Who cares? Like, pop that out, yeah, go. But when they're sitting there like, how are we gonna do X-Men? It's like, how are we gonna implement that into the MCU? When should we? Should we do it now or later, or should it be the results of some big event, or should it just be something that's always happened? It probably is a nightmare to try and make it work when it's funny because they shouldn't be spending that much time on it considering they don't spend any time on making anything make sense. But then again, it's just going to be bad anyway. What I'm trying to say is, like, there's probably a reason why it takes a while to consider how to implement the X-Men. Uh, they're giving us Hugh Jackman Wolverine as, like, a big, you know, mutant to go first. Not necessarily first because isn't Miss Marvel supposed to be a mutant now or something? Yeah, but, I guess so. Um... But that's the safest fucking way to begin implementing uh, X-Men, is to start with possibly the most popular really film X-Men ever. A really brave way to do it would be to have the X-Men team be comprised of the original team, and not Wolverine. So, like, the, the main character would be uh, Cyclops instead of Wolverine. Yeah, but you gotta, I don't think they'll do that. Yeah, you gotta think like an idiot, though. <laughs> it's gotta, gotta be like well, a... I mean, it's it's just, just like Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. Yeah, that'll do it. That's the way. We, that's where we start, of course. Oh, of course. That's the easiest way to do it. Whereas the more interesting way would be if you had the original team that didn't have Wolverine well, in it. So as we just said, out. if they fuck him up, yeah. it's gonna have much more drastic results than fucking up. You know, Jeremy, the first. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, when they just uh, tried it with that guy. Yeah. If they do it and they screw it up, it'll be catastrophic. I mean, that's the thing. X Men and Fantastic Four are like the last things that they have left. If they screw both of them up, then well, it's, I'll say this. Done. Um, and I think this sentiment is shared across a lot of the sort of spheres that we're in as well, that we're all assuming they're not going to fuck up Hugh Jackman Wolverine, kind of. We're like, they probably won't fuck that up. It's Deadpool, looks like Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman are, you know, pretty involved and they're, they're pretty, they're pretty level-headed with what, what works. It's like, they're not going to fuck that up, right? It's going to be a violent movie with some jokes, right? It's not going to be like a terribly yeah. written mess, right? I mean, it's you hope. Well, yeah. I mean, 
but if it but i guess the thing that's got working in its favor is that if it's deadpool 3 bringing in a lot of stock and capital from like ryan reynolds um that is kind of unique compared to most marvel productions where this is something that's being brought in where i think that's like their co-production like ryan reynolds is a producer on it mm. um it's it's just that because the deadpool films like existed beyond the mcu there's a lot of other stuff that gets tied up in it like that yeah i because it's production companies part of it yeah we'll see no and a lot of that stuff i just mentioned some of that stuff is actually exciting but again with the current state of the mcu they need to bring superstars in the game because this is what people want it's not the problem at all <laughs> it's not even close uh, this is what the fans want and this is what people are going to show up for and at the end of the day that's why secret wars is going to be what it's going to be this is why it's going to be an absolute like nostalgia fest as a lot of people want to describe it because Marvel yeah, which is really bad when it's becoming more and more popular sentiment to just shit on that. Yeah. Like, that sucks, it's cynical, it's reflective of the kind of the world that we're in right now. Um, it's already over. It's, I mean, it's, it's kind of funny, right? South Park saying everybody's already fucking tired of multiverse, which is true. Everybody's already getting pretty tired of it, it's only been a couple of years. And now you have to hope that people remain excited about it for several years when people already kind of view it as cynical. By and large, everyone knows. Yes, yeah, no secret. That wars the only great. way they're gonna get Secret Wars to compete to a fraction of what Avengers Endgame made at the box office, which mm. Avengers Endgame was awesome. No, it's not no, possible. No, it ain't happening. No, it's no. just not happening. No way. No there's, way. I don't it's even think there's happening. a way to do that in the perfect environment. Like I don't think there's anything yeah, that no can be done. No one cares. Jova. I think it's no one Jova. gives a shit. It's Jova. There's, uh, we, 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 you can have it perfectly written with, like, combining <laughs> all the storylines of everybody in phases four and five, bringing in characters that are really well sort of supported and meaningful. It, I just, no, there's a cap on this film now. It didn't used to be necessarily, like, with a lot of stuff, but, I mean, comparing it to Endgame, it's just like, how the fuck is anything going to make that kind of money again in the MCU? How? You think it's actually going to make nearly $3 billion? I don't know about that, man. The highest grossing movie of all time when it came out. So the only way they're going to get Secret Wars to match those numbers or potentially even surpass it no. is by bringing back the characters that people are invested in. No. 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 It's not. No. no. Stop. No. Quit. By the way, it's like you're a these, ideas, these ideas exist over in the MCU fucking studio. There's people up there, executives, producers that say all of this, probably. The only way this is going to work, guys, if we bring in Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man. It's the only way it's going to work. It's the only way we're going to get numbers yeah, like Endgame ever again. It's the only way. Them so far, you know? Then some other guy's like, you might... no, it's not. <laughs> and then he's like, shut the well, fuck up. I think up, the reality the is uh, they might have to just, they, they might have to do the work. I don't think you, I don't, you can't do shortcuts anymore. Oh yeah, dude, the, the big sad reality for them in that boardroom is that you like put your briefcase to the table, open up, there's just one sheet of paper that just says, you gotta work. Work hard. <laughs> it's like, that's yeah, it. Sorry, guys. We might have to work. There's no hard. secret answer to this. You've just got to work real hard for real long, and that's it. Make and good we stuff. haven't had enough time with all of these new characters that we've met to truly invest, to truly be in. Yeah, and Gogo just said, no, we've well had with... good time with a number of them. They just all suck. Worked well with MOM, More right? Being the um. I mean, if you if you had um... MOM being pitched and then and i'm pretty sure this did happen they were like all right toss in professor x charles david the only way we're going to make the kind of money we need to make is if we have professor x charles david yes 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 get in there oh he's fucking great uh patrick stewart especially oh if we can get him yeah that's great okay next up reed richards can we get him it's like oh fan cast yeah that's gonna be great i don't know what the fucking conversation was to to throw in like agent carter's or i guess captain carter like i don't know i don't know if they thought like that's gonna bring in the money which even in the trailers was that a, that was a complete surprise right like, uh, at least intended. The, 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 you know, the Illuminati members, the only one that was in the oh, trailer for sure was showed, Professor uh, X, right? Captain, Captain Car... Wait, did they... They showed... In the trailer? show? Because we knew the cast before oh, the film, but that was because of leaks. But in the trailers, I'm pretty oh, sure they yeah, only showed yeah, Professor yeah. X, I think. I and think Mordo, right. yeah. we would have known about. Yeah, and Mordo, I think. But yeah, there, there would have been some fucking producer being like, all of the members of the Illuminati, that's the only way that we're going to be able to get this film to the price tag that it'll get to. And you know what? That, that guy probably feels justified. It's like, see? I was right. That's the reason. Mm -hmm. Invested in them the way we were with Captain America, Tony Stark, Thor. And no, to get invested in them, you have to write the stories. Yep. You, you need power. You can't just have them be there, man. You can't fat. Yeah, like the idea of you fast tracking through the investment process is just—it's not. 
it's not you're you sorry you have to make good stuff you got to do it yep. the old-fashioned way you have to make good stuff and the og avengers when it came time for infinity war and endgame Again, everything I've said in today's video is coming from a place of love because y'all know I love Marvel. I'll ride with this franchise to the day I die. And even now at this point in time where the what? MCU may be in shambles, I'm still here for Kevin Feige. Yeah, see, I'm so glad you reminded the whole in shambles because it's like your video is not really in <laughs> keeping with your title. No. <laughs> I feel like you, you lured us in with some more Venom, but then it wasn't Venom at all. It was anti-Venom. It was carnage or something. Pick up the shambles and put it all together pick and make something extraordinary. Something that we're all used to. What does it, what does it, it mean to pick up the shambles? What that's, doesn't it the, mean? That's not even what they need to do. They need to just drop it God. and they need to like wipe the board clean and be like, guys, we need. They need to wipe like, the slate clean, burn it down, as Senator Armstrong yeah, would say. Uh, as they would, as they'd say, who? What, what was it? Was it Elrond who said? Swept salt from a table? No, that was Gilgalad who said like salt from a table. No, it wasn't. It was the. Elf Commander guy from the Tira. Anyway, they need. It, it's like a total. It's like reforming a religion. You have to go back to the basic tenets of how you do things and just restructure it. It has to be like from the ground up. Who you hire, who you choose to make these projects, the entire process, the financial elements. Like they've dug themselves a big hole here. They're certainly staring down the edge of a hole, a big gaping chasm. And they either you do it today or you do it next year. Um, might as well do it now when it hurts less. Cinematic universe, the most successful studio in Hollywood history, just absolutely changed the landscape of Hollywood itself. I love this universe so much, man, and I want to see it thrive. And I think it's important for us to voice. And it. his main solution was bring back characters. Yeah, bring mm. just just, just key make just sure they're the variants, though. Oh yeah, make sure yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it's not so yeah, so it's not like hollow, you know, or anything mm -hmm. like that. Our criticisms and concerns and bring this stuff to light so like that Marvel can make the necessary changes and, and instead of us just sitting here taking the same stuff over and over and over again and watching the franchise we love so much just diminish over time. So with that being said, let me know what you guys thought of this variety yes, article. Yes, you, you <laughs> care a lot about what I'm doing. Comment down below. Comments. Let me know. Comment section down below. Again, yeah, I think I in the long run, the necessary changes will be made and Marvel will course correct. <laughs> No, I'm optimistic yeah, about all right, no, sure. So, no. with that being now said, make sure to like and subscribe. Video, I love you guys 3000. Let me know in the comments. It's amazing. Oh. That, yeah, his idea of course correcting is bring back Robert Downey Jr. That's that's course correcting. <laughs> but make sure he's a variant. So, well, we'll just finish Hello, this. Like, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, like, oh, wait. No, no, there's a subscribe here, but no like and subscribe. Okay. So, this is, uh, this got memed on on the internet, right? Because they were just like, the fucking absolute state of Marvel fans, as this was the image. Damn. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> but it gets even better. Oh, wow, he no, gets no like, views. It gets better. Considering his... it, gets better? it gets better. The um, the next video he released, it was we were starting the stream. And it was released like two hours ago, and I was like, "No fucking way!" Oh, so was it? I'm gonna <laughs> pop her on, and you guys can read oh, the no. title. Y'all read the title of the video. Can what? you see? <laughs> what? It says, "I'm sorry, Marvel." I'm sorry, Marvel. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I did. What? You didn't even fucking <laughs> typing like a child. Oh my god. What? And okay, yes, so it does what, mean okay, what you right. think it means. It's not the other version. It's the I am apologizing to Marvel. That's what this video is. Wait, no. Sh no. This isn't I'm sorry, Marvel. I had to say something. It's I'm sorry, Marvel. I was wrong. Wh oh my God. And yes, I believe this was uploaded within like a day or just over a day, something like that. That's since we last saw him. So let's see how his opinions uh, have changed, okay. shall we? <laughs> okay. Video. It's time to apologize. <laughs> oh my god! Ow! <laughs> Stupid you cock fixing. Okay, so wait. a couple of days ago, Variety decided to drop a massive article titled haircut. Crisis at Marvel Detail. Wow, he got a big haircut. Problems and or is it just tied back? Oh, it might be tied back. If Bastards it is, that it's... are going on behind the scenes I at guess, Marvel yes, Studios. Then, in the past 24 hours, Marvel decided to clap back a little bit. I, I ain't gonna lie, Marvel decided to clap back a little bit. They dropped a peak Loki episode. Oh. oh.
Wow, you uh, felt that I need was good. You, I need you yeah, to marinate no. in this. Everything he said in that previous video has been counted by the fact that he loved the newest Marvel thing. Why? Why? Okay. So, peak, by the way, we've seen the Loki episode. It was shit. It was awful. No surprise there. It was, it was the was episode awful. that made us decide horrendous. that it's uh, it's equally like it's sitting right next to Loki season one. Which remember, guys, we're at a one out of ten on our one Loki season one. Yep. It's one um, out of ten. Ain't going anywhere. Uh, th this is why why people are like. You're not a real person. You're paid to do this, right? It's like because it comes across as so fucking soulless to be like, I, listen, Marvel's yeah, in shambles, and then to be like, Loki, fucking season two, episode five was fire. It was so good. I, yeah. Man, I, I could, but I feel like the likely explanation is just the consumer mindset, though, yes. isn't it? Yeah. That's where I was going with that. Is I'm not even sure that it would apply to him as a grifter or shill or paid whatever. I think he genuinely feels these things. Mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Fire. With Loki episode 5, which we're going to talk about in a second. Oh boy. And then this Friday morning, they decided to drop the first trailer for the Echo series. Which, wow, le let's be trailer. honest, Echo was cool in Hawkeye, but I don't know if her performance in Hawkeye and what that character did in that series warranted an entire show. So none of us really had that many expectations for the Echo series. Well, you were going to love it. this no trailer blew a lot of us away, including myself. So to clarify... He's apologizing because of Loki's episode being so good and a trailer for Echo. And this has any bearing at all on a big article that was talking about a lot of fundamental issues with the way that Marvel goes about making their movies and television shows. You could argue it had well nothing to other... do with what he talked about as well. Neither of these account for his primary solution, which was to bring in new stars, or rather bring exactly. in old stars that are not there anymore. I'm sorry because I saw an episode I liked and you created a compelling advertisement yes for a new television show but yeah it's okay. actually unreal um, i was just like holy yeah. shit yeah i'm i'm a i i'm in a little bit of a state of disbelief honestly so, um, and it's going to be the first tv mature marvel project yeah oh my so god this is going to it's pave the so way for the future predictable. projects oh my god it's going to be better <laughs> cuz it's ma and there's a bit of blood Oh, yeah, that means it's going to be some real mature, like, oh, um, yeah, this is I'm a big boy, I like blood. Yeah, I find that so lame that, like, it's, oh, well, it's, it's rated R, so, like, therefore, it must have some sort of inherent intrinsic quality. For God, the so Daredevils, bored. the Punishers, the Blades, you know, that- It's going to pave the way for Blade. How can you gonna, say that after I everything we saw in that gonna, article? Echo okay. will pave the way for Blade because it's M.A. Fucking hell. Level 3 is obviously going to be R-rated, but Echo is going to pave the way for darker and for the darker Netflix type of MCU content that we've been asking for for a Man, it's- I love how it's that- You know what made Daredevil really good? There was blood! That's what made it good. It was- there was blood! It was- yeah, that was why it was good. Um, if only he knew, because he clearly doesn't, that Marvel don't believe in Echo whatsoever, and that they did try to get it discontinued. Obviously, obviously, they're releasing all of the episodes straight away. They're releasing it on Disney Plus and Hulu, presumably to get it to, like- Maximum eyes? Right, in some way, shape, or form. More yeah. people, probably. Yeah. It's just- um, they don't believe like, in it. They don't care about it. It won't be influencing anything going forward unless it has a remarkable engagement, which it won't. It's, no. It, it, it's just echo. It wouldn't echo. matter if it was 11 out of 10. Marvel's it won't. No one cares echo. about it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Word of mouth will not be powerful enough to sell echo around the place. It's not going to happen. No way. No way. For a while, and I ain't going to lie, Marvel clapping back with Loki episode 5 and that echo trailer. It's not a clap back. It's releasing another episode. What are you talking about? It was going to come out Loki... anyway. It was going to no. come out. Yeah, yeah it was scheduled always to come, come out. out. <laughs> that shit's Does been that done for ages. Of all of the problems that are going on behind the scenes at the MCU. It doesn't address no, any of the problems. No. <laughs> it is not related to the problems. It is it's totally a... irrelevant. And it doesn't, like, the, wait a minute, I just realized, that means he made the previous video without episode 5, and he said that it was setting up Kang. Do you remember what happened at the end of episode 4? Kang got melted. Oh, yeah, when, it, when it melts him, <laughs> yes, that's right. That's all well, that no, happened. The reason, why I said, the reason why I said that is because the Variety article said that the finale sets up Kang. Oh, right, the fin yeah, but the fucking episodes 4 and 5 don't. And remember, and because remember, the, the Variety article says that Marvel is fucked because of the way that that that, uh, that Loki ends in terms of setting up Kang. Does not. V the VFX workers are still going through it over there at Marvel Studios. 
you know, oh, and how, how do you feel about that, by the way? Yeah. With King yeah. Of Conqueror moving yeah. Forward that was pretty unethical. He's, he's, he's clarifying but, uh, that all of the points of the article are still valid, by the way. <laughs> yeah, because nothing about a trailer and one episode of television that was already done no, has yeah. any bearing on any of the things that were in that article. To Doom, or recast Jonathan Majors. Um... You know, Marvel, it said that Marvel's still discussing plans to bring back the original Avengers and revive... What do you mean it Stark said? Nothing's Black changed with that same <laughs> article. <laughs> yeah. Why is it, it talking it, about it like it's a new development? Oh, it's still being said. What, in that article that hasn't changed since <laughs> yeah. read it the day before? We well, looked over the article and it's still it. saying it for you, so... <laughs> I can't take it. So, which, oh. you know, that can be open to interpretation of what that means. Either it could be multiverse variants that are going to be in Secret Wars, which I'm cool with that. I feel like that was always the plan. Or it could mean I feel actually like that reviving was the Tony plan. Stark yeah. and Black Widow and undoing the sacrifices they made in Avengers Endgame. And the point is, is that Loki episode was fire, and I'm sure the finale next week is going to be even more I'm fire. Sure that and that sure. Echo Trader was fire as well. Yeah, but I'm sure you think so. But just because those two things are fire doesn't mean the, the all of the problems that they- So why are you yeah. apologizing? Yeah. Apologizing you, to Marvel. Why are you sorry to Marvel these... Studios based on these things? MCU has gone through through phases four and five and all of the little hiccups and mistakes. And also, I all want him to say why he's sorry. I want him to say why I'm sorry. Like, what did I do that warrants an apology? Well, an we apology should be specific. Plenty of video left, so. Yeah. Yes, we do. And problems that the studio is currently facing just magically disappears and go away. You know what I'm saying? So, no. when I said the MCU is in shambles, yeah, there's still a lot going on behind the scenes because look over these. Okay, this is getting confusing. <laughs> then why? Yeah. Then like, what? What is the value of your words? Well, well what's going on? He said that I he, won't say, I'm, he said uh, it is I'm still true. A bit more, I'm getting a little bit more frustrated now. I'm starting to feel like I'm being deceived. Past few years, <laughs> so no one has said that Marvel cool. hasn't come out with bangers here and there. No way home. Wakanda Forever. No. Shang Chi. No. Wow, no. those suck. Yeah, no. Well, no way one, home, one, home was Guardians yeah, of the yeah, Galaxy Volume Three. Stuff. Marvel has come out with their bangers. But there's been Fuck, a significant man. lack so of much, forever. So much of this video is just repeating what he said in the other one. And how many what days apart were they separated? What uh, is this guy seeing Wakanda forever? What is it that you're seeing in that god awful movie? That shit to your film? What mm -hmm. is it? <laughs> well, so Ebs Hughes and Shabbles two days ago. I'm sorry, Marvel, seven hours ago. Oh, okay, cool. You had a long know, time to like, think. I so. feel like time's getting wasted here. And I feel like I've been roped in with I'm sorry, Marvel. And I feel like it's we're we're folding back on that. We're just going back to you know. Even with that said, doesn't change a thing. Like now I'm starting yeah, is to this, a little bit more. Is all this video is like he is just chasing views. Well, yeah, this is just I really liked Loki's season two, episode five, and I really liked Echo's but trailer. I, could, I can't title it like that. If I yeah. say I'm sorry, Marvel, that's a little bit more interesting, and that'll get them eyeballs here. Consistency, project to project. In terms of the quality, the level of writing, the level of direction by the filmmakers behind the The projects. level of direction. You know, <laughs> I don't know. I get annoyed when you just start saying, like, script. It's the level of the great. degree it's of the so quality good. of the execution yeah, of, the, of the way that they kind of, you know? It's just so rambly. Now when like it comes we don't to really have no, no direction. It feels like we have to kind of, like, take every single project and almost, like, base our, base our hype off that. From the team, from the writers that are on board, the directors that are that are on board. Name them. Yeah, but also <laughs> it's pretty normal to be interested in a creative project based on the creatives behind it. I still think people pretty would normal. say that Michael Waldron is writing Loki season two. I still think people would say that. Oh well, I mean, I don't think it even matters because uh, wasn't isn't the guy who's writing it like that? He was a staff writer on the first season anyway. Well, it would matter because it's indicative of the fact that people have no idea what's going on. Oh, oh, I get you. Well, I mean, the reality is that like ninety, ninety-five percent of the people who go watch Marvel movies don't know any of the directors well, it, or writers. It feels like they're in skin suits, pretending to be people who care <laughs> about writing. Sometimes it's like you don't. Uh, lying, well, I mean, especially <laughs> with, with some of the interviews that they give. Like, to, to, to earnestly, to, I can't even believe that one would earnestly describe Janet's storyline in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania as Michelle Pfeiffer's Unforgiven. That's like... That's yeah, it feels like gaslighting, if anything. I, was, yeah, I, was, I wasn't even talking about the, the writers themselves, I was talking about people like Matt here. Like, the, the idea that he, oh, he's oh, not God, enjoying yeah. it, and he's like, the writing is just suffering, and he is enjoying it, he's like, the writing's so much better. It's like, what do you, you, it's just... What is the difference between the writing? Could you, like, explain it to me in any way that's coherent and not yeah. based on meta arguments about We've heard him say one thing that, to be fair, is, is pretty valid in terms of, like, why is it bad to bring back Tony Stark after he's sacrificed himself? It's like, it undermines his sacrifice. It's like, excellent. 
Good yeah. point. Well, excellent. That's normal, but sure. No, I'll say excellent. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, we call it relativity, that's I guess. That's incre That's unbelievable. I cannot believe it. We obviously know the team behind Loki is very competent of producing it's peak. Very, so guess what? Whoever's very, you, you directing and writing Loki, I'm going to be whoever's directing. Next and I like how whoever. you know Whoever is directing Loki. Who, who could it be? If there, if there was, know, which is which There's is no fine, way to find but when you're hyping Who is that mystery man? How is it peak? Know, Nobody weird. knows what's going on in Loki season two right yeah, now. Exactly. Tell me what the plot is. Do Nobody it knows. Power? It is yeah. a, a chat. It is fucking insane. The end of the episode, the whole universe is melting away into spaghetti, and then Loki says he can control it himself. He just says weird. that. Loki you can travel through time and space now because he Yeah, can Loki now because basically he gets can. god powers at the end of the episode for seemingly no reason at all. It's just like the only okay. The reason that he was able to do this anyway was because when Sylvie kicked him through the door in episode and the finale of season one, that for whatever reason had him spread across time in a way that he gets pulled around like spaghetti. If it didn't work that way, if it didn't pan out that way, then there would have been nobody to save all of existence. All of existence would have melted away if it wasn't that way that it works in the TVA, where time doesn't work in past, present, and future. Even though Loki jumps from past, present, and future in the TVA. It's it's nonsense. Also, obviously, when I say he's he's basically God, I don't mean. I mean to... No, like not, not like Norse God, like totally omnipotent, completely in control of yes, everything. Yes, that kind of God. Kind of God. And guess what? That Marvel actually hired the directors of Loki to direct the majority of the episodes for yeah, Daredevil. Yeah, no, I know. Oh, yes, the <laughs> majority, not scrapped... all of them, because they're not scrapping everything. Wait, what's mm. the issue about that? They scrapped everything, everything? They, that they did for that series up to this point, and now no, they didn't. They didn't. Why does he keep saying that? They didn't. They're because it sounds bad. better if he says it that way. They're starting over fresh with new writers, new sh new showrunners. They actually hired the showrunner, new showrunner, but yes, hired the showrunner from the. Hired the show uh, runner nope. from the Punisher series from Netflix, oh and now he's going to be doing. He's You're saying this like you didn't say it in the video that you are currently yeah, building the sequel fun. video to. I just, I just feel like he's wasting time. He's just repeating himself. Going to get to ten sure. minutes, I guess. Is, is that still a thing on YouTube? Yeah, get to ten minutes. Oh yeah. Oh, I love it. Love it. Be the head showrunner for the Daredevil Born Again series, and the directors of Loki are directing the episodes. Which was fire, bro. It was so fire. Yeah, it was just so fire, amazing. bro. So I couldn't tell you why. No, he doesn't. He I can't mean, even. On. We can make stuff up, and I think people can about like why Falcon Winter Soldier is good. But good luck with Loki. You can't even tell what happened to make up what was good about it. For Daredevil Born Again, you know when Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three came back on in May, that movie was came so back on. <laughs> amazing. Okay. Top it's, five MCU well, movie wait, in my books. Oh, I mean, for anybody in chat who doesn't know, we fucking eviscerated Guardians yeah, 3. Yeah, the hot take is that it's pretty bad. It is one of yeah, our it's... yearly hot takes. Guardians 3 is awful. Um, yeah. it's unfortunate because we were really hoping for that one, one to be good. one of the best that they've made recently because yeah. the bar is so low. Yeah, still. But all of us watched that movie and knew that's all James Gunn. You know what I'm saying? That's all James Gunn. He wrote the movie. He Unfortunately, yes. Directed it. The yeah. Guardians are his little babies. Like that uh, I mean, what I mean by that is that I wish it kind of wasn't because it, it means he's entirely on the hook for yeah. all of the choices that he made. And I don't know. Like, yeah, my my view of him as a writer is complicated at this point. I don't even know what to expect oh, anymore. Oh yeah, I, yeah like someone said, are you excited for Superman Legacy and, and DC reboot? It's like no idea. Uh, nah, uh, I don't know. <laughs> don't that, know. You know, he brought to life. And he's directed three films, and now this was his storybook ending for these characters. So it's not even like the Guardians 3 was a product of the MCU and what Marvel is accustomed to making. It was just, that was all James Gunn, and now he's off to direct Superman Legacy. So, let <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> so, okay. Well, Let's there you go. On. Let's just keep Let's, going. Let's wait and see what he cooks over there with Superman, the greatest character cook? of all time. But look, when it comes to oh, this consistency his favorite problem, superhero, greatest, huh? greatest all right. character of all time. I wish you the best with whatever James yeah, Gunn cooks. Yeah, you know, yeah. Well, I, whatever yeah, it is, luck. you'll like it, though. So Probably. it doesn't even matter. There's no need to wish good luck. There is no disappointing, you know? Yeah, you're going to love it no matter what. I mean, just within this year alone, we had Quantumania. Then we got Guardians 3. Then we got Secret Invasion. Then we got Loki. Like, we're going back and forth. So let's... Not oh, for us. Okay, <laughs> like, right. 
Yeah, he's, like, he's like, saying that went like, down, up, down, up, or whatever. It's, it's, been a, it's been a nice, consistent disappointment. Well, not disappointment, because I... Well, Guardians was incredibly I mean, well, disappointing. Was but very disappointing. I don't understand why he because... fucking thinks Loki's so good. What's the good of yeah. Loki? Tell me, what please. What's good about it? What kind of conversations does he have, you know, with friends about, like, movies, you know? I don't know, other than it saying it's fire over and over again. Let's just pray to our lucky stars that the- Pray to our lucky stars. The Marvels okay. is going to be- you know, one of the best MCU movies. Why is this crop we gotta badly? Keep the streak alive. You know what I'm saying? We got Loki. wrong oh, with the flash frame too. Oh, oh, whatever. Flash frame. Loki, awesome. Loki's Love carrying it. us. Loki right now is carrying the multiverse saga. The multi. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is what does that even it. mean? Loki the multiverse saga now? Like it's just. It's Loki just is words. collapsing it's just under words. it. It's it's collapsing into itself like a black hole. <laughs> he's going <laughs> as he's getting crushed down into that black hole. I, I can't understate, the last episode was the spaghettification of the entire multiverse, the entire and then Loki multiverse. just says, nah, actually, I can control it all. Yeah. It's fire. Multiverse saga is Loki's story, and let me say this right now, Marvel, if you're watching this video, let me tell you right now, bro. <laughs> let me tell you right yeah, now, bro. You know, Kevin so Feige, my bro, tell me. I'm gonna tell you. Tell me. Telling you what's fire, bro. into my ear. Injected into my veins. I'm just speaking for myself because I don't know how the majority of people would feel about this. Yes, you do. Y'all okay. in the comments. All right. The comments. Mm -hmm. Yes, please in the comments. The multiverse saga mm -hmm. is Loki's story. What does that even what? mean? After how good Loki? What does that mean? What? After how good? I thought it was Kang's story. It was on Kang's way, shoulders. Continuing to develop yeah. Loki's character and basically making him the chosen one. Oh, good God. Oh, he's the wow. chosen one because Stop. of something. <laughs> they were gonna Explain kill him in Thor two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they changed their mind, thank God. Uh, yeah, so then, but then they the, changed their mind again. Again, <laughs> killed him, and then they brought him. Was... It's so sad. He's the chosen <laughs> one now. Loki, <laughs> fucking Thor's <laughs> yeah, brother, is the MCU's chosen one. What the hell? The god uh, of stories. The, the god of stories. <laughs> what is happening? Okay. I am way more interested. And seeing Loki be the leader of the troops, seeing Loki be the one to come face to face and say what's up to Kang when the time is. <laughs> say what's up. Fuck me. What's up, bro? This is fire. Right? Than any <laughs> legacy character. Okay. I know Tobey Maguire would probably somewhere. Oh him. my god! Uh, it's so painful. Uh, he's imagining this showdown with Kang, where we don't even know fucking anything about it. But he's just there. He's in the room. Oh, look at him! He's Kang. Oh, rrr. and then there's a door. Bro. It bursts open, and who's there but Loki? Because he's the chosen one of the MCU, and he comes. Oh, this is gonna he be a great showdown. But stories. I want I want everyone to know we could take him out and put Tobey Maguire there. Maybe that could also work. I just want to make sure Ooh, that we put I'm that on. Tobey Maguire. Oh. It's just. He's trying to. Are you trying to destroy my brain? <laughs> <laughs> these, <laughs> these like sitting Kevin Feige down. Naturally. is like, bro, I got, I got some fire for you. Tobey Maguire versus Kang. Okay, I know that's fire. You can have oh, that for free. I'm gonna let you have that. <laughs> oh my brains! Tickets. <laughs> and I'm super hyped to see more of Toby. I'm super hyped to see more of Hugh Jackman and all of that good stuff. But Loki's got to be in the mix. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Loki cannot be sidelined Definitely. for legacy yeah, no, I characters. Think I know what you're saying. This entire movie, <laughs> I think I get it. You like Loki? Being built on the shoulders of him and his story. Like Toby coming face to face with Kang would be probably stop. Please stop. <laughs> what are we doing? Just you don't have to write your fan fiction what? as your script. It's just oh. you it's the to. peak of this shit. There's nothing. <laughs> what the fuck connects <laughs> Sam Raimi Spider Man to Kang? What if Toby Maguire fought Darth Vader and then they went into a <laughs> This is what I mean. We're steps away. Galaxy and they took him to Atlantis and then Indiana Jones <laughs> came out and then Seth Rogen so and unfair. Around and oh. stuff. What <laughs> interaction in superhero film history? I mean, what is Toby's Peter Parker gonna say to Kang? You know what I'm saying? It's inevitable. We are gonna see it happen probably in Secret Wars or something like that. I, it is inevitable. We're probably, oh, we're probably more please. likely than not. There is at least please a 51 percent. It's just so Kang fire, goes. man. All of it is please. so fire. Oh, I just want it to end. I want one percent chance. I want we'll Toby McGuire and Kang talking. That, just give up. But I'm just saying. Loki has to be the ringleader. He has to be one of the main members in the mix because Definitely. with what Marvel has done with season one and now with season two, such as it's been absolutely incredible. Such so, so as massive. Please, an example of what you're referring to. Let us know. Shout out to Natalie Holt. My in the God, comments below. I love when MCU projects are. Okay, put the fucking copyright cover up. What are we doing here? Yeah. 
Yeah, scored is, yeah. so damn well, and she's absolutely cooking on the violin. Or just okay, like, so soundtrack is good. What else? Which it is. What else we got? Composer yep. room just co in the composer room. In the composer room. The composer room. You know where they keep the composers. The composer room. It's like it's, it's, it's like adjacent Jesus to the stick. director room. It's uh, you know it's one of the lower levels. <laughs> To make them one of the most fire scores to stop end. using that word, you've ruined it. Please use another word. What's he gonna say ever in anything ever? What's he gonna say? Any Marvel project ever. Now let's talk. Oh, about sure. It. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd grant them that. It's uh, I really like the music in Loki. Yeah, it's good. It's up there. Yeah. Talk about Echo real quick, because Marvel. Yeah. Okay. I the, wasn't familiar the with cooking, the game, bro. You can say? The I wasn't cooking. familiar with the game. I had zero expectations when it came to the Echo series. Again, Man, I'm not the, way Echo talk, really good. the way he talks about like Marvel as if they're his buddy, you know? Yeah. Hey, Marvel, yeah, you know? Like I didn't know what you were cooking, Marvel, my friend, you know, who really. <laughs> my buddy, <laughs> my pal. Old <laughs> chum. But I don't know if that warranted an entire series about her. No, it's is the answer to that question, no, of obviously. This was this was a project that was greenlit in an era that doesn't exist anymore. Especially because, due to the fact that, you know, Daredevil is going to be in this series. Kingpin is obviously going to play a huge role in this series. And this series will set up the Daredevil series. But in my head, my I original highly thought was doubt just, it has any relevance or bearing on it at all. Why do you have to make something in between? But no. My mind has completely 100% taken a 180 turn. And this well, is, this is due to the team, bro. The, the team marketing code. was effective. Yeah, well, the, I, the marketing strategy this is why it'll be interesting for us to check out the Echo trailer soon, because, like, it's um, the, the hype, the sheer hype. Apparently, I, know, I found I know. out yesterday that one of the writers from Better Call Saul is one of the head writers for the Echo series. Better Call Peak? Ugh. Better Call Peak? <laughs> the fuck? It's fire, bro. It's, that's what he it's means. It's fire, it's peak. It's, it's peak, high, it's peak fire. Shoulders. They got the shoulders on Echo. They put. They the pray into the on shoulders of the stars yeah, they, on Echo's fire. The shoulder room where they keep their shoulders. The peak of the shoulders right, is yeah. absolute fire in the composer's room. Now Echo is going to be peak. Let's hope so. Let's hope so because, guys, another thing too is that even though that Echo trailer was great and this is going to be the first TV mature Marvel series which we've been asking for for a while now, I don't understand why they did they didn't do this with Moon Knight. Why was that Moon Knight? Not TV mature. Why was Moon Why was Moon Knight not good? Is the question. Was, yeah, Why exactly. Was it, it was so exactly. incredibly shit. That was the problem. It cuts the chase, my good man. Night, not like this, where you have literally the the opening of the trailer is Kingpin beating a little ice cream truck guy. To <laughs> a little ice cream truck guy. Oh, okay. So is that what? Look it's at peak. How happy he is, it's <laughs> peak when Kingpin beats up the little ice cream man. <laughs> Fucking little fire. Little ice cream man guy. <laughs> Little ice cream man guy. <laughs> Fuck the ice cream man. There, yeah. There's your thumbnail, dude. And that right there, in that trailer, guys. Yeah. You mm -hmm. can already see the difference between Kingpin in this series and the Kingpin we got on Hawkeye. Okay. This is Kingpin right here. All right. Netflix okay. Marvel's All back. Right. And you know what? You wow. Know, even from a trailer, we're in. We're back. Wow. We're so man, back. I'd be so curious to ask him, what's your favorite scene in Daredevil that's not a fight scene? I would be so curious to hear what his answer is. I feel like he would l at least be able to label the conversation with uh, Daredevil and Punisher, right? Everyone does. Uh, oh, I'm excluding that. You don't get to... Yeah, somebody, they don't get to use that. I, I'd remove that. Once, once you remove that off the list, please tell me your favorite scene from Daredevil that isn't a fight scene or that doesn't have Punisher in it. And I'd be so curious if he could give an answer. Because he, he probably thinks it's like one of the best shows ever made. But, like, he probably couldn't give you any detailed explanation oh God, for why. Does. Well, you'd still be able to tell you it's fire. That's worth something, right? Yeah, it is fire. It's, fire. it's peak. I, wa yeah, I wonder, I I'd be so curious. It's like, do you have any perspective on the conversation that Matt has with, uh, with the pastor about, like, the nature of evil and the existence of evil and whether or not they believe in the devil and, and if they had the power to stop him, would they and what would that cost him? I'd be so curious to be like, now, just feel free. Just... To just, just you know, let the consciousness, that flow of consciousness, just give me your thoughts on that. I feel like I wouldn't get anything because it's 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 like the nature of what's here. Oh, it's fire, you know. This this show is fire, man. Blew my mind. It was crazy. That's fire, and you know, and it's leading up. And then when Tobey Maguire shows up, you know, and he faces Yo. down King, that's gonna be <laughs> you know, let him cook. You know, I was wrong about that. Like that's the nature of base. No cap, no cop for real. I would, I would suck if you were Tobey Maguire and everyone wants you in stuff to just be you there in the Spider-Man suit. Just you, I just need you there. And you're like, doing what? Saying what? Why am I there? It's like, just be there. 
Just, just being there for us to remember, just know that you're there. One of the factoids we read was that his request was that they don't, like, you know, speculate hugely or, or detail his, his life between now and Spider-Man 3, that they leave that as vague as they can. But yeah, why do you think? He doesn't want any of it damaged. He doesn't want any of it touched. <laughs> leave it the fuck alone. That's right. As much as, as great as this trailer was, one of, one of the, my main primary thoughts was, bro... If they yeah. keep the same tone for Daredevil Born Again, Bro. if they keep the same... Wow, it'll be so good. Now I can see a quality. universe where John Bernthal comes back as the Punisher and they do him justice. <laughs> what the fuck is wow. going on? I, I was going to say, it's so funny that um, they clownified the MCU so hard that if they go with one serious project, everyone's like back on board. It's like, ah, oh, now it's good. <laughs> Getting out of his chest, be like, oh yeah, fucking Punisher coming. This is so peak, bro. The fucking fire. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now I see that. Now I see that. Now that's open to possibility. Before I was like, bro, they're bringing back John Berthold's Punisher, but he's going to be watered down for sure. Nah. Yes. Yes. Just yes. yes. I'm not, you know what? I'd be willing yes. to fucking bet on that. Like, it's so easy in terms of just, he's not, you really think he's going to be anything near what you got in Daredevil and, and, and his Daredevil own show? Punisher? Yeah. No way. No. Do you think they're going to do a scene where Punisher drags a man's face down broken glass? Like, that's never gonna happen. Or just in a brutally show, fucking kills like 20 people. That's not happening. Yep. There's no way. Not anymore. I mean, guys, that one shot of literally that dude getting his brains blown out in the. <laughs> <laughs> Is that all the time? The bigger guy got shot in the neck. In the this is what it means. Yeah. It's so clownified that anything serious automatically means quality. You've been trained to yeah. think this almost. It's so Tell sad. Me about the it's writing. like it's like being fed nothing but shit, and then they throw you a McDonald's fry, and you're like, "Oh my god, this is fucking peak, bro. This is fire. This is fucking McDonald's fry. This is like yeah. I don't even know anything that's better than this." In the trailer, and then the other dude that was just literally, he was dead, but like his eyes were rolled back, and he had blood all over. He his was throat. dead, but his eyes were rolled back, and he had blood Yo, all over. Yo, he was like dead. <laughs> Sometimes you don't want to have a great insight into how the people who love this stuff think. <laughs> it's like, he was dead, there was blood. It's like, okay. <laughs> no, this isn't thinking, this is like how a plant reacts to sunlight, <laughs> you know? Sun. Yay, sunlight! <laughs> Delicious. Look, it's, oh, it's serious sun. tone. Oh, Yay. it's over here. Yo, this I is love peak, sunlight. Bro. Yum, dude, this is so great. Every the peak. sun is back, yo! It was dark, but yo, the sun is back, we're back! We are back, bro. Yeah, when the sun goes down, he's like, this is a shambles. The sun is in shambles. <laughs> and it comes back up. Oh my god, peak sun. This corner of the MCU should be TV mature. Because it's so grounded. Because these characters you are... You said you do nothing grounded. about Echo. And then you're like, she should yeah. be grounded. You're like, okay. Yeah, like, All I right. bet he doesn't... Does he even know who Echo is? Like, the character my or assumption the is no. history? No, I don't think so. Does he Edgy. read comics? Who knows? He can't read. You know, it's described that Echo is actually. I read the article, Rags. <laughs> he, someone dictated it to him. <laughs> so they read it aloud, and she does like really questionable things, which I'm super interested in seeing. That that makes you know wow, that makes these questionable things so much more. This has gotten back in. His character heroes. does questionable things, and there's blood. But that's like all of the I mean, characters it's, it's not that like they're Wanda did, heroes. Yeah, like, oh yeah, you know, Wanda that's did everyone. Really yeah, Wanda did plenty of that in MOM. Yeah. <laughs> and there they was blood. They all do questionable things. They all do, but they don't recognize that they're questionable or even just obviously Well, to evolved. be fair, if the music tells them it's okay, then it's okay. Mm -hmm. That comes directly mm -hmm. from the composer room. Yo, fire. That's right. Makes yeah, a fire, character like Echo so much more complex. Not the, but the fact that she's not all good and she's not all bad. She has her own agenda. She well, has, I mean, if she's, she's like a normal. villain, right? If she's uh, presented as a villain, she's more bad than good, presumably. Can't even base this on credit. source, because as far as I'm aware, even the creator of the show has said that comic Echo sucks and that she wants to Yeah, the, they said that uh, her powers were lame, and her yeah. powers sounded like they were Taskmaster powers, which are not lame. No. Um, very and why cool. would you say that about the character that you're adapting? And she's coming after them, and anyone that stands in her way, she's going to run through. So since the events of that variety article so dropping, she's determined. Marvel has clapped back, but we need to keep the streak alive because again, consistency is. Key. We need to keep this, the streak alive. The streak it's been of a, day. a trailer and an episode of a it's crap been a show. Day. The streak. It's been a day. <laughs> Gotta keep the streak alive, guys. It's been a day. This is what we want as fans. We don't want to go from Quantumania to Guardians Three to Secret Invasion to Loki. No, 
We want well, to go for right. I mean, if the trend plays out, as you pointed out, then Marvels will probably be bad, and then Lo uh, Echo will be good, right? So nothing has changed. So there's no need for an apology. It's interesting that he's, we've like, we've got that sort of, um, that, that up-down thing. Like, this one's good, this one's bad, this one's good, this one's bad. I, if you just want to ask him, what made Secret Invasion bad, but why is Loki oh, yeah. good? And don't say visual effects. You, know, lots of, yeah, it is you have fire. to actually talk about the story. Something well, writing related. He did explain it. Loki is kind of the chosen one of the MCU. He's got the the whole multiverse yes, rests on his shoulders. The god of stories. Yeah. Well, I thought Kang was the one no. of whom... No. Of whom that's the, the, the bad guy, Rags. Okay. Gosh, pay attention. Oh, Jeez. that's true. That's true. Antagonist. Okay, He, he and Loki yeah. are going to have a face-off and it's going to be fucking fire. He, they're gonna, he's going to take him out. He's going to be in the mix. He'll be in the mix, like, at least. Oh, yeah, okay. We're talking about Spider-Man. We used to make that joke like all the time. I, I I still make it to this day on like real BBC episodes. Just throw him in because it's always funny. And then I actually like see it genuinely being said. Like bring in Tobey Maguire Spider Man to fight Kang. It's like okay, just do it. Whatever. <sighs> okay. Fine. Whatever. As to as peak. long as like everyone everyone gets paid. Just whatever. Peak to peak to peak. Take your time. Slow it down. We've heard many different times. Fuck. All of his vernacular is it sucks. Fucking doesn't peak it? Fire. There's, there's no. no words. <laughs> yeah, it's all peak fire. Yeah, and it'll change Let with the culture that changes. The, those words will yeah, become old, much. and new ones will be given to him. Many different times that Marvel has just pumped the brakes on the amount of projects that they've started to develop, the amount of projects that they're making, and now they're trying to. What? Well, they haven't though. Like they haven't slowed down. There's still meant to be like what five projects coming out next year. Yeah, the slowing down we're gonna see in what like 2025 or something. It's going to take some time for it to manifest. I take it slow and prioritize quality over quantity. <laughs> now we They're not doing that. Changed. They're not doing Nothing's that. Nothing's changed. Why is he talking about it like anything's changed? Nothing has changed. Now we what, got one episode of television and a trailer. That's right. It's, it's crazy because this whole kind of this, this EFAB episode is about how this is like a borderline. We'll see change a while from now. But, like, he's saying, like, no, nah, we got it already. It's like, no. Not even no, fucking close. Haven't. I don't even think it'd be possible right now. Like, even if Loki were amazing and the Echo trailer were truly an 11 out of 10 trailer, I'd still be like, no. No, because trailers are trail. I know what a trailer's yep. for. I know what the trailer's mm -hmm. job is to do. Remember the trailer for Age of Ultron? Remember that one? Mm. Last Jedi. The Iron mm. Man 3? No. Trailer. A lot of us are very excited for Echo dropping in January. No, of no, 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 no. none of us. Tw I'm like really excited about people. because I think that's going to be a perfect series to just binge all the way through in one day, and then we'll talk about what. It yeah, but if it was released comes. episode by episode, you'd say it's a great thing to take on week by week and discuss with everybody. Like whatever it is, it is good because of that. I didn't even realize you could interpret that positively. I believe dropping Echo all at once when they've never done that with any of their other Marvel shows is. That it's 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 being abandoned. It said something. They're trying to get it out one and done as quickly as possible, not occupying too much time. Yeah, and uh, honestly, I think they're trying to underplay and circumvent the obvious fucking disaster it's going to be. If we can get it all out and it's done, people can't talk week by week about how much it's not being watched. Yeah, it won't drag it out. Yeah, like yeah, exactly. it, it'll be talked about how much it's not watched, but hopefully it'll be quicker. You know, you'll get we get over it mm -hmm. faster. As was uh, the the. The fucking comment, like, we need to ice skate fast over the Marvels or something. Like, there was some comment that was like, we need to get through it fast, get over it fast, get it out, get moving, move to the next thing. What's next? Mm -hmm. But we got. What a bad fucking, like, month the Marvel are about to have. Yeah. <laughs> Loki, that's going to finish up next week. We all know that finale is going to be peak. I mean, Stop. actually, let me not say we that. We all know it. Because I don't want to jinx us. But we trust in the team behind Loki to the the the. No, we do not. But okay. I know. I feel like it says a lot, right? Doesn't it? The kind of words that you use about like the way that your mind is working, <laughs> like that. If so much of it is like, oh, peak fire, let him cook and shit like that, that it's just indicative of um modes of thinking that are more commonly at play. Whenever I, don't I use know, a lot I... of words like that in my mind, I know that they're like meme phrases. They're meme words yeah. that you say like well, on the internet. Well, for, I don't say these things when I'm talking when, to human beings in real life. When we say you know, it's Jova, parents. that's a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's yeah. Not, it's, it's the word. It's it would be meme. it would be the same as if I said something was fire. I'd be like, it, I'm I'm yeah. using it because I think it's cringy or funny or, or for instance, like it's hope or oh bad take or something yeah they're not used of, like, to actually like translate ideas i'm having to other people like, i'm more so using them as part of it like, you know because it seems like it a fucking hell it's a it's like it's like 10 percent of his whole vocabulary is those two words peak and fire oh, 
it's I don't know why he doesn't even use a, a greater variety of internet meme words. It's always fire and cook, let him cook, and what's the other one he's been using? Peak, peak fire. Peak. Oh yeah, peak fire cook while rubbing his hands. That's and like bro. Don't forget bro. But that one, that one's and that bro, one's goes back yeah. a long time. Yeah. Bro's been Bro's around okay. for a long time. You can have bro. You're allowed to have bro and man. I will dude. say though, there is an amount you can use any one word that you ruin it. Like bro. I'm fine with using it and dude, but like if you if you put them in fucking every sentence and sometimes twice, that's when it gets a bit, you know. Mm. Yeah, not good. For a great finale and send us off into the next direction. The marbles. Wamelman. Give me something good, bro. <laughs> Give me something good. Do you think and it's yes, gonna be good? He, he hasn't he hasn't decided yet. He's uh he's he hasn't decided what he's gonna say about well, I think it. I what think we're seeing right. is he's, he's, he's regressed in the in a matter of hours back. Like he for a moment was seeing like, wait, things aren't so great. No, no, it's fine, everything's great. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, we are back. I, yeah, I that think, was, was that really a fever is. dream? Did oh, I dude, really upload that video? Really is. Was that a it's dream? so fascinating. He's reading the room. He's not sure yet what uh what stance to take on the marbles. Like he's sort of sitting back and waiting to see whether or not it gets received well, considered a good movie. Obviously, how much money it makes is probably influential on whether or not he considers it good or bad. Um, well, and it's it's I don't know. I find I find those aspects fascinating, like the kind of games that these people play. It's so, so figuring out what strategies to use, you know, for like the the direction they want to take, um, like their commentary on on the state of Marvel or DC or any of those things. I find it so interesting. My books, if the Marvels is better than the first Captain Marvel, that's a win. But oh, what? yeah, see, <laughs> because it's a, that's an acceptable stance that Captain yeah. Marvel is boring and not very interesting. Well, it's one of the safest things you could ever say because you're not even tied down to saying Captain Marvel's bad. No, you're just saying you want it to be better. Boring. Better than boring, yeah. boring. Boring is safer than bad uh, for Captain Marvel. That's the safe one. It's boring. It's lame. It wasn't really interesting, you know. For the first female-led superhero Marvel movie, like it wasn't that interesting or something like that. Give me a great movie. Come on, I believe in you, bro. I believe in Nia DaCosta. I believe in the team behind the Marvel. Why? Do you like her other films? Maybe he does. What's her name? Name, name one of them. <laughs> What's her name? The name he just said. What? <laughs> What's her name, yeah. Marvel's, you know, I'm a huge Monica Rambeau fan, so I hope to see her shine in this film. Okay. Let's keep the streak alive, bro. Not a streak, man. The streak. We don't even know. Once the Marvel's drops, we don't even know when the next Marvel movie is coming out, because obviously- Yeah, we do. The Deadpool 3 is still slated for May. I guess it's a foregone conclusion of the <laughs> it, it will just get moved to the next slot. Like, it'll take Captain America's slot. What do you mean you don't know when the next... It's not like... I, I, I find it hilarious, the idea of, fuck, man, a few months without a Marvel movie? It's, it's worse oh, than a few, months without, it's a, else. a few months without knowing when I can expect the next thing. It's like, Kevin, when how could you do this to me? Kevin, Kevin, please. Kevin, how could you do this? Not the broader state of the industry will be strikes. <laughs> which is so it's just, Kevin is Kevin? tossing buckets of water onto this flaming disaster. He's trying to put it out, and then, and then he's sitting there like, what's and the next thing, Kevin? Like, Kevin, please. Kevin, Kevin, <laughs> Kevin. Kevin, he's like, what? What the fuck? What? I'm trying <laughs> what to save it? this company from me. <laughs> what because is it? Obviously, a ton of stuff has. Yeah, I should have said he's throwing buckets of fucking petrol on. <laughs> <laughs> Why isn't this working? It's like oh, that. Um, we'll run out of things to burn. It's like Tucker and Dale versus the <laughs> <laughs> It's a bit on fire. Then you throw the thing like, oh shit. <laughs> it's been delayed with the writer's strike, with the current actor's strike. Go actors! I hope they get what they deserve. Um, damn. But, but don't delay, <laughs> don't delay my enjoyment too much but there, actors. Don't, don't take too long, guys, right? yeah. I don't want this to carry over into the next year, right? That would be untenable. But we would, we, after the Marvels comes out, we don't even know, we don't even know when the next Marvel movie is coming out. Yes, it's we do. It's either going to be, I mean, it's all uh, planned Captain out. America, and, uh, it's Deadpool. World, Why do I know this and you don't? Isn't this like the only or, thing that you talk about? <laughs> Well, maybe he is talking about the fact that we don't know, in a sense, that it's more than likely going to be delayed because of everything that's going oh, on. Oh, sure, but, but, I mean, isn't it just pretty logical that it's just going to take the next slot? If Deadpool 3 gets delayed, it would just come out when Captain America was meant to come out. And then Captain but America we don't know, Fringy. We don't know. We only can speculate. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah one of those two, probably. So... Well, definitely. <laughs> Suavecito. Man, does that, does that, like, freak you out? <laughs> Where you need to calm yourself down. Was there any? What was the oh, apology man. part exactly? I, see. I don't know where the apology part is. Slow and steady. Let's take it slow. Let's get a streak going, and let's 
just make it a never end. Let's take it slow, but I'm really freaked out about how <laughs> there's long no release date. I'm dying. Take it slow. Yeah. Streak of just straight banger after banger after banger. So, look. Why, why would banger after banger is one episode of a TV show after an admitted, like, that he would even admit bad television show of Secret Invasion? The Marvel's pending. You don't actually know yet. And a trailer for Echo for, again, a show pending. You don't even know if it... The streak is one TV show. What yep. Look, okay. you know, yep. I'm really uh, happy I'm waiting. that Marvel has clapped back and Marvel is... It has a... Good stuff. <laughs> there it, there it, was an article that look, came out day, a couple of was... days ago and then they released an episode of television that you liked and that's them clapping back. This is the thing. I barely count like an episode of TV show being good as uh, evidence of... Not even... Because clap back well, has a very specific meaning from what I remember. But like if we're just going to say they are doing better since the article. It's like, how can you count a trailer? That's ridiculous. That's absurd. It's marketing. I barely want to count the episode. Trailer. It's a commercial. Us as fans, it's... we want this stuff to be great, but we also want it to be consistently great. And just because we got a great that I mean, that would be included in the we want it to be great, wouldn't it? We want I like it how I like how he just said that that he wants the streak to continue, and he's about to admit that just because you got one episode of Loki you like, that doesn't mean anything. How do you do this? <laughs> yeah, but we got a trailer like, too. Come on. Well, one a streak is one. One is a streak, right? Yeah. Loki. I feel like a streak really by well, definition has to be like more trailer. than it feels like three at least, right? Two isn't enough. Why do you hate Disney so much? Yeah, what's going on? Can't what's you going on, bro? Objective? Can you not see Peak? Well, hey, I mean, you know, I, you know, it's it's uh, everybody's really excited for Snow White, right? You're not being That's very fire be right now. That's okay. going to be Peak Fire Cinematic Excellent. Wait, no, Peak Fire Cinematic Peak. Based, no cap. Mm -hmm. Based, yeah, for based, real. not cocked. You'd not think cucked. you'd think you would have used based at some point, but no. Based. No, maybe maybe based is uh, out of out of date. Maybe that's out of style. Maybe that's not in right now. Maybe he's like a Pokemon and he only knows four moves, and that's just like he just fire have, he's peak yeah. cook and fire what's peak the fourth cook. one? Uh, uh, I don't bro. Know. bro, oh bro, that's the that's the evolution music or is that the victory it's been a while since i played pokemon dun, 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 that's the victory music dun, 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 yeah that's the victory one isn't it but it also plays when you get the evolution doesn't it yeah yeah there we go yeah one two let's just sit here let's just sit here and hum that shit was so fire it was just that absolutely was hype. Fire. That was peak, yeah. Charizard? Oh man, bro, bro. Oh my god. Bro. Oh. Now that was fire. That was wild. That was fire. That was ember. That was, that was Grizz or something. Because guess what? The trailers for Secret Invasion were pretty damn fire, and they gave off a similar vibe. But now with Echo yeah. getting an actual... What? Yeah, but, yeah, but the rating, Fringy. The rating. There you go. Ah, uh, yes, that's right. This one's TVMA. An actual oh, yeah. TV mature rating. How many times can you be punched in the face before, before you're like, go, hmm, wait a minute? That makes me a lot more confident that the series uh -huh. it, it ha has a lot a higher mm -hmm. ceiling and will reach that potential compared to something. Yeah, because whether or not he... blood is allowed or sex is allowed or drug use is allowed, that's what determines what quality. That's, that's such a bizarre perspective to have. It's almost like, well, no, anything Pixar makes can never reach that height because, mm -hmm. you know, they're making... They're making films that need to have a rating that's acceptable for children. Well, like when, I found if, out, if... when I found out Wally e 2 was uh, rated R, I was like, oh, finally, I... the ceiling has been lifted. Yeah. That's right, the ceiling has been lifted. Now, now Pixar can reach the heights of Marvel Studios. Yes. And so, yeah, it opens with a big splatter of blood and guts onto Wally. -E. <laughs> Apparently, there's good context for it. Oh, my gosh. So. Again, just because we've gotten Loki episode five and a great Echo trailer doesn't mean I like how all of this should... just completely undermines your entire point. These admissions, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like... <laughs> well, so he makes it, his main points are: I agree with all of the article; things are bad, and to fix it, we need to bring back old stars. Okay. I'm now, thinking, since yes. then, we've had a good episode of Loki and a trailer I like. Now, that makes me at the point where I need to say sorry. But I also want to make sure you understand everything in the article is still true, and that a good episode and a good trailer doesn't really mean anything. But seriously, keep the streak going of this episode and yes. trailer. The Marvels, come on, I believe in you. We should ignore 
the current problems going on with the rest of the MCU, all what the problems, problems? Going on behind the scenes and stuff like that. Yeah. Am I confident that Kevin Feige and the team will cook and bring the MCU back to its glory? Oh, kind of cool. thousand percent. I'm very confident. Well, uh, man, so then you got nothing to worry about. You don't even need to make your videos. Yeah, about you, you got. Or anything. You he's cooking peak up for you. Life. This all. Why do you coming. even need to provide them your perspective? Like you said, oh, I need to offer constructive criticism so they can figure it out. If you believe one thousand percent. 10 times the complete amount that you know that you can believe in someone that they'll fix the problems why even bitch just keep it to yourself you know just calm down and be patient and wait for them to fix everything all on their own i'm very confident in that because i wonder if we could name the team there's kevin no. feige could you name any other producers any of the other producers who work on these things ronald probably Jr. not ronald, oh no ronald no, that's downey not johansson yeah. No, that's not allowed. The producers. Because, you know, we've been on this journey as fans for over over 15 years now. And what a damn journey, bro. I'm going to be riding with them to the day I die. So fucking, can okay. we just be a little dramatic? But, like, why, it's though? Like to be a slave. <laughs> so, again, guys, the MCU, I just hope they can keep, continue the streak. Keep the streak alive. That's all we're asking. Dude, dude stop it. Loki, Echo, stop. the Marvel. It's like, what? um, it's like, like if you were addicted to a drug, right? And you went to rehab and you met someone there and you went through the program and you got off the drug. And every once in a while you walk by the rehab center and you look in the window and you still see someone who's addicted and they're still going through it. That's what it's kind of like. Like we got off of it, you know. We were we were like, yeah, Marvel's pretty neat. That's great. And then it started turning to shit. And so we're like, oh, okay. I mean, we we don't really like it anymore. I mean, it's okay, whatever. And then you look in and see that he's still on it. He's still riding the high, and he's still going through the motions. And it's the most amazing rocking thing back ever. and forth in that straight jacket. Back and forth like that Echo trailer, jacket. man. It's it's TVMA. It's got blood. It's I'm gonna sorry, be good. Marvel. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Marvel. Keep the streak so going, sorry. even though I just admitted that there is no streak. I'm so sorry, Marvel. Take me back. Let's fucking go. go. Yeah. So look, I'd like to take the chance to apologize to absolutely nobody for saying that the MC was in shambles. Oh. Because oh, guess what? Cool. Thanks, a good Loki bro. episode and a good Echo trailer shouldn't take away from the greater problems that the MC Man, you did you really do this because you needed to get it over ten minutes to get like mid roll ads? I think we got a minute. Well, we it's got a that. minute left. It's also baiting people into seeing this whole video and then also to capitalize on I guess he would have gone viral temporarily on Twitter with the uh, people pointing well, this out. Figured that it what people pointing out that he's just completely like back flipping quadruple flipping on well yeah i mean putting uh, this right at the end most people don't even get to these parts of the videos no, yeah, well, people won't. this is all very strategic <laughs> mm -hmm. mcu and marvel studios as a whole has been facing for the past few years and is still currently facing moving forward but i will say i am sorry streak. marvel for doubting you on Echo. Oh. That trailer was absolutely fantastic and it completely blew away any expectations that I had for this. The product has to be good. The commercial was great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Series. I love the tone. This series. I love the tone. I love that you guys went with the TV mature rating and finally decided to <laughs> yep. so so you said that already. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah, I said the six times you, you said it, yes. If the series is fire in terms of a writing standpoint, action, I'm all sure of it, it if will it's a be. fire show. That TV mature rating will only elevate what you're trying to do moving forward in this corner of the MCU. Yeah, we, we, we've been over that. That's fucking dumbass logic, but fine. So, mm -hmm. sorry for downing you guys on Echo, but I'm happy to be wrong. No, you're All not. Right, cool. Fucking hell. All right. Um, so, we're not we're, watching we're any more of his channel. stuff, right? <laughs> no, I can, I can tell you we're not, we're not watching any more of his. But we are going to see an image that I think encapsulates his, uh, his, his enjoyment of media, uh, I, I think, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading it in his voice, too. It's so yeah. easy. Bros, we are so back. Good. It is so over. Bros, so back. It's over. Bros, it's Bro. over. We're back. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, so wait, are we watching this Echo trailer or? Um, I think that is next. Yes. Um, okay. How much more of this adventure do we have left? Still a little bit more. Okay. All right. All right. I'm tired. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Aren't you a long man, no. Rags? Apologize to me and Marvel. Never. That's right. Those fuckers.
All right, yes. Let's check out the Echo trailer. That we've we've been told this is absolute fire and peak. So okay, let's. Okay. Well, let's see. I guess I'll put on the copyright protection because, just yes. I mean, it'll only help, yeah. right? Um. Okay. Bear in mind, I've not All actually right. seen this yet. Neither has Rags. I don't think. Here we go. And I haven't seen Hawkeye, wow. so I don't know. I see everything that you are. Wait, why is... I thought the subtitles because he got it from the wrong place. Have I gotten it from the wrong channel? Uh, what says... Is that like Shock the... Oh, Hawk to a sub. She's Native, Native American, oh, okay. right? So is that like some kind of... All right, I'm fair Native enough. American. I was, I was born yeah. here. I don't speak Choctaw. I don't speak American. I always have. Oh no, the ice cream man! The ice cream man! No! Why did you do that to the ice cream man? Because the ice cream man said, "I don't know what you're saying." When he, because she was speaking. Why didn't she just write it out on a notepad? Well, and I, I don't, I don't know that. I guess because he kind of did it in a bit of a derogatory or, or condescending way. That's enough for kingpin, I guess. Yeah. Mm, oh my okay. goodness. Kill the ice cream man. Ow, why are you doing this to me? Do you want ice cream? This is how you ask for ice cream. Ow, I just want to sell ice cream. Blood. Oh, look, blood. Don't be afraid. Um. I can't hear you. Well, she probably read lips, I guess, right? Ow, Maybe. can you push people through, door, through walls like that? Well, yes. Yeah, I don't know if you, do you know Fringy, what what is her power set? Uh, I I'm I'm really not familiar with this character at all. I'm pretty sure I think it is like the uh the, the Taskmaster powers. Oh, but like in the I mean in this. Oh, I don't know. I did, I only watched the first episode of Hawkeye and then I stopped. Oh, okay. So much pain in you. 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 So much rage. That you can't contain it. All right, so we're two thirds in, and I know that. Oh my god! Oh, I'm no waiting for the deep. thing to happen. Un All right. Unpunished is that what it's gonna say? <laughs> yeah, yeah, there it is. Wow. I, I guess so that's better wow. than uh, when they said hero or whatever in, in Captain Marvel. Oh. That was pretty cringe. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. but yeah, I don't know, I just, uh, yeah, this is a trailer. Yep. Oh, blood. Oh my god. Oh, dog. dog. Yeah, there's a dog, that's cool. Bird. Blood. The dead guy. Yeah. Oh, explosions. Well, uh, then you can make a trailer like this for Secret Invasion, you could have. Yes, you can. Yeah, well, they did. Like they did trailer. make that trailer. I don't Secret remember Invasion. the trailer for Secret Invasion, but yeah, I, I mean, no one does. Yeah. <laughs> no one remembers you Secret I Invasion. Are the same. Okay. So. Oh, because he was shot in the this face. <laughs> Why does that look Boy, like it's CGI? Because and so that's oh my god, that's so stupid. Like so. He was he was actually actually shot in the head, but it's it's only taken out his eye. And he survived. <sighs> you, you, it it's like fucking eye. Sicario too. Took his eye. Who's the monster? Okay, yeah, that okay, that's an, that's a yeah, this is that's a, it's a it's a commercial for a product. It's, that's for sure. It's yep. fire is what it's it is. Yeah, like, I don't know why that would inspire any greater or lesser confidence. That just doesn't really mean anything. If I'm going to be 1,000 billion percent honest, if we've just seen that without anything we've, else we've seen today, I would have been like, hmm, a bit more violent. Uh, yeah. Oh, sure. <laughs> and, then, and then if you guys were like, meaning what? I'd be like, meaning nothing. Meaning nothing. I mean, it's, just, it's just more violent. It's just describing what I'm saying. It just seems violent. Question. If for the guy that we just watched, if it wasn't called Marvel Studios Echo, if it was called Echo, would this be a particularly interesting thing to him? If it wasn't associated with Marvel, you know, like would he watch it if it was just a trailer for like Echo on FX or something? Like, would that you know muster much uh, interest? I'm more likely to watch it if it isn't Disney. Yeah. Because oh, I dude, if that like... wasn't connected to the MCU whatsoever, yeah. I'd be like, that show looks like it could be okay. It could be something, but the fact that it is a Marvel figure is like, oh, uh -oh. Well, and I know that the Marvel creators don't believe in this show. They want it gone. 
well, I mean, the fact that they're releasing every single episode they're releasing on more than one streaming platform. Um, yeah, they're releasing in January, which is kind of like a, uh, that's very much like a month where there's not as much stuff happening. Hmm. Now, um, so with, with that, we, we've covered a lot of that, that angle on, it's kind of, you can kind of see how I've done this now, because I want to, I want to switch gears, but kind of do a similar thing. We're over to, okay. uh, over to Star Wars. Oh boy, and we I have love Star Wars. A channel that's created a video called I'm Done Here in all caps. Disney oh, is destroying not. Star Wars. What a you're joke. You're not done. You're not done. Now, this was made by Star Wars Theory. <gasps> okay. You're not done. You'll done be right with fucking with Star back Wars. next week. Done with Disney. Mm. They're destroying it, which feels a lot more Ahsoka aggressive. Ahsoka was amazing. What are you talking about? So, um... You fucking gawked and came all over we how did, amazing Ahsoka was. We've done the MCU one. Let's see what it looks like for someone who's been, let's be honest, gobbling up a lot of what they've been given, but now said it's enough is enough. The, uh. um, the guy we just covered, it was mainly him reading all of the article stuff. It wasn't even really his own opinions, because he said most stuff is still pretty good and all that. But what, what's Star Wars Theory going to say? What's his perspective on what Disney have done wrong? You guys excited? I'm so excited. So, yeah. Let's peer into the other world. Let's Here see how go. it works over there. You wonder why Star Wars is in... Oh you wait, this is like um, he does a... He does like a what's to come at the beginning. I want to skip that. Yeah, yeah, there you go. If you would join us. Here we go. Oh, 12 and a half minutes. The fuck. Kenobi Show. You know, it was a show that we had been waiting for, arguably... No, not, you know what? Screw arguably. It was the most important show that Star Wars could ever have released after George sold it to Disney. Ugh, I can't... Um, no, it just never should have happened. It's the most important show they could ever release. Maybe? Well, no, because know. they had the... They had, we had both ends of it. We had episode three, we had episode four. It was totally unnecessary. What would the most important show they could release be? The most important show that Disney Star Wars could release. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know. Probably, I don't, I don't, I, probably the show about Salacious Crumb. Well, it would be Luke, Maybe probably, like, right? I want the show, yeah. It would I have mean, to be, yeah, because probably, if you said yeah, we're releasing one for, seven, for Obi-Wan and fucking Vader, it would be important to fans, of course, but it'd still, it would just be like, what are you, where is it going to be? I'm guessing between three and four. That's what everybody would assume. And then, or, or maybe a Clone Wars show. Um, you know, it's not impossible or anything. It's just that to do Luke, it, pretending for a second the sequels didn't exist, would be like, holy shit, where does Luke go next? Which to me, I think, would be way more important. But um, I guess, yeah, what happens next? You know, episode seven, that isn't shit. We got Darth Vader and Obi-Wan Kenobi in between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. We got Whoa. Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi as well as Luke Skywalker and Leia. Literally the main characters of Star Wars, the most important part, time, everything. And what kind of a budget does it get? It, it gets not even less than Andor, which I think had like 130 million or 110 million. Or, it's a lot of money. Maybe uh -huh. more than that. What was the budget for Andor? Hold on here before I even get ahead of myself. Why do, the budgets just don't equal better. You guys are going to see- that upset you? Yeah, and Andor looked fucking incredible, <laughs> and it was written really well. well. Yeah, so oh, no, as you can no, see, we're already right? inching toward, like, wait, it doesn't matter if Kenobi had a lower budget than Andor, or it, it, that's not its problem. It's definitely mm -hmm. not its problem. Such a more real side of me as we push into 2024, because I'm fed up. I'm really tired, <gasps> I'm really fed up. People that don't like me already don't like me. People that love me already love me, and I'm here for you guys. Oh, we're the other people. We don't really feel a huge amount about you, and we're I, willing to yeah, hear you I, out. I, I, yeah. We're, yeah, we're the, we're the unicorns, so give us what you got. We're going to judge what you say by what you say. I'm not even going to go yeah. with the level hate. And I'm not here for anyone else. Oh. <laughs> wow. Well, at the end of the day, I'm here for George Lucas. I'm here for Star Wars. I'm here for myself and what Star Wars George used Lucas to be. Made three Let's get a few things out of the way. Though, just Not so. everything that Disney has created is total garbage. Uh, True. And there's Andor. And, uh, Andor. And, then, and then there's everything else. There's, 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 there's Andor. Andor. Rogue, Rogue One has got some stuff in it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm trying to be as nice as possible here. I don't think there's anything in Kenobi or Boba Fett. There's some stuff Where in Mando Season 1. Some stuff. 
What about the video games? Are they part of the conversation in any way? I think what we could say that. What would you point to in Mando Season 1? Uh, cinematography. Oh, all right. Yeah, the production right, values right. are really good. Yeah, that's good enough. <laughs> you know, 80, 90%. But there is that 10% that is actually really amazing. Yes. Mandalorian Andor. Season 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. Tales of the Jedi. I didn't even see that, so I can't say. The Clone Wars Season uh, 7. Rebels. Seen yeah. Rebels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> even so he was now. like, <laughs> Ahsoka up until Episode 7 and 8. No, all of it. <laughs> wait, so he does all Oh, he, wait, he's soured on it then. Damn. Oh, I Honestly, oh, who could have predicted he would sour on it? Nobody. Nobody at all could have thought that they would. That anyone who liked Ahsoka would sour on Ahsoka. That's just crazy, just man. I don't know what any of this means when he says It's just like, whatever. What is, why, whatever. Obviously, he'll never sour on Ahsoka episode 5. That shit was peak. It was fire. Yeah, that, that was, was so peak good. television. That was fire. That was, that was cooking. That was bro. We saw an Ethan Skywalker, and he made the, the red lightsaber. And it was, but it was... what I'm trying to say is, you know, not everything that... Wait, did he name Andor? No, he didn't because he probably doesn't consider that right. Like he doesn't. I like thought he. Andor, does I he? thought he does consider it good, just boring. I, I assume that was his. Oh, uh... sure, but I guess I guess a good and boring, good and not Star Wars isn't part of the equation of talking about the greatness of Disney Star Wars, right? Okay. Has and, been and maybe a... maybe that he doesn't actually like it like at all. That's probably the truth. He probably does think it's bad. Or Disney's umbrella was garbage. Now, mind you, those things were created by Dave Filoni and John Favreau. But yeah, a lot of bad things were created a by lot those of two. Bad stuff <laughs> was made by them. Yeah, you can't separate John Favreau from Lion King 2019. By the way, you can't. It's uh, no, it's his he kid. directed it. it is. I digress. Obi Wan Kenobi, Kenobi, the most important Star Wars project since Disney purchased Lucasfilm from no, George Lucas. Not as important as the sequels. I don't even no, think it's like... as important as The Force Awakens. In a way, that was like your I don't, I don't big moment of. Sequels. Can we can yeah. we take this forward? You know what, what's going to happen now with all the stuff you know in the universe going forward. But um, important's complicated because it can mean a lot of things. Because in twenty twelve, it can, and but it gets... like, there's nothing more important than the sequels. Yeah, because we could have just stopped. That's the thing. So it's like, what's the most important? Assuming we didn't just leave it alone and let it be what it was. The lowest budget of any Star Wars show to date. She Hulk gets a better budget than Obi Wan. Freaking yeah, because, she -Hulk. Yes, because Marvel was making more money more consistently than Star Wars. Yeah. Well, and it was it was insane. That's not Kenobi's problem. Um, this is not Kenobi's problem. They're different. Well, they're different. They're different departments. It's Lucasfilm and fucking Marvel Studios. They're different companies. They're different production. I can companies. barely entertain the conversation though. It's the, Kenobi's butt. It could have been. It could have been Ewan McGregor in a cave for the whole season. It could have been. No, but that was unfathomable. I imagine that for him, that's like not even in the realm of possibility for a. Like, like the idea of a Star Wars show with like Obi Wan Focused Kenobi, it's entirely him going on like some spiritual journey, you know, like embarking on some like backpacking across the galaxy to learn more about the Force or something. It's oh man, stop! I, I want to see that show. Oh, I absolutely would rather see the show of Obi Wan traveling across a galaxy to like maybe, maybe like places of great religious significance, you know, to the Jedi. Like Imagine him meeting people like who are familiar very much so with the Force, but have no connection to Jedi. Yes, and have entirely uh... different perspective. Imagine if you learned about, you know, ways of going about being a Jedi that are completely independent of the Remember that guy Jedi Order. that was pretending to be a Jedi to make money? Bumping into someone like yeah. that would also be fun and cool and interesting. Yeah, but oh well. No, we don't get to have any of that. We have to have room room with Vader. Mm -hmm. oh. I mean, what the hell, man? Like... Who is making these decisions up there? I'm sorry to make this kind of video, dude, but honestly, like, who is making those decisions up there? Well, you it's wonder... all Kathleen Kennedy's fault, right? It's oh, all her fault. It's also, your anger's misplaced. It's not about the budgets. Yeah. It's about the, no, the writing. fucking writing. writing. Why Star Wars is in such a state. Wait, what is this? We're Walt Disney's stock, is it? Uh, what is that? What is that? I haven't looked. What's, what's a, what's a stock they looking are... like the other day? Well, to this, it's 81.25. Currently, oh, yeah, that's, that's, 80 point, yeah. that's one day. That's one day's trading. Well, I, I, I think I assume the point he's making is that that's where it's sitting right now. Whereas, wasn't it double this in Endgame times? Uh, well, so year to date, they're down four percent, which is you know. But what was it? Five years, they're down twenty seven. Man, yeah, like mm, they, yeah. they were at two hundred dollars uh, in March of twenty twenty one. Fuck it, hell. 
That's right, everyone. Well, yeah, bye, and, bye, bye. And we would say, like, this the whole reason for it. There's loads of things, but they're not, you know, the, the important elements are the destruction of the MCU and Star Wars oh, that, and Indiana yeah, Jones and Willow and Lucasfilm as Jedi, you know. Getting to that peak was like the big rally that happened, you know, in 2020. Yeah. But yeah, they've, it's wow. That's, yeah, when you look at it, it's like, my God, oof. No good. Where no one is interested anymore. Nobody gives a crap. It's because of That's shit true. like. This. No, it's not because of the budget. No, no it's, it's not, not because of no, the budget. It's not the budget. It's because the writing for both of those shows was garbage. I look, dude. If Kenobi had been given an extra one hundred and thirty-five million, that doesn't. Why would you think that would make it better? It changed anything. anything? It just would have looked better. It probably would have looked better. You might have had an extra episode or so. I don't fucking know. It would have been shit. Still, I don't understand. Yeah. And you know what? The budget wasn't even the biggest problem of the show. It's not <gasps> the problem. It wasn't even the biggest problem. I think he's starting to realize he doesn't, that argument's useless. It's not going to have anything to do with anything. It's not the biggest problem. It's not a problem. It Having a 90 million fucking budget is enough. 90 million dollars for six episodes of television is still over 10 million dollars per episode. That is enough for a Kenobi show. You, can't make, that's, you can make that's his enough. fucking stick glow blue with that kind of money. It's possible. Mm-hmm. You have fan films. You have fan fiction. Yeah, see, he realized. He realized his point was full yeah. of shit. <laughs> like, even his own fan film wouldn't have cost anyway fucking near 90 million, let alone 1 million. Like, what? You don't need the money to make the... I don't, I'm not saying anything necessarily about his fan film. I'm saying that he would believe his fan film is good, I assume, and other people's ones. Really? And so, obviously, it's not the fucking budget. That have like no budget. That have like like the budget exactly. of an internet connection and a computer. Mm. That honestly garner more attention. Why do you think that is? Passion, mm -hmm. creativity, insight, hard work, redrafting, a script, and love. <laughs> then the a script garbage writing and direct. We got it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Garbage there writing. We go. There we there go. We Hooray! Thing. That flew into the Kenobi show. You have. The most important characters in Star Wars. Not only that, you're bringing back Hayden Christensen and Ewan McGregor. Forget Jimmy Smits, everybody else. Oh, <laughs> oh man. You're bringing back the goats, okay? The the original. No. Well, the prequel not the original. The original. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, prequel yeah, original. Yeah, yeah, there you go, yeah. <laughs> the original. Yeah. The original, the OGs, man. The OGs from the prequels, okay? And you, you not only, you know, give a crap script, you get people mm -hmm. that don't know what the hell they're doing when it comes to writing the stories and the characters that George built and created. You regress them. You focus on Reva. You make Chasing Leia literally this like... Is, this is... Where was... Start the video here. Yeah, <laughs> where was... was what was also, the whole budget thing? where was all this thing? when the show was coming out? That's where true, too. Well, to be fair, I didn't watch his shit? reviews, but... uh. Yeah. Okay. Well, does anybody in chat know? Was he favorable to this show for a while, or I I would go on a limb and say he must have not been right because like it was so bad. Oh yeah, it yeah, was but, so, so fucking was bad. But, but so Paul, was you so gotta good. remember. Remember, it took it took a couple of weeks. I remember the yeah. finale. I got a great reaction. It did. That's true. Like the most impossible thing to find a nine year old or 10 year old. And above all, you have open handed combat from a civilian against stormtroopers. I mean, look, stormtroopers suck, but they're not. No. 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 Push back on that what? whenever you can. The stormtroopers suck. Mm. It's stupid. They shouldn't Stop suck. It. They should be fearsome. No reason for them to be anything other than men who can shoot at you. That's that's very straightforward. It doesn't have to be fucking idiot clowns. The, when you say, like, yeah, they can be dumb and shit, but they can't be that dumb and shit, it's like, what? What's even the fucking point of that? Mm -hmm. They don't get they don't get disoriented like that from you know a slap on the head. Okay. I suppose what's oh, funny about that, that is that's <laughs> it's more likely to get disoriented from like you know a, an attack on your helmet, I suppose, as a stormtrooper, than it is like not to be able to shoot anything ever. Like you know, which yeah. which which of you which to you guys is more incompetent? Never being able to hit your target or to be disoriented from an attack on your helmet. And never being able to hit seems like a crazy thing to happen. Which is from Mando Season 1, which is the goated content from That's Disney, right. apparently. Okay. But then you also manage to give, literally, time. the worst script of all time, the lowest budget of all time. I, I don't the get it. The lowest budget of all time. 90 million. <laughs> 90 million. What are we doing? The budget of all time. 90 million dollars, come on. Uh, this, so stop talking about the budget, please. I, I don't, mm -hmm. I'm trying, as like, I'm trying to understand this. I'm really trying to, who's, make, who's making these decisions, dude? Let's, 
give this script, the crappiest script of all time, let's regress the characters, and then let's give them the lowest budget of, our, of the most important story in Star Wars, the most important characters in Star Wars, but let's just literally give them the bare minimum. I, oh the, bare minimum. The, the bare minimum. He just said there are geez, just said there are fan minimum. projects that will run on like zero budget, and now this is the bare minimum. 90 yeah, million. Why why is he still back million on the budget thing? dollars, he knows and it did not important. look cheap. The it show look. looked like it was. I mean, it was a, a proper looking show. There were show aspects of it that looked cheap. There were aspects yeah, there of it that yeah. looked cheap, but you know that seems like just the norm now. Yeah. But focus all of our attention in Andor, which yes, Andor is a great oh, show for everyone no. who attended film school and wants to eat their cheese with a French hat so they can twiddle their, their mustache at the same time and talk about the Renaissance era and how great things were back then while they sip on their wine from... Can you fucking right. imagine okay. like film festival types who watch art movies being told Andor is pretentious? Could you imagine? It's just, it's just like, I'm, I'm sorry that Andor had like characters and themes and a plot that made sense, a logical progression of characters. I'm thinking about the eye in was like, it episode actually six. Actually, good combat. How like? Yeah, you know when I think of Art House, I think of Andor. Yeah, that's that's the yeah, real like I, out I, there stuff. When I know? think of the real avant garde like indie films and television shows, I think of Andor. And you're sitting, and this guy's like, Andor sucks. Anyway, Osaka was really fucking good. It's, it, like, there, there is this weird disconnect, right? Because, like, one of the big problems we had with ah ah Ahsoka is that it was boring as fuck. Insanely oh, yeah. boring. And then we Andor get told, like, Andor is boring as fuck. And it's like, it is? Oh. It ain't. Sorry, it ain't. <laughs> I mean, if it's boring for you, it's boring for you, I guess. But like, I was yeah, riveted. Like, I just I didn't like... need to see a lightsaber get waggled around every five minutes or Darth Vader's breathing for me to like be interested in a show. Turns out most TV shows don't have those things, and yet somehow mm. I'm able to get through them. Oh, and yeah, and, and it's <laughs> captures several message. Kenobi had the same budget as Game of Thrones season eight, which was one of the most expensive TV shows of all time when it came out. Calling ninety million for six episodes the bare minimum is actually fucking insane. It's insane. It's ins it's it is nuts. Insane. It's, it's absolutely. It, it's nuts. Hmm. Um. Yeah. I mean, he clearly. <laughs> I think this is less to do with Andor, more to do with him being told by Andor fans that Andor is good. Yeah. Like you well, can tell, he's he's a bit pissed off that he has to keep mentioning Andor as like a sort of um, a, a caveat to a lot of the statements when he doesn't believe in it. Like, ugh, yeah, yeah okay, okay well, yeah, Andor's good, yeah, okay, fine. Andor's Fucking... good. You like art film? Look at me. <laughs> you like a, art a film? Beret. You like you like writing? Yeah. Ooh, look at you, like an adult or something. One who did film school and wants to eat their cheese with a French hat so they can twiddle their mustache at the same time and talk about the Renaissance era and how great things were back then while they sip on their wine from 19... I imagine his audience were a little bit annoyed with this too, because there could be plenty of people there who loved Andor. 22. Yeah, Andor okay, don't get me wrong. I liked Andor. Nah, did no, you? I don't believe did you. you? Though? I, don't believe I, don't you. Believe I don't believe you. you. I don't believe you. No, I think you're okay. saying that just to like yeah, you. I think I just don't believe you. I think you're lying. No, I don't believe that for one second. All I you like do is it. shit talk it was, it. it was a good show. It was fine. It was cozy. It was also extremely boring and made me fall asleep a million times while I was you watching. Liked but you it, liked but it. it. Made you fall asleep. Uh, dude, the just amount of shows. You didn't like it. You wanted to see the swords go yeah. swoosh swoosh. That's fine. So the amount of shows I watch that make me go to sleep that I favors. rate. I, I, chat, how many times have we recommended on EFAB? Like, this is a good sleeper, this one. You gotta grab yeah, this. Yeah, that's, that's a good one to go to sleep to. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta make sure you check out that, that new show. Oh, sleeper. Watching it. But it was still a good show. I, whatever, I enjoyed it. Just whatever. sleepy time, okay? Like, you want me. What the f. <laughs> It's still a good show. Oh, it's just sleepy he really, time. He really does have a chip on his shoulder about uh <laughs> He's really <laughs> upset <laughs> that his show that doesn't have I seriously, Darth Vader in it is, is really I believe the received. he's resenting it because it keeps getting in the way of the assessment. Like, you you uh, want to yeah, run the narrative. The it, the narrative. It's yeah. like, uh, yeah, Andal sucked. It's like, no, it, it, no, it didn't suck. It, it didn't, I, even I have to admit that it didn't suck. Like, I, there's no world where I can pretend that well, it Well, it's, it's easy so for us three, because we watched it and liked it a lot, because it was good. Yeah, <laughs> really enjoyed done it. Done and done. When you want to put to easy. sleep, you watch Andor. 
You want Star Wars? You watch Obi Wan Kenobi. You watch. But it sucked. Wait, he, he doesn't no, mean I, that, I'll right? I watch Andor. I watch Andor. It's Revenge of the Sith. Wars? You don't watch Obi Wan Kenobi. You watch a Revenge oh, of the Sith. Oh, yeah, that sucked. Right, well, okay, I see. So I'm I'm going Italian now. That six percent Italian is coming out, and I'm starting to get a little bit angry. Uh, uh, is this is this licensed music or is it? Uh, right. we should be okay if we're gonna uh, play for a yeah. Right? You okay. want to watch? Yeah, there you go. Watch Star Wars. You watch the first six movies, and you watch the Clone Wars. That's Star Wars. Oh, you watch the Clone Wars. What about Ahsoka? Uh, yeah, what about Ahsoka? Episodes Andor, no. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... Was it 5, 6? 7 and 8 you didn't like, right? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. What seven about eight, Mando yeah. Season 1? Isn't that goated? Season 2 as well? Mm hmm You want to create a Star Wars project, you create the Obi-Wan Kenobi show. But not but the it way sucked. it was written by Joby Harold and directed by Deborah Chow. Is that commenting okay. on, like, they... Was there lots of shaky cam? Shook I can't remember. Camera, lots of maybe? Cam shaky yeah. cam. Uh, yeah, get I someone competent the... who knows the characters and respects the characters. You get John Favreau and Dave. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. This is why you're yeah. so like incredibly stupid. And it was so and funny. He had me in the first half. I was about to say he's right, and then he said those two. <laughs> like, yeah, what are it's you like talking it about Satan. those fuckers. <sighs> Jesus. So they're jokes. Why didn't John Favreau and Dave Filoni do the Kenobi show? Why? Bro, didn't he? So he specifically mentioned season one and two of Mando, meaning he thinks three's bad, right? Which is them. They made it. They made, they it. made yeah. it. Yeah. That's theirs. Also, That's them. Episode seven of Ahsoka. That's, uh, uh, seven and eight were made by name. Dave Filoni. Well, the whole thing, right? I mean, like, it's he's his baby. He's on the hook for the whole thing, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Come on. Absolutely. Why didn't they do all shows? I mean, okay, Andor was fine. It was, keep keep the guy Andor there, but even fine. he you said don't, that. You, don't, you don't believe that. <laughs> See what I mean? So, just, Every time it's this caveat that's annoying him. He's like, oh, fine. Andor isn't shit, I guess. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> like, Holy crap. So hard for you. Because <laughs> obviously he's saying, he's saying he wants John Favreau and Dave Filoni to redo, or like to have control of all of it. But then he's like, I guess that Gilroy guy, he can have Andor. Yeah, sure, he fine. He can have Andor, yeah. He's allowed to have that one. Like, half the time I forgot I was doing a Star Wars show. This is just... Yeah, but... No wonder it turned out so The context good. of that <laughs> comment relates to him being so intertwined with storytelling that it's not ne it's not like he's thinking, when do I get Vader in here? Or when, when do I sort out how this affects the future events in the sequel? You know what I mean? He's like, no, 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 no. I'm just, I'm writing characters in a world and they're developing. That's, he's obviously not trying to say, like, I don't even like Star Wars, I'm just trying to make a show here. Which, to be honest with you, is probably the best thing you can do with Star Wars right now. At this point, yeah, yeah just forget it's Star Wars. What, how does it help you at this point to try and remain in continuity with everything that Disney have fucking made? I need to make sure that my story uh, ties into Dave Filoni's really good idea of Mando's zombie army, um, oh. led by Thrawn and the Night Sisters. Painful. I yep. am so tired. No, I'm so tired of being trying to be so nice to people. <laughs> 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 okay, and it is very tiring, isn't it? It is tiring. And it's I very don't care. I know, man. I care if you don't like what I have to say, don't watch my videos. I'm not. I, that, Damn. I mean, yeah, I'm interested to hear your opinion. It's okay. Yeah. All right. I, even if I disagree with it, I'll keep going as I have. Yeah, Giving you a fair shake. I'm not here for them. I'm here for me. I'm here for Star Wars, George Lucas, and to protect the legacy because, quite frankly, dude, I'm the only one that keeps doing it. Um, Do what? Okay, sorry, what? All right, calm, what? calm down. Yeah, right, chill out there, Mr. Martyr. Story that you're trying to create, Fucking yeah. Superman for Star Wars. <laughs> First of all, when it comes to like protecting an IP as such, it's like Star Wars. Like, what are you even suggesting at this? But we'd have to erase everything Disney's done to begin to protect mm -hmm. it. Secondly, your idea of protecting Star Wars is to hand it to Dave Filoni and John Favreau. To hand it to two of the most destructive people to ever get their hands Two of the on undertakers side. of Star Absolutely Wars. Absolutely insanely <laughs> shit tier. So, yeah, let me choose to press that giant X button and doubt that you are the one that's protecting Star Wars, my good man. And they make clips mm. of me on TikTok, whatever, they can keep doing it, but I'm literally the only one who keeps driving the point home. No, you, you, know, you know that's not true. Fucking, no, that's not the, yeah, he's, he's know, spoken to true. Jeremy and Geeks and Gamers. He knows there's plenty of people who fucking fly in the flag of we need to save Star Wars before it fucking drowns in its own piss. We, there's many of us. You don't Star give it to Wars the piss masters. Is what George created. It's not this shit that's been created now. 
that's that's not really addressing the problem necessarily. Yeah. Like saying that George made it, it's like okay. George, just to be clear, I'm, I was like, I know. Well, I'm not even, don't even mean to prequels. mention the prequels. Go straight to Return I mean, of the Jedi. Uh, yeah, he, he made the prequels. Yeah, but Return of the Jedi has got really bad shit in it, and that's even it further sure back. It sure does. Yeah, prequels is a safer one to point to, though. Prequels is more thoroughly shit. Um, I guess. I'm not interested in being safe. Shit. I almost want to be a little edgy and be like, George is not oh my perfect. God, edgy Mola. Well, well, uh, I, well, I mean, I was. No, I, I know. I mean, I totally episode, agree. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he's you know he's a flawed creator, right? Yeah, I like uh, him. I respect him. I'm the, yeah, I'm the one who jokes about him, the, yeah. the two good Star Wars movies we got. Yeah, you, but, you know, exactly. Um, and it's not hard it's to. Not I think that, you know, most I mean, people yeah. agree. There's at least something in Return of the Jedi they think is shit. Mostly the Ewoks, I think, gets referenced, even though, I mean, I think the Java stuff is more confusing. Behind him right now. And given a crap budget so that She Hulk 90 million crap can budget. shine through. I can't. F <laughs> Stop why do you saying think, that. Why do you put these two in competition with one another? Is, is, what the fuck does She Hulk have to do with Kenobi? She Hulk's budget has nothing to do with Kenobi's budget in terms of how everything gets decided in the corporate ladders of fucking uh, Disney. But then, secondly, stop she referring to 90 terrible. million as like a shoestring budget. <laughs> it's fucking retarded. It's, it's not. They a barely keep budget. the lights on. Yeah, they, like you know what? Kenobi, dollars. oh. He had to bring had his to own shoot. prop lightsaber because they just couldn't give one into him, you know? Yeah, they had to shoot during the day, so they had some daylight to work with. Through as she twerks with Meg the Stallion. Yeah, it was pretty cringe. I, mean, I just don't get it, man. How can this fool? What is this, what is this music? music? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> and is it copyrighted? A little bit. Four billion dollar company be handled. Are you giving yourself like triumphant music or sort of that you know over mega that's, cringe? Yeah, that don't sounds do like that. Something Dave Filoni would do. <laughs> oh no! Did Dave Filoni direct this video? Oh no! I... No, he went to the composer room. That's what he did. <laughs> right. yeah, the composer room. These buffoons who don't even understand the characters. You mean John Favreau and Dave Filoni? Is yeah. that what you're Literally, talking John about? Favreau. That... Tell me, give me one good character that those two have ever been near. <laughs> but also, assign these nitwits to write for these legends. Damn, he is tired of being nice. God. Yeah. Legendary characters, and at the same time, give them pennies. Ninety pennies? million dollars. Ninety million dollars. Pennies. Ninety million dollars. Ninety million dollars. Ninety million dollars. Pennies. Yep. Jeez. I have nothing else to say about that, but I don't want to hit play yet. I'm kind of just trying to get no. over it. Pennies. No. Pennies. pennies. That is one shiny penny, I would say, yeah. But then they want to give She-Hulk the most money because it's what, CGI? <laughs> uh, I mean, Star um, Wars has That would be a reason. <laughs> But, I mean, yeah, again, Obi-Wan Kenobi funny. would have had a lot of visual effects as well. Plenty of CGI in that. It's a star of but, science but fiction. But, again, why does he not understand that they're not... They're different... They're, like, yeah, they're Disney, but one of them is Lucasfilm and one of them is, is Marvel Studios. They have different yeah, leadership. I yeah, I don't think they're competing with each other. I don't like, think anyone's like... they yeah, want to be... He, uh, yeah, like, not getting in each other's way. It's like, what mm -hmm. he's saying here is almost like... we She-Hulk is to blame for Kenobi's failure because it took away its money? That's the message I'm getting. Remember the ending of She-Hulk? Yeah. What? Yeah, it was like it was like the rest of the show is awful. Yeah, I was pissed. What the hell did they do to Hulk's son? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I guess you could reference that. Sure. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, it was pretty bad too. Yeah, you guys fair. remember Andor? Cringe. Why does Andor have a two hundred fifty million dollar budget? Because great. Nick they, is really they fucking good, it. and it looks amazing. Remember the, and they go to all kinds of different places. The fucking the, all the sets good. for the prison, the the CGI sequence for the eye. It was called the eye. It right? looks so good. It was fucking crazy. It was something it that you haven't seen so before. Good. Like Andor looks so good, and there's such a diversity in the places that they go to. All of the costumes and the props and the scenery. It all looks so good they managed to capture that element that the ot have which is it's like whoa that world they looks did. like an actual place that people do things in yeah there's still like like sci-fi analog kind of look to everything with knobs and bricks and all kinds of, like there was I really, screws and bricks that's true screws and bricks. you could it really is a world that it's so easy to just imagine living in
Um, uh, as for, like, if you want to say, like, should it have cost that much to do what they did in Andor? Maybe not, but I don't see I what don't... that has to do with uh, a 90 million budget being not enough for Kenobi. I don't get it. I mean, I feel oh, like... Damn. We and also, this is... I'm not sure if it's been brought up yet. Andor had twice as many episodes. Oh, yeah, there's that, too. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Someone's, and, Sorry, and also the tired. episodes were the episodes were consistently longer. So fuck me. You know what? Now I'm so curious. If, if minute by minute, now on it. Sorry. Wait, that's worth calculating. Now I need to know. Minute Ooh, by minute. Yeah, I wonder you're if right. which show cost which show cost, Oh my god. Oh no. Hold on. Let me see if I can find some. Uh, Do you, you're looking to break the runtime of Andor in total into oh, minutes? Yeah. And yes. then right. Um. Hmm. Well. <laughs> Not someone's going to be done in, the, in your head. That's going to be difficult, unless someone's already calculated the total runtime of Andor. You might have someone. Uh, also, oh, someone has. Someone has somewhere, yes. By the way, the, the thing that's on the screen, Kenobi's budget was a fraction of She-Hulk. That fraction is like... It's a big what, fraction. Two, it's a pretty big... It's like two-fifths or something like that. It's, like, it's, a, pretty big, it's a pretty big chunk. So, it's a little bit I less than a, half. Uh, yeah, on Reddit, someone calculated the total runtime for Andor was... Seven hours, fifty-one minutes, and fifty-four seconds. Mm, so the average runtime per episode was thirty-nine minutes and twenty seconds. Uh, the the total length for um, Kenobi was three hours and forty-two minutes, which means I had an average runtime per episode of uh, thirty-seven minutes and six seconds. So actually, it's not not too much of a difference. But nevertheless, so what was the budget? Of, was was Andor's budget two hundred and fifty million dollars? Uh... Let me double check. Andor uh, budget estimated at two hundred fifty million. Okay, two hundred fifty. Okay, good old calculate. We'll just do it by. Uh... Wait, hold on. What was the uh, total oh, runtime for Andor? Seven hours fifty one minutes and fifty four seconds. So, let me let me. How many minutes is that? So, sixty times by eight minus. Uh, yeah, let's say minus six. Okay, so 474 minutes uh, divided by 250 million means that... <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a moron. So what, wait, what is, okay. Wait, I no, I, wait, no, I did it, I did it the wrong way around. It's meant, it's 250 million divided by 700, uh, fuck me. All right, hold on. All right. What we're figuring out is cost per minute, I assume. Yeah, so the cost per minute is... Does that scan? The cost per minute would be $527,426 per minute. Does that line up? Yeah! I, oh, yeah, it would. Yeah, yeah, that, that, about, that about lines up. And now for okay. Kenobi, right? So Kenobi would be... So do we, do we know for sure that that was $90 million then? Oh, uh, well, I mean, all of this is based on the idea that it is, so we'll just go with it. Oh, and obviously, chat, you can correct my maths here if I'm screwing up, but yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm getting it right. Just to be, yeah. Okay, yeah, let, let's say 90. Okay, so... Uh, 3 hours and 42 minutes, so 60, 20, 180. So that'd be two, 222 two. minutes. Yep. Yeah. 222. So 90 million divided by 222. Wait, so it's about 405 thousand four hundred and five oh it's just four or five four or five repeating over and over and over again so four hundred five thousand four hundred and five dollars with my very 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 rough math so it basically cost about a hundred thousand dollars more per minute which ain't that much more it adds up but like it ain't dramatically well, that's like I think 20 percent more expensive basically but you can account means. for that with uh and all looks way better than kenobi it, it does. does. Andor, Andor looks, goes to that, way more places way than more Kenobi. Than... Oh okay. yeah, if for a twenty percent increase, you get way more than twenty percent. Because worth all of we've just done visual quality. is equalize them on budget to amount of content. But now we should be like, okay, add more variables. Being that Andor, we aren't even talking about script, but Andor went to way more places in the universe, and it had way better sets, way better prep. Yes, it's like it looked way better. Yeah, like I think you could conclude that Andor used its money. More, if, um, more effectively, sure than than Kenobi. Definitely. Oh, absolutely. I'm pr okay. Assuming that that was all correct, which I'm pretty. 
It, yeah. Well, yeah, I, I mean, mean it, 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 it makes the difference right. uh, a lot softer, doesn't it, compared to what it looks like. 90, yeah. well, yeah. 90 million versus 250 million, there's a gap of 132, is it? Uh, no, wait, well, it 260 just, million. Uh, well, 200, yeah, so it, it looks like a gap of $160 million when in actuality, based on per minute runtime, it's more like a 20% difference, which isn't nothing no but, but it certainly and it's dramatic no yeah yeah the, the... i totally forgot about the, the number of episodes is like part of the equation yeah paid 20 30 million at least to hayden 20 30 million to ewan 60 million right there oh shit you have the whole budget for the show but they give 200 do you think that they're paying them 20 million dollars don't even I don't care think hayden don't christensen care. i don't think he's getting 20 30 million don't even care if they paid the uh, 89 million between the two of them you could still make an amazing show Absolutely. Mm -hmm. 50 million to Ander, 250 million to, or 225 million to She Hulk. You're looking at 500 million, you're looking at half a billion dollars for two shows, which honestly aren't even the most important things in either. Please don't equate Andor and She Hulk. Jesus. Uh... Their franchises. What the hell are these people thinking? And you're wondering why South Park is making these kinds of comments towards Kathleen Kennedy. It's not because they lowered the budget for Kenobi. No, I doubt it. Their stuff is I, I bet that in the pissed. writers' room they were like, "Isn't it fucking insane that Kathleen Kennedy decided to spend more money on Andor than Obi Wan Kenobi?" You know, that's pretty that's, that's wild. all that Stone that's and Trey Bog nice. were talking about. It's because their products are shit and consistently <clears throat> bad. You know when she says, uh, uh, when Cartman Kennedy says, put a chicken and make a gay and lame. The lame is like specifically referencing how shit the writing is. Yes. It's lame. Fucking lame. It's mm. because people there clearly aren't using their brains. And it seems like I'm taking crazy pills. I'm starting to feel like I'm Mugatu. It's like... Does nobody see this? No, loads of people see it. We've been talking about it forever. I don't know where you've been. That They've made mm. awful decisions. He's been sucking it off this whole time. I was going to say, amazing? like, you're not... Isn't it incredible? <laughs> it's like it's just like joining a fucking choir and being like, "Am I the only one singing here?" <laughs> it's like, uh, what? You're the last and we're one all to just show standing around, like, like, "Hey, it's okay." No, we're not standing around saying it's okay. We never have been. I don't know. Nope. Who are you talking to? We got Andor. Andor's the best Star Wars. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, you, need to, you need to let go. Yeah, Andor is fucking incredible. How many times do we it say everything better than any other show? How many times do we say that Andor being good or even great, it doesn't fucking matter. It's Star Wars is dying. Like one good show is never gonna be able to bring it back anyway. We said this that would be the case for Echo. You to bring back Star Wars, same methods as Marvel. You'd need to be great content continuously. You can't just fucking have a one-off show. It, nobody ever said it's okay that Kenobi was shit because we got Andor. Fuck do those things have to do with each other? Yeah, like, it's, it's, it's not even remotely connected. It just doesn't make sense. It's like... Does nobody see this? And we're all this just standing music. around like, Hey, yeah. it's okay. We got Andor. Andor's the best Star Wars we've ever... It is. Well, it is the best Star Wars that Disney made. Yeah, it's, best, it, it's, it's been the, the, best, the best Star Wars, Star Wars since made. 1980. It's one of yeah. <laughs> oh, but uh, I, it yes. is. Yeah, it is. It is, it is, it is, it is the best Star Wars. It has been. The, it's the best Star Wars in like 40 years. It's one of the years. best Star Wars things like ever made. It's not. It's. <laughs> Blade wait, 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 The wait, timing on that was kind of perfect. Wait, 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 wait. I, wasn't, I, wasn't, I wasn't totally paying attention to that. Can you just replay that? Did nobody yeah. see this? And we're all just standing around like, hey, it's okay. We got Andor. Andor's the best Star Wars we've ever... It's not. It's Blade Runner. <laughs> what dude, the amazing? fuck? Dude, so it's fucking dude. amazing? I, when well, does Blade Runner I don't even know where to begin with what? any of that. It's not Are we good. implying that it's, Blade Runner is it's... bad? <laughs> What, what is the similarity in the subject matter of Andor and Blade Runner? Andor it's doesn't cover anything that Blade Runner is fucking all about. What are you What's talking the about? What's stylistically between them? Blade what? Runner. Why, why, would you, a why was that a comparison that you made, and why was it negative? <laughs> well, to be, to be fair, there <laughs> are no lightsaber fights in Blade Runner. Darth Vader is not in Blade Runner. Sadly, it would have improved Just it. Just like Andor. But he see this? And we're all just standing around like, hey, it's okay. We got Andor. Andor's the best Star Wars we've ever... Base true. It's Red not. Point. It's Blade Runner. 
with a Star Wars theme. Bro, you said oh, you sad. fall asleep to it. You said it was like, it's, it's okay, but it's Blade Runner. Does he know how... Oh, like does, does it, he know that people like Blade Runner? Does he know that this is like a giga well, hot take? I don't think he understands that. Takes? When you say Blade Runner with Star Wars coat of paint, I'm like, sold. Oh, shit. Absolutely that sold. Yeah, that's, that's that part's not where my it. brain got stuck. It's the, I'm, I'm collecting all the things he said to me, which is the and or, ugh, it's okay. Yeah, sure, it's good. Good to fall asleep to. Good for the fucking pretentious people to like. It's like Blade Runner. <laughs> <laughs> what I, 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 or, or is he trying to compare it like in terms of the subject matter but no no fucking way possible. he's connecting what blade runner's about to what andor's about how or is what wasn't what was that guy that we watched the guy who said that like andor was basically like any other like it was the expanse it was star trek oh it was, the, yeah the thing that made star wars was lightsabers that he's trying to oh imply. yeah it's not the, star wars um... it's generic like which it's again, Andor is even... a true Star Wars guy. Yeah. Well, yeah. I guess that's what I'm saying is that's what my mind is now kind of wondering is like, is that where we're at? That because it's the absence of because it's about regular people, no Jedi or anything like that, maneuvering through a science fiction world, that that makes it comparable. Even though, again, like I I don't see the connection. I don't know what point he's trying to make here. I mean, you know what? I'm fine with it. He's big enough, Andor. <laughs> he is big enough and or comparing it to Blade Runner my god there'll be something know, right? going well I love Blade Stop, Runner I already man. love it quit I love Blade Runner so yeah with the Star Wars theme it it's not bad I love Blade Runner go to my Theory Talks channel I'm always playing Blade Runner music <laughs> I, I love I, Blade now Runner I, now I I'm even music. more lost now I'm much what? more lost now I have no idea <laughs> This is a funny video. But that doesn't mean it's a good show for Star Wars. The Last ah, Jedi was the most okay, asinine. Yeah. Okay, wait. How are we, we moving to add TLJ now? All right, slow down. Yeah. It's so much funny to. Star Wars. <laughs> the Last Jedi was the most asinine representation of a continuation of Luke Skywalker's okay. story that I've ever seen in my life. Yet it was a good movie. Okay, no. you're out. You're done. That's it. No. GG. No. But it did it did it did it. TLJ was a good movie. Well, this is the this is the this is the meme, right? This is the 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 sentiment of Ryan Johnson. You know, he's actually pretty great, just not a good fit for Star Wars. You know, like his other movies, they're really great. He just isn't a good fit for Star Wars. Um, yeah. You see, well, I can explain. TLJ is not a good Star Wars movie, but it's a good movie because good movies don't need good writing, but Star Wars does. Hmm. That's an interesting theory. A <laughs> Star Wars theory. <laughs> Star Wars Yay. theory. I don't da, remember da, da, the theme da. song from Game Theory. <laughs> Fucking that. nobody does. Whatever. He's I apparently in the Five Nights at Freddy's film, time. by the way. Oh, yeah, I can believe that. Yeah. <laughs> he's got a cameo. It's going to be funny. The movie? It just wasn't a good Star Wars movie. Uh -huh. I just, yeah, I don't. Yeah, there it is. I'm sorry. I it's so hard Star for me Wars is to Darth know. Star Vader waggling a red lightsaber. That's what yeah, Star Wars is. It's really hard for me to feel like sad for him realizing like how bad Star Wars is when his ideas to fix it are like take it away from something like Blade Runner, push it toward John Favreau and Dave Filoni, and remember we can do stuff like the, TLJ because that gives us good movies, but it doesn't give us good Star Wars movies. Also, give me Anakin. Yeah. It's like what a fucking no, I, 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 fart I collection. What, what the hell am I supposed to do with that? It's 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 like yes, I'm distraught about the state of Star Wars too, my good man. But like we we fundamentally disagree <laughs> on so much. Well, he's also telling wrong. me like you know like oh, am I the only one who sees this? I'm the only one who's fought for this. Like, what? Okay. Are you okay? Yeah, like, like, what's happening? All right. All right. You know the movie how how to lose a guy in ten days? I feel like Disney has one. Like how to lose star? How to lose a franchise in in ten, in 10 years? years? And Oh yeah, that's pretty. That's right. pretty. Uh, that's pretty clever. Now they're wow, pouring all like, this money and focusing it, on the Ray movie. Like, are you guys not learning your lesson? Are, like, seriously? The answer is no. Um, I mean, this this is coming back to more so reality again. It's like, yeah, that's a really bad choice for obvious reasons, and the the, the reason it could be a great film, but that wouldn't even save Star Wars. At that point, it would probably. Right. Be a, it's just a disastrous move to make a Ray I mean, movie. It's a, what are you yeah, doing? It confused people more than anything. If we went, if we went to the Ray movie. And we were like, wow, that was really good. Uh, that was weird. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, all right. That was a good movie. <laughs> Are you not learning your lesson? Now.
They are definitely not. I just don't get it, man. I don't get it how they can be so out of I touch. You. To be f okay, wait. You're out of They're touch. They're not learning their lesson. However, Dave Filoni was recently given full control over a full TV show, which is yes. something that he is fully on board with, and yet is critical of well, the yeah, finale. Exactly. Despite the fact that, uh, I guess he thinks that Dave Filoni should be given more control. Writing credit, he like, has shouldn't, full writing credit, though. Shouldn't he be saying, like, well, we're on track, on the TV show side, at least? Yeah, there's no reason to be upset. The dark times, they're over. We're entering into the good times again. Yeah, because he, he said he wants, he wants Dave Filoni and John Favreau to have full control of all of Star Wars. And so Dave Filoni going from directing and writing some episodes of some shows to getting his full own show. That's great news from his point of view. Exactly. That's right. Kathleen Kennedy, you're on the right track. She knows what she's doing. Uh, she's lady. listening. She's learning. Right. She's giving Star Wars to you the, the custodians that it deserve wrong. it. Yeah. You know, she's, she's on the right track. Feels like he's having two thoughts at once that cannot coexist. The Force mm. is female. Make better Star Wars, dude. Make Mando season one and two. Make that continuous. Those sucked. What about three? I can't believe it. Three is their newest <laughs> one, three? Star Wars Theory. That's three. the newest executive, one. Executive produced by John Favreau and Dave Filoni. Yeah, sorry. What I mean by newest one is it's the newest one by those two, which are his golden team, so. Mm hmm. Mm. I don't know what the hell happened with the Book of Boba Fett. <laughs> No one yeah, knows. no, I don't know what happened either, because again, that was produced by John Favreau and Dave Filoni, right? Uh-huh. I think so. Well, obviously someone's meddling with something out there. Ah, uh, okay. yes. <laughs> okay. yeah. There's, yeah, there's a fucking meddling. Palpatine out there pulling the strings. It, it, it can't be that Favreau and Filoni are just shit. No, it can't be that they're shit at writing Star Wars, or that they don't give a fuck, or that they're really bad at writing. It can't be any of those things. It has to be some sheave, creamy sheave is out there pulling those fucking strings, man. Okay, so remember, we did, ruined it, Luke, but we definitely didn't ruin Luke when Skinwalker appeared in Boba Fett. No, mm -hmm. no, 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 no. Consistent wise, it, it just doesn't make sense. Mando season one and two were literally like perfection. No. Wow. <laughs> okay, oh, I am willing Christ. to Man. like tolerate love for those seasons, but perfection? Come Name one character on. and a trait that they have. There's like, so like, much retardation in both seasons. It's crazy. Those, they suck. They actually suck. But for whatever reason, they just get away with it. I don't know what it is. Is it if they get away? I don't know. It, I don't know if it's the shitty combat or the shitty um, characters. Season or the one, shitty plot. I understand a little more for how it sneaks by because it looks real cool and it does try to. What it sells you on is not what it is, but it convinces a lot of people it's what it is, which is a mm. bounty hunter making his way through the universe, just trying to get by. Which is really cool and awesome. It's not what the show is, but a lot of people think that's what the show is. Mando season three was the most disjointed thing I've ever- That was them, bro. Was that, was them. that was not fire, was it? That was not peak. And yet that was them. Ever seen. Boba Fett was just shit. To be honest, like- I mean, season three Mando was shit. Ahsoka was shit. We went I'm back, sorry, I wonder what his- Mando wonder season what his two was very shit. Season one was pretty shit too. The first two episodes were amazing. The first two episodes oh. of Boba Fett were amazing. You didn't oh, just say that, right? Man. Damn. Sh he must I ever seen Boba Remember Fett. Remember the part was when Mashamp punched Boba shit. Fett? To be Remember honest, that? like the first two episodes were amazing. Oh my god, yeah, he did say yeah, that. Okay. Uh, fucking hell, the first two episodes of Boba Fett was, were amazing. Was the episode yeah, was episode two the gun train? Uh, that was the gun train, yes. That was Episode fucking was laughable. Oh, well, that was the whole, well, the whole season was absolutely laughable, but seriously? Instead amazing? Instead of letting yeah. the gun train go by, they all just got, I'm sorry. got killed by it. I get so confused listening to this, man, because I've just been told, like, episodes one through six of Ahsoka, episodes one and two of Boba Fett, ep seasons one and two of Mando, this is all the goated stuff, as well as Rebels, by the way, it was given a special mention, of course, Clone Wars, we're not we're not gonna give Rogue One or Andor into this list. Like and I know you might be like, well, Rogue One isn't amazing. It's like, no, but the point is that all of them make it, but those don't. <laughs> it's like, okay. Um I have no idea what he'll find amazing or what but he'll hate. Th what I'm getting at is that like I've even la labeled all the things that he's like really enjoyed, and yet Star Wars is in a, like, you know, a disastrous right now, according to him. Even though loads of the stuff that's been made he really likes is considered excellent and amazing. I'm pretty sure episodes five of Ahsoka and the season finale of Mando season two are like some of his favorite Star Wars of all time. And they're made by the people that he thinks should be in control who have been getting more control. Everything I know tells me that he should be happy with Star Wars right now.
Yep. Why wouldn't he be? But it's got his title is, swinging around. I'm done here, Disney's destroying Star Wars, and his primary point was that the budget for Kenobi was too low at $90 million. Million dollars, which is this video still. is fucking confusing. Mm. Well, I mean, it's a stream of consciousness, isn't it? Just uh, I'm discontent. Well, stream let of me... something. It, I, I don't know. It, 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 that's that's what it comes across as. It's a stream of discontent, the source from which is unclear. Like, I'm not quite sure where it comes from, I'm not quite sure how to fix it. I'm just frustrated. Then after that, it was like, what happened? What? The booby fet. What? Yeah, well, like, what's going on here? I don't, I don't even know. understand the joke. I don't know. I just feel. I feel like. I feel like. I feel like it's satire at this point. You know, it's like we just constantly keep trying you? to see what else they're gonna mess up at this point, and it's like I don't want to do that. I just want to. Well, they kind of killed all of it, man. I gotta say, yeah, I find oh, the. Shit. I find the reaction to a lot of Disney. I find. I find the. I find like the. The Mando season one, two, and Ahsoka is great, but the sequel trilogy is bad. I find that one fascinating as like a, a sort of a, almost like a space. Yeah, you want to sit down and say like, no, but tell me why. Why was the sequel shit? But Last thing, like Ahsoka was great. We're fast approaching 10 years of them releasing Star Wars content, right? Um, yeah. Which means that it has to, well. just over the years, it's going to generate different... It, it, you know, it was, do you like the sequels or not? Quickly became, do you like TFA or not? And TLJ or not? And then it became TLJ, TFA, and... Uh, you don't like all three of those. Nobody does. You have to pick a team. Because those sequels yeah. hate each other. So you, you, it doesn't make any sense to be like, oh, I love all three of them. It's like, yeah, okay. I mean, you can. I'm just saying that, like, most people... Well, it, it creates divides. And you've already got the prequels yeah. as a big divide. The OT fans is a big divide. And then people who are just, like, into all of it, I guess. Like I said, that seems weird, but, you know, maybe that, that's the thing. But, like, fast forward to now, we've got people who are big Mando fans who are not fans of any of the sequels, who might not even be fans of the prequels. And then you've got people who are, like, big into Rebels and the Clone Wars and loved Ahsoka and the prequels, but not the sequels, and maybe not even the OT. Some people are like, yeah, the OT, I'm not some of the prequels. Are, oh, bang it. And it's just like, there's fucking pockets of Star Wars fans that are all over the place at this point. You can't predict anything about what anybody's going to like or hate or think is good or bad. In fact, a lot of people will hear what we think is good and bad and think, like, fucking hell, you guys are crazy. Like, huh? <laughs> well, yeah, it's it's interesting because there's a lot of disparate boogeymans. There's a lot of disparate. You're the reason why everything's horrible. Um, like yeah. a lot of, I mean, because it was like you pointed out. There's sort of the the divide, the rise of Skywalker. The response is there is a contingent there that is responsible for this being bad because they didn't like TLJ. If it was like there's an increasingly smaller portion, like a proportion of the percentage of um, that's a stupid sentence. A smaller percentage of actively talking about Star Wars people uh, who like TLJ think it was brilliant and profound and inspired and that, you know, that like all of the people who just want to see the swords go swoosh, swoosh. But then there's differing opinions from the people who just want to see the swords go swoosh, swoosh and the blasters go pew, pew. I just find it interesting how like it, how that's like emerged and it'll only become more and more fragmented as time goes on. Enjoy Star Wars. You guys remember how hyped Star Wars fans were when Mando 1 came out? Oh my gosh. You remember how hyped they were when TFA came out? It was crazy. Yeah. Culturally speaking, Star oh, Wars yeah. was reaching was some like, skyrocketing highs. Not yeah. necessarily the highs like of all time, because uh, when the fucking first film came out, that was crazy for the world as well. But I'm just saying, like, Star Wars has just diminished. It has only diminished over time. Oh, yeah. I mean, TFA was, uh, like, <clears throat> there were huge portions of, like, shops that were just dedicated to Star Wars merchandise. Like, just, just big portions. It's just like, yep, this is, like, the Star Wars part of, like, the retail store. And that was, that was meant to last for a while, I think. It was like Star Wars was back. It was like, after, that's after The Last Jedi, and we thought, you know, like, oh my god, okay, finally. We got something to... I'm sorry, why the fuck would you think Star Wars is back from just Mando? Even if Mando Season 1 was as good as people say it is, like, why would that be... It's one TV show about a character that doesn't regard most of anything. I don't even know what it means for Star Wars to be back. I don't know. I don't know what. Well, as you saw on that back. graph, we be back is really just a. a it's a matter of time before it's, it's so. It's a matter over. of perspective, isn't it? It's really. It's relative. It's um. <clears throat> yeah, because as we said, thing. Andal being good didn't really matter in terms of Star Wars trajectory. Grasp onto now. I don't know, dude. 
I don't know. It's just, and, and, you know, they don't even want to give Kenobi a second seat. And it's like, well, yeah, I mean, I don't blame you, dude. Like, where are you going to go from there? That's not why it's bad. Not or why. not so why they won't get a season yeah. two. It's because it didn't make enough money. Didn't make enough yeah. engagement. It has nothing to do even with the story. The, they could the, they can make up the 10 billion seasons. They made it for, even for the pennies that they made it for. The pennies. would have told them to spend more money. But then he'd be like, yeah, but if they spent more, they would have made more. You got to spend money to make money, all right? Yeah, but like, it, it just is so amazing to me that he's like, well, of course, because there's no way to go with Kenobi's story now. It's like, what? Uh, but, I mean, that's. It, yes, there it's is. It's just a, a group uh, of people get kidnapped from some village. He's told about it. I could make a whole season out of that. Done. Yeah. Again, his spirit. Journey, Fucking Qui Gon. Talking yeah, to yeah, Qui Gon I, is still on the table. Yeah, a bottle episode that's just those. Mr. Two Star Wars fan about. over here doesn't see where it could go. Yeah, what a lack of imagination there. Than to grasp onto now. I don't know, dude. I don't know. It's just, and, and, you know, they don't even want to give Kenobi a second seat. And it's like, well, yeah, I mean, I don't blame you, dude. Like, where are you going to go from there? I mean, the whole show just focused on, ah, you guys have heard me talk about it. I'm just, so, I'm just so, I'm so frustrated. I'm so, Disney. And I get that. And I feel like it's the same as the other guy in some ways. Like, the, this, this is kind of what I mean about a new era. A lot of fans who were, like, loving the fuck out of all of it are now, like, feeling bad and don't know how to express it properly. And don't know where the problem lies and start to fucking go after all kinds of crazy things like the 90 million budget that he was focused so hard on or we don't have enough of our old stars back we, we got to bring back more people that people like that's what we need to do oh we need more i mean i say this i'm trying to reference the matt guy from earlier but technically i am referencing star wars theory as well because he said on the uh i think it was instagram that, like, the person said, why do you like episode 5? All it is is just Anakin and lightsabers. And then he was like, that's Star Wars. It's it, it, So, like, that's how you solve it for him. But he's feeling bad because the writing is so fucking bad at this point. It's, like, staggeringly killing people's investment in this IP. And, uh, you know, Disney's current state is sort of bleeding into everything to do with their products. The feeling is there. Obviously, the stock is there. All these like bigger articles coming out, and then these recognitions from stuff as much as as big as South Park. The, the writing is on the wall. People know, and now it's time to be like, "Yeah, I got it." I can't believe he had the balls to say he's the only one saying it, and he's the only one who sees it. <laughs> it's like, what are you talking about? You're so late to the party. Like, I don't know, you guys. You would do what you want to do, man. At this point, you know, you you can't. It's in the hands of the fans, and the fans are going to continue to make fan films. You guys are going to continue to get roasted by South Park and even bigger media that will come They're in the future. Disney and more than anything, you deserve it. You really do. Roast to themselves, man. Because you just you you aren't learning from anything, and you're continuously ruling with your ego. To be fair, and I don't say this with any vitriol whatsoever, but if they had listened to your advice, I don't think they'd even come close to saving Star Wars. It still crashes nope. and burns. Because he hasn't focused, like, on the fundamentals, and he, and he often advocates for bringing in all of the favorites, which they have done, by the way, a lot of, to the point where they're fucking digging out of Clone Wars and Rebels. Oh, and you guys just have no idea what Star Wars is about at the end of the day. There are many people uh, at Lucasfilm who have a real good, clear understanding, and Yes, I do think I have a very good understanding of what Star Wars is. First six films, I think I know it better than pretty much anybody. For whatever okay. good... Well, whatever. Do. Like, what, what am I supposed okay. to do with that? After yeah. everything else he yeah, said, it, I feel like... Okay, yeah, I, yeah just, that doesn't mean anything after everything else you've said. I don't know, man. Just, just, uh, I heard what your insight is in the past ten minutes. You telling me what that insight was in conclusion is not going to convince me as much as my lying ears, I guess. Clone Wars, I mean, you want to talk about mythology, you want to talk about Star Wars, you want to talk about character arcs, you want to talk about themes, you want to talk about the characters themselves. But Andor's bad. What they were going through, why they did what they did. No, no, Andor's good, it's just a sleepy show. Blade Runner. Blade Runner oh, sleepy. Okay. Oh, sleepy okay. Blade Runner. No cooking. Oh, okay. No peak. Valley. Pure valley. You want to talk about force abilities, lightsaber techniques and fighting styles and backstories no and this shit. and that. I mean, that's all the stuff people get invested in once you've nailed the foundation. Once you get all the character shit right, then people will be like, they want to learn more about the universe, and that's where all that comes from. It's not like the characters using the correct fighting style is the reason why Star Wars is as popular as it was. I mean, I, I know the movies and the books inside and out. Okay. I'm not the only one. 
there are millions of others at Lucasfilm that know so much about Star Wars. I don't Wars. think there's millions of people at Lucasfilm. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think they employ that many people. No. Um, the, VX, the, the VFX dungeons are packed to the brim. They are packed to the brim. Millions of VFX artists. Is chained inside of their computers what's funny is rendering like, all of she hulk's toes good old wikipedia lucasfilm has two thousand employees you mean two million two million oh, but that, that, yeah, that's in 2015 <laughs> so maybe they did expanded by what ten thousand did 000, yeah ten thousand like, fold maybe <laughs> we were in dave filoni i mean these 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 are two guys that like you you can't be ha luckier finding what do you no, mean I, they made first. mando season we three and the last two episodes of Ahsoka. It's, yes. And, and they were executive producers on Book of Boba Fett. Um, they are a curse getting their hands oh, well, on this series. I was going to say, from his POV, he should say they are a mixed bag. From our POV, yeah. they are absolutely a curse on Star Wars. They've destroyed <laughs> so much more than they, they ever could have had to. Talent yeah. like this, and having them be loyal to the brand, and having them loyal to the brand. Don't ever yeah, say that. Kind of <laughs> that sounds gross. Brand them yeah. work for the brand i mean honestly at this point you would be a fool to not be hiring the two of them to work together to create <sighs> everything no Man, you'd be a fool to do that thing. first thing you're gone sorry bye you had many oh god could you imagine if to have. for any like insane nonsense multiversal reason that we got given like the power to make those kinds of changes, and we publicly like stream a YouTube video where we say the first thing we're doing is firing Dave Filoni. Fucking Star Wars Three would hate us so much, and we'd be like, oh, "We're helping you. Don't you worry. Alone. We're saving you." They, they the medicine—it's like a many... child. The medicine tastes bad, but it helps you. <laughs> You'll make better. it, bro. They've we'll we'll sort so it out. Don't chances, you worry. Man. They've had so many chances, and they've consistently delivered absolute garbage. It's over. Come yes, on. they have been given so many. As far as I'm concerned, I think I said this to you, Frank. Like uh, the the Ahsoka show, that would have been the final test that could possibly have been allowed. You get given a yeah. full writing and and controlling as much of the. He's, he, he had like full control, right? Like that's that's his baby. He wrote yeah, every thing. single episode. Executive producer, showrunner. That was his. He wrote path. every empty pause. You cannot yes, have is. that much much control. Make that something that shit, and then tell me that he's going to save Star Wars. No, no way. And I mean, it Doing didn't fun. work because look at the viewership numbers. They're down. People aren't watching. As for the, oh wait, people saying watch. he's talking about Sam Witwer. He said both of them. As for Sam Witwer, I mean. I, I, uh, I, I, well, I don't. I mean, I'd need to see what Sam Whitmo would credit. write. Has he got writing credits for anything? I mean, not that I'm aware of. He's got acting credits and voice acting credits, and I think he's. I, I think he's a talented guy. But like, what? I'm what, fine. What I'm fine for Sam Whitwood to be a part of Star Wars. That's yeah. fine with me. Yeah, of course. Of course. But I am absolutely like, fucking done letting Dave Filoni piss all over Star Wars. Out. No Show him the door, and then when John Favreau says, "Wow, he got rid of him," be like, "Yep, yeah, you're getting in the car too, bud." <laughs> like off you go. <laughs> Yeah, he says, yeah. yeah, you know, I'm glad to be running. You're not allowed to be here. <laughs> this is trespassing. Uh, but Sam Witwer, you go ahead and you voice act and you play you whatever voice, characters. Green, You're great. Okay. I love you. Do it. you we'll give you a Star Killer show. Going forwards. Tired of this. Green. I would, yeah, I'd do that in a heartbeat at Star Killer show. Why not? Yeah. Light if 13, it, 13. Yeah. Green light the Force Unleashed 3. No one cares well, about your 13th, junk it's cannon. It's over. 13, 13. It's, it's Biden, alright? It's also, been a decade. Force Unleashed it's 3. Didn't they kill Force Unleashed 1 and 2's cannon? Oh, that yes. But I, maybe he wants uh, maybe he wants EU. But the, if he made EU cannon, wouldn't that contradict like the EU created by good old Dave? Oh, well, I guess yeah. in his perfect world, he would just decanon and recanonize like different things or whatever. I guess I just find it. Um, the LucasArts doesn't exist anymore. Um, that, nope. that, that place is gone, and the team that existed there is gone forever. Um, and in fact, one of the one of the most baffling things about destroying LucasArts is why would you destroy a company that not only succeeded in creating successful liked Star Wars games? But a company that created a lot of things that weren't Star Wars that were also successful and like, why? Why do I that? I don't know. I, don't, I just don't. I don't fucking get it. Just why don't you just let them keep oh, and, making shit people like? My favorite is part that... is that they cre they're like, oh, now it's Lucasfilm Games. Lucasfilm <laughs> Games. What? <laughs> okay. It's green light thirteen thirteen. Green light the Force Unleashed it's, Three. It's over. No one cares it's about done. your junk cannon.
just create. You care about their junk you cannon. Do. You just said. You love that shit. You just you love oh, how season does, how one and two of Mando. About, uh, how does he feel about the Star Wars Jedi games or like uh, Fallen Order? Uh, well, survivors yeah, are the one, right? Or a Jedi uh, Survivor? Or I don't, that, well, dude? I don't know, but um, you cannot tell uh -huh. me that like you want to you want to ditch the the junk canon of like Kenobi, Boba Fett, and maybe Mando season three, but we'll keep all the awesome canon of Mando season one and two and Ahsoka's episodes one through six. Like, what what is this line you're drawing? It doesn't make any fucking sense. Create good stories that we love. Create the characters that we love. Embellish the characters that we love. Continue their stories. Create Star Wars. Make it great. So we'll go the opposite direction. Stop talking about the characters we love. Make new ones and do your make best with that. Ones. Yeah, exactly. Also, decanonize Which, everything you've made so far, except Andor. Oh yes, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Everything that they made, except for Andor, is gone. Everything. Nuke it. We're gonna start make again. It it was. Give it a proper fair chance for the characters that matter. Give them the money they deserve. Oh, the stop coming matter. back to that the retarded money point. The, the money, money they, they deserve. 20% more money. And that They're would have doing... fixed Well, everything. you see, Fringy, that would have well, saved no, like... it. Yes. It's quite the mindset. Like, man, these shows suck. They need to be given more money. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. So bizarre to me. They'll never learn. And we'll continue to... I'm going to learn if this is the fucking Metal solution Kawhi you're providing. Yeah. Uh, be pushed towards the prequels and originals. I find it, I find it so weird. That's this all. has been a fascinating adventure of people presenting incredibly incoherent visions for the future and saying, guys, Marvel and Star Wars respectively. I think it's fascinating because it comes directly from people answers. who have been swallowing up that pipe of sludge and then they cough and go, oh, God, the solution here is more salt. It's like, what? Mm. No? Yeah, we gotta salt. We gotta salt the Earth here, all right? I think that's a good, that's a good idea. Salt the galaxy. All, that's right. That's all it is. That's all that'll happen. That's that's literally it. So yeah, great well, job. Let me know what you guys think about this. You Love suck. you all. I don't Have know. a great day. It's like, May the force be with every it's like, single. Is like he, okay, this guy is that. like what three million that. subs, and he's the ambassador or whatever of the whatever. Oh, he said some cringe shit on that video. <laughs> And I'm like, Jesus Christ, like, you've done so much damage and, uh, by what you do. Do you know, do you know you how say. I found out about this even existing? Was that this how? got relatively high on a Reddit saying, Star Wars fans right now. <laughs> it's, it's, and I was like, okay, we have to have an episode on this. It's both yeah, fucking it's teams. So, the Marvel so and Star poetic. Wars people do the same Jeez. fucking thing. It's so poetic. <laughs> Oh, you know, Star Wars, it's over, nothing's gonna change, I'm done, I'm tired. It's anyway, like, if you say, two, like, what is, about season two. like, clearly, when he says, I'm done here, and I'm like, you're not, you're Star Wars, no. here. you'll never be done. You've, Which, you have hitched way, your, you know, your existence to this, you're never done. What do you think I'm done means? Well, I guess uh, it means that you're just slightly perturbed for a short, off-the-cuff video. That's thing. what I'm done means. What? position are you in to negotiate anything by way of changes in Star Wars if you're always gonna show up every time? Like, why would they care what you think? You're always gonna show up. You know, why would they change unless there was... Uh, it goes further than that. Actually... He's not just showing up, he's celebrating the quality of current day Star Wars mm -hmm. while also saying That's Star true. Wars is being destroyed. It doesn't make any That's sense. True. That's true. And it's the same goes for that Mac Marvel. guy. He was like, Marvel's being destroyed. It's in shambles. It's also pretty fucking great. <laughs> it's also pretty good. What? I'm, I'm gonna be with them forever till the day I die. You know, Ride I'm always die. Be standing yeah. this series. Is and yeah, that's uh, that's is the, the episode. That is it. Okay. As you, wow, you can imagine was, now, I will, what I was trying to capture through this adventure. Yeah. Well, I will say, I don't know. I don't know if there are going to be copyright issues, but television and other rantings has made the meme video of Luthen. <laughs> Scars guards. There's so. definitely going to be copyright issues. That's, okay, that's so. strictly so Andor we, and we will, Marvel. We'll save we it for a meme fab. Right after, yeah, we'll save it for a meme fab because yeah. I'm very, 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 very excited to see that. I'm, I'm not going to wait to the meme fab. I'm just going to watch after that, we end the stream. I really very want to see. Oh my god, I'll, uh, I'll save off the suspense. So yeah, uh, what have we oh, learned? Nothing. Uh, we What's the moral of the story? Nothing really. Um, I guess insight insight into the perspectives of certain people on these big franchises, yeah? I feel this is a, yeah, a big new step yeah. where it used to be mainly people like us who were like, rawr, we don't like this. And then there was the people who were like, rawr, I like this. And then there's people who were like, 
absolutely just suck on that big old Disney peen. But it feels like the Overton window on what's acceptable to say about the quality of current stuff has moved to the point where you're yeah. seeing these people freak out. They don't know what to do anymore. Like the, the both sides of like Marvel and and um, uh, Star Wars. They're like, this is this is awful and fun and great and terrible and great and uh, what's happening? Well, yeah, <laughs> it's uh, it's interesting in much the same way that the formula that particularly Disney employed of Marvel movies, Star Wars stuff, uh, live action remakes, a formula that consistently made money for a while in much the same way that that's broken now and they don't know what to do. The adjacent like media ecosystem is like caught up in that break as well yeah. of the script of new exciting Marvel Disney Star Wars product. Isn't that exciting and hype? And also what's next in merchandise and everything that now that's starting to break down as well. It's fascinating. It really is. I learned a lot, you know, for, yeah, throughout this, all that. This is pretty I easy that for us. $90 million dollars was pennies. Yeah, that was, ugh, there's so much fucking crazy quotes from this episode, but um, the... I would say that this, this is super easy for us because we just take it all as it comes, call it what it is, and then notice the trends and comment on the meta, including like commentary from you know the creators or where they plan to go or what currently looking like stock box office, all that stuff. Like it's the easiest story to see. You can just see it all playing out. We've been saying Marvel is just heading down. Well, Disney, they're heading down. We we haven't even talked at all today about their live action remakes. Like no, you know, the fact that that, that fucking that disaster too. Yeah. We haven't talked at all about their theme park stuff, merchandise. Or Disney Plus in general oh, as yeah. like a as a as a service. Yeah, like there's it's all falling apart. And once you once you know all of those things, it's very simple to just be like, well, there we go. <laughs> but, I mean, but, but again, what does it look like when a huge part of your identity and also your business, I guess, if you want to talk about like making YouTube videos about Marvel or Star Wars, what does it look like when it starts to break down? It's not even hard to account for the really good stuff that pops up. Like, there it no. goes. No, not really. And especially when you find out who makes it and how and why and all the shit to do with it, and then whether or not it's even cared about, what ratings it can get, engagement, and then whether or not it'll be renewed. Um, we'll be lucky to fucking see Andor Season 2 at this point. Get it uh, out if you can, I guess. Uh, yeah, please, please. And, um, yeah, I don't know, like, like, it's like, what happens next? Like, the Marvels, it's gonna crash and burn, and then it'll bring out a lot more criticism again. People will be like, you know what was wrong with the yeah, Marvels? Is it didn't connect enough to the overall story. The thing that was wrong with the that's Marvels right. is that there wasn't enough people that we know from the MCU. The thing that's wrong with the Marvels is Spider-Man wasn't in it. Tobey Maguire Spider-Man should have been in there. The thing that was wrong yeah, with it was fighting Darth Vader. Visual effects. The visual effects. It's the visual effects, that was it. It was the pacing. No, 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 it was the it length. Was, it's too short. It was too comedic. They need to take themselves too comedic. Serious. Yeah, yeah. but it was also too dark sometimes. That's right. It was yeah, and and it's all you know. It all comes back to you know what? It just wasn't very well written. You know what? It's just not we'll Marvel. See, it's not very marvelous, is it? It's not much of a Marvel. And that's that's the big problem. Is they're just not quite. It's a good movie. It's an okay movie. It's just not a Marvel movie. It's just not a Marvel movie. That's right. Yeah, it didn't, um, it didn't... We've done episodes like this before, where we cover people and like the crazy excuses they come up with for just avoiding saying, "Wow, the writing was really bad," mm -hmm. and that's probably like, what the Marvels is going to be. Good? Obviously, the plot's fucking leaked probably. already, so <laughs> like it's. I mean, it's yeah. I mean, it, yeah. We'll, we'll see. <sighs> I mean, it's only a few days away. How exciting! Yes, and then of course uh, Loki will end. It'll end horribly oh, bad. Um, oh yeah. The Echo Show is going to be more than like you know. Just, I'm going to be trying to be nice for you. It's no more than likely going to be bad. More than likely. It's, yeah. No one's going to talk about it. No one's going to give a shit. Um, yep. And then uh, we're going to 2024 is going to be an even more interesting year for what the fuck these shows and and movies are going to look like and what Marvel well, going to be doing great. in terms of how to release them. Same for. I say all this as if Star Wars' story isn't fucking fascinating. They're desperately trying to make Star Wars even somewhat profitable and engageable. That's where they're well, at yes, with that. That's, that's what we've seen over the last few years. Is it's kind of like. The impossible has become possible. Yes. They, like, it's, <laughs> like, the, the impossible being Star Wars, Star Wars can never fail. It can never lose money. And it took three years. It's like, oh, fuck, Solo. <laughs> Jesus. What have we oh done? My God. We lost money. And now we're at the point where the shows are starting to struggle. The shows have consistently got lower viewership. Ahsoka was dramatically lower viewership than uh, Obi-Wan, I believe. And it was dramatically lower from the premiere to the, to the finale. 
And the same sort of problems exist with uh, Marvel. Like, look, I, if the Marvels actually makes like four hundred million or less, that's gonna be that's gonna be like pretty crazy as a as a thing. At that point, there's no getting around it. There's no denying it. Like something that consistently made money for a decade is no longer reliable. That's that's gonna be a big deal. That's gonna I and especially with the the fact that it's all lining up with like all of this turmoil that's happening within the industry itself with the writer's strike and the actor's strike. Yeah. Projects getting cancelled, like the, the scaling back of productions, the fact that we've got a very saturated ecosystem in terms of streaming services, not all of them are going to survive. I think uh, it's going to be a tumultuous few years here. It's it's just become less predictable. The guaranteed yeah, just... success stories and the guaranteed, you know, failures or like it's becoming harder. Who would have thought, really, that the far and away biggest success of the year, even though it was expected that Barbie was going to do well, but it would be Barbie, the Mario movie, and then Oppenheimer as, like, the top three most successful movies of the year, beating out every everything that typically would succeed in this landscape. How is it that a biopic, a three-hour-long biopic, yeah. ended up making that much That's money? There's not even man. a goddamn gunshot in it either, or, or a lightsaber. <laughs> no, there's no lightsabers. Ol' Oppie uh, didn't even get his lightsaber out. It's, uh, yeah, which, um, I, I, I don't know, it's, it's just, it's, it's interesting. It's an interesting time. And that's that, I suppose. Uh, next, next yeah, EFAP, yeah. is that gonna be the Bobble's EFAP, or is the one after that? Oh, by the, uh, uh... by the way, um, I, I looked at, uh, it says here that 863,000 households, t households tuned into Ahsoka's season finale across a five-day period. In yeah. comparison, The Mandalorian's season three finale earlier this year had 1.5 million. Which is already down from what Mando used to yep, be. Yep, the numbers uh, on season three were disappointing. Remember, oh, that's this a is, huge this is drop. All interesting and relevant considering that Mando season one and two were on a platform that at the time had way less people subscribe to it. As a proportion of the people who are subscribed to Disney Plus, it decreases as well, which feels relevant, you know? But yes, uh, uh, when's the Marvels out? Uh, it's out this week, so next week will be the Marvels if we're doing it the week that it comes out. Oh, but what boy. day? Like, the Marvels will be next week. But, like, I I don't know, it depends which country you're in, right? But the uh, like, I think really America. State, UK. Well, I think it comes out Thursday over here, so in a few days. It is Friday for me, damn. So, damn, alright, so... That's not fun for me. <laughs> well... What do, what do you do? You, do you want to you want to do it the week later? Uh, we should probably do it on the eleventh. I, you know, I think you know. Yeah, we can do. We can. We do. It's all right. I don't need sleep. You, want. you know, whatever <laughs> you want. It's we could do it when I can't. It'll be exciting. All right, Ringy Rags. Do you want to tell anybody anything in the nice little chat before we before we head off? Um. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching us talk about Disney, mm -hmm. their rise, their fall, all the the goaded great fire peak stuff bro um we really appreciate you tuning in watching efap listening to us with all of our all of our words mm -hmm. and sentences thank you very much um uh oh gosh i've been watching some of them some of them got some pretty good memes pretty good memes this episode oh i imagine not so, gonna yeah. lie i've been been keeping an eye on them in the discord some pretty good stuff uh some of them i don't understand but a lot of them are pretty good <laughs> So there you go. Thanks. Uh I'm just I'm working I'm working on Loki. I'm working on yeah, I'm okay. working. Alright, that's it. <laughs> that's all I got for you. I am currently sorting out the copyright protections and just finalizing that war movie arc that if everything works, we'll be start on January first of twenty twenty four and you will be provided fourteen EFAP movies across the year. And if everything goes smoothly, I talked about this like a year ago, we will finally be in a position where EFAP movies is just a regular thing that's relatively reliable that you guys can all get. With all kinds of different movies and all kinds of different arcs. We're hoping this is the beginning of it, we just got some work to get done. Um, the Halloween arc's already been sorted out for next year, not like edited, but recorded, and there's still some extra surprises we're uh, planning. One that's going to be before this year is out that I think you guys are going to mm -hmm. love that we're mm -hmm. actually doing more of tomorrow. Well, today for me, technically, but yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. And of course, just work in general continues. So thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. You guys were, uh, were passionate for, for this episode. I'll say that much. What a journey we took you on. Articles and screenshots of forum posts. And you guys were interested. Isn't that crazy? Hooray. We did um, it. Yeah, it was, it was good times. Thanks for keeping us company. Thank you very much, of course, for the kind donations. I've got, uh, we've recorded several. I'm going to get them out, um, you know, paced out a bit. Um, yes, I'll be streaming more um, Robocop. Robocop is awesome. <laughs> From the, just the five hours I've played, I already, I've, I've been wanting to play more of it, but you fuckers won't let me play a game offline. I gotta continue on stream, otherwise you won't know the, the story. Meh, meh, meh. Anyway, it's uh, been some, it's been some fun. You've been peak, chat. You've been fire. You've, you've been Big fire, you've been nice. boom, yeah. You, you've been nice bro. bro, and so bro. Yeah, word. But for now, cooking. peak, uh, peak sleep or peak, peak over, peak stream. Yeah, it is peak sleep peak for by. me. It's so, what it is. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, see folks. Yeah, everybody. We'll see you. Yeah, see you bye later, bye. everyone. Bye 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 bye. bye, -bye. Doodaloo.